One day chaos came to the world. Monsters attacked people and destroyed everything around, sowing panic and destruction. They appeared completely out of the blue and attacked everyone indiscriminately. The monsters far surpassed humans in size and strength, had sharp fangs and tough skin. The creatures could show up anywhere and wreak havoc. Ordinary humans couldn't handle them. The helicopter blades parted the air noisily near Cheong Ho Dong. There was a new anomaly, and at first people couldn't even figure out what it was. The cyclopean object did not attack humans, even if they were in close proximity. The rocky tower towered above the city with a lone, sharp tusk. It soon revealed itself by activating a summoning circle, absorbing people right off the streets. Once inside, at first they didn't know what was happening or why. It was as if the tower had drawn a lottery and called for random winners. For years, they disappeared into the depths and were severely tested. Until one in five people on Earth has been in the tower as a hunter. The hunters who cleared the tower became the new hope of mankind. Twelve years after its discovery, the monsters have gone nowhere. The streets of the city were still filled with ugly creatures, vile and bloodthirsty. But now they were easily countered, killing them with a single blow. Hunters destroyed monsters with magic and other abilities. Their appearance attracted a storm of attention and loud applause. As if they were heroes, they became the ideal for people. Even ordinary hunters were known by name. Their forces forced governments to pass new laws. However, the hunters have created their own world, with guilds and alliances, outside of the state. The cameraman beeped, letting them know they were on the air. There were three guests sitting in the studio, two men and a girl between them. The beautiful host welcomed the audience and started the show. The leaders of the top three guilds in Korea are in the studio today. Goguryeo guild leader Han Kwon Seo, a young man with a bold hairstyle. A model-like, blue-eyed girl from the Aran Guild, Lee so -yeon. The last to introduce himself was the unflappable, handsome man, Kim Shi Hyun, the leader of the Seoul Guild. The show was about an experienced player, a mysterious personality that has become popular online. The guild leaders were surprised to hear a familiar nickname. The skilled player has spawned many legends and urban stories about himself. Kwan Seo laughed ruefully, judging from what they say player is not dead and is living well. Pretty Seo Yan revealed that experienced player and has been living in the tower for 12 years. When the tower was cleared, he did not leave like the others, but went down to the first floor again, Kim Shi Hyun added. All three of them thought he was the first hunter the tower had summoned. The whole time it's been in existence, it's been inhabited by a hunter who's been mopping it up time after time. One could only wonder how strong a man was that he had lived so long twelve years. He walked the tower from the first floor to the hundredth floor in one day. The player is stronger than any tower apprentice in all basic skills, except magic. One day the hunters ran away without looking back and called for help. Dropping their weapons and wounded, the group scurried away, but one man did not run. The blast knocked back a few of the weaker hunters, but the guy in the tracksuit wasn't hurt. A large cloud of dust rose from the impact and enveloped the cave. But the guy in the barefoot flip-flops was moving forward at a leisurely pace. The hunter walked forward in deep thoughtfulness, as if he were strolling in a park. He looked up when he came across an obstacle in front of him. Just the final boss standing in his way with an ugly maw. A Baylock demon with a mane of fire loomed over a simple guy in a suit and flip-flops and played peekaboo with him, staring at him with coal-red eyes. The guy smiled at the demon as if he were an old acquaintance. Seeds are there, and if I find any, he asked. There was a lot of gossip online about the experienced player. Everyone wanted to determine his rank. Witnesses told different stories of how they crossed paths with the player in their levels. Once on the 72nd floor, he had single-handedly defeated three huge werewolves. After meeting the player, people reported that he was inhumanly strong. They said he could jump from the first floor to the 10th floor. The guy in the tracksuit gave the demon the usual leg kick. The demon's head cracked against the floor of the cave, clanking its teeth. The demon roared angrily, unable to get up after receiving such a blow. Spanker pinned the head of the final tower boss to the ground. Laughing madly, the guy in the tracksuit asserted himself over the defeated enemy. 
He laughed like a madman, making me question who the bigger demon was. The boss of the last floor was decomposing in a magical glow like a normal dungeon monster. The crazy guy in the tracksuit sighed. It was over too quickly. Over the course of twelve years, the time to pass the training tower gradually decreased. All the towers are similar to each other, and their contents have not changed. Those who were trained became more and more numerous, and their knowledge accumulated and helped others to avoid dangers. Humans tackled monsters they couldn't otherwise defeat. Information became the main weapon of the tower dungeons. Over time, the training turned into a sporting event where groups of hunters set new records. In many countries, sharing information has become the best strategy to help the weak survive and to identify and recruit the strong. However, there was a limit to what humans could do, even with the information advantage. People were dying like flies. Few survivors were able to reach the end of the tower. Hundreds of hunters fell in spite of all the efforts and help given. Even after reaching the last floor, they continued to take casualties. The hundredth floor monster, the lord of the tower, the demon blazing fire was blocking the way. The final test of the tower, the ugly evil demon Balok. This disaster has taken the lives of half the players, and the survivors will be plagued by nightmares. And so this fearsome monster was nullified by a single attack of striped flip-flops. The crazy guy in the tracksuit kicked the penalty with the demon's head. No black and white striped flip-flops were harmed. The surviving hunters couldn't believe their nightmare was killed in one blow. 1,300 and sweep counted off the insanely strong guy melancholically. The light of the portal illuminated his face indifferent to everything. Sighing, he slammed into the direction of the purple portal, the exit from the tower. He closed his eyes and listened to the sensations. The familiar feeling of slight disorientation came and went. He opened his eyes and looked around, no change, still the same damp dungeon. The neon banner of the first floor still bore the same bored greeting to those who entered. A new walkthrough had begun. There was a nervous laugh from a guy in gym shoes and flip-flops. He fell to his knees and despaired. Even a fun ride would get boring if you didn't get off it. The entire tower shook with his profanity, the unwilling prisoner begging to be brought home. Letting off a little steam, the hunter lay down on the cold stone floor of the tower and called up the status window, as he did every time after another sweep cycle. The familiar blue rectangle of the interface appeared before my eyes as a translucent cloud. Twelve years ago, he and his friends had made it to Baylock with great and loss among the first. Having defeated the demon, the four friends were jubilant, celebrating their victory and their imminent return home. Everyone thanked Kim Hyun Woo for saving them and agreed to meet again. But the hunter modestly shrugged off the merits and made a promise to meet them. After the portal, however, he was disappointed to see the boring signboard of a bogus establishment again. The neon sign blinded his eyes. He was the only one back at the starting room. Received the curse of the banshee, read his sentence in the blue window. As much as Hyunwoo tried to understand why he was cursed and imprisoned, he never found any answers. So he began to sweep the tower on his own from the very bottom and slowly went crazy trying everything he could. Hyun Woo persistently passed the tower dozens of times, each time carving a mark on the stone. He quickly increased his physical strength to the limit and could smash rocks with his bare hands. But a boring neon sign haunted him at the damned tower entrance. Even after five years of trying everything possible, he couldn't get out. In his own way, he was even enjoying what was going on, playing tricks on the other hunters. Kim Hyun Woo gave them tasks playing the role of the starting NPC's mentor and dungeon guide. He played the role of a tough military training instructor, making the rookies sweat in training. But it couldn't last long. Everyone he knew had left the tower after the sweep. After a thousand passes, he stared at the status window again, dying of boredom. But this time, something was different, and Yunwu excitedly stood up. He read the inscription again, curse broken, the status informed him. Hyunwoo grinned like a madman. Would he really be released after all these years? His joyous shriek shook every floor of the tower from the first to the last. 
The hardcore inmate mustered all his physical power in flip-flops. The guy in the sweatpants did his usual upward leap. But with so much force, it smashed through a dozen floors in one fell swoop. The lone guy in flip-flops was finally heading home. The host of the show asked the guild leaders if the 18th group of hunters that entered the tower could break the mop-up record. Groups vary greatly in composition, number, and cohesion, and it's hard to predict their capabilities in advance, Beauty Lee, So Yeon replied. It's also important to understand which techniques are more effective given everyone's abilities, Kim Shi Hyun added with a nonchalant face. Kwon Seo clarified that the biggest obstacles occur after passing the middle of the tower. Starting on the 51st floor, a high-level boss, much stronger than the other mobs, appeared every 10 floors. The level 60 boss became anxious when he sensed something wrong. A strong earthquake started at his level, as if a volcanic eruption was imminent. The ground split open, revealing a mad hunter in a hurry to get home. His eyes burned with fire at how many years this tower had kept him locked up. In one jump, he went through ten levels like a rocket. Ninetieth floor, Hyunwoo's rocket didn't slow down, but instead continued to gain speed. Level after level turned to blazing ruins by just one player. Explosions comparable to bombs, rocks turned to dust, until the insanely strong prisoner reached the last floor, the dumb, ugly git, staring at the hunter one last time. Down with this boring game where there are no updates and the quit button doesn't work. Baylock zeroed in on a second from a single light kick under the breath. The ascent took a record few minutes and nearly destroyed the tower. Zhang Hodong, Condon District, Tower Access Control Center, observed her activity at the foot of the tower. A flash of purple color confused the office staff and they stared out the window. The gate of the tower opened. A purple portal failure appeared. A guy in a tracksuit and barefoot flip-flops walked out onto the lawn in front of the tower. Kim Hyun-woo looked at the city in front of him, laughing madly. The guy was greeted by a slightly overweight surveillance office employee and congratulated him on his passage. Good work, he praised the hunter, but he was still recovering from his long time out. Finally turning around abruptly, the odd-looking kid looked at the official. Hyun-woo asked him sharply in a trembling voice if he had definitely left the tower. The young man's face brightened with joy he wanted to hear it from the outside, to know for sure he wasn't dreaming. He's home, thunderous exclamation. Kim Hyun Woo is finally back. His name was not found on the list of the last 18th group. The watcher had to flip through the tower's impressive list of trainees. The first group wondered the association's observer, impossibly, he thought. Experienced player, the hunter of the first group of the training tower, Kim Hyun Woo, officially made it out of the tower after 12 years. A week later, many people gathered outside the testing center. People were rushing to meet the newcomers from the 18th group and to see the already world-famous stars who would also be here. Considering this band broke the world record for a full two weeks, the hype surrounding them is more than justified. But one more piece of news about couldn't go unnoticed, the same hunter is also here today. Graceful feet in fancy shoes paced the wooden parquet of the VIP box. Into the well-furnished living room walked a cute girl. She was a little late to meet her friends. The three gathered were representatives of the top hunter guilds. They had come to verify the rumors of the returned hunter. Now come together again. They will easily recognize their friend. For in the tower there is no cold and sleep, and people don't age. Their friend hasn't changed a bit since then. Han Seo Kwan was anticipating the meeting, excited about how strong his former comrade could become. Many newcomers were gathered in the hall, wearing protective gear and waiting for the test to begin. Kim Hyun Woo chewed on a packet of chips. Over the years, he'd longed for the taste of them. The appetizer quickly ran out, and he sighed disappointedly. He yawned sleepily, which surprised the entire group of newbie hunters. Hyunwoo noticed that the hunters were wearing strange equipment. The gear was distributed early in the morning, but the freed hunter skipped everything, wanting to sleep longer after 12 years without sleep. The start signal sounded, everyone was serious, as if a difficult test was ahead. The gate opened, blinding the newcomer hunters inside with a bright light. Hyunwoo squirmed, and not knowing what to expect from the test, he was clearly bored. They came to the labyrinth a huge building the size of a hangar standing in front of them. 
Newcomers were greeted by a man in a black mob boss suit. A rank, a hunter, David, he wore a black suit, black drop glasses for coolness. He was bursting with importance, as if he were a secret agent on an important mission. He began a pathos-laden opening speech, and the crowded yokels of newcomers listened attentively. The hunters were nervous, despite having just cleared the tower. Maybe David's suit had impressed them, or the knowledge that cameras were watching them. David seemed pleased with the impression he'd made on the newcomers. But there's nothing to worry about, the examiner informed me in a patronizing tone. All but one person listened to his instructions, Kim Hyun-woo blatantly yawning. He was already drowsy after David's first words, thinking only about getting it over with. David continued to be important. He pulled out his phone, announcing the start of the first test. A terrible scraping sound was unpleasantly painful to the ears, like the creaking of stone on metal. There are many challenges ahead of them in the maze, the examiner added over the scrambling. As if by magic, the heavy megaliths rose into the air. They moved fast with a rumbling and scraping sound as if they were in a race. The monoliths formed complex three-dimensional structures, intricately shaped. High walls grew in front of the test subjects. David continued to browbeat the young and inexperienced, warning them of the traps and dangers of the maze. Boys and girls stood at arm's length, hoping to show what they could do. Their eyes burned with determination, and now he was raring to fight as if for the first time. The adrenaline in their blood made them clutch their weapons tighter, grit their teeth. The signal to attack, and they moved forward as a group. David escorted the fleeing men with a glance. This group seemed disciplined and prepared. He smiled, remembering his youth. Should we expect good results from the newcomers this time, too? David rejoiced at the good start, but one hunter had yet to enter the maze. He called out to David from the back, tearing him from his musings. You just have to get out of the maze, the guy in the suit said. David pulled back his drops to look at the weirdo. Who is this guy, he asked himself, that he was in no hurry at all to get anywhere. With no gear, in just a tracksuit and flip-flops, he didn't look like a normal rookie. This guy can really pass the test, wondered the examiner. The shaggy-haired weirdo stepped closer and stared at him smugly. Hyun Woo waited for an answer, neither the test itself nor his grade. He didn't care. Is this a joke? frowned the examiner. This rookie was allowing himself too much. In addition, the newcomer only smirked back and advised David to watch the other students. David flared up. After all, he's an A-rank hunter and some chick is treating him with no respect. Kim Hyun Woo seemed to be counting on it and offered a bet. He would complete the maze in 20 seconds betting a million one to the winner. The newcomer was talking outright nonsense, which pissed him off even more. Did he chicken out? The odd hunter prodded David. Ten million, David gritted through his teeth. He decided to up the ante. Barely hearing the amount, an overjoyed Hunwu rushed towards the labyrinth. What kind of crazy person, thought David. Hunwu's hand touched the wall of the maze. An ordinary stone, the tower is made up of the same. In his thoughts, Hyun Woo counted the money. The fees of hunters in the service of the state were impressive, tens of millions of won, easy money in his pocket. Hyun Woo swung his fist from a low stance like karate could do. The main thing about the punch is the fulcrum, he's properly grounded. And unleashed his power, his foot went deeper into the concrete base. David took off his glasses, not realizing what the strange newcomer was up to. The audience stared at the screen also puzzled as to what the skilled player was doing. Even his friends couldn't tell what was going on and watched intently. Hyun Woo concentrated and inhaled deeply and gathered strength. His hand was covered in a blinding blue glow. He unleashed all his absurd power in one blow with a bright flash. The shockwave soaked the maze through as if it were made of cardboard. Hyun Woo walked through the dense cloud of dust following the beaten path. Standing proudly in the middle of the piles of rocks on the other side of the maze, he announced that he had passed the test. He just won a bet he offered himself, easy money. There was a commotion in the audience room. The audience was in shock. Kwan Seo was satisfied. Their friend is still a stubborn guy. Hyun Woo could only think about the ten million won he had just won. It suddenly dawned on him he wasn't in the tower anymore, where everything would fix itself. I just hoped they wouldn't make him pay for the damages. 
24 hours before the test in Hunter's newsroom, work was simmering. The next issue of the magazine was special because of the contributors. Rumors of an experienced player could fuel magazine sales this month. It wasn't easy to find anything about the player, however, with editors looking for other promising rookies. One such was just on the list. The reporters knew him well as they followed the hunters. A beginner strong in traditional martial arts and characterized by good physical fitness. This newbie hunter could outshine even an experienced player. They should have prepared themselves. Lee Kang Hyun read the caption under the photo of the tough guy. The hunter gripped his sword tightly and prepared for battle. He always dreamed of becoming a star, of finding fame and recognition. And he has always had the skills, intelligence, and luck to accomplish that goal. Where others fled, he stayed to meet the enemy, holding his katana firmly in front of him. And so he always went into battle without fear and without a shadow of a doubt. No matter what creepy monsters came his way, he never backed down. Not afraid of death, he looked it in the eye and chopped with all his might. That's how Lee Kang Hyun became the best hunter of the 18th group. A good debut is a step to his success, he could count on it. That's what he thought until he saw the hundredth floor boss die from a single kick. With a kick of his foot, the dreaded tower demon's head was blown clean off. Someone despised Lee Kak Hyun's efforts to climb up. He remembered the face of the madman with the burning eyes that snatched victory from his hands. That bastard blew through a hurricane without even looking at them. An unknown crazed lunatic has cleared the tower instead of the entire team. With a joyous laughter, he threw himself into the portal and was gone. After everything, that crazy person took all the glory that Lee Kang Hyun should have gotten. They met again at the hunter's exam. Just now he was shining, passing the test. And here he is, interrupted, by some unknown force. The destroyed maze is no longer suitable for the exam. A fuss was made, and journalists and other observers rushed to find out what had happened. No one was filming Hyun Woo at this moment, because he had fallen behind the main group, which was led by Lee Kang Hyun. And who'd pay attention to a shaggy guy in slippers? On the screens in the journalist's studio, Hyun Woo's face appeared. A star was born. Kang Hena gritted his teeth, the second time his well-deserved glory was taken away from him. Hyun Wu just slept while he had the chance. No one had realized yet that he was the cause of all the commotion. In the waiting room, they talked about what happened. Lee Kang Hyun kept his eyes on his dangerous opponent. He hadn't given up hope for a rematch and hoped to bounce back. They were notified over the loudspeakers. A new test should begin in 15 minutes. The noise woke up the peacefully sleeping Hun Wu and made him open his eyes and stop drooling. For Lee Kang Hyun, it was a ray of hope. He had to show his best. The head of an ugly orc appeared right along the course. The ordeal was called a stream of monsters. Kang Heng took out his purple aura sword and prepared to fight. He rushed at them with his strongest technique without holding himself back. The blade was enveloped in lightning magic, electricity sparking at its tip. A strong spell rained down on the crowd of holographic targets. And it made a furor. Using magic immediately after clearing the tower was rare. The masters of the best guilds had also spotted the birth of a true genius. Lee Kang Hyun was jubilant. It was his moment of glory where he could prove himself. He used a technique with many sword strokes and magic and killed 78 targets. Not bad for one man. He alone was worth an entire team. That's it. That feeling, he got what he deserved, the best result, all the glory now belongs to him. Observers gave him high marks too, he definitely looked like a leadership candidate. He would have been spotted sooner if it wasn't for the weird guy in the sweatpants. Hyun Woo was frankly bored, but went to take the test. Lee Kang Hyun was wary, what will this abnormal person give out this time, thought he. For journalists, such stories are fodder. They watched closely the contest between the genius and the skilled gambler. Hyun Woo's friends were also watching him closely, how his fighting technique might have changed, what new things he would show. The test room filled with the light of holograms. The timer began counting down the two minutes for the test. The holograms of the opponents lit up. Ordinary orcs, nothing special. Hyun Woo stood in the middle. He nonchalantly kept his hands in his pockets. The audience tensely watched without taking their eyes off the screens. The friends of the experienced gambler froze silently in front of the screen. 
The orcs huffed boredly, though quite naturally, and surrounded him in a tight group while the countdown was still going on. What a load of crap, sighed the hermit. I'd rather stay home and sleep and then eat, and then sleep again. The digital targets rushed to attack the indifferent guy. A light push from the ground with his flip-flop clad foot followed. It left an indented mark on the concrete surface of the arena. Hyun Wu hit the first target, blowing the head off the orc from the light. The journalists could hardly keep up with his speed and now hoped only for a record from their cameras. The virtual orcs rushed to the attack in droves. But in the same instant, the next orc suffered the same fate, his head exploding. Hyun Wu jumped up and down and blew heads off like the flash. To an outsider viewer, he simply disappeared, dissolved. All they saw was the monster's heads exploding and their bodies remaining in place without movement, only a certain black shadow flickering between them. They suspected magic at first, but Kwan Sung saw everything with his keen eyesight. Han Wu moved so fast that even experienced hunters had trouble keeping up with him. In slow motion, they examined how Yun Wu just ran towards the monster as if he was on a walk in the forest and struck effortlessly without taking his hand out of his pants. And then repeated many times, just jammed the attack on the joystick. He's just so fast it seemed like heads exploding on their own. What did he do in the tower to become so fast? His friends wondered. Sometimes Hyun Wu would do things that others made up about him. And that's how he became an experienced player. He stood proudly amidst the pile of bodies as the tabloid gave his murderous score, 248 murders. And they call this a test, child's play thought Hyun Wu. The video broadcast racked up millions of views and went viral across the web. Thousands of viewers took it apart frame by frame and couldn't believe their eyes. The net did not subside. They were wondering what magic the skilled player had used. Lee Kang Hyun was angry. All the sites were exclusively discussing player. His hands shook with anger. Once again, all his efforts had gone to waste. He squeezed his phone so hard he didn't even realize he'd crushed it. Screwing up like this on the test day in full view of everyone, Lee Kang Hyun didn't want to accept it. The door of the waiting room nearly flew out into the hallway from his blows. Out of anger, he fought back against the concrete wall with his bare fists. From morning till night, he worked like a cursed man, put himself at mortal risk, increased his rank, all for the sake of glory. Is it fair that crazy bastard skilled gambler just took it all and ruined it? Lee Kang Hyun howled. A clipboard with a long list of names was placed in front of Hyun Wu. After the test, he was taken to a private room by a pleasant young woman. She gave him a list of guilds willing to recruit him. Alice, she introduced herself as the association's head of information. Hyun Wu was surprised to take the business card. He was used to these things in 12 years. The manager told him about how the world had changed. There were dungeons, mazes, monsters. Alice was rambling on about guilds and monster rewards, but Hyun Wu was thinking about eating. He listened inattentively, so the manager asked him what he was puzzled about. Hyun Wu was distracted from the list and thoughts of the delicious food he hadn't eaten in 12 years. He was uneasy about such matters being discussed with him personally. It didn't seem like the work of an association, he remarked. The sly fox admitted that she was here on a personal matter. She longed for a face-to-face -face meeting and laid the Ares Guild contract in front of him. Hyun Woo started to look at the terms of the contract, but Alice turned his gaze to the payment section. Hyun Woo was confused counting the zeros of the one-time payment to the hunter who signed this contract. Alice smiled contentedly. With that amount of money, success was guaranteed. A $10 billion contract for one stroke of the pen at the end of the page. Alice pronounced the amount again, anticipating a good commission. Hun Wu can't be fooled like that. It's been too long since he's been home. In ten years, the country could have been crushed by the economic crisis. Figures, zeros are silent. They don't say anything. Maybe the country was hit by the economic crisis, and now everyone gets this much. Prices did change because of the monsters. But there was no crisis, the market grew. Alice showed him a 10-year comparison of real estate market prices. More than convincing, quadrupling in size in 12 years, Hyun Woo's jaw dropped. Even if the real estate is expensive, he will easily buy it because he is entitled to 10 billion for the contract, caressed Alice's ears. 
Moreover, upon completion of the contract, you can conclude it with Nova doubling the payments. She poured honey. Ten times two, twenty, counted Hyunwoo. Of course, the contract implies obligations as well. Part of mining the dungeons and the labyrinth, the girl added. But he'll get a bigger share, smiled the fox. She almost got the cheese. Yet she, Hyunwoo, did not hold back suspicion. The association's information department does not offer contracts. Cat eyes gleamed. She came as a guild recruiter, Alice said. In order to protect the interests of hunters, they are prohibited from signing contracts before they leave the dormitory. The girl rubbed her hands together contentedly, the fish biting, saying in a low voice that the contract could be postponed. But Hyunwoo had made up his mind. He wasn't going to join the guild from the beginning and easily discarded the contract. He didn't want to join the guild, so he refused her offer. Alice staggered and took it as a joke at first, but Yunwoo stood his ground. This completely confused the manager, and she didn't know how to respond. The self-assured hunter reiterated his desire to remain a loner. The world works on the principle of give and take, he thought when he got back to the hostel. For ten billion, he'll be asked to do a bunch of unwanted chores that he'll drown in. A mountain of empty packets of chips has piled up under the bed. No such chips in the towers. Hyun Wu wanted a quiet, unhurried life, no need for unnecessary hassle. He'll only do what he wants to do when he wants to do it. Do Hyun Wu's words mean that he doesn't want to be a hunter? Alice asked him. But a hunter can also be a loner, the experienced player replied to the girl. She looked at him doubtfully. Being a loner was for experienced hunters. A novice could do little in the maze without a team. To this, Hyun Wu could only grin. He could definitely do it, the player said afterward. In reality, it's not as simple as he thinks, Alice replied. The manager asked to call the number on the business card if Hyun Wu changed his mind, but the hunter just brushed it off. The player lay dejected. He had wasted a lot of time. Had he learned of the free hunters sooner, he would have gone home to bed. Now he was so angry he couldn't sleep properly. Hyun Wu picked up the list of invitations from the other guilds. A thick stack, but a wasted effort, he thought. Three names seemed familiar to him, as if from a past life. They met five days later at a top Japanese restaurant. As Hyun Wu ate, he couldn't get used to what he saw. He wasn't eating lunch by himself, and he couldn't get used to what he saw in front of him. He looked at the vaguely familiar faces and hardly recognized them. Hyun Wu stared at them oblivious of politeness. He had left his social skills in the tower. Quan Seo was the same age as Han Wu, but now he looked like a grown-up uncle, though just as cheerful. Crying high school senior Shi Ken became an unflappable, handsome man like a pop idol. Little Seo Yeon, who went to middle school, has become even cuter. Hyun Wu poked his finger like a gimmick. It's Kim Shi Hyun, the hermit said. The one up to level 50 was always crying, Hyun Wu recalled. On the 14th floor... Seo Yeon saw a spirit, Hyun Woo said, but the girl interrupted him. After confirming their identities with shared memories, Hyun Woo returned to the delicious sushi. He had lived without it for twelve years. But what about that incident on the seventieth floor, Shike objected. Had Hyun Woo forgotten how they caught the mermen? Hunter kept whining that he wanted sushi, and one day they came across a tribe of fish people. Taking the knife from Kwan Seo, Hyun Wu cut off the tail of the merman and made a salty slicing from it. Even then, the friends realized that Hyun Wu would become a legend, and they later learned that he was living quite a good life. Hyun Wu got worried and asked again what other legends. He's famous, said Seo Yeon, even on TV they showed your weirdness, confirmed her words Shi Hyun. A shadow of anxiety slid across Hyun Wu's face at these thoughts. He came to dread his concept games being shown on TV, because he had no idea at all which ones were which. There were a lot of them, silly and ridiculous oddities. A naked sweep game where he pretended to be a crazy exhibitionist. Gollum's game, which he implemented from scratch, inflicting terror on all surrounding players. However, the most popular was the part where he killed bosses while dancing, and the part where he jumped from the first floor to the tenth floor. Hen Wu sighed in relief. The world didn't remember all the craziness he had done, and he easily confessed what he had done. He danced like a limp disco dancer, deaf in both ears. Even the monsters were stumped by his crazy antics.
His friends listened intently to the story from the tower where he had wandered for so long. Hyunwoo paused at the delicious sushi weighing his words. It was a flavor he'd missed for so many years that he'd managed to forget it. He'd just tried stuff, he told his friends. He'd had a rough time in the tower, but it was all behind him now. He punched the 10th floor ceiling out of boredom by simply jumping up. Even during the test, it was obvious that Hyun Wu was a monster. And after this story, Quan Seo was more convinced. Gritting his heart, the unwilling hermit remembered everything he had been through. This was how he became stronger. One of his followers had left the tower earlier, Hyun Wu suddenly remembered. For a while, he lived between the 50th and 60th floors. There was one guy who had fallen behind the others, wounded, weak, easy prey. Hyun Wu put on a show. At first, he was even mistaken for a monster. Does he want to survive? The mad hermit asked the wounded lad. He became his mentor and promised to guide him in everything. Then Hyun Wu went crazy and created a martial art and took a student to develop it. He was inspired by the plot of one manhua, where the main character was imprisoned, and there the truth was revealed to him, which helped him escape. And then Hyun Wu thought he should try the same thing, madness being his middle name. He had his student balance with bowls of water in fighting stances. Gave the student unsupportable weights as training equipment. He rebuked when a student couldn't hit rocks with his bare hands and talked nonsense about chakras like a true martial artist. However, all he really did was catch his disciple when he escaped from the unbearable hardships, for which Hen Wu repented, then he overreacted. The mad hermit was glad he wore the mask back then, certainly wouldn't want to meet his apprentice in this life. He came back to reality and asked his friends what had been going on in the world all these long years. They were just talking about this and that like good old friends. Late that night, he returned to the dormitory, tired of sitting around, weaned on socializing. Lying on the bed, he called up the status window to check on him again. Age reset to zero, gone were the limits to the growth of abilities he'd pumped to the max in the tower. The broken curse item was still hanging at the bottom of the screen. A knock on the door interrupted his study. Hen Wu turned around to the door. An elderly dormitory guard came to him and told him that someone wanted to meet with Hyun Wu. The guard said someone from the Ares Guild wanted to see him. Hyun Wu immediately brushed it off, but the guard said he had already promised to call him. The frightened elderly man asked to understand him and not to refuse. The player decided to deal with it right away, since Ares would keep pestering him anyway. He agreed and went to the first floor of the dormitory. The first floor had a well-furnished reception room. Two gangsters from the look of it showed up to negotiate with him, one mustachioed, the other bald. Hunter immediately informed them that he wasn't going to join the guild as he had previously. Usati held out his business card to Hyun Wu and introduced himself like an important person. Had the young hunter thought of everything? Asked the mustachioed geezer afterward. If Hyun Wu doesn't join their guild, there will be consequences, said the brash gangster. He hinted that a rookie hunter wouldn't be able to develop properly. Someone else in Hyun Wu's shoes would definitely tense up hearing that, but not a crazy player. Kang Ben openly blackmailed Hyun Wu by saying that he wouldn't experience similar hardships if he joined the guild. Hyun Wu quickly realized what the mustachioed man with the gangster's behavior was referring to. Don't threaten South Central, the mad hunter said. The bald boogeyman behind, already ripping at the guy, but Ben's cockroach mustache stopped him. Realizing the guy's final decision, the bandit began to cover himself with the entire Ares guild. The mutts that can only intimidate people in a pack, replied Hyun Wu. He already knew everything about their guild. At dinner with friends, they told Hyun Wu that you need a ticket to enter the dungeons. It's like these dangerous places have become an amusement park. The Ares Guild had taken over half of the rookie dungeons in the country, Shiken said. The guild was frittering away money left and right, buying up all the dungeons good for farming, little Seo Yan said. Some newcomers are forced to buy expensive tickets from Ares and join them, giving away most of the profits, his friends told him. Strong heckled, ended the languid negotiations, and real dialogue began. <laughs> Ares people are everywhere, and Han Wu should watch his language the mustachioed man told him smugly. The table flew away like a piece of fluff, the bandit tossing it with one hand. 
The bald man threw the table into the wall, causing it to shatter. Baldi got an A rank for basic physical skills, but he still didn't reach Saitama. Do you think you can defeat him? asked the mustachioed man, to which Hen Wu only smirked. Hyun Wu sighed at what kind of scum he was dealing with. The assholes were furious at his reaction. The brat had gone ballistic. Here it comes, said the mad hunter, pulling out a slap of doom. Hitting with his hands is nasty, so he uses a slipper, Hyun Wu informed the gangsters. Baldi gritted his teeth. There wasn't a rookie who had behaved like this in front of him, a rank A hero. He really wants to die, decided the bald man, and struck first. He squealed like a slaughtered boar and made a scary face, and immediately snatched a slipper of fate at the brazen bread cutter. Hyun Wu didn't hit hard, he didn't want to become a killer, and carefully controlled his strength. The slipper slammed hard into his face, knocking the bald man out instantly. With a bullet, he flew into the wall, punching it with a terrible rumble. The cockroach whiskers stirred, but it was too late to think of escape. Baldi had his head securely drilled into the wall like a battering ram. In front of the hapless bandit's eyes, his main argument in any negotiation had just been nullified. Just let him yell something, said Hyun Wu, holding the remains of the slipper in his hands. Of course, Khan Ben saw that very video of the practice test. Who hasn't seen it? It made a lot of noise. Of course, he was aware that Hyun Wu was stronger than he looked at first glance, but he was still a small fry for the guild even though he's a rookie now and thought he was the strongest. What would happen if he saw real power, the mustachioed man pondered. The power and influence gathered by the Ares Guild will bring a newcomer to his knees. The muscles of an ancient god, a Hercules in the flesh, the bald man overwhelmed with his mere appearance. At least that's how it was supposed to be, the mustachioed bandit pondered. It was meant to be, it always was, but not this time. So when the hell did things go wrong, the mustachioed man wondered. It's impossible to do that without magic, the gangster told himself. And the most horrifying part was that the kid has a second slipper as well. Hyun Wu inexorably approached the bandit like inevitability itself. He crowded the mustachioed man until he unknowingly pressed himself into the wall. A terrifying slipper was approaching. Even half of this slipper is enough to break a person's backbone. The words stuck in his throat, his former importance evaporating without a trace. What he hates most is being threatened, Hyun Wu said. Clench your teeth tighter, asshole, the mad hunter smirked and shoved a slipper right in the mustachioed blackmailer's face. The starry sky sparkled with a scattering of lights over the night city. Because of the destruction, Hen Wu stopped by Shin Ken. The latter reprimanded him for the violent rampages and destruction. Doesn't know the measure at all, the people of Ari's very cruel reprimanded Shiken, a homeless friend. And what's cruel about them surprised the hunter as he ate the delicious strawberries. No one touches the Ares Guild because they are terribly vengeful, Shin Ken warned. Hen Wu wondered. Might not let you join another guild, the loyal comrade continued. Or grabbed quietly in the labyrinth. And that's what Shin Ken was doing. He might even be killed, the friend worried, because there were no witnesses in the maze. The world has become more cruel, said Hen Wu while carelessly eating strawberries. The crazy hermit is who has become cruel, replied Shiken. Hyun Wu could join his guild or live freely as before, Shuken suggested. But the idea of freedom will have to be put on hold for now, Hyun Wu remarked while eating a strawberry. What happened this time, Shiken asked his homeless friend. There are things to do, the mad hermit blurted out, and asked if Shin Ken had heard about Adaron's research center. For years, he was tormented by the question of why he was the only one who couldn't leave the tower. How much doubt and anger accumulated that drove him to madness. Who created the tower? Why did they need to imprison him for a whole twelve years? He wanted to know their secrets and find the creators. Shuken asked why the hunter was interested in Adaron's dungeon. Hyun Wu asked to tell everything he knows about the place. A door and research center, it's in a hard-to-pronounce area, and it's a C-rank dungeon. It's rumored to be great for newbie development. The monsters in it are just as stupid as the tower. But why do you want to go to that dungeon? Shin Ken asked Hyun Wu. But he evasively replied that he had something to do there. Shin Ken warned his friend that he couldn't get in, much to Hen Wu's surprise. The Ares Guild appropriates old dungeons for themselves, and Adaron is one of them, the friend informed. Hyun Wu was outraged. What right do they have to do this, and where does the government look? There's no monopoly law, he continued indignantly. 
but Shin Ken reminded him that governments can't influence the world of hunters. Hunters are out of state. They can even get away with murder if it's completely underground and no one moves. You can't investigate in these areas as it's too dangerous due to the monsters inside. It's all being written off as an accident, a real outrage, Hyun Woo noted. For the state, Ares is a profitable growing company that pays its taxes, they won't meddle in the hunter's business and influence them because of that. But what about getting there secretly? Hyun Woo asked. Shin Ken warned him that the entrance is guarded by Ares and they are not sleeping on guard. Then I'll get in another way, Hen Wu reported back. He was clearly up to something crazy. Always cautious, Shea Ken suspected something wrong. He might just break through the passage, the mad hermit reassured him. Shin Ken warned that this would definitely make him an enemy of the entire guild. For a moment, Hyun Wu hesitated, but he was already their enemy, so it was okay. There was a meeting going on in the Ares Guild, discussing the Pedo Guild, which had unexpectedly interfered greatly with Ares' business in China. How long will this delay the guild? the director asked. China's delay of five months, Russia and Japan are next in line for development. Listen to the report by director Huk Siong Wu. He doesn't care how long it takes for the plan to work, he told his subordinates. The main thing is to do it faster than the others, director Sung Wu insisted. It's important not to be the fastest, not to be the slowest, he instructed. The director let them go, satisfied with the report he had gotten. Director Sung Woo finished with one case and immediately started on another. He was given Kim Hyun Woo's skill chart in his hand, which the director had asked about earlier. Based on the video from the Learning Zone, they created a spreadsheet using analytics technology. They got their hands on various materials, a video of the second orc wave test. A lot of experts started to analyze it and do the math. Physical data, agility, Physical strength had the highest level. Magic was absent. This department made a mistake, Ares. The guild leader of the guild hesitated at the results. Superintendent Yu byung wook said he also doubted the results in the analysis, but the error could be within one rank. So it's true, Hyuk sung woo agreed, clutching the report sheets. Is he hired? The young guild leader asked with interest. The superintendent started to justify himself, but the head only waved him away. Unexpectedly, he remarked that it was for the best that they hadn't hired Hyun Wu. The superintendent feigned surprise, but the director knew his subordinate understood. If the guild had hired this hunter, its business would be booming. A newbie will do well in dungeons and will develop. And that could be a threat to Hyuk Seong Wu and the guild director's position already. It's like a poisoned apple, looks appetizing, but you choke on it if you take a bite. If they accept him, the guild will collapse from within, the slippery man pondered. Chief Yu Byung left the principal's room and was immediately called out for breaking news. What's up? He asked his subordinate, who was out of breath and had some bad news. Trouble happened in the Adiron dungeon. Yu Ben heard the unexpected news. The weather was sunny on Chongbongsan Mountain, and nothing was looking up on this gentle weather day. At the entrance to the checkpoint, a lone girl tried to get a pass to the dungeon but was denied. A red-haired girl with a bow behind her back was making a pitiful face and to get a pass. The proud watchman taunted her by offering a deadly maze for hunting. No skills or money, the guard continued to sneer. Regardless of her earnest pleas, he leaned toward the girl. His eyes flashed with concern, and he immediately revealed his rotten nature, the kind of position that would be hired for. The jerk shamelessly flirted with the girl in a desperate position and leaned right up to her face. He promised to let her inside if the girl gave him her personal number. She was quite taken aback by such offers. They were interrupted by another strange visitor dressed in a tracksuit and barefoot flip-flops. Uncle, there is no toilet. Go to the forest to do business there, disparagingly sent Hen Wu a pestering idiot. But I don't need to go to the bathroom. I need to go to the dungeon. Hai An Wu pretended to be a simpleton. This place isn't for playing, raged the dumb monkey. There's a dungeon with monsters. He pointed to the ignorant man in front of him. Hyun Wu was not embarrassed in the slightest. He continued walking. He replied that he had come to do his own thing. Or is the monkey so dumb he hasn't realized it yet? He asked the guard. Not only the guard was stunned, but also the poor girl next to him. He looks like a simpleton, talking nonsense, and has clearly confused all sides of the border. That won't do, said Hyun Wu, and reached for his flip-flop.
the astrologers foreshadowed a quick lesson in politeness. The slipper rose upward with significance, as if pointing out people's mistakes and excessive pride. Both guards, the lusty one and his buddy, fell out. What to do with psychos was something they hadn't been taught. Come closer, banders, Hyun Woo beckoned them by waving his flip-flop and grinning bespectacledly. He's really sick, you know, the big guy started, but didn't finish. His rant was cut short by an exhalation. Topka ignited a supernova, writing out an extraordinary lesson in good manners. The first student went for the knockout. He flew so fast past the second guard that he didn't even realize anything. Only his feet flashed. He looked at the friend in the cloud of dust, and at Hyun Wu, the friend, and Hyun Wu, and forgot all the words. Friend lay down to rest, proving once again that hunters are tougher than regular people. An ominous shadow grew behind his back. I wanted to unsubscribe from the courtesy lessons, but it was too late. The guard began to pray involuntarily, and Hyun Wu lamented that he had not calculated his strength. Hey you, he turned to the second guard, who had decided to pretend to be a pole in the hope that it would blow over. I need your clothes, Hyun Wu informed him, classically. Do you want to rest too? asked Hyun Wu, making a scary face worthy of a Baylock demon. Not bad, said Hen Wu, trying on the new clothes. Clean leather boots, shining. A very rare shoe worth five million, mesmerized to lightness, cried the money of the careless poor man. I have a conscience after all, said Hyun Wu, looking at the poor watchman's bare feet, and generously gave him his flip-flops of doom, just like that, just off the bartender's shoulder. The guard fell into a solid sludge of dejection as Hyun Wu left. The girl decided to go as well. When did life take a wrong turn, wondered the hapless watchman, while his friend was peacefully snoozing in the stroller. The Seoul Guild headquarters was in an uproar when Seo Yoon found out that Hyun Woo had just been released to Adorn's lab for no reason. They didn't let him go, but he left. Shin Ken justified himself to his grumpy friend, but she had once been a cute little girl. He expected to have a cup of coffee in peace, but the girl nagged him with her angelic voice. She was worried about the crazy hermit as if he was her boyfriend, Shin Ken noticed. But the girl dismissed his barbs. What could he do when their antisocial hermit friend prefers to act alone? She realized the absurdity of the position of having to look after a savage. Still, the situation is not easy. Now Hyun Wu is feuding with an entire guild, not the last one in the rankings and very violent. But what is is, said Shin Ken, clutching his cup of coffee, he himself was not thrilled. In the past, Hyun Wu had always had a calm temperament and acted with poise. He was a rock to lean on. But it wasn't always like that. Sometimes life backed him into a corner. They always looked at his broad back, for he took care of them like a true leader. However, everything was changing. The calm, confident Hyun Wu would disappear as soon as his enemies got in his way. Then the madman in him awakened and all his bad temper showed itself on his enemies. The friends sighed heavily. In twelve years, Hyun Wu's character had become even tougher, so they understood why he was like this. But should we worry about someone who vaporizes rocks with his bare hands? The friends reasoned while Hyun Wu strolled around the lab. Rather worth worrying about his enemies, Hyun Wu walked through the dark, empty corridors completely unconcerned. Friends reassured themselves because there was little they could do. His feet moved easily and freely in these polished to a shine shoes, especially pleasant since he usually used flip flops. Next time I'll also bring pants, Hyun Woo thought. Sometimes it's very useful to have enemies for your prosperity. If his words are true, Shin Ken continued, remembering his conversation with Hyun Woo yesterday about the Ari's Guild. What do you mean, Seo Un wondered if he knows something about Hyun Woo's abilities? the girl thought. Shinken looked at her conspiratorially, pondering whether or not to tell his perky friend. The news caused the girl to wonder if it was true. She couldn't believe her ears. The lab looked abandoned, darkness all around, dusty suspended everywhere instead of air, and only the grunting of monsters broke the silence. Even the scientist monsters had fangs, albeit small ones. One such wandered the empty corridors in search of prototypes, the Chimera Goblin and Robocop shook a surgical scalpel, carping in an extraterrestrial tongue. Prick who, prick who, prick. 
The boss of this level wandered alone, scowling fearfully. He lit his way with his headlamp eyes. Several hunters were watching this monster. The Ares Guild let it live because it didn't bring in any money. In the room next to the boss, the three of them were figuring out what to do next. Two guys were waiting to see what the masked girl would decide. The guy in the rugby jacket insisted on catching the boss, yet they paid a bribe to get into this lab. The girl with brown hair doubted if their skills were top-notch, they didn't have to go to such lengths. Helmet Head thought that the strength should be enough. The boss has a weak attack and a good defense. It won't stand up in a long battle. But the girl leader didn't want to take such an unreasonable risk and procrastinated too many variables. But then putting aside those heavy thoughts he prepared for battle, our motto is dementia and courage, the trio really wanted to raise their level. They were ready to jump on the lone target like a street gopota, but suddenly they noticed the uninvited guest. Who is it, they wondered. Neither to give nor take a man did not look like a hunter. Sportswear was not in the top of the common equipment. The unexpected guest stood in the shadow of the boss completely unconcealed. He looked completely open and confident, or just plain crazy. The boss wasn't known for his high intelligence. Looks like he bought his diploma, too. He noticed Hyun Wu and nastily squeaked out something about tests. Maybe an enema to warm up, or five liters of blood for tests to pick up, mumbled the zombie robocop in his whispery voice. In the distant past, when Hyun Wu was still a child, he ended up in an orphanage. Don't be mean. Don't show your weakness to anyone was admonished by his older hapless brother. Also, obey your teachers, he let go of empty formalities to a child who was just beginning to understand life. And don't say too much, he continued the meaningless conversation, and the boy looked not at all at that and carefully memorized what he saw. Fate treated him cruelly, his parents had just died in a car accident, and his brother had already handed him over to the orphanage, taking the inheritance into his hands. So the boy learned his most important lesson in life. Never trust anyone, expect no good, ask for mercy, and no pity. A zombie pathologist in iron underpants bent over the pathetic little man to abuse him. Some of his unimaginative, incomprehensible devices were clearly shorting out electricity, apparently to make him move faster. Hyun Woo couldn't stand the creepy harassment of a monster who hadn't even finished his honey and interrupted his idle chatter. The monster licked his lips carnivorously. But it was unlikely that the dopey head understood the language of words. After all, there was only the name of science in this place. Only to get a light kick from Hyunwoo in his stupid face. The trio of brave hunters sat back with goofy faces, having just had their entire adventure come to an end before it began. Hyunwoo landed softly on the concrete floor of the lab without a single shoe getting hurt. Like a real action hero, he didn't turn around at the explosion of the guts of a stupid monster who was only capable of talking pseudo-scientific nonsense. The hunters slowly drifted to the cold floor from the brutality they saw, glad they weren't in the monster's shoes. One is ready, muttered Hyun Wu. The time is next, in the forest village. He tapped the status window. The trio of braves left the hideout and went out to look at the remains of the dreaded boss. But looking closely, the girl was able to recognize the mysterious hunter. It's hard not to recognize the person in the first trends of the network. Now in the light, they could recognize an experienced player. In the deep basement of the Ares Guild, two important guild bigwigs met. And what's the occasion you showed up for? asked Wu Zhongmyong, the former head of the administrative department. It was about a special report. Yu Ben held out a folder of documents to his colleague. A whole two rank A skills, Wu Chong exclaimed. And this from a newly hatched tower rookie. That's right, he interjected, looking over Hyun Wu's detailed file. The estimate couldn't be 100%. Perhaps the target is even stronger. Strong, frowned the head of the department. Not just strong, but a real monster, he concluded. Nothing's going to happen, he asked as he swiped the folder at his throat, smirking sinisterly. We were told to just do some damage, Yu Ben countered. However, no body, no case. No one will ask if the target stumbles and falls on the knife. Isn't it great to get rid of this nuisance, Wu Chong asked. This guy brazenly broke into Ares' dungeon, beat up the guards, 
and that's a very unhealthy precedent. That's right, confirmed Yu Ben. Because of Hyun Wu, the reputation of the entire guild might suffer. We are not shameful wolves. Oh, no need to worry, remarked Wu Chong, and smugly grinned. With Hyun Wu's skills, it would be hard to just harm him, he laughed. It's lucky that the guild leader is busy with China, so we can quietly deal with the upstart and get the recognition of the leader, Wu Chong rejoiced. Having resolved this issue, the conspirators headed towards the elevator. Are we sending people to China? Yu Byung asked. It's all because of the Pedo Guild. They were created two years ago and have already squeezed half of China's dungeons. Their head left just four years ago, but the tower has turned her into a true monster, and her followers are incredibly strong. But the most surprising thing is that she is ranked fifth in the world rankings. No way the spirit of Qing Shi Huang has revived in her. No one knows anything. There was a girl with a skull tattoo standing in the incense smoke. The guild can't waste resources, so the nail that came out must be hammered down while all the forces are directed to China, Wu Chong remarked. A special specialist is needed. What a disgusting face, Hyun Wu squinted into the selfies of the smartphone camera. What technology had come to, he marveled as he sat in Shin Ken's living room, happy as a child. A bird is about to fly out. He clicked his camera for the hundredth time, filming everything. All the digital novelties were outlandish to a hermit with twelve years of experience. There was a kid and no kid. Hun Wu learned about games, videos, music, and risked drowning forever in the world of digital networks. The Soul Guild owns the Forest Village Dungeon, Shin Ken informed him. But his friend was no longer able to return. The magic of the internet was stronger. Gega Gi, I'll have the best farm, whispered the mad hermit Hyun Wu to himself. But there won't be a boss there, informed Shin Ken to the teenager in front of him. The information came with a giraffe delay, about seven seconds until the meaning of what was said reached the gaming nerd. What do you mean the boss is gone, he shrieked. What do you mean caught a few weeks ago? The new information was changing the whole matter considerably. In the tower, monsters appear every day, regular and bosses, no matter how many you kill them, Shin Ken explained. But the dungeons of the world outside the tower, other normal monsters are also revived. To infinity, farm don't want to. But bosses, unlike mobs, have a full social package, paid vacation, pension, and days off on vacations. In short, they need time. How long would it take, Hyun Wu asked, when he was told that it would take a month, he barely got foam out of his mouth. But he was lucky, according to the schedule. The monster was coming out of vacation in a couple three days, so it would be possible for him to pay a visit, Shin Ken informed. But what about the visible swamp? Hyun Wu asked. But there was no information on that object. The swamps belonged to the Ares Guild. Shin Ken offered to look for better information, but Hyun Wu had already gone into his own mind to have his majesty get so worked up over a monster, no way in hell. He plopped down to hold the couch with his back again when Shin Ken suggested he register with the association. The equipment was of little interest to the mad hermit, who won even naked, but at the word money he triggered Pavlov's conditioned reflex. Turns out you can get money if you get tested every two to three months and prove your rank. Hearing such wonderful news, the broke bum, the hermit leader got very excited and was ready to go in the middle of the night for a performance review. In the morning, they went to the place where Hunter's abilities were measured. A large building in the center of the city spoke of the high status of Hunters in society. The floor of the building was slapped with the legendary slaps of fate by the great hermit who had finally decided to stop being a dependent. They walked into the association building like real tough guys. It was hard not to recognize them. But the dumbass in the reception area did it. But it's a credit to Hyun Wu's appearance which hasn't changed since he left the tower and is still as wild as ever. Come check in, he asked the duty question to the strange guy in the suit and got the answer, Kim hyun -woo. The name had traveled around the world and sounded very familiar, so the tester immediately asked if it was the one who had returned from the tower 12 years later. That's right, confirmed the sucker, thinking about how to get the money for the registration as soon as possible. The association official frowned. This was definitely the man, and they had already asked about him today. 
That weird blonde guy who looks a little off was asking about Kim Hyun Woo, a yokel with nothing special about him but with so many rumors and noise about him, thought the tester as he looked at the hunter. After confirming the formalities, he handed the shaggy-haired hermit a strange object and pointed to a projector in the middle of the room. The object looked as if the demon had been shoved under a press and turned into a compact cube with an eye sticking out of it. The principle is simple. Once it was touched, it showed a status window and all the characteristics of the hunter who held it. Hian Wu took hold of the demonic cube and the projector opposite lit up, making a measurement. At rank maximum pondered the tester as they waited for the counts. Maybe B+, plus, since he is so famous after all, there is no smoke without fire. But what was his surprise when he saw the result? That's it, asked the bored hermit. Give me my money already, thought he. But suddenly he heard a suspicious noise. So lighted was the fuse of the satyr. The tester screamed like a berserker on his way to Valhalla, Yun Wu barely dodging the slobbering spray. How is that possible? yelled the entire association building. News spread like hotcakes with potatoes. The world wide web of rumors was already in full swing discussing the experienced player. The news stunned and overturned all notions of normalcy. All of Hyun Wu's rank A skills, except for magic, are something to envy. Hyun Wu was riding in the car and listened to the video of the reactions to his testing. But what was even more surprising was that they had barely left the building and the rumors had already spread everywhere. It's no big deal, Shin Ken remarked, clutching the polygonal steering wheel. Because his friend is a celebrity, people are sleeping and seeing to find out a little more about him. Especially since Hyun Wu had recently made a mess of the Ares dungeons, turning the place upside down. You don't care about that, but Shin Ken hesitated as he turned to his friend, clearly worried about him. The Ares Guild had definitely made inquiries and got wind of everything, including today's inspection. They definitely wouldn't leave Hyun Wu alone. Be careful, he said, and wanted to add dope head, but was too well mannered. Ares really are dangerous people. Shin Ken continued, but not getting an answer, he became indignant. Instead, the reclusive Hyun Wu chuckled nastily, as befits a madman, distracting the driver from driving. He's definitely got eighth grade syndrome. Hyun Wu disregarded the rules of the road and shoved the screen in Shin Ken's face. In the video, there was a loading in game that appeared when going through the dungeons. Hyun Wu played the dungeons because he couldn't live without them anymore. Look at what a retarded pose and a strange aura chortled Shin Ken's unserious friend. In the video, there was Shim Ken. But crazy hermit Hyun Wu didn't realize it right away. He continued to bitch at his friend without realizing it, making fun of the fighting techniques. Shin Ken, who had long since become an adult, could not get used to his friend being a bit detached. He said again that it was him in the video. Ah, the gears in the shaggy-haired hermit's head rattled uncomfortably. There was an awkward silence. Me and my friend are retarded, Shin Ken thought. But what can I take from the wretched? Hyun Woo still didn't know what to say, so he decided to pretend to be a mannequin. And it was a miracle that he didn't forget his speech while playing the role of Rapunzel. The silence lengthened. Hyun Woo strained to remember what normal people do in such situations maybe dancing naked and diffusing the situation. Then it hit him. He should just change the subject and decided to ask his friend a question. Rubric ask a useless question on the screen and you don't do anything at all, Hyun Wu asked. He asked why Shiken wasn't doing anything even though he was also the head of the guild. Teaching a fool only spoils a fool, Shin Ken thought, and asked a counter question. What made him think that the guild leader might not be busy? Even now he was wasting precious free time on a homeless hermit without a residence permit, but he didn't seem to appreciate it. The empty corridors of the Ares Guild office gave off a chill as if it were a king's palace. Yuben was in a gloomy confusion. News came from the hunter testing center. A real monster, now it's clear why the head wants to deal with him, confirmed Wu Zheng. Yubing felt the tension. It was constricting in a way that could bite off a crowbar. Wu Yong thought the same thing, but wondered aloud about his colleagues' thoughts on the dangerous business. Don't worry, Wu Chong said. I'm worried myself, but we will definitely deal with this threat, he grinned gloatingly. He called out a name and did so with significance, Xin Zhong Gang. 
Yu Bing was distracted from his heavy thoughts and interrogated excitedly. An S-ranked hunter from China, just as high-ranked as Hyun Wu, but much more dangerous. Now that cursed Hyun Wu will chew the ground and beg for mercy, the bandit smirked evilly. It was a moonlit night in the dungeon of the forest village. The friends had descended here without any problems, for it was run by Shin Ken's guild. They timed it perfectly to get here a minute before the boss showed up. There's enough for one hit anyway. They took an assistant with them to carry everything they needed. How useful to have a servant, Hyun Wu thought, who lived like a hermit. They had drilled deep into the forest. Without the low-ranked guide kid, Hyun Wu would have to tear down the entire forest to get out of it. However, they were not alone here, though they did not know it and walked on without lurking. The man with good teeth so far smiled while he could. Hyun Wu once again showed his attention to people. After half an hour of walking together, he asked who it was with them. The kid introduced himself as Park Ga Moon, but he's just a simpleton. What can I take from him? He's Frodo Beggin's faithful comrade, Shin Ken explained. We'll collect the loot from the monster and do all the dirty work. If you catch a boss, you can get items from it and get money for them. Money? It clicked in the penniless hermit's mind. A fortune for the boss. That's a lot of money to spend. Shin Ken stopped thinking about how to tell his friend gently that he was a bum and looked accordingly. Normal people don't walk around in gym shoes and barefoot flip-flops. Young Samius Gamgee pulled out his phone and asked for a celebrity photo. It was as if Hyun Wu had once again discovered the presence of the person beside him. He basically didn't care when it was taken down, but he still asked what it was for. Park Ga Moon started telling the sitter about video hosting, advertising, views, and earnings. All right, gave the go-ahead to Hyun Wu including the player's abilities in the Mac level monopoly. You to me eight, fair and square to everyone, I counted. The company headed onward, with Shin Ken and Hyun Wu walking in front and Park Ga Moon broadcasting. Shin Ken held out a folded piece of paper to the hermit. Wu Hyun laid it out trying to figure out what he was looking at, eh? How long ago he graduated, he thought. The forest village is labyrinthine, and it's hard to wander around. Hyun Wu scrutinized the map, he had skipped geography class for nothing. He looked more closely in the dim moonlight. What's north or south from above, he thought. The map looked like a satellite image, but where would the dungeons get satellites from? Hyun Wu wondered. He was twisting it this way and that, but he was too shy to ask because they'd call him stupid. That's the problem, the hermit thought. Screw it. Wu Hyun just threw a useless piece of paper. I'll figure it out somehow, he thought. He just walked over to the tree and figured out the direction the boss should be. Hyun Wu smiled, anticipating easy money. He turned to their companion. Park Moon wanted to say his name, but didn't dare. He was a shy guy after all. Get a good shot of everything, the greedy hermit of no fixed abode told him. Still, Park Ga didn't quite understand what this strange man would do. Hyun Wu stood up for the punch. You have to do everything spectacularly in one take. A hard work of professional YouTube stars. He focused and launched his trademark blast of searing plasma. The ionized gas around his fist flashed with a sheaf of blue sparks, his fist instantly heating the air to thousands of degrees. He took a wider swing to make it flare up bigger and brighter, which you can't do for show. With you program evening loggers, the tree in front of him all covered in fire, the shockwave went up, splitting it down the middle. Park Gamun saw this for the first time, the bright light of the flashes blinding his eyes. The tree in the clearing vaporized, along with the ground beneath it and everything else within striking range, some ogre caught off guard. The guy wanted to say that it was unheard of to work so hard on the first day back from vacation, but his toothy mouth was ill-suited for that. Even the experienced Shinken was impressed by such a demonstration, what to say about their porter. He almost flopped on his butt in surprise. But you gotta hand it to the kid. He held up well in the face of some real monsters. We continue with Hyun Woo's program. Please subscribe and like it. In one hit, Hyun Woo cleared the way to the boss. Screw the scary geography girl. He can handle it without the cards. The disgruntled dungeon employee waved his hands indignantly. The southern temperament was telling. These people didn't understand anything at all.
Hyun Woo made a point of light, once again not sparing his flip-flops. In one motion, he soared toward the bifurcated head of the ogre. The latter waved back with a cry of ruffians depriving him of his sight, but no one understood him. Free kick delivery arrived. Hyun Woo was approaching the ogre. It landed deftly on his shoulder, much to the honest dungeon director's dismay, for the guest could have fallen and hurt himself. A powerful kick rejected his polite address. A supernova erupted from his blow. Ogre collapsed on his back. A sick day for sure. The master of writing people and not only sanitarium certificates landed on top. Newcomer Park Ga Moon barely had time to point and sharpen his camera. A true hero hermit, forester, hunter, and just a good man, Hyun Wu proudly flaunted the body of the unfortunate dungeon director. Park Ga Moon was crying with happiness. He seemed to be feeling sympathy for the homeless hermits with insane strength. In the shade of the trees, sitting on a branch like a hen on a perch, a proud and lonely representative of the feathered species watched them. In the Ares Guild office, an hour earlier, there was an atmosphere of excitement and optimism. Are you sure you checked everything? asked Wu Chong, his late guest. Shin Chong Gang sat at the table like an ill-mannered idiot with no manners. He threw his feet on the table as if there was no other way to sit underneath. Sean Gunn replied in agreement. What is he doing there? thought Wu Jung. Why he is sitting like that? Is he ventilating himself such a bastard? But he kept silent. He really is a monster of legends, Sean Gunn confirmed, smugly smirking. Hyun Wu only had physical abilities, no magic, which was surprising. However, where there is strength, there is weakness. There are no invulnerable, continued Sean Gan. Recognizing his weaknesses is incredibly easy, he remarked with a smug look. Wu Chong smirked as well, realizing where this wild hunter with no manners was going. They knew exactly where he would appear next. It would be their dungeon, the visible swamp. The creepy and cocky type Sean Gunn jumped up from the table in one motion. Looks like he's really been practicing it for a long time. He's going to go ahead and get everything ready. Birds were chirping. A light breeze was blowing. Leaves were rustling. Nothing was troubling. Hyun Wu went for a walk to the swamp. As usual, he was in no hurry to get anywhere, letting the wind ruffle his bushy hair. And yet he felt strangely threatened, his hermit's intuition making itself felt. He felt a slight vibration in his pocket and didn't immediately realize what it was, after all. He had gotten a phone not too long ago. Surprised he looked at the screen, not many people could contact a lone hermit. Little Seo Yun texted him wanting to know about his plans for today. Hyun Woo sighed. He thought he'd get a phone and have cute girls texting him, but so far, only grumpy girlfriends were texting him. Yet he realized that his friends were worried about him, and they were acting like adults which made Hyun Woo feel like a child. Ares, not Ares, what does it basically matter who and how? After all, it's the great him, Hyun Woo thought. Earlier, when she was sitting in front of him, beautiful, Seo Yeon asked him why he wanted Ares' dungeon. Sinner Hyun Woo is back in reality and out of the internet, but what can you take from a hermit with low social skills? He answered her question evasively. He's got business there, that's all, with his girlfriend. Hyun Woo continued to wriggle out of it like a frying pan, but he was pressured by the frightening power of the woman's charm. It would piss Ares off the least, he replied, grabbing his strawberry smoothie, not knowing how else to dodge the direct questioning. C.O.N. made a cat-like cute face and looked at him worriedly. She was left to sigh, her friend was completely impenetrable. A good quality in combat, but difficult to communicate. Still, she decided to press him for a straight answer. He was bothering her too much. Of course, she knew he wasn't someone to worry about, but you couldn't be sure of everything. The new video from Forest Village confirmed his strength. He's definitely not a weakling who can be hurt by any passerby. Sitting in front of her was a highly troubled specimen of a recluse who easily looked for problems on his own head, and they found him. In any case, be sure to act quickly, little Seo Yoon instructed him with her thin but firm voice. Visible Swamp is an A-rank dungeon, and it's great for going unnoticed and avoiding unnecessary risk. On the day the boss appears, Ares will probably conduct a raid to kill him, Seo Yeon continued. Hyun Woo listened to her attentively. Still, she managed to get his attention. He still saw her as the schoolgirl he had cleared the tower with. He thanked her nonchalantly, 
as if he wasn't about to break into an enemy base where a hundred dangers might await him. He had told her not to worry. However, things had gone downhill from the very first minutes. A guild guard stood in front of him with a Chinese broadsword at his side, and he was frankly shaking with fear, or perhaps he had already gotten a little lighter. The guard shouted loudly. When dogs are afraid, they also bark loudly to call out to their master, Hyun Wu thought. Seo Yeon haunted him even in his memories, and she had told him not to get caught by Ares' guards. How tiring it is, Hyun Wu said. The same thing every time, everyone shouting loudly and flying off one pitch. No fun. Couldn't they have reacted any differently? Offered tea, asked politely. So no, the same thing. Wait, who's coming? Resented Hyun Wu. And then you get into a fight even though you know you can't win, Hyun Wu continued. You can't learn. A samurai has no purpose, only a way. What do you realize? Ari's guard thought, and got terribly angry. He would have shouted something harsher, but he wasn't allowed to, and rushed to the attack. The plight of Ari's simple guards was hard, but they were paid for it. See a bright flash. It's the light of shattered hopes and dreams. Hyun Wu's fist is back in action. The road of adventure once led him, and then he met Hyun Wu, and only a light puff of smoke wafted in the wind. What a nuisance, Hyun Wu thought. I told them I was on business, and they gave me a pass, but I gave them a pass. Hyun Wu sighed heavily. What kind of an organization this Ares was, no pity for his subordinates at all. His foot fell through the soft soil, the quagmire was just around the corner. He walked right out into the center of the swamp and looked around. The boss was definitely nearby. Amber slit eyes took predatory aim at the new prey, a lone defenseless target, so close you could smell his scent. The predator rushed into the attack like a revved up mechanism. A veritable death machine on weighty short legs will emerge from the swamp. It raised a heap of splashing water and mud all around and rattled powerfully in the soft ground. Hyun Wu stopped, his ploy worked, you should pretend to be an easy prey, all the monsters are yours, and will rush to attack. The boss appeared in front of him, a huge ancient fossil with the boring name of Mega Alligator. Hyun Wu recognized the beast, since Seo Yan made sure to tell him about it in detail. However, all Hyun Wu remembered was the cost of skin and teeth, which meant that the monster should be caught whole without damaging the skin. So much for a lonely hermit's pension, Hyun Wu thought. He let out his trademark smirk and activated his righteous nagging mode. Such blows the dinosaur fossil hasn't seen since the Chicxulub asteroid that wiped out the dinosaurs. The ancient lizard immediately became despondent, deflated, and skeptical. The hunt was not going well at once. Quickly kill it and skin it, informed the future bag, animal lover Hyun Wu. But the walking antiquity was not going to give up. He had experienced more than that in his long annals. You can always employ tactical retreat, not to be confused with panic flight. Hyun Wu instantly reacted. A valuable resource can't be let go. He had already thought of what kind of wallet he would have, and boots. He quickly and firmly grabbed the fleeing lizard. Time to make money. The crocodile had two tails at once, so holding it was even easier. For a few moments, it turned into a hole digger. Carousel, carousel, it's a joy for us, hummed Hyun Wu joyfully with a demonic grin. The crocodile remembered the dinosaurs as they fell and were replaced by weak rodents, but when, when, say, everything went wrong, perplexed him. Having experienced an overload of nine, McGalligator realized that he would not be an astronaut. It was too much for him. With all his might, he flew into the rock, raising a cloud of dust around him. It's good to lie here thought the lizard. Maybe he will be taken for a fossilized rock, sent to the museum to rest. But on the other hand, what this Pleistocene miscarriage allows himself, the crocodile remembered his cold-blooded pride. Die not twice, said the ancient warrior. He scorned death, squeezing out a stingy tear. I have lived a good life, which means the end should be bright. The monster went back into battle. An aura of martial determination enveloped his body a proud warrior for mortal combat. Hyun Wu had no idea that someone else was watching his fight from the outside, waiting for his moment. Sean Gan smirked contentedly. Everything was going exactly as he had planned. 
The crocodile launched its body like a torpedo straight at Hyun Wu. Great, one more round, the real boss always has a second phase, rejoiced the mad hermit. Just as suddenly, an indistinct force pulled him and threw him off balance. Red chains wrapped around his legs like red-hot metal, preventing him from moving. What about the samurai spirit and honor, thought Hyun Wu, but asking the boss to wait was out of the question. That's it, exulted the killer. Sean Gunn, now the bird will be eaten with its feathers. The chains held him as if he had fallen into quicksand. The more he moved, the more elm. Hyun Wu hadn't expected such an attack. The crocodile's jaws were ready to slam down on him like a huge stapler and pierce him. Easy money, Sean Gan was already mentally visualizing how to spend it in the best brothels in the country. He didn't pull away until the very end. Since you can't move your legs, there are hands, Hyun Woo clung to the ground tightly. And just like that, he was able to dodge the torpedo in the alligator's face, its mouth clanked loudly shut. Taking advantage of this moment, the cowardly crocodile jumped into the water. Wait, thought Hyun Woo, what about the crocodile skin boots? And the wallet and the bag, good socializing, he got upset and looked down at his feet. The unknown object was still preventing him from moving his legs, entangling them tightly and digging deeper and deeper. Magical chains, answered the unasked question Sean Gan could now show himself, completely unafraid of his opponent. And what can he do with his power? if he's now sitting miserable with a dirty face. Mud and chains are great for you, said Sean Gunn, smirking. He felt like the master of the situation. Some rude guy again, Hyun Wu thought. Not only did he not say hello, but his bag ran away, so now I'm going to have to skin him. Sean Gunn came down closer, holding the red chains of magic in his hands, time for a super villainous performance. I'm Batman almost came off his lips. But he corrected himself in time and said he was a hunter from the Ares Guild, a creepy boast. You should see a psychiatrist for megalomania, Hyun Woo thought. What kind of hitman calls himself a hitman, he asked. You think you're the smartest, asked Sean Gan, approaching him. Now he's going to show him how big the world is. You may be strong, continued Sean Gunn, but strength isn't everything. You can spin a heavy dinosaur like a piece of fluff, the bounty hunter remarked. Let you be able to kill a two-headed ogre with a single blow like a fucking cheater, Sean Gan measuredly chased his words. But even if you were a hundred times stronger, what could you do tied up in those chains? The bandit asked him with a gloating grin. The chains became increasingly tangled around Yun Wu like wired headphones. The longer the more knots, but it didn't bother him. As he suddenly found that he couldn't break them, a very uncommon skill was used on him. These aren't simple chains, but magical chains. Magical chains were obligingly explained by the villain. Thank him for the details, Hyun Wu thought. The only way to break them, another rank a magic. The noble bandit willingly gave away the weaknesses of his technique to the victim. Hyun Wu looked deeply stunned by this discovery. He looked ahead of him, as if he was desperately looking for a way out. He began to play dumb. Questioning the thug about something that was already obvious, Sean Gan became angry. Hyun Wu asked for the third time if he really couldn't get out, playing the role of a confused victim. Sean Gan gritted his teeth. The kid in front of him didn't understand or didn't want to understand the situation he was in. But he'd seen it more than once. Everyone he'd worked with had behaved the same way. They pretend to be calm, blowing dust in their eyes. But in reality, they are desperately thinking of ways to get out. Sean Gan amplified the magic of chains. Those hapless dumbasses try to escape with stupid tricks, he continued. But Hyun Wu remained impenetrable. With a sharp movement, he exposed the hidden blade. It was time to finish the job. He's killed plenty of guys this naive. Sean Gunn rushed forward to add another name to his death list. His attack filled the blade with a purple glow. Hyun Wu could barely keep up with his gaze. Just before the punch, he suddenly put his hands up and blocked it. But this attack also had a second effect. Sean Gan used the deadly poison technique. There was an explosion, and everything around illuminated with ultraviolet flash. Anyone watching the battle now would definitely be blinded. Sean Gan smirked contentedly. His opponent's pathetic, worthless brave would now be fodder for the swamp worms. In the thick smoke that rose from the impact, it was hard to see anything farther than an arm's length away. 
Gradually, the smoke cleared, and a shadow in the form of a human figure came through where Hyunwu was sitting. Sean Gan tensed, not at all the effect he had expected to see, the smoke preventing him from seeing everything ahead properly. To his greater amazement, once the dust settled a bit, he saw a completely unharmed Hyunwu. The one was still making a fool of himself that didn't even realize what had happened, or simply didn't even notice the flea strike. Sean Gan experienced a serious dissonance of expectation and reality. It was the first time he had seen such a thing. His attack didn't work, didn't leave a single scratch, didn't even crumple his clothes as if they were special magical armor. And in that instant he trembled, his legs unconsciously beginning to step backwards. Gradually what had happened began to dawn on him, and he imperceptibly quickened his step. Unable to withstand the tremendous pressure, he ran away in terror like a trotter. His heart was ready to stop when Hyunwoo's shadow grew in front of him again at a terrifying speed. The last thing he saw was a flying fist in his face, and then everything was a blur. Taking the blow, he flew back to the tree behind him. Another man in his place or monster would have turned to ashes from such a blow. But Sean Gan survived, though he was writhing in hellish pain as he put his whole body against the tree. It was as if the chains had stopped restraining Hyunwoo. He was moving completely freely. His defeated opponent had fused with the tree, leaving a deep dent in it. Even the dense wood behaved like soft ground beneath his feet. Now it was Hyunwoo's turn to torture the villain. You should have tied up the whole body, he remarked. Sean Gan couldn't believe his eyes. The ego technique was completely useless after hundreds of uses. Chains slowly spilled over Hyunwoo's legs, much to Sean Gang's even greater horror. Hyunwoo defiantly raised the hand entangled in the chain that had visibly loosened. A light flip-flop kick ignited. Hyunwoo wasn't going to spare his enemy. From the kick, the long-suffering tree collapsed like an undercut along with Sean Gan. Hyunwoo grabbed him tighter. It was time to repeat the ride. Sean Gunn clearly wasn't thrilled. He hadn't liked amusement parks since he was a kid, and he was very unaccustomed to being in the role of victim. Hyunwoo began to quote the great Chinese strategist. Whoever comes to us with what and why, that's why, he said, swinging harder. The overload pressed Sean Gan even harder into the wood. He no longer knew what was worse, the shame of defeat or this agony. The crocodile in the swamp, meanwhile, was doing what he usually does, acting as a log and reflecting a bit on his behavior. He was quietly floating peacefully in a small lake, not touching anyone, fixing the primus. As suddenly an ominous shadow loomed over him, something was rapidly approaching him. A shadow covered the entire sky, but the reptilian eyes wouldn't let him look up and see what it was. A large log with Sean Gang on top hit the crocodile with tremendous force, causing a fountain of spray. Hyunwoo made a great throw in the townships, two goals in one fell swoop. He looked at the surrounding landscape through the eyes of an investigator. A hapless hunter chased a squirrel into a tree. It fell and was captured by a crocodile in the river. Looks like it was a hapless hunter nudist, a squirrel catcher. That's something that should have crossed anyone's mind, thought Hyun Wu. The status window lit up with a blue light notification has arrived. Defeating the boss, he got the lowest title there was. Meanwhile, in the Ares Guild office, someone was diligently drinking valerian with expensive whiskey. Shin Chong Gong is dead, received a short report from Wu Chong. There was no other information. Still, the hunter was working alone. All this meant that a very large and furry beast had just stepped on all his plans. A small investigation found that the corpse of the unlucky killer is already deep at the bottom of the swamp. The monsters had definitely eaten the remains. No body, no case. But you'll still have to answer, Sean Gan thought to himself. He'd probably launch himself to the moon from the burning of his sciatica, but the valerian had already kicked in, or maybe it was a liter of elite whiskey with no appetizer. Shin Chong Gong is an elite assassin with two rank S skills, read his case to Wu Chong. So this Shin Jong Gang who was acting so blusterously killed Kim Hyun Wu, puzzled a worried office worker. Everything that had happened was like a diabolical prank, someone's mockery. Such a thing was impossible to bitch about. Wu Chong wiped his teeth in anger. 
Then he imagined what his boss might do to him when he found out about the asset he'd spent, which would give him a week's worth of constipation. It was a quiet night in the bedroom district of Seoul. The stars were twinkling outside the window, and the city was drowning in the lights of the lanterns. Hyun Woo was lying in complete prostration on the couch in Shin Ken's living room, as befits an unemployed slacker. A fly, a fly on the ceiling and how it's holding on, he thought, as he stared upward. No matter how much he thought, he could not understand the vagaries of nature and existence. But still determined to figure it out, and called up the status window. A familiar blue hologram appeared before him like a projector screen, its light making his eyes ache. He couldn't understand the line under his name where the title Temporary Guardian was written. And an added ability, a right to information, he wondered. And with the size of the melons, it would roll. And yet I couldn't know how to use it because I'd never seen such a change in the system. He also got an invitation, no exact location, but a countdown timer. Hyun Woo continued to puzzle over it for a long time. But no matter how many times he looked, there was no more understanding. Hyun Woo's adult and responsible friend returned to the apartment and greeted his unemployed comrade. Knowing how useless Hyun Woo was at household chores, since he hadn't lived in the house in over a dozen years, Shin Kyung inquired about dinner. Suddenly, Hyun Woo, it hit him. Wait, don't press anything. Let me try, he said to Shin Ken. Hyun Woo decided to test out the new ability right to information. It must work somehow. Abracadabra, he said the words of activation and looked at his friend carefully. Shin Ken's status window appeared in front of Hyun Woo's face, but no new information was shown. How the hell to use this garbage, he blurted out. No, he's seen stupid scumbags, but this is the first time he's seen them this stupid, he said, referring to the developers of the system. But Shin Ken took it personally, so I had to calm him down. For the remaining two hours, he stared impatiently into the phone, counting minute by minute. The last few seconds stretched slowly like tar. It couldn't be that, he thought, that he'd just been tricked, or it wouldn't make sense. Hyun Woo waited tensely. He didn't know what awaited him, monsters, trials, but he was ready for anything. But then the lights went out, as if everything disappeared around him. He experienced a slight feeling of disorientation. When the light came back on, he found himself in a completely unfamiliar place. Good thing there was a chair under his buttocks, or he would have flopped to the floor. The place resembled a deep stone well, the light falling from above, with no apparent source. He was moved stealthily without any portals. He Woo looked around. There was a girl sitting at a table in front of him, somewhere he had seen a similar scene before. The white-haired Chobit girl greeted him politely. She kept upright and moved little, and her skin looked unnaturally pale. Nice to meet you, Guardian, she said. I am an architect, or rather an assistant quickly corrected the girl named Av. Av, Hyun Woo interjected, wondering how a name could consist of two letters like a toaster model. These meetings would be frequent now, the white-haired answering machine notified him. The mad recluse is encouraged. He can finally learn all about the tower and his imprisonment. Five minutes of silence passed. Hyun Woo decided to see if she would really be unmoved. He even held his breath. Five more minutes of silence. She's definitely not breathing. A freaking bucketoid instead of a living thing. Unable to stand it, he began questioning first. Human or not, he could definitely be talked out of it, he thought. The white-haired woman wasn't even going to explain anything. She slammed her gray eyelashes shut. This made Hyun Woo furious, so he jumped up from his chair and started yelling and demanding answers. She could answer a question if asked directly. Apparently, this model of Japiti chat did not support a high level of abstraction. A goofy bucket with the appearance of a cute little girl confirmed his hunch. He asked her who imprisoned him in the training tower, a normal, straightforward question even a stupid Vedroid could handle. Lengthy data processing ensued. It looked like a Pentium III processor had been shoved into the girl. Information denied due to low rank the answering machine said after a long pause. How stupid is it, Hyun Woo thought, but decided to try again. He found out that only by going up a rank could he get more access and more information. At least that's what the machine said clearly. However, it pissed him off terribly that the system that this dolt of an answering machine, all done by crooked developers, had no answers anywhere. 
He tried to ask a leading question again. If you increase the rank, can you find out who created the tower? But it didn't work. The machine couldn't comment in any way on the hidden data about the system. It wasn't even clear what he would learn by raising the rank. It was frankly starting to piss me off. No user-centeredness. The entire development budget went to a pretty face. A query about the training tower also failed. Access denied. A request for the reason for its creation was also dismissed by a bucket of bolts instead of brains. The request for the causes of the monsters was also rejected. There is information here, but it is not given, only shown, beautiful, Hyun Woo thought. He remembered how his father used to fix the TV when he was a kid, and if you bumped it, it would pick up the signal right away. This machine had one excellent property. It felt pain, and you could vent all your anger on it. The goofy android with the appearance of a cute girl was rubbing his bruised head. Hyun Woo was getting really excited and was thinking about opening up the system unit because the friend inside had something interesting to say. The girl Bucketoid resented it. She couldn't give answers to his questions. Batten method works, thought Hyun Woo. However, the developers were still just wasting his precious time, and he was terribly angry. Anticipating an imminent unpacking, the android announced that there was still information available. Guardian, said the Bucketoid, shaking his fist as if that answer was so self-evident that it needed no explanation. Guardian must guard, issued the robot another poorly written script. It seems one blow is not enough to enlighten the chips. The Vedroid hovered in overload mode again. It seemed to be her way of compensating for her lack of computational ability. She finally got around to giving out the main quest. Wouldn't have to spend so much time on empty dialogue branches. However, the Vedroid wasn't going to say anything from what Hyun Woo needed. At the moment, Hyun Woo is only a temporary guardian, whatever that means. To become an official guardian, you need to follow the link. Next came a not-to-be-missed commercial for an unknown Hyun Woo brand of electrical appliances. When it was over, he was able to ask Taki how to get a new rank. In five days' time, she said in the ominous voice from the movie call, the city will open a glacial fissure. There will be a beak in the deepest part of the cleft that will help him increase his rank. This city needs a new hero. Hyun Wu watched the lights of the crime-ridden city flicker on. Hyun Wu was backing away from the dialogue with the Chobit. He was still cringing from her phrasing and silly electronic voice. However, there was also something important. He must increase his skills in the first. In a very long time, he could become even stronger. There was nothing else to do but accept the assignment, especially since it involved a lot of outside people. In the morning, Friends sitting in the cafe for breakfast was interrupted by the exclamation of little Seo Yon. Glacial crack, she shrieked. They came to eat meat and burgers as befits true hunters. When Hyun Woo decided to ask his friends what they knew about Glacier Crevasse, the friends looked at each other anxiously and were in no hurry to answer. Shin Ken decided to find out the reason for this question first, and he too looked anxious. Hyun Woo was surprised at his friends' harsh reactions. It looked like the case was not an easy one. Shim Ken started to explain to him with a serious look. The phenomenon was familiar to him. This is a real disaster, he said, a catastrophe of enormous proportions. At the main headquarters of the Ares Guild, a soldering iron was warming in the boss's office to better motivate his subordinates. Boss Hyuk Seong Wu had just trashed the office furniture and was now thinking about who to use the electrical device on and how to use it. The post-landing news upset him very much, and he wondered what to do about it. His subordinate dispatched the guild's best assassin to remove an annoying nuisance, but ended up being killed by his target himself. I wanted to send half the department to the torture chamber to maintain discipline and morale, but it wouldn't help the cause, Sung Woo thought. Wu Chong bowed his head guiltily and prayed that he would get away with it. He had experienced a red-hot poker last time and didn't want a repeat. The boss's attention shifted to Yu Ben Wook, and Wu Chong heaved a sigh of relief. Start pissing goats, Boss Song said angrily, showing his violent nature more and more. He was taking personal control of the case, and was even willing to lend his money to new assassins, stronger than Sean Gunn. And let the music play in his house, but he will not hear it, he ordered his men. He purposely asked again to know if he was understood correctly. 
Yu Ben nodded in response, immediately letting it be known that he had accepted for execution. The chief sat back in his chair, letting off steam he felt lighter, or else some teenagers are having a debauch, killing the best people. It's a mess. And with something else entirely hanging on the agenda, the pedo guild too required urgent attention. <laughs> Intelligence reported that they were gathering a real army and preparing for open war with the Ares guild. Hunter wars are common. Yuben nodded again. The task was clear. Let everyone go to waste and fertilizer. Nothing can be left to these jackasses. Chief Sungwoo grabbed his head. So much to do, now I'd like to go to the sauna and have a drink. But business is business. He doesn't take care of himself at all. He's all business and business. You have to think about yourself, too. The merry quartet of first hunters sat in the restaurant and waited for their food. Hyun Woo rejoiced like a child looking at something bright in front of him. The ring in Kwang Song's hands glowed at the full two billion value. Such expensive things are given in the labyrinth. Kwang Soong gently hinted to his friend that it was time for him to stop being a freeloader and get a job. Hyun Woo learned from his friends the difference between a maze and a dungeon, and it turns out that there are different artifacts in them. The ring in question is also an artifact, so Yeon explained. Dungeons, on the other hand, give special resources such as magic stones or monster parts, Shin Ken added. The labyrinths give already finished artifacts from the treasury like this ring. The ring has an enchantment, Kwan Sung said, hoping to pique Hyun Woo's interest. Just like in the games, the hermit remarked, examining the shiny trinket. Artifacts with enchantment, much better than ordinary ones, Hyun Woo gradually understood what was going on. The smell of money attracted him like a hare to a fox. As he looked closely at the ring and he began to see inscriptions in an ancient language, a status window appeared. Now Hyun Woo could use his ability to recognize objects through the system. He applied the skill right to information again, concentrating on the ring. Fucking classified material, thought Hyun Woo. The system hid the description. However, Quan Seo's tip he accepted, after all the business, one should definitely pay a visit to the labyrinth. He returned the ring to its owner and checked its value again to make sure he hadn't heard it. After putting all his business aside, the hermit decided it was time for a meal. That's why he goes to meetings with friends, because he is well fed. He simply swiped his finger across the menu and ordered each dish like a true cave troglodyte. The friends were greatly surprised at Hyun Woo's bottomless stomach and complete lack of conscience. Don't be shy, said Kwan Seo, barely holding back tears as it was his turn to pay the company's bills. Hyun Woo exclaimed as if he had forgotten a mere trifle, but now he had just remembered. What do you know about the glacial crevasse? He suddenly stunned his friends with his question. The question caught them off guard and silenced them. They tensed up considerably. There was a long silence as they thought about what their weirdo hermit savage had gotten himself into again. Meanwhile, the food, blood steak, pizza, and other appetizers were brought in. But Hyun Woo didn't back down and kept asking about the crack. <laughs> it turned out that this is the name of a rift in the ground that suddenly appears, and from it monsters that have no end and no edge. Germany and China, where she appeared, are called the Gates of Hell, said little Seoyeon. Hyun Woo pondered, greedily devouring the meat. He had insanely missed eating normal food while living in the tower. The stupid android didn't say a word about the event being a real disaster. But what would happen if this thing showed up in their native Korea? He frightened the boys with his question. They couldn't find anything to answer. Horrible pictures of the possible consequences floating before their eyes. Even the always combative Kwan Seo hesitated and huffed. He really didn't like these thoughts. The prudent Shuken calculated that even with a rank C crack, even if it was stopped in time, everything would be destroyed. Hunters lack cohesion, even if the guilds unite. Ares can refuse to help with only formal assistance. Those bastards, Hyun Woo reacted, taking out his anger on the piece of meat in his plate. He poked the unfortunate piece over and over again in deep thoughtfulness. They should rest and gain strength in the remaining four days, Hyun Woo informed them. However, he did not specify the details. Still, what he would say would sound too strange, and it was unlikely that his friends would understand it. The roar of turbines drowned out everything around for many kilometers. 
the airport was bustling with the usual work. However, something unusual had already begun to happen, and at first, people didn't understand at all what they were feeling. But then, they felt a jolt, as if someone was beating a drum and sending waves across the ground. The tremors grew stronger and stronger until a real earthquake started, throwing everyone into a panic. A long crack ran down the runway, as if the ground had dried up after a long heat wave. Soon it broke apart, beginning a tectonic labor. Everything around it shook terribly. Hundreds of screams erupted. Panic gripped the people at the airport as the crack turned into a veritable abyss. In the gloom of the underground temple, there was only one monk. The empty gallery was illuminated by the light of deadly dim lamps. The lone figure entered an atrium with a large round table where another man was waiting for her. Level nine has come to his senses, the novice reported, bowing. The man at the table inquired if someone the two knew about had fully awakened. Soon it will be completely ready, reported a monk in a dark cassock. The man at the table was pleased with this news. He looked like a formidable warrior, and a dark aura surrounded him. His thoughts were occupied by them wild oddball hermit, a very unusual man. Just how strong is he? The warrior pondered, wanting to experience this man sooner rather than later. Seoul's airport continued to collapse under the powerful tremors, the disaster only gaining momentum. People fell on their backs and could not move from fear. They screamed loudly and begged for salvation. Soon other people began to pull up to the scene. The first to arrive was a helicopter of reporters and began to alert everyone to the disaster. The government announced an urgent evacuation within a radius of five kilometers from the airport. Hundreds of thousands of people were to be saved. The airport was closed, and the first small group of hunters and those they could gather quickly were sent there. From above, a terrifying picture was revealed. The entire area around the crack was swarming with monsters. They were climbing like locusts. Smoke and the glow of fires covered the entire area. Everywhere reigned true chaos. A small group of hunters fought in a scattered formation in the open area of the parking lot. They could barely hold on. Terror struck them in the heart. Hardly could these people resist for long. Humanoid monsters with weapons in their hands and paws attacked the small and weak humans. There were too few of them to hold back the onslaught of multiple monsters, each of which was quite dangerous. The men were thrown in to plug the gap without proper training. They had lost all their fighting spirit and were shaking with fear, not knowing what to do. But among the ordinary hunters, there was one who did not lose his temper and took command. This guy reacted well to danger and rushed to help a comrade who was faltering. Magical ropes bound the ugly monsters and protected the confused fighter. Bound by a magical tentacle monster, the warrior finished off with a blow of his blade. He was showing excellent training and coherence. After the attack, he immediately retreated to avoid accidental hits on himself. This man knew his business. A soldier from his group started to thank the older man, but he sharply cut him off. The battlefield was no place for chatter. Their situation was still dire. They held on like rats cornered. The fierce attacks of the squad leader could not defeat them. He was merely stalling for time until the imminent end came. There were too many enemies, and the cavalry was in no hurry to help. At this rate, they would surely be slaughtered before it arrived. But he didn't even think of giving up. If he showed weakness, his men would completely lose heart and die immediately. The hunter courageously fought back with all his might. He smashed his enemies with the strokes of his broad sword. But in place of the slain monsters were new, full of strength, bloodthirsty monsters. They all run relentlessly to the airport, where there are many civilians who won't be able to defend themselves. The dark army kept arriving like a tide, wave after wave completely unstoppable. They filled everything around them with bodies. From the left, strange sounds were heard, as if a hurricane was howling. The hunter squad leader turned around, and even he trembled when he saw this. A giant was coming toward them with heavy footsteps, the ground shuddering with his footsteps. A huge, club-wielding skeleton emerged from the crevice, a foe beyond even experienced hunters, let alone their tiny troop. The A-rank monster looked like a death sentence. The hunters who had gathered their courage once again despaired. They had no equipment or skills with them to do anything at all to this demon. 
The experienced squad leader froze for a moment. He hadn't been taught to think long. He'd been through more than one training course. He'd been turned into a killing machine long ago. But right now, his trained instincts weren't working and couldn't give him any kind of effective plan of action. Run, you fools, he shouted as he came to his senses, a surge of adrenaline bringing him to his senses. Another hunter with a shield at his side rushed to stop the monster's attack and protect their unit. A heavy club the size of a tree flew towards the small shield that could barely protect its owner. The fighter activated the skill and a red glow flashed. He was giving his comrades time to regroup. The skeleton hit a home run and the hunter flew away like a rag doll. The leader shouted, seeing how his fighter had just been seriously injured. The soft hull of the car buckled and cushioned some of the impact. The guy was lucky to miraculously stay alive, even though he was badly wounded. But the giant didn't stop and kept going forward. He didn't want to let his victim go so easily. The monster, without a gram of soft tissue, swung in to deliver a deadly strike to the wounded fighter. Skeliquist firmly clutched a club with a metal hilt. At this size, it didn't matter how high quality a weapon the enemy used. The commander rushed as hard as he could to help. His fighter was unconscious and couldn't move, and the leader didn't have time. He only had to scream. He ordered him to stand up and survive. But in vain, the giant was already lowering his bat to smash the man's head. Not that the squad leader thought he shouldn't see his men die. He should have died first. Just as suddenly, the light kick of a man in flip-flops and a tracksuit rolled into the battle and instantly eliminated the threat with a single slap. The skeleton turned into a pile of bones when it was swatted like a fly. The commander gasped. It was the first time he had ever seen such a sight. The cavalry made it in time, and the strange man saved them. The flip-flops knocked out sparks when the hero landed, the mighty slippers back in business. The fighters recognized their savior. His distinctive black suit and flip-flops were well-known among hunters and beyond. The shaggy, wild hermit hero arrived in the blinding glow of his own glory. The hunters looked to him as a savior. There could certainly be no doubt. Experienced player Kim Hyun Woo practiced his heroic appearance and posed in various spectacular poses. The day had almost turned into night from the zing of smoke. The fire was spreading rapidly, threatening to burn everything to the ground. Hyun Woo stopped near the remains of the defeated enemy, those slowly melted emitting miasmas, when the system notification popped up again and the status flashed. He had to head to the airport as well. After that, time was running out. Hyun Woo glanced at the hunters beside him in passing. They looked shabby, but never ceased to admire him. After mortal danger, they suddenly relaxed the bread and butter dramatically. They're crazy, Hyun Woo thought. This isn't a movie. There's still a fight going on. He asked them if they remembered where they were, like little children. After all, right now, they were being attacked by monsters from the back because the hunters had completely forgotten about them. Hyun Wu looked around the battlefield. His battle cohesion was not very good, but he was still dragging the rollers solo as usual. But the monsters were indeed a lot, and it was dangerous to leave them in the rear. The battlefield was a veritable catavasia. Blood guts, tears, screams of the wounded, the best medicine for writhing. Hyun Wu decided to help out a little to keep the hunters going until the main forces arrived. The damn big stick came in handy, and Hyun Wu armed himself with it. Hunter's eyes were distracted again, watching his actions. He didn't understand what the hermit was going to do. However, they couldn't help but marvel at his strength and might. He single-handedly held the log wielded by the giant skeleton. The man rocket gave a start without back calculation and soared into the sky. Even a seasoned battle veteran commander had never seen such savagery in battle. Hyun Wu swung the telegraph pole in his hands properly and turned on death carousel mode. It spun around its axis very quickly. Then he executed a perfect throw like in the townships. A giant log flew towards the enemy. Those scattered like skittles. Their crowding playing into the hands of Hyun Wu and his Jedi mind trick the enemy's scattered cowardly tales or their equivalent. The infernal lawnmower soaked the whole place uprooting even the concrete slabs. Even the hunters were horrified by this terrible rampage. Hyun Woo cupped his hands. With that part of the task done, 
it was time to move on. The squad leader couldn't believe his eyes. The hero had saved them once again. The rumors about the experienced player were true. He allowed himself a flicker of emotion. Now there was a ray of hope in their desperate situation, and they could survive. All right, he commanded. Everyone gather around the experienced player. His fighting spirit had returned. This battle could still be won. He thought and noticed the player pressing down on his heels, leaving the battlefield as if nothing had happened. I'll be back, shouted Hyunwoo to them. They'll make it because they have the power of friendship. He swiftly raced away toward the airport, only flip-flops flashing. The commander fell out again. How could this be and what was going on? Unanswered questions swarmed. His sword flashed and took a bloody harvest. The way of the samurai is simple. Raise and learn, and think of nothing else. You're a sing fain. they just have to straighten out the rest of them. Easy, you can't show your tears to your subordinates. The commander rushed into battle. Damn experienced player, if he had stayed a little longer. That's how you believe after that heroes will be wooed and dumped. The battle boiled over with redoubled fury, jet fuel blazing all around, humans and monsters fighting to the death. His men were holding on to their last breath. They had used up all their reserves of stamina. There is a limit to everything, even if they survived until now. Then they will fall from fatigue, finally exhausted. And the leader realized it. Once again, they were on the brink of despair, survived thanks to unexpected help. And once again, it was gone. There was no hope anymore. He took a deep breath. If there's one thing that helps a man hold on in times of need, it's his fighting spirit. Never give up. Be a man, said the ancient saying authored by Statham. Balls and fist, who has them, who doesn't. Just hold on as best you can, help is on the way, through the enthusiasm of the squad, the commander. But death was already breathing down his neck. He could already see the wheat fields to the horizon, the ears caressing his hands, the samurai's hand on the hilt of the katana, the fleeting movement of the plum petal, one enemy defeated. Maximum speed, the warrior said, and began the game of death. With a single stroke of his blade, the huge orc was split in half, and the commander was saved. The cavalry coming for the second time in his life, and even in the same battle, thought the hunter. How much longer will this go on? That emotional swing would drive anyone crazy. He's definitely going to retire after this fight. The sword returned to the scabbard. One should love everyone. Even the enemy should be killed gently. Warrior Samurai Star Guild leader and just plain handsome Shin Ken arrived on time, and together with him all his honorable army, they were built beautifully and spectacularly so that all could be seen. The exhausted hunters cheered, there was nothing to fear now. The sky was cut by flashes of lightning, it seemed someone had summoned a scorpion. The discharges of electricity set off a cascade of lightning and blew away all the monsters in the area. One day the Sith will rule the galaxy, learn the power of the dark side of the Force. The charred, crispy corpse fell at Shin Ken's feet, smelling of roasted meat. And it's called in time asked his living Tesla coil, striding gracefully across the field of bullwhip in high boots, the beautiful Seo Yeon said, her long hair falling down in a waterfall as her guild arrived in full force. She had spent the entire evening before the attack on her makeup, and it was a success. The sight of the beauty had the male half of the hunters drooling. It can't be. Two regiments of cavalry came to the rescue at once. Such a thing can only be seen in Manhua, thought the squad leader. Eagles! Eagles have arrived! shouted one of the fighters, pointing in the direction. A squad of armored tanks from the Quanxiang Guild also arrived at the battlefield. Three, three regiments of cavalry the commander couldn't believe his eyes. He didn't realize which god had saved him but promised to pray to him. Now it's retirement. He'll have a vegetable garden, plant potatoes instead of all this. Vigilant little Seo Yeon looked around for Hyun Wu, who was nowhere to be seen. And give up on this skilled player, the commander thought, who in their right mind would worry about him. He went deep into the rift, the commander informed the beautiful Seo Yeon. Bosses are never late, nor are they delayed. They come strictly when needed. Shim Ken reported. The heavy infantry shield slammed into the coating of concrete, knocking out a sheaf of sparks. Quan Sung stood at the head of the united army of hunters as the tank should. He rested his shield on the ground. He used his acceleration ability, 
and transformed into a transformer. His heavy povis shield enveloped in a force field aura, the man bulldozed forward. Heavy armor and shield along with acceleration was a good combination with a huge energy output. Forming a wedge, the hunters of the three guilds went on an organized offensive against the crowd of monsters. The shield was simply crushing the monsters with a battering ram. They couldn't hold back Kuang So's mad onslaught. He strode through the enemy ranks like a knife through butter, smashing everyone like a keldy in his path. Some particularly nimble monsters tried to outflank their group. They relied on the shield to speed and hit their backs and flanks. But everyone was overtaken by instant death. The calm and balanced Shin Ken chopped them down in an instant. He didn't even raise an eyebrow. He didn't care about such petty bipeds. The defeat of the enemy was obvious. His flaming blade cut through flesh and bone without losing speed, like cutting through air. Wearing white gloves, the blue-haired witch gathered a blob of magic in her palm and lightning flashed. Static electricity lifted her luxurious hair as she summoned multiple lightning spells. The Storm Lord completed the defeat of the enemy by unleashing weapons of mass destruction on them. The discharges killed so many monsters that their bodies carpeted the entire area of the parking lot where the battle was raging. Another fighter gave his life in the war. What brought him here didn't matter anymore. War is the way of killing. Pressing the corpse of the defeated enemy with the flip-flops of fate, Hyun Wu looked around the battlefield. It looks like the forces that came up should handle the disaster while he takes care of the main task at hand. An otherworldly portal filled with dark energy opened before him. He contemplated going downstairs and how good it was that monsters disappeared after they died, or else who would have buried them all? Along the sheer wall of the rift climbed a serpentine path, as if carved directly into the stone, along which more troops of their unknown enemy kept arriving. Hyun Wu hesitated. It was necessary to get inside as quickly as possible and not waste much time on the small bipeds. If you go left, you'll lose your horse. Hyun Wu saw a strange inscription on a rock. If you go to the right, you'll find a hundred grams. Another strange sign. The signage here is so bad, Hyun Wu thought. But he didn't read the next inscription because he saw something more interesting, and the GPS navigation would be more reliable. Right above the abyss hovered a tired car. He was desperate to find his happiness, and looked sadly into the abyss. To be or not to be, that was the question. He just needs some air, car therapist Hyun Wu opened the right door. The left door suffered the same fate. Now he held a passenger car door in each hand. Automotive psychotherapy services, fast and cheap. Ask crazy wild hermit Hyun Wu. The slippers of fate began the run-up to take off. The main thing is to start waving your arms vigorously. Geronimo. Hyun Wu's wings open his arms, and he jumped down from the abyss. I've been unable to be like everyone else since I was a kid, but I guess that's my lot in life, he hummed. It's time to play Mr. Proper and clean up the place, Yun Wu laughed. Directly below him, the monsters were climbing up a narrow, slippery path in the rocks, tightly pressed together. I think the rain is going to report a distant relative of the nickel. Hyun Wu landed on the path, scattering anyone unlucky enough to be under him with a flash of plasma. The monsters hesitated. In the cloud of dust they could no longer see, they were propped up by others from below, and an unknown enemy appeared from above. The demon's winged shadow peeked through the puffs of smoke as the dust settled a bit. Bazooka hands shouted out Hyun Wu and launched himself down the sloping path in a mad onslaught. The monsters trembled in the terms of their contract, devouring gutting. Was, destruction, was. There was no word about fighting madness. Hyun Wu watched the result. He slid all the way to the bottom, scattering the monsters like a bunch of dry leaves with a broom, all of them resting peacefully at the bottom. At the bottom of the cleft was musty air. The miasmas made it hard to breathe. It smelled like a menagerie. The search in the semi-darkness didn't last long. Hyun Wu found the target he was looking for. Suddenly, the rocking boss appeared from nowhere and approached him with measured steps. Punk note, Grandpa, barked the humanoid monster who was dropped in a can of gainer as a child. Tourist crimson horse, the ascendant appeared a monster hero status with a glowing mohawk on his head. At the hiker's side, 
dangled the key he was looking for somewhere between the bricks of his abs. Eureka, Hyunwoo realized. There would be meat now, but even he was confused by the steroid overgrowth. Good thing the key wasn't hidden more securely. Then he would have been looking for it for a long time. Hyunwoo rushed forward at the evil punk. Seek and Tsuki flew into the monster's face. Good evening. The polite hunter said hello, but the steroid tourist with the face of a boiled bat easily dodged the blow. What a twist. No way there's a real glitch in the Matrix, Hyunwoo thought. The foot strike also had no effect. The monster was even able to counterattack with a swing of its hoof. The heavy blow launched Hyunwoo into a roll on his ass, all the way to the gorge wall. For the first time in a long time, he received a clean punch back. How many years had passed, Hyunwoo's heart beat faster. The danger, the vulnerability, the goosebumps. It's as if he's alive again, and the joy is back in the battles. The walking testosterone didn't play noble and decided to finish the lying man with an overhead kick. A heavy blow nearly crushed the hermit's skull. The sand dislodged from the rocks abrasively scraped across his face and into his mouth. The rocking boss scowled contentedly and continued to strike until the enemy came to his senses. Hyunwoo executed a birch and launched the tourist into flight with a light kick. And then I gave him a fist in his boiled face. The Red Chief drilled into the rock like a true geologist. But such an attack didn't hurt him, on the contrary. It was as if he became even more enraged and immediately rose up. A man in a tracksuit and flip-flops, who is he without them, muttered the hiking enthusiast. Hermit, car mechanic, dentist, Hunwoo thought. He understood the devil without words. Why words when you can speak with the power of your fists? Especially when you have such a good interlocutor for heated discussions. Hyunwoo caught up with his opponent on the ground. He remembered the ancient rule of fist fighting. Paper beats rock. I knew I should have thrown away the scissors. Hyunwoo got upset and immediately applied the second stone. It's not in the Kanobu rules, but who reads those rules? But the punk lover also watched Bruce Lee movies, so he was able to block the hermit's punch. Hyunwoo didn't expect such a twist. When all the monsters fall with a single blow, you begin to forget what real contact is. The blast wave went through nearly tearing his membranes, the demon's fist knocking him back again. Followed by a front leg kick, punk tourist didn't miss his karate lessons. This blow went in full force and Hyunwoo absorbed all the damage. He crashed his back into the wall, exploding rocks. The hermit coughed heavily, his ribs aching from the impact, sand crunching on his teeth, the evening no longer languid. The third pose change, but only he gets the blame, the hunter thought. The steroidal crane-horned creature was much stronger than he'd believed. His ribs cracked as he tried to stand up. Now, the real fight would begin. The monster was very different from the ones he had encountered in the tower. Even a level 100 boss would fly away like a furry beast. The limitations of the tower had taken its toll. Hyunwoo inhaled. To become stronger, he had subjected himself to various ascetics. It was time to remove one of the restrictions. He was loath to break the vows of abstinence he had made to himself. It undermined his spirit, but the situation forced it. Hey, Rubberface! The hero rose to his feet, gathering his strength. The monster wheezed something indecipherable in response, yet he had no real speech like all monsters. Hyunwoo pointed at the monster and promised it a quick and easy death. But the punk lover didn't understand a damn thing. He put all his points into strength, not enough for intelligence. The mad hermit took a special stance, the first technique a killing slam. He made the same seemingly completely unimportant hand motions. Taking a low stand, he was inviting the monster on a date with death. This technique brought back a long-ago memory from his imprisonment, so he didn't want to use it again. Years ago, imprisoned in a training tower, having known despair when he tried everything he could to free himself. Hyunwoo hadn't become a crazy hermit yet, and was following the script of a martial arts novel he had read earlier. The hero of this novella was imprisoned as he was, but was able to get out after learning the truth by creating his martial arts. The prisoner, driven to exhaustion, lay on the cold ground of the tower. It was only at the bottom of the well of despair that the right thought struck him. Rejecting the deadly fatigue, he cheered up again. Hunter refused to give up and accept his fate, away with discouragement and defeatism. 
He could definitely get out of this prison. Madness was slowly enveloping his sanity. Hyun Woo tried everything he could and persevered to create his own martial art. He remembered everything he knew about martial arts from movies and novels. A hundred push-ups, a hundred squats, a hundred abs. He did everything. But what does it matter if one is determined to achieve the goal? The main thing is to believe that once he becomes a master, he can do anything he wants. He ran around the tower shouting pathetic phrases and getting into theatrical poses he could only imagine. Even then, the residents of the tower began to suspect something about their unwilling guest. Unfortunately for Hyun Woo, his techniques didn't work. The cheats refused to connect. He continued to study the sky over and over again, flying away from the blows of different bosses. It was all about boredom and endless time at his disposal. Hyun Woo didn't give up and kept trying. Still throwing ridiculous punches and shouting strange phrases that he put his whole soul into. Until one day it didn't work and the monster was torn to shreds. A special feeling was absorbed into every cell of his body when the monster's head exploded with a balloon. This feeling turned into a special skill because he had used it thousands of times while clearing the tower. From mock moves, these techniques have evolved into a true martial art and have gained unprecedented power. And yet the source of the power of those blows is his madness, each blow a step closer to the precipice into darkness. Hyun Woo broke the last seal and prepared for the final round with the boss. He waited for him to lunge at him. He could see his every move. The demon attacked with an overhead hook over his head, his left arm held ready for a finishing blow. A heavy fist with knuckle growths carried straight to the hunter's head. The games were over. Both fought to the death using their best skills, Hyun Woo patiently waiting for the right moment for his attack. He deftly stepped into the redhead's defense, palm sweeping at the demon's eyes, distracting him. Then Hyun Woo turned his palm into a fist and swung it at the ugly demon's face. The fist was echoed by a pathos phrase worthy of the king of pathos. The technique didn't reach the finger grip of the usin, but the explosion was deafening. Secondary shrapnel flew. The shockwave shattered the walls of the gorge. The energy of the impact reverberated off the walls and filled the entire bottom of the gorge, scattering to either side of it. The mad hermit stood in the middle of the gorge and puffs of smoke bent over his defeated foe. Hyun Woo sighed, examining the devastating consequences of his actions. Because this technique requires wrenchingly strange words and draws on the energy of the absurd, he was always uncomfortable when he used it. Everyone has their own closet graveyard, but it's better when no one knows about it. He picked up the key from the monster's body. Good thing it hadn't gotten lost in the heat of battle. Finding it in the dark would have been difficult. Once he took the key, the system recognized the quest item and sent a notification. This promised answers to long-standing questions. The system sent him a new invitation three days later. As the noise of the battle settled down, Hyun Woo noticed a strange buzzing above him and a wandering red light. Something was approaching from above the gorge, buzzing like a huge fly. A drone copter descended to the bottom of the gorge. Apparently, it was filming. The drone carefully focused its digital eye on Hun Woo's face. The mad hermit had been imprisoned for so long that he was completely unaware of the purpose of the contraption above him. The Ares Guild drone had direct surveillance of the mad hermit and was broadcasting everything to the guild office. The mood of the staff was subdued. The man on the screen was a very formidable foe and did not bode well. He waited fearfully for the reaction of his young, hot-tempered and quick-tempered boss. Is this A rank? He asked his staff after completing the review. The HR manager hastened to justify herself, for she had delivered earlier not a simple analysis, but an association document. They had on the table the result of the official test of his skills, all A-rank abilities except magic, for which he received an A-rank. The principal couldn't stand it any longer and pounded his fist on the table where only his men would look. Even after watching the video, this chicken didn't understand anything. Does she really think these skills are just a rank? The manager frightenedly faded her gaze. She couldn't find anything to reply, but that's an observation. Without magic, without items, in an ordinary tracksuit, even director Xiong Wu couldn't get his head around how this was possible. He went back to contemplating the case files, 
He should have thought it over on a cool head. An incredible force that was fundamentally changing the entire landscape of their strategy, and something had to be done about it. After making a decision as befitting a true boss, Hyuk Song Wu turned to his deputy, Yu Byung Wook. He asked if the materials for the new case were ready. You can always turn defeat into victory if you're smart. Yu Byung Wook confirmed his readiness. He had already let his boss down once, and he shouldn't let him down a second time. A faint smirk touched the headmaster's face. There were always things that could not be fixed by force alone. Encouraged, he ordered his subordinates to put the plan into action. The day after the glacial crevasse closed where there was no ice, a meeting was held at the Cory Hunters Association. It was attended by dozens of reporters, even overseas reporters. The leaders of the three guilds and Hyunwoo were invited for the awards, and in recognition of their merit in closing the cleft. Hyun Wu showed his complete disdain for the official dress code this time, too, preferring loose clothing. Park Ga Moon's hands were shaking with excitement, except for the phone not falling out of his hands. He was beyond happy because he was able to broadcast from the front rows as Hyun Wu's acquaintance. His broadcast was watched by thousands of people and animatedly wrote into the chat room. The minister held out the award to the hero with a sour face. He was still not used to the world changes when self-confident children took leading roles in society. He looked the guy over from top to bottom, sloppy appearance, unstatutory uniform. Because of his age, it's too late to enlist. But in the days of his youth, he would have brought such an insolent upstart to his senses and shaved his head, the minister's look said. The sight of the mad hermit evoked nothing but contempt. And this man is a hero. A total disgrace to society, the minister raged. Maybe we should buy some clothes for Kim Hyun Woo, the minister remarked with his lips pressed tightly together. Hyun Woo was distracted from his thoughts and looked at the defense minister right in front of him. Usually he just ignores people, since he lost all social skills in the tower, but he chose to respond this time. He rudely blew off the minister and made him even angrier, telling him that he could ignore him. The chat on the broadcast exploded with comments, all liking the rebellious antics of the mad hermit. The man in shoulder straps almost collapsed from a heart attack. In the army, he would have sent the soldier to the brig, but here he had to endure. The mad hermit simply took the commemorative award, flowers from the hands of the minister, without waiting for special congratulations. And in the same instant was so, escaping the outbursts and dull objections of the Secretary of Defense. A high-ranking man who had given his entire life to career and service was shaking with anger. He went into a real frenzy, demanding that the hunter be sent to the army where he would immediately be taught to love the army. Hyun Woo's friends only had to sigh. His selfish disposition, low social skills, made socializing with him a difficult thing. A tall Chinese pagoda was drowning in the sunset light, housing the pedo guild headquarters. The girl was taking a royally huge bath, and looking at the screen, from the hot water rose clouds of thick steam, as in a bathhouse. Through her thin robe, her naked back with a skull tattooed on her back was showing through. Beautiful thin lips sighed excitedly, and a tear ran down her cheek. The girl watched the battle between the mad hermit and the red-skinned demon and couldn't believe her eyes. The particular pose, the low stance Hyunwoo was standing in, seemed familiar to her. He froze for fear of missing a single shot, her red eyes unblinking. The pose, the disheveled hair, the outline of the body, it all evoked very familiar feelings. The girl jumped up sharply as if stung. She couldn't find her place from excitement. The pretty cutie's face blushed no longer from the hot water. She wanted to know his name. The bath attendant reported that it was Kim Hyun Woo, the hunter who had recently left the tower. Kim Hyun Woo, she whispered his name, spelling it on her tongue, her beautiful eyes sparkling bright rubies. She immediately demanded all information about the weirdo prana in the tracksuit. The minion nodded and hurried to clarify what it was that her mistress was so interested in. The long-haired beauty with the looks of a princess wanted to know absolutely everything. The servant girl nodded stoically again, her mistress's will being law to her. Another servant in white robes entered the bathing room. He was approaching his mistress. 
The warrior took a knee and bowed. He reported the capture of a neighboring guild. The princess didn't look away from the screen. She didn't even dignify her servant with a glance. His report was insignificant. The warrior reported the capture of all the southern dungeons, telling everything in detail. The mistress stepped out of the water, her thin robe clinging to her naked body, but she wasn't worried. Hardly a servant dared raise his eyes. Their forces clashed with the Ari's guild and lost one warrior prisoner, the servant continued. She stood on the warm tile of the bathing tub, water dripping down her body. The maid threw on her robes of imperial colors. The girl didn't care at all about the fate of the prisoner. If he let himself be captured, then he's pathetic, she said, her pretty face giving off a chill. The weak have no place in the guild. The petite girl spoke imperiously, stepping her bare feet on the tiles of the bathhouse. With slender, graceful fingers, she took her luxuriously long hair. In one easy motion, she squeezed them dry, each movement filled with power. Proudly beautiful, she made a lasting impression, as if she were a real empress. She commanded that there was no delay in taking over all the remaining guilds, a bossy and cruel nature hiding behind the cute, childish face. Emperor Qin's spirit revived in this fragile beauty. It demanded to take over all the dungeons without a trace. All for the sake of an oath made long ago, she thought, as she looked at the odd hunter. Only when she looked at him did her eyes glow with interest, and a slight blush scorched her face. She moved closer to the screen to get a closer look at Kim Hyun Woo's face, her heart beating faster than usual. Pretty Seo Yan dressed up in an open top evening dress for dinner, she reprimanded Hyun Woo again for his indiscretion. She reminded him again that he was too popular, which meant he needed to behave more carefully. Kwon Seo chucklingly confirmed her words, but cautious as always, Shin Ken said it wasn't funny. Kim Hyun Woo, puzzled as to where such popularity would come from, as a true hermit, Ob was quite far from it. His friends began to show him various news stories about the mad hermit. The experienced player thread has grown incredibly large, and only a lazy person hasn't written about it. The journalists hadn't changed at all, Hyun Woo noticed. They were doing the same thing then and now. Little Seo Yeon insisted that Hyun Woo pay more attention to the matter and not run away in the middle of the ceremonies. They're watching every move and their appearance too, Shin Ken noted discreetly. Kwan Sun only laughed. He understood the futility of his friends to curb Hyun Woo's odd temper. Hyun Woo easily brushed it all off. Is it worth worrying about people you'll never meet? He replied lightly. His life and his rules, Shim Ken and Seo Yeon have finally given up. No matter what they say, the fool doesn't care about anything. The mad hermit looked at his watch and told them he would be leaving them. Cautious Shim Ken rushed to clarify exactly where their reckless friend was headed. But the man, as always evasive and streamlined, reported that he had a meeting and turned around to leave. Meeting whispered to herself little Seo, her completely discouraged, where is Hyun Wu and where are the meetings? All three of them shuddered at this news. Could the mad hermit have friends besides them, they wondered? The girl sighed. She was already tired of worrying about her friend like a small child. But why worry when your friend is a superman? wondered Kwan Sung, looking at her depressed friend. S led with the umami of the entire world, became the personal enemy of a huge guild. Just that, replied Shin Ken restlessly to him. He had barely left the tower, and things had already taken a devilish turn. After all Hyun Woo had done, his friends had reason to worry. Beauty Seo Yeon was lying flat from the weight of worry. Shin Ken was also in a pensive state. Kwan Sung was the only one who was amused, as he understood the hermit's violent temper more than anyone else. Hyun Woo went out for some air and stopped in a dark alley with no random passers-by at all. He came here a few seconds before departing. This time, Hyun Woo knew what to expect. The bright glow of the teleport passed through, and he felt a familiar sense of disorientation. The silver-haired Chobit girl welcomed him back into the confined gray room. Hyun Wu excitedly replied. He was also looking forward to this meeting. After all, he had now increased his rank. He checked with the android girl to see if his status had gone up, and she said yes. By killing the tourist, he had increased his rank from a low rank, she paused loading files, to a low rank, 
the android happily issued. Hianwu listened intently, anticipating the useful answers he might get. However, the android clearly didn't tell him what he was hoping for. A shadow lay over the mad hunter's face. He instantly exploded. The damn car had once again failed all his expectations, utterly failing to live up to his trust. The android girl reacted faster this time, remembering how scary the hunter was in anger, and hurried to dump all responsibility on the system. Someone who is this developer that writes dialogues to this android, chanted the mad hermit. Vedroid again blamed it on the system, but that didn't negate the crux of the matter. He had been left a fool to believe their promises. The girl with bolts instead of a brain shrank in fear but couldn't add anything. Hyunwoo's rank didn't allow him to know more right now. But it would be better soon enough, she hastened to assure the speedy hunter. And since he's already become a guardian, he can tell him what he's going to do next. If he could handle it, he could definitely find out whatever he wanted to know this time. The android girl continued to brainwash him. However, Hyunwoo was even angrier. He had heard the same thing last time, and now he suspected he was just being deceived. His job is to fight the Ascenders, the Vedroid continued, giving away something new for once. Hyunwoo immediately took notice and demanded a detailed explanation. Those who climb the tower, the girl continued, ascending tourists like the one Hyunwoo defeated last time. In his many years in the tower, this was the first time he'd heard of such a thing, the Bucketoid saying strange things. It wasn't about the training tower the chatbot that came to life explained. Hyunwoo felt more and more interested after all. He hadn't agreed to this assignment for nothing. The tower the Chobit spoke of has 12 stories, one of which is the entire Earth. The news sounded shocking. It was out of the usual worldview. The silver-haired android repeated everything he said again so that Hyunwoo would definitely understand everything. Kim Hyun Woo's guardian now has to protect the ninth floor out of twelve, the android said, with significance after finally stating the mission. It was about an entire planet, his home world that could be in danger of a hitherto unimaginable level. Hyun Woo couldn't believe his ears when he realized the meaning of all the information he had received. He looked shocked. The other ascenders are going up to the ninth floor and they need to be stopped, the android girl said. He didn't sign up for this, Hyunwoo said indignantly. He just wanted to know who had imprisoned him in the tower. The farther into the forest, the thicker the partisans, he tisked. Matters did not add clarity, only new problems. He was in a jam, the mad hermit lamented, too much on his mind at once. If the ascenders are not stopped, the entire ninth floor will be destroyed. The bucketoid reported important information. In that case, Hyunwoo would disappear like the entire planet he lives on she stated the obvious. Where is this captain's boat? Hyunwoo slammed his palm sharply on the table. What was happening was making him very angry. In other words, he is told to shut up because he has to do what he is told anyway. Most of all, he hated being manipulated. The android clipped its silver lashes idly, processing the request. Chobit fidgeted and made excuses. She didn't mean it at all. What's the matter then? The mad hermit was angry. He could barely keep from tearing the place apart. As if sensing something wrong, the Vedroid was intensely moving microcircuits. And then she spewed out some nonsensical nonsense. Apparently, the bugs shorted out her circuits. Hyun Woo was fed up with this parody of a humanoid robot with truncated functionality, mumbling incessantly. The little android went into standby mode. Even the monitor backlight went out. And yet, she's part of the ninth floor's control system. The bucketoid clenched her fists, gathering all the digital will that there was. Kem Hyun Woo, the android, suddenly changed its behavior protocol, adding rigidity to its patterns. Even Hyun Woo noted the change in her behavior and voice. This neural network was still capable of learning. True, she still had a lot to learn. She went back to the stupid, stupid, stupid android again and asked not to be mad at her. Hyun Woo was appointed guardian of the earth for his own good, continued the android girl Av, their goal to help him said she. Plus, she fawned, there would be a reward, and it increased with each feat and defeated ascended tourist. Hyun Woo was calculating the rewards and risks in his mind, and it was a big deal. But it could all go to his benefit, he had been imprisoned for twelve years, it couldn't be left like that. 
He asked how high the rank had to be to learn about the creation of the tower and the identity of his jailer. No less than the highest ranking, the stupid android Av answered him. If he keeps catching all the ascendants, he will definitely raise his rank to the necessary rank. Information must be paid for. So be it. He's ready because it's better than nothing, Hyun Woo asked how many kills would be required. The little android rubbed her chin thoughtfully and couldn't exactly do the math. The ascenders were divided into tiers, each with its own weight and price, she reported, as if she were an experienced bounty hunter. Five heads of elite rising would need Hyunwoo to access the system, the cute android girl informed him. Hyunwoo wondered how much the head of the red-faced punk he had eliminated was pulling on. Crimson Horse Arkir, clarified the vedroid girl with a slave trader's swagger. She informed Hyunwoo that the level of a hiking enthusiast was the lowest among all the ascendants. Even the lowest level caused problems for the hermit forcing him to use the absurdity technique. The conversation was more productive this time, and at least he understood where he should go next. Hyunwoo was satisfied, even if not completely. Late at night, he returned to Shinken's apartment, where he was staying for free. He sat in the library with many books on the shelves, studying his status and pondering the new information. Hyunwoo stared at the blue screen until his eyes began to slit with pain, but he continued to stare at it. No matter how much he sighed and thought about it, he still wouldn't get any new answers. Whether Earth enters the tower or not, he will do what he must and be what he will. It is the world's business to save the world. It does not have to think of everything at once on its own. Big power is a big headache for Hyun Woo. He was already getting weighed down by this burden. What he had seen and learned did not essentially change his previous goals, just that now his journey would be a little longer. He'll just concentrate on the immediate goals, kill the five ascendants, nothing else to think about. The phone vibrated, breaking him from his deep thoughts. It was little Seoyan calling. The last few days, it had become like he had a babysitter constantly patronizing him, even though he was the one who was older and taking care of the snotty schoolgirl in the tower. Though now he had turned into a young girl, Hyun Woo picked up the phone. And suddenly, he heard her shrill, excited voice. Seo Yeon asked if he was watching the news right now. She demanded that he get up immediately and turn on the breaking news. Hyun Woo turned on Korea's Channel 1 and started listening. He didn't immediately realize what it was about. When it came to him, he was the subject of heated discussions on the country's main channel. He was accused of murder. It was no longer a joke case like before. Journalists were seriously discussing the murder of Hunter Ares in their dungeon, blaming Kim Hyun Woo for everything. The mad hermit was even taken aback by the unprecedented insolence of his opponents. What was happening amused him. In any case, there was nothing to fear. After all, the hunters lived in no law. They met at Kwan Seo's country house. It was quieter there, away from people and reporters and their cameras. The phones had been ringing off the hook since the night before, making Hyun Woo very angry. He was thinking about throwing them all in a bucket and burning them with gasoline. Little Seo Yeon slammed her fists on the table and was indignant because it was Hyun Woo who was the culprit behind all the commotion. Twelve years later, he had left the tower and was now a very famous man she chastised him. And because of recent events where he single-handedly closed the rift, other countries are watching, and now everyone is discussing him as a murderer. And yet she warned and worried about his dealings with Ari's many times, nagging him Seo Yan. Hyun Wu only sluggishly waved away all the exclamations. He had long since lost all social instincts. People's opinions didn't bother him. But for the sensitive Seo Young, this was already over the line. She flared up more than before at his request to calm down. Hyun Wu felt confusion. Something vaguely and incomprehensible called social relationships were invading his mind. It was like a wife dripping on his brains. But wait a minute, he wasn't married at all, the hermit thought. And yet, he could not grasp the reason why she was so anxious about him. But wasn't that self-evidently exclaimed the spunky girl with the heightened maternal instinct? Hyun Woo scraped out the remnants of his social skills, the last update he'd gone through back in high school, which was an eternity ago. Doesn't she like him already? He blurted out without reading the atmosphere. 
mood and attitude at all, showing a third-grade level of human comprehension. From such a blunt and inappropriate question, little Seo Yan was at a loss for words, as if someone had kicked her in the butt. It took her a full minute to come to her senses while she just stared at him with her blue oceans of eyes. All kinds of torturous executions of sinners flashed through her mind, and she noted the ones where the victim lives a very long time. You can get a pacemaker for such jokes. The girl storm turned into a real storm. If he says one more word, she'll give him electrophoresis like that. Seo Yeon was unrecognizable, a real witch in her place. Hyun Wu decided not to really piss her off anymore and shut up. It's better to believe a woman when he promises you something. Shim Ken came to the aid of his suffering friend and took the oddball hermit to task. He brought his cell phone, which was ringing off the hook with hundreds of calls from reporters. On top of that, Hyun Wu came out at the top of the rankings for internet search terms, and with him, so did his friends. Hyun Wu was excited because he thought it was his first time there. But Kwon Sung noticed that the hermit had been there before. Shim Ken started reading the articles. Most of it looked like a dirty slander on Hyun Wu and his comrades, getting to every little detail. Shim Ken drilled the hermit with a reproachful glare. The magnitude of the problem exceeded that which could simply be dismissed. But Hyun Wu still doesn't understand why he's so excited, as if he had nothing to do with it. The always reserved friend huffed. Unlike Hyun Wu, he cared a lot about public opinion. He had a responsibility for the guild. Kwon Sung was on his wavelength like Hyun Wu. He didn't worry about anything. Everything was simple for him. His friend's problems were his problems. The rest didn't matter. Hyun Wu checked with Kwon Seo when the press conference for the case would start. It was only half an hour away, and Kwon Sung asked if Hyun Wu was ready to speak in front of people. Shim Ken stirred like a fire the news completely unexpected to him. Tiny Seo Young was also unaware of the plans of the insane detachment worker. Hyun Woo calmed them down because he had prepared himself to meet the reporters and was very confident. But the couple just didn't believe him. It's not Hyun Woo's custom to negotiate by word of mouth. He's not going to beat up journalists. They worried. Kwan So, who knew everything beforehand, laughed. He was amused by their reaction. Hyun Woo was a bit confused and didn't know what to say to this. His friends didn't trust him at all. It seems that the comrades were firmly doubting his capacity, which made Hyun Woo huff. The Ares Guild has started an after-hours session dedicated to an experienced player. Boss Hook Song Woo nervously tapped his index finger on the table as he listened to the deputy's report. Yu Byung minted that everything is going according to plan. After leaking to journalists, they launched bot farms and raised the topic online. The slanderers had done a good job, and the attitude towards Hyun Wu changed to negative. People reacted strongly to the unjustified murder. Hook Seong knew how to manipulate public opinion, give people a reason to hate. They'll do the rest on their own. Everything was going well, even too well. Satisfied, he spread out in his chair, waiting for positive news. The press conference was scheduled for two o'clock in the afternoon in order to have time to prepare everything. Hyun Woo wasn't going to hide his head in the sand. Judging from the social polls and their dynamics, as well as decent bribes, Hyun Woo will have a hard time at the conference, Yu Byung confirmed. This is the power of money, Hyuk Seong Woo thought to himself. Money gives unlimited power and influence and allows you to get even more money. That's how step by step you build your empire. Money is the grease for the wheels of an all-out war for domination. In order to win this game, Hyuk Song decided to attack first when the opponent was not yet ready. And now Hyun Woo is walking on very thin ice. And when the ice cracks, he, the guild leader Ares, will be waiting for him. And thus, moving people like pawns, he will always be one step ahead of his opponents, thought Hyuk Song. Hyun Woo is inconsistent, harsh with authorities, He's an unruly lunatic who doesn't know how to do business in society, and that's his vulnerable point. This conference is a real battlefield. It will be held live, which means that changes must be reacted to instantly, Hyuk Sun concluded. Yu Byung took care of Plan B and sent his men there just in case. Hyuk Seong Wu quenched a slight nervous shiver of excitement. He had prepared everything. Now he would destroy the next enemy. A gloating smirk blossomed on his face. 
Revenge is a dish that is served cold. Hyun Woo shouldn't have messed with him. Spotlights brightly illuminated the conference venue so that nothing was hidden from the camera lenses. Hyun Woo sat alone almost like an interrogation, but he held himself proudly and courageously without changing his habits. The crowd was hungry for fresh blood. As soon as the interview began, journalists pounced on him with questions under the flashes of hundreds of cameras. Bread and spectacle. The audience cheered in anticipation of a great show, but, as always in such cases, in pursuit of hype and news. Even someone like Hyun Woo, with blunted social instincts, felt a tremendous pressure, as if he was standing in front of a pack of hyenas. Yet he made the first move, taking matters into his own hands at once. He immediately stated that he would not follow the official rules, but would remain himself and speak as he knew how. He pretended that he hadn't heard all the previous questions at all, which embarrassed the journalist. The first question was about his well-being. The reporter wanted to catch him. If Hyun Woo said he was fine, he would be accused of being insensitive. But Hyun Woo didn't make up any more and answered, as is, that he felt lousy. Such straightforward, unadorned candor embarrassed the journalist, who hadn't expected it at all. But ordinary people were touched by such frankness. The crowd always liked upstarts, rebels, people with character, scandals, intrigues, investigations. Hyun Woo passed the floor to the next reporter by simply pointing his finger. This time he was asked directly if it was true that he was guilty of murder. Hyun Woo immediately gave an affirmative answer, accepting all the accusations in one fell swoop. This made a lot of people in the audience shudder. Usually a person makes excuses for themselves when they are accused. What can they do if he really is a brutal killer? Hunters live outside the law. Fortunately for them, Hyun Woo suggested that they listen to his version of events first and then draw conclusions, because after all, this isn't a court of law. He took matters into his own hands again and controlled the reactions of the crowd. Finally, his words were backed by boundless power. He began by telling everyone the backstory of their conflict with the Ares Guild. Hyun Woo merely refused their recruiters, but the Ares Guild it didn't like it. At that time, he didn't know what it would be like. And then Hyun Woo turned on the tape. The tape had Sean Gan's voice confessing that he was Ares' hitman, and they were his employers. The new evidence and the circumstances of the case caused a stir. It fundamentally changed Hyun Woo's original view as a cold-blooded killer. The people in the audience instantly became excited. It's not every day you hear someone hiring hitmen. The record kept playing, giving an unmistakable indication of exactly what Sean Gunn intended. The truth shocked. The unprecedented brutality of the killer reached their ears even as a recording. After that, there could be no discrepancies, provided the record is authentic. Hyun Woo let them listen to the whole thing until the very end, for more effect. Sean Gan's piercing scream marked the end of the story. For a few moments, the entire audience forgot how to breathe and came to their senses. They were rethinking everything that had been said about Hyun Woo earlier and their positions on it. One of the journalists wanted to know more details and asked about the place where the recording was made. Hyun Woo confirmed that this was the same place that had already been trumpeted everywhere in the Ares Guild, the Swamp Dungeon. He went there to catch the boss, but now it turns out the story isn't being told the way it really was. As if it was Ares who was the victim of the attack and assassination attempt, not the peaceful hermit who never harmed anyone. This fundamentally reversed everything, making the accusations false and simply slander. If anyone doubts he can provide other information, Hyun Woo was very confident. But a journalist is not easily confused and he immediately asked about something that could prove the authenticity of the recording. The question sounded weighty. It wouldn't be dismissed so easily. Who would prove that Hyun Woo wasn't a manipulator? However, things were going exactly as he had hoped. He allowed himself a condescending smirk. This question was a real gift to him. He wanted badly to be asked. Hyun Woo pulled out another smartphone and shook it in front of hundreds of cameras. The mad hermit suspended intrigue, biding his time, waiting for the right pause without giving it all away at once. The reporter hesitated. He went along with the hermit's ruse and didn't know what to say. Hyun Woo claimed that the cell phone he's holding belongs to the killer. In court, the evidence is usually considered individually. But at a press conference, more importantly, as you say, 
The reporter was bagging again. The phone itself is still locked, but if given to specialists, it could become an important piece of evidence. He brought it with him just to claim that he had such evidence. As for the assassin, <laughs> Hyunwoo stated that he could only resist because he was a rookie who had barely left the tower. <laughs> he completely captured all of the people's attention by deftly playing on their emotions. Now by his calculations in the eyes of the public, he must appear as a victim of assault and a man who used self-defense. Hyunwoo was merely fending off an attack from a more experienced and older hunter. According to Hyunwoo, during their fight, Sean Gunn accidentally got into the jaws of an alligator. The reporter was finally confused by Hyun Woo's testimony. Just now, he said that everything that happened was an accident. Hyun Woo responded that there is no contradiction. In a way, he was involved in Sean Gang's death. Even though the killer was killed by an alligator, Hyun Woo isn't the kind of person you should be relaxed about fighting. His every word was recorded by the hundreds of hands that were texting. Hyun Woo stated that he had heard a lot about Ari's credibility, how awesome the guild was, and that was why he wanted to keep their conflict quiet. However, Ares were the first to decide to play in the public eye, and dirty at that, and it went too far. The conference ended well for him, Hyun Woo leaving the buildings in reflection, not the first time their paths had crossed. Ares had once again annoyed him, and he couldn't let it go. Deputy Yu Byung could no longer sit. His hemorrhoids had reopened. The conference results had derailed all his efforts, but now it was even worse. Everything turned upside down over a tiny little thing, a tape recorder. Their guild had been badly screwed over, and the reporters wouldn't miss it. Zhang Wu spoke up. The problems of a large, well-known guild worried them more than the death of a single hunter. Yu Byung choked with anger, imagining the kind of beating he would get from his boss. He almost cried as he realized he had lost to a weirdo teenager. Yu Byung thought he was playing against a boy, a simpleton who could only swing his fists. No matter what, they can no longer let their guard down. Who knows what other surprises the mad hermit will throw up. The group went back to the restaurant to celebrate the victory, the successful conclusion of the conflict with society. Shim Ken marveled at Hyun Woo's foresight in keeping a record of the fight, as if he knew he might need it. Both Kwan Sung and Baby Seo Yan were surprised at such an insight that even the hitman's cell phone was brought by Hyun Woo. It's simple, Hyun Woo said, because he lied out loud and made it up. It's about the killer's cell phone, of course, he added, seeing the amazed looks on his friends' faces. But it didn't help much. They were still perplexed by what they had heard. They demanded that everything be told to them immediately, as it was, and that they not be led around by the nose. Hyun Woo reiterated his words, saying that he is not holding the killer's cell phone in his hands. It's not evidence in any way. However, the tape is real, and they were so hot on his ears about Ares being dangerous that Hyun Woo got the idea to record the conversation. And the killer's imaginary cell phone, it's just one of Shin Ken's devices that changed them like a girl's shoes. Little Seo Yeon raged. This kind of reversal worried her more. What if the phone's authenticity was established? Hyun Wu answered her with a satisfied look that no one would know about the fake evidence. It was quite simple, Hyun Wu reasoned, because the Ares Guild would come after him much faster than the police would come after him. The girl was taken aback by his answer. She still couldn't quite grasp the mad hermit's train of thought. The Ares Guild would definitely make contact, he assured her, not bringing the matter to an investigation. Seo Yan wondered. From Hyun Woo's words, everything was working out fine. But when he solved some problems without creating others. She's still adamant that a big kid as a crazy hermit needs an eye on him. The company laughed merrily, teasing little Seo Yan with her hyper-responsibility for Hyun Woo. The hermit offered to go back to eating. Since he had returned, he had only had two favorite things to do, eat and sleep. Of course, there was another occupation, killing enemies, Hyun Woo thought of the Ares Guild. They were considered a world guild, main headquarters in the U.S., dungeons in different parts of the world, scattered everywhere. They were able to pick up the most dungeons in Korea, making that beachhead very important. Hyun Woo calmly destroyed the meat in his plate, Whatever the Ares Guild undertook, treaty or slander, he didn't care. 
The reputational losses of the huge guild far surpassed any possible losses Hyun Woo might suffer. He had nothing to lose. With these thoughts, he walked out into the parking lot outside the restaurant. Late that night, they parted ways, Shea Ken again acting as his personal chauffeur. But Hyun Woo suddenly asked his friend to leave him alone and said he would walk. Shea Ken was surprised. It usually meant that his crazy roommate would definitely get up to his neck in a new story. But Hyun Woo remained adamant and simply waved his hand without going into details. She can looked after his comrade. You can't be his babysitter forever. Sighing, he decided to leave it at that and stay out. After all, his friend had survived on his own in the tower for over a dozen years. Hyun Woo found a convenient place, narrow, dark, and completely deserted. A perfect place for a hot date. He walked through the night, breathing in the coolness, completely open, as if inviting conversation. It didn't take long for the interlocutors to arrive and Hyun Woo caught a glimpse of their presence. He stopped so they could catch up with him, come closer bander lords, he thought. The masked enemies cosplayed the Leaf Village clan. They appeared even faster than he expected and surrounded him. Hyun Woo met them with bravado. Once he was alone, his stalkers immediately showed up. The group of fans of his skill moved closer. They didn't leave any space at all. More like Assassin's Creed fans, their ringleader invited Hyun Woo to visit the chief for a cup of tea. After taking a closer look at their cosplay, Hyun Woo liked it. He had been playing this game since before the tower. A cosplay gang leader contemplates what to do with a recalcitrant client. Hyun Woo inquired who the distinguished gentleman was that sent him an invitation with an escort. However, the costumed gang leader replied that their boss prefers to remain incognito. Of course, Hyun Woo knew who invited him and why. He only provoked the underhanded goons he refused the tea party, to which the head of the theater troupe politely warned that he would use force and escort the guest out anyway. This turn of events was highly expected and moreover desired by the mad hermit. He reminded the cloak and dagger servants that he had gained considerable fame since the glacial crack. And I noticed to the gentlemen in front of him that they're very confident to say such things. The flip-flops of fate have come into motion. Astrologers foreshadow an increase of skeletons in the graveyard. The historical reenactment enthusiast perked up, reacting to the sudden movement of the target. But the mad hermit just walked past them and squatted down. There are seeds, and if I find them, he turned to the hapless role player. Hyun Woo pulled a few bulbs from the bed and politely asked to come over to him. Fresh onions are good for health, said nutrition fighter hermit Hyun Woo. This is something the killers couldn't stand anymore. Their honor and dignity as cosplay fans is on the line. Their leader shook with anger. He couldn't stand vegans and preferred cooked food. Realizing that the negotiations had come to nothing, the killers moved on to apprehension. The leader ape-like spread his arms and launched some kind of magic, his palms glowing with spotlights. He flew up at Yun Wu and pointed his hands in his direction. The underbelly glowed with a bluish glow. But the lettuce was quickly interrupted by too long a cast and meaningless shouts of third-rate assassins. The ringleader flew up like a rag doll from the impact. They may have been experienced cosplayers, but they were like children against the mad hermit. The henchmen of the ringleader of the theater company panicked having just lost their leader. Bearing their short blades, they went on a desperate attack. They too had their own aces up their sleeves, which they hurriedly put to use. Various skills worked in Hyun Woo's favor. Their combined attack looked promising. They combined reinforcements, cold weapons, and entangling the opponent. The attack went coherently, simultaneously from all directions. It seems that the troop has rehearsed a lot. The scraping of metal and flashes of magic cut through the silence of the nighttime back alley where there was not a single window. But something had gone very wrong in their rehearsals. The victim should have already been thrashing in mortal agony immediately after the blow. Instead, however, their blades couldn't even penetrate the tracksuit of the mad hermit. They tried to pierce with a proper thrust or cut, but it was all in vain. The steel wouldn't take Hyun Woo. The hermit gave them a scornful look and asked if they were ready for prophylactic enemas. The patients lay still spread out on the ground in an even layer. There was only one left that was still standing on his feet. His flesh was shaking with fear. The mad hermit took him by the scruff of the neck like a shitting kitten. 
the hapless medieval cosplay enthusiast begged for mercy. Hyun Woo decided to keep him because he needed a survivor who could think, assuming he knows the mad hermit who sent him that insistent invitation to meet. A deep night had descended on the mountains. The stars twinkled brightly between the clouds. Far from the city, they were not blinded by the light of streetlights and cars. A concrete bunker with thick walls and strong guards was tucked away in the thicket of the forest. So sturdy that even the local acolytes were surprised at the extent of capital investment in this building. Another acolyte objected that it was only because of the secure rear that they were able to conduct their business. They were expecting a special famous guest today and were looking forward to this meeting. The experienced player Kim Hyun Woo had caused so much trouble for the guild that every member knew about him, and everyone wanted to get even with him as soon as possible. The arrogant Kim Hyun Woo was annoying with his fearlessness, but today he would be properly beaten and brought here. They had all the amenities for a comfortable stay, a real healing sanatorium. Their sweet conversation was interrupted by a blow from the sky, as if something heavy had fallen from a great height, smashing into the ground. The guards stirred, trying to make out in the dust what was going on and who had come to them. The star arrived to sign autographs, Hyun Wu, holding his guide tightly, clods of dirt and dust raining down from above. This is the very place where he had an appointment for tea, he asked his guide. The one fawned like a beaten dog and nodded his head. If he had a tail, he would have wagged it. The door guards were slow to realize what was happening. They were asking the right questions. Where was the first team? They couldn't understand that real men don't need an escort. They come on their own. There was a distant thud in the thick walls of the bunker as if from a blow. The sound came from somewhere above, reported a junior henchman. The source of the noise was getting closer, and they realized that the sound was coming from inside the elevator shaft. The door exploded with a flash of light and a body flew into the hallway. All of the bunker's servants stood at attention waiting for the unknown enemy to attack. The steel doors of the elevator collapsed and a man entered the room without an invitation card, but in a tracksuit and flip-flops. Hyunwoo looked around the interior of the actual villain base, and he really liked it. He immediately estimated the cost of the capital work to set up the bunker. The guild had plenty of money and a little more. The first henchman demanded the intruder introduce himself, foolishly holding up his sword. Hyun Woo smiled. He was anticipating a long autograph ceremony. In anticipation, he ignited an aura of darkness and moved ominously towards the future fan base. In the treatment rooms of the Mountain Forest Sanatorium, there was the whole range of instruments and exercise machines necessary for rehabilitation. There was also a patient with a full course of dental therapy, nail massages, and cautery. Esculapus healed the girl with the skull tattoo to the point of exhaustion. She had already undergone quite a few courses of their therapy. Hook Xiong Wu personally interrogated the victim, demanding that he give up valuable information. He pressured her morally, telling her that her fellow ped guildmates had long ago given up on her. No one would come to her aid. If she doesn't talk, she'll die. Ari's boss kept trying to get the stubborn girl to talk. He offered to give her away her friends receiving a generous reward and her life in return. But the girl captive remained speechless, her gaze remained misty, but she would not give up. Hook Seong Wu, completely unskilled at interrogation, quickly lost his temper. The girl hadn't stabbed herself in weeks. Empty threats couldn't touch her. She had accepted her death long ago. The henchmen asked the boss if they could kill her in that case. Hook Seong Wu told them to do what they want. She's a useless witness anyway, since she's not talking. The local orderlies nodded happily. Now they could have no fear if their toy accidentally broke. During these days of the week, the sadistic henchman had grown accustomed to his prey. Now he had gained complete power over it. A happy line of Hyun Woo fans stretched out on the floor of the bunker with a personal autograph prominently displayed from Hyun Woo. Hook Seong froze. He wanted an autograph too, but he didn't have time, and now he found it difficult to act. A blade with a cobra head shaped blade glinted in the dungeon's semi darkness. The desperate henchman lunged at the mad hunter with some sort of pitchfork. Hyun Wu could have been signing autographs all day. He easily dodged a punch to the neck area. 
and signed off with a straight funeral leg kick to the stomach of another fan. The text message reached the addressee and he lay down to rest after a hard day's work. Hyunwoo was puzzled. He was invited to tea, but there was no tea. Not even the teapot was fired up. Hook Songwoo was already wishing he'd made a black bai tea with buns. The remaining henchmen also froze in indecision. They didn't even have cups. The director was biding his time. Every second could save the situation. He was desperately looking for a way out. The strength of the enemy in front of him surpassed the A rank. There was no doubt about it. The only people in the bunker were rank B plus minions and rank A plus assassin cosplayers. The very best assassins that close to the S rank went as part of the first team for Hyunwoo. At the moment, the director didn't have any assets that could handle the mad hermit and plug the gap. He had handled the big cleavage alone, after all. He hated to admit it, but her boss was strong, Hyuk Songwoo pondered. His enemy was definitely worthy of S rank. The unarmed guild leader clenched his fists. Even more than just S rank, Mad Hunter was definitely at the top of their list. There are hundreds of names on the list. The world is huge. Hook Song had barely reached the middle with great difficulty, weighing his strength. The Mad Hunter got tired of waiting and called out to his opponents. If there was no tea, then everyone would get an autograph. Hook Siong broke away from his musings. Still, his defeat was obvious. Now the bargaining would begin. Hyun Wu rushed him into a decision. Only two chairs, one with tea and one with autographs. Whichever one you sit on, whichever one you offer to your friends. Hook Song flared up due to his youth. He could hardly contain his wounded pride. But clenched his teeth and bit his tongue, I'd have to drink tea, even if the bunker only had coffee. He chose to negotiate, as long as there is hope to reduce losses. Pride should be set aside. With a man whose power was incalculable, they sat down at the table. Hyuk Siong waited. Every situation had its advantages and disadvantages. It was necessary to learn more about the enemy while there was a chance. Hyunwoo sat down at the table and started the conversation first. He spoke from a position of strength and could demand anything he wanted. It's about time we demanded from the insolent director of Ares, compensation loser pays. Heuk Seungwoo swam. He looked like a fool. He was having trouble thinking due to his excitement. This was the first time he was sitting at the table like a beaten dog. Hyun Wu asked if the man was deaf and made his demands for all the damage he had done. He began by attempting a murder in the swamps, where he was accosted by Sean Gunn, and about today's group assassination attempt on him, which couldn't be called routine. The Mad Hermit also demanded compensation for libel in the media and moral damages. Did Ares think they'd get away with it? The Hermit wondered. Bidding began, Huck soon asked how much compensation we were talking about. Hyun Wu's appetite was big. 10 billion, and a few entry-level dungeons, which was more important than money. Hyuk Song was taken aback. He wasn't prepared for such a loss. He wasn't prepared for a loss at all today. He was going to win. A fist struck the table. The future of the Korean branch of the Ari's guild was at stake. Hyuk Song Woo vehemently rejected such crazy demands, considering them overstated. But Hyun Woo just brushed aside these objections. <laughs> he knew that the Ari's guild had enough money. The lack of resources didn't work. The brash hermit realized that the guild wasn't poor. Money could be easily collected, it just took time. But entry-level dungeon rights is a different matter altogether. Hyun Wu, seeing the director's confusion, threatened to increase the amount by another five billion if he hesitated. Hook Seong once again had to swallow everything as it was. He was completely in the hands of the enemy. But still decided to play diplomacy, maybe they could come to an agreement. He asked the hermit why he didn't join the guild if he needed money. By joining the guild, he would have gotten money, power, and dungeons anyway. And he, Hook Shong, could guarantee him that. Hyun Wu was surprised at the sudden attempt at direct bribery. The office plankton had gone completely brain dead, he thought. Why be enemies when you can cooperate favorably? Hyuk Seong Wu continued. But his words elicited only contempt from the hermit. His enemies were just pathetic cockroaches. They're negotiations. It's not a deal, but a surrender. Why the unnecessary words asked Director Hyunwoo. On top of that, he demanded a prisoner because he could. All jackals are similar to each other. Hyunwoo snickered at Director Hyuk Seo. 
They think they're cool, they're in a pack, and they're always saying the same thing. Aries, 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 the hermit continued. But against true strength, even a powerful guild is nothing to Hyun Wu. Hook Song was once again trying to move to threats. After all, there were other guild branches. Wasn't this newcomer a bit overconfident? But Hyun Wu simply cut off these attempts to stall for time and demanded a straight answer. Either accept his terms or die here and now, there was no third way. He stood up confidently from the table, signaling that the negotiations were over. Hook Song squeezed his pride and pushed it deep inside. There was nothing else he could do about it. Late in the evening, Hyun Wu returned to Shi Kyung's apartment, where he was staying for free. Shi Kyung met him in the living room where he was watching the evening news, but a glance at his friend silenced him. He saw something incompatible with each other, water and oil, ice and flame, something that could not exist in nature. Hyun Wu, part-time crazy hermit, came home late at night with an unknown girl in the same dress. A crimson sky blanketed the ruined castle, the fire still blazing around it. A lone warrior walked among the ruins, the wind chasing his long black hair. The smoke of the conflagration enveloped everything around. The warrior contemplated the scene. A tower of Babel loomed before him, as tall as the sky, its thin spire lost in the clouds. The warrior looked carefully at the structure. It was the ninth floor. Early in the morning, Shiken's apartment was buzzing with heated discussions, the aftermath of the night. Hyun Wu told him how much money he'd gotten from the greedy director Ari's, and that the girl came with it. Shikyung was amazed that the greedy bastard Hyuk Seong Wu had given everything away, but Hyun Wu replied that he had no choice. The always cautious Shuke shifted his gaze to the girl and asked who she was. The mad hermit declared that the girl is a valuable hostage, and when she comes to her senses, he must question her. But he wouldn't tell me exactly what it was about, citing that it was a private matter as Hyun Wu usually brushed it off. Personal business. Shuken couldn't figure out why this bum was living at his place and dragging anyone around and not even paying. But he didn't have time to be upset. It was boss appearance day in the guild, and Shuken was off to mop them up. The captive girl had been given first aid, was badly bruised and tortured, and was now sleeping peacefully. Hyun Wu couldn't miss looking at her unusual skull-shaped tattoo, the outline of which seemed familiar to him. It couldn't have been a mere coincidence. The resemblance between them was too great. A long time ago, back when he lived in the tower, he carved himself a skull mask from the bones of a monster. The tattoo on the girl's body repeated the outline of that very same mask with uncanny accuracy. He asked for status, activating the information skill on the girl. The girl was nothing special. Her characteristics were ordinary. Hyun Wu couldn't know her, so he decided to ask around when she woke up. Suddenly, the status window flashed up again, even though he hadn't called it up. Hyun Wu was confused. Everything was happening too fast. The stupid system didn't give him time to prepare. The girl Chobit Av was sitting at a table in an empty room as usual. Hyun Wu didn't understand what she could possibly need. The android was tight-lipped, as usual, and seemed to be coming out of standby mode. And then it beeped in its thin digital voice that someone was on his way. The bewildered hermit clarified who he was talking about, since the V-droid attached so much importance to it. It was about the next rising tourist, the bucketoid girl said seriously. And who is this in-tourist when he shows up? Hyun Wu asked in a concerned voice. Like a priestess of a techno cult, she summoned a system screen, just like the mad hermits. Unfortunately, the status window showed exactly the same notification that Hyun Wu had already received without any additional data. Hyun Wu urgently made an adjustment by tapping the indicator on the top of his head. He angrily reprimanded the electronic chatterbox for wasting her time since she had nothing new to add. The silver-haired bucketoid started to excuse herself, rubbing her bruised spot. She just couldn't give what the system forbade her. But Av sharply denied all the allegations, saying she still had something to say. Hyun Wu realized that she had called him to warn him about something. The new rising tourist is illegal, much more dangerous than the previous one, and it takes training to battle him. Hyun Wu calmed down and asked the bucketoid Av how exactly he should prepare. He must awaken his magic as soon as possible, or he would be in danger, 
the shaggy android informed him. But Hyunwoo heard his friend. He was only interested in the ascendant rank, after all. He was an important target. Av answered in the negative, for a battle with a high-ranking illegal would require much more than just awakening magic. High-ranking ones are capable of creating a real apocalypse. It's too early for him to get his hands on those, the girl replied. Another important question remained, where exactly would the new cleft in space appear? The Vedroid girl let out a negative reply, straining in anticipation of the blow. It's all about the fact that the Ascendant's appearance depended heavily on his abilities and skills. The Mad Hermit was summarizing their short and productive conversation it was necessary so as not to miss anything. The android was always being dark and underhanded, which pissed her off a lot, as now she couldn't help it. Hyunwoo felt like smacking the bucket head on the top of his head again, just to blow off steam. Anticipating danger, the android covered his head with his hands, resenting such an injustice. How could he beat a cute little girl like her, a boar with no parental upbringing, blurted out the Chobit girl. Hyunwoo shuddered. It had been a long time since he had been asked about his parents. He barely remembered their faces. He told her that her parents died in a car accident years ago. The frightened android began to bow and apologize, stammering and babbling. But Hyunwoo replaced anger with mercy, his long-forgotten past faintly worried. The shaggy android hung dipping new evaluations and patterns due to this information. The man in front of her, contrary to past assessments, wasn't that bad and just had a difficult childhood. In the Iran Guild headquarters, there was a real commotion and angry shouts. Hyun Wu sat in the middle of the magic circle and lamented because he was promised that once he sat in it, he would immediately feel mana. In his hearts, he swiped his hand across the floor, threatening to erase the magical inscriptions. Much to little So Young's dismay, the circle was worth as much as a palace. The mad hermit wondered if he could be a man without mana. But Seo Yeon ruled out that possibility. All hunters possessed magic in one way or another, she explained tiredly. And there was no one in her practice who couldn't unlock mana in the presence of a mage like her and with a magical circle of concentration. They continued to argue heatedly. Little Seo Yeon was already exhausted from dealing with him as Shih Ken came in. The friend inquired, their condition both looking annoyed and frustrated. He found out that Hyun Woo Ta and couldn't unlock mana, even though he had been sitting here for four days. He came not only to taunt the hermit, but also to bring him a registered letter. Shuken asked if Hyun Wu had founded a guild, and when he heard that, Seo Yeon also cried out. She was very surprised that Hyun Wu had created a guild and she didn't know anything about it. Hyun Wu created a guild with the name Guardian, gaining several dungeons and a cash bounty. He got a little teased that being on guard wasn't about a crazy hermit. Hyun Wu changed the subject by asking about the hostage girl. The girl with the skull tattoo still hadn't come to her senses. Hyun Wu wasn't happy about this news. He was worried that she might be brain dead and then she's useless. But Shu Ken calmed him down, saying that she was fine. She was just in deep shock. The only thing left to do was to wait. Hyun Wu squawked like a small child, completely unaware of the feeling the mana was supposed to cause. Pretty Seo Yeon, after trying everything possible, suggested that she seek help from other psychics. Shu Ken immediately realized who the girl was talking about. The name was familiar to him, Nagauki Yasumi. Hyun Wu didn't understand anything at all. Everything sounded like elvish to him. Yimu was told about a female acupuncturist who can awaken the pathways of mana in Hyun Wu. He got excited about such a cool method and looked for information online. But the miracle woman lived in Japan, and one must fly there for a meeting, the hermit found out. He immediately abandoned the idea, and an annoyed wave of his hand, a suspicious crackling sound was heard. Hyunwoo looked at his hand and the source of the noise, and his soul went to his heels. His hand involuntarily erased some of the lines of the circle and destroyed its integrity. Tikai's city, Toby Hana, thought Shu Ken, looking at his friend. Oh, this is awkward, thought the mad hermit. He screamed under the lightning discharges, promising to pay for everything. Even Shu Ken got a kick out of it. There was a battle going on outside a dungeon in Tokyo, the wounded screaming, begging for mercy. The fighters called out to her for help. 
but the guild leader kept her eyes on her enemy. Naganawa Yasumi, the leader of the Izanami guild, stood completely defeated. The enemy left them no time to regroup and attacked mercilessly. Yasumi commanded everyone to duck as she spotted the enemy attack. But the jackasses in her squad hesitated. They had succumbed to panic and were not thinking straight. Delaying death, uh, the enemy's attack uh, swept them away, striking them with lightning discharges. Uh. The head managed to dodge with a deft jump, a blast of lightning passed by. She landed away from the impact zone of the unfathomable magic. The battlefield is littered with corpses and building rubble, with few survivors wounded. Dumb asses, the huntress muttered, you should have jumped, what wasn't clear. Through the noise of destruction, she heard a quiet step in her direction. The dreaded enemy stepped measuredly over her fallen comrades. In his hand, he clutched the heavy straight sword that had cut short so many lives. A tall, long-haired warrior stood over his defeated opponent. The guild leader couldn't find the words to describe his strength. What is he? she asked, looking death in the eyes. The girl was lucky to have dodged, the warrior thought, since that made her worthy of a response. He wondered what name he would introduce himself by. He has many names. Ripper, Destroyer, Scorpion, Thor, Lord Sidious, Electrophoresis. But the long-haired warrior introduced himself as Yong Ma. Push notification slammed into Yun Wu's face, making sure he didn't miss anything. Rising tourist appeared in Japan, and the hermit immediately told Shai Ken to get the car ready. They raced quickly to the airport, Shai Ken at the wheel, as usual in his role as personal chauffeur. In tourist has already made a splash in Japan, Hyun Wu learned from the news. He never learned magic and was a little worried about it. Shiken, who was working for free, asked his friend how long. After all, he had just refused to go and immediately agreed. What's the big deal? Shiken asked him. Business as usual, the hermit replied evasively and hurried the coachman away. Did you at least take the papers? asked the hermit's free chauffeur. Documents. Multi-passport. Hoofprints. Hyun Wu was going through the cash documents from the training tower in his memory. Mustache, paws, and tail, that's his credentials. The insane man with the seniority answered him. A tense silence hung in the room of the Japanese Hunters Association. One of the leaders asked Nakazawa how the woman stayed alive. He had seen her death on the news. Saved in time, she replied. The Bekapa artifact had saved her more than once. But she told of their enemy firsthand he is very powerful. After seeing her death on the first channels, the other hunters dropped their spirits and refused to help. But even if she were alive, there was little they could all do together, the chairman reasoned. No one came to the rescue and civilian casualties only grew. A familiar face appeared on the broadcast screen from the battlefield. A female acupuncturist recognized this world-famous hunter. The experienced player entered the rink in his nonchalant flip-flops. The mad hermit looked at his opponent appraisingly. The long-haired man also decided to silently play peekaboo. The information skill didn't work on the illegal tourist. People walk around and then lose their swimming trunks, Yunwu said to the illegal. The long-haired man wiggled his blade eloquently instead of a thousand words, and chopping with his longsword, showing his ID. Hyunwu tensed. The handwriting appeared illegible and the letters small. The tourist applied a long-range attack and sent him off to read on the sidelines. But the border guard had his own questions and would not accept the documents. A part-time border patrol agent issued a straight-face refusal to an illegal. Why do you, sir, immediately grab the saber? Asked the illegal. What a nuisance, thought the long-haired man asking questions. I decided to introduce myself properly, Chong Ma said the warrior swinging his sword. He attacked again from long range with a strong attack. Hyun Wu awkwardly ducked down, barely keeping up with his speed. The tourist turned out to be fast. The mad hermit had time to think. But not fast enough to hit it, the hunter recoiled. He discerned the enemy's technique, though he couldn't understand it at a glance. The long-haired man is seen waving once, but it's actually a lot of quick swings. If he gets caught, he'll cut it into thousands of pieces. Hyun Wu slapped his slippers. Close combat is the best thing for him since the opponent only has ranged attacks. Chong Ma blocked a straight punch with his blade sheath, but misses a left to the liver from the guard at half guard. Longshot flew to his corner of the ring and crouched down to rest. 
but the mad hermit would not let go of his rival, lying down to finish. Chong Ma quietly whispered to himself, Where is the second phase for the boss? How interesting, he said, spitting blood from his shattered lips. The illegal tourist caught fire like a hit transformer. Lightning bolts enveloped him from top to bottom like a Tesla tower. Changma asked the mad border guard a name. So far, no one has resisted him so stubbornly. So this is the second phase of the boss, Hyunwoo thought as he looked at the lightning discharges. The citizens were well settled in for the viewing. The only thing missing was popcorn. Shiken found out the details. While they were flying to Japan, a rift opened up. A lover of alternative medicine was glad for the reinforcement. Hyunwoo ran away as soon as the board landed, Shiken recalled. And now he's standing on the battlefield with the invasion, Shiken wondered. A vague suspicion crept into him. Could Hyunwoo really know where the rift would be? Hyunwoo dodged the discharges like crazy. He was hopping from side to side like a boar, like a minefield. What kind of mad skills, asked the hermit to the enemy. Are these skills? The long-haired man replied contemptuously. Chain lightning, sword lightning, aura lightning, the illegal electrician answered him. Nothing he used Chong Ma related to the system. The man connecting the chits moved as if in slow motion. Hyun Wu followed his every move with great difficulty. Dodge or retreat, thought the mad hermit. What to choose? He shifted abruptly, tugging on his flip-flops. Grabbed the illegal electrician by his kimono and pulled him sharply toward him. There was the sound of a bell as they collided foreheads. He might have gotten a concussion, but he got off with a slight scare. Chong Ma rubbed his bruised forehead. Fluttering like a boar like a bee, Hyun Wu didn't wait. Time for a game of rock, paper, scissors, lizard Spock. His palm turned into a fist. Hyun Wu used a crowning blow. The power of absurdity threw the illegal migrant off with a flash of light. Suddenly he also threw a stone. Hyun Wu got nervous, Hyun Wu. Flashes of discharges blinded the hermit's eyes with pain. Real bosses always fight until the third phase, the illegal electrician said. A halo of a huge circle of mana grew behind Chong Ma's back. Let him try to dodge it, the long-haired warrior said, raising a sheaf of lightning in his hand. The matter smelled fried. The mad hermit became nervous. He tore toward the illegal without waiting for the end of the spell's cast. Thunder God mowed on, the illegal electrician swung once, and with half the country without power, there was an explosion. Home theater fans watched the broadcast of the fight, dumbfounded. Real monsters thought Shin Ken as he watched the crazy fight. One sweep of the electrician god scraped the entire site clean with a fan. Good response, the illegal said to the enemy at his feet. Hyun Wu managed to grab onto the electrician's cloak at the last moment and avoided the blow. However, the illegal was called electrophoresis for a reason. Hyun Wu felt a pleasant tingling sensation in his body. The currents warmed him well and stimulated the right points. Push notification system dragged in right during the fight. The prophylactic currents opened up all his chakras and stagnation. Psychic, Hyunwu thought and bounced off the illegal tourist. Yong Ma looked puzzled. He was expecting a different result. Just in case, he began a second cast of killing magic. Chong Ma's skills were astounding, for they went beyond the system. Hyunwu remembered that he had read about a similar character in a lot of manga a strong fighter who had risen to the top of the martial arts. Yong Ma asked the hermit if he really wanted to continue after what he had seen. But he was not afraid, on the contrary. The electrophoresis stretched his shoulders perfectly. The long-haired man marveled at the guard's boldness, but he did not pity him. Hyunwu replied that he now knew the power of the dark side of the force. And now he's gonna kick illegal immigrants' ass. Chong Ma froze. The opponent had just gotten stronger. While Hyun Wu was in the tower and honed his martial prowess like the ancient masters, he could only blindly copy random movement from the John Ma Manhua. Now, however, the longtime teacher was right in front of him. His one move was enough for Hyun Wu to realize the essence of the martial arts he was imitating. The confident Chong Ma froze. He is not the only one who has a third phase. Almost instinctively, he attacked the mad hermit. But in vain, the uninvited student had just surpassed the teacher. Hyun Wu's technique repelled the ascendant's attack with wings of mana. In deference to the teacher and psychic, Hyun Wu decided to reveal all the cards. The technique they used was very simple. Gather mana at one point and blast away. The mad hermit combined the two techniques. 
he gathered mana and applied the absurdity strike. There was an explosion and everything disappeared in a blinding flash. The copter was filming for a live broadcast high in the sky. When the shockwave reached him, he fell to the ground and crashed. There is only one left on the battlefield, the elephant mountaineer from the movie. The pagoda of the Imperial Palace was drowning in the sunset rays. The Empress watched the broadcast, sitting comfortably on her throne. On the screen, the insane hermit applied the absurdity technique. A shiver ran through her body, from the familiar feeling of madness. The man on the screen is definitely a teacher, the Empress realized. Five years ago, when she first got into the Tower of Learning, even weak monsters could beat a girl to a pulp. Wounded, she despaired and was ready to give up. Kneeling down to accept fate and die was all she could do. But instead of death, salvation came to her. She heard monsters dying. The mad hermit in the skull mask destroyed the zombies in one fell swoop. Later, the hermit taught her how to fight, made her strong. He was like a teacher. The first man she accepted with all her heart and agreed to serve him, a mad hermit teacher. The empress had left the throne. The servants reported that there was only one zone left on her way to absolute power. In a month, they will take the last enclave, the acolyte said. But this time, the empress will go forward on the cutting edge of the attack. The girl was in a hurry to fulfill the promise she had made to her teacher, to build the world he deserved. Then she could meet him, the apprentice's dreams plunged. Soon the friends were back in Korea, on the first flight back. As soon as they stepped out of the building, they were blinded by camera flashes. A crowd of information-hungry piranhas pounced on them. Hyunwoo told the seagulls to shut up, they were asking too many questions and he promised that the always-balanced Shurken would answer all questions from reporters. Shurken didn't immediately realize the depth of the setup he'd gotten himself into. He's now a chauffeur, a housewife, and a superstar's personal agent and babysitter. It was a good time to run, but reporters surrounded him on all sides, and a friend sneakily threw Shay Ken to the piranha media. The mad hermit made his way to a friend's apartment, where he lived rent-free. So much trouble with people sticking everywhere he thought as he threw off his flip-flops. It's good to have a friend who's a fool. Hyun Wu is relying on him. He was met in the living room by a girl with a skull tattoo. She had recovered from her shock. She bowed to him in gratitude for his rescue. From the bottom of her heart, the girl expressed her gratitude. The girl's name was Sun Win, and Hyun Wu listened to her story. A messenger of the pedo guild, Ares sneakily captured the girl as she defended the dungeon. But Hyun Wu was interested in something else, so he asked her about the tattoo on her shoulder. The tattoo on her shoulder is a sign that she is a guild representative. The symbol means all under the sky. The mad hermit gloomed and clarified with the girl what that meant. There is only one sky above all. That's what the master said when beating this tattoo to the minion. Hyun Wu angrily interrupted her story by pounding his fist on the table. The girl shrank back in fear, not knowing what she could have done to anger him. But it wasn't about her at all, the mad hermit explained. He made a mistake in the past and now he's paying for it. The hermit was perplexed as to how the nonsense from the tower had seeped to the surface and come off the lips of another man. A long time ago, when Hyun Wu thought he would leave the tower if he achieved enlightenment in martial arts. Also suffered from eighth grader syndrome as if he'd been bitten by the king of pathos. He was talking crap, and now some idiot is spreading it through the meaning of tattoos. Bastard, Hyun Wu remembered the negligent student from the tower. This is definitely the simpleton he saved. Now he's the head of an entire guild, and a dark past can come to light. The mad hermit asked the girl to give something to the head. In order for him not to seek a meeting with him, Hyun Wu was terribly angry. A few days later, Hyun Wu sent Sun Win back to China and showed up at the studio. Host Lee Hai Young happily greeted the viewers of her show, recognized the bachelor. A shaggy-haired hermit in gym shoes appeared on the viewers' screens. Tiny Seo Yan almost choked on her coffee when she saw Hyun Wu. They could only wonder why he decided to appear on this show. The gloomy Shikan never came to his senses after the show and didn't want to know what Hyun Wu was up to. Hyun Wu paused. He was certainly used to living in society, but the hermit's habits were making themselves felt. So he bluntly said he came to the show to sell his garage and talk about his guild at the same time. 
The motherland is calling, said the hermit, all to join his guild. The trio of friends in the living room were left speechless after each of their friends' antics, all of them mucked out. They stared at the pile of boxes in front of them, Shik Yong asking Hyun Wu why he was doing this to them. Hyun Wu excused himself, saying that he himself hadn't expected so many responses to the guild membership. She can immediately said, no longer working for free, housewife, housewife, agent, driver, now personal assistant. As the friends went through the forms, Hyun Wu promised them access to his dungeons for their help. He was the only one who could ask for such a thing, the heads of the other guilds, Quan Seo told him. Creating a guild is a tedious endeavor. There are a lot of things to keep track of. So why would a hermit need a guild? Quan Seo asked. Money, money, and money again, followed the immediate reply. Hyun Wu earns money by clearing dungeons, and now he also has his own. Creating a guild will bring even more profit, replied the hermit. Someone wants to make up for a difficult childhood, little Seo Yun suggested. Hyun Wu took a quick look at one of the hunter's profiles and immediately rejected the candidate. The big guy roared like a bear, indignant. He shouted at Hyun Wu, did he read his resume? He is the most experienced C-class hunter, so why was he rejected? The mad hermit resented it in return. He didn't like the candidate a hell of a lot. Fuck off, dog, he yelled across the guild office at the fool. The most famous hunter from the rank dungeons left rejected and dejected. The mob boss stared at the status screen. He was skeptical. The Vedroid girl asked him out again after defeating the illegal. This time, instead of a guardian rank, he got an information skill pump. Vedroid added a new ability to the skill and pumped up the push notifications. Personality check, Hyun Wu wondered. The scanner was now doing the work of a psychoanalyst. He didn't know how to use the improvement at first, but then applied it in his first interview. Hyun Wu looked carefully at the girl who was squirming in front of him. And applied the new skill, a system window lit up above the huntress. A characterization fell out, a conciliator ambiguously, Hyun Wu thought. He looked at the other hunters sitting nearby and applied the skill. The dummies sat as still as a string. A window fluttered over each one. Sacrificial personality, strength in friendship, Hyun Wu was satisfied with it. He accepted all three, the hunters nearly died of happiness. The lazy hermit specially selected the hardest working ones to dump all the work on them. How can a guild interview go so quickly? Asked free half-time driver Shi Ken. Hyun Wu replied to him that he just picked hard-working simpletons. Honest enough, that's enough. The mad hermit didn't test their abilities because the fight would still be his. However, not a single S-rank hunter came on, the hermit noticed. S-rank is rare, explained driver Shi Ken. There are only a few thousand of them in the whole world. He told the hermit that while he was away, his friends had climbed to the top 200 of the world. If a hunter is on this list, he will be recognized everywhere, and everyone will want to hire him. Hyun Wu was surprised. His friends had really climbed high in the rankings. The hermit noticed another oddity. A lot of S-rank hunters were missing from the catalogs. They're dead, explained Hyun Wu, his free driver. Hyun Wu wondered, so many S-rankers had died. Are they really such weaklings? Normal hunters are highly dependent on the rank they have raised in the tower. After leaving the tower, you can raise no higher than three ranks. To overcome the ability barrier, you need an ST plus rank artifact, which can be obtained at the bottom of the labyrinth. There is a deadly battle going on in the maze for these items, and it has long since become a graveyard of S-ranked items. Another way to get the artifact is to kill the owner outside the labyrinth, Guide Shu Ken said. Such killers are called hunter killers, and they are removed from all lists. Hyun Wu recalled a few individuals he had dealt with in the past. They were the type. The crazy bastards of Ares, the hermit said. His enemies used dirty methods. A mad hermit has appeared in the apparent swamp. In a deal with Ares, it is now the property of Hyun Wu. He took quite a look around the new property where he had already been once before. Hyun Wu left free driver Shu Ken in the car and went to mop up the boss that came out of vacation. Skin, crocodile skin, bag, boots, and wallet, he hummed happily. Suddenly, out of nowhere, a mad hermit appeared. The idlers on watch were very surprised at this visit. The guards recognized him, and Hyun Wu recommended that they cuckoo quietly. After all, 
he is a serious man, and he has two whole flip-flops. The boys abruptly remembered the courtesy course from the mad hermit. This is his dungeon now, and he can go about his business here, Yunwu said. One slacker yapped something about a transfer not going through, but quickly quieted down. Hyunwoo strolled through familiar places, looking for a valuable hide. Suddenly, the mad hermit met a man in a zone with a boss no one else goes to. A man with a gun in a hip holster seemed to be waiting for the hermit. He said a polite hello and addressed him by name. The hunter knew who he was dealing with. Hyunwoo grimaced. Had the Ares Guild decided to crap in his slippers again? Guild, the passerby confirmed, and three more jumped out into the clearing beside them. Oh, another troop of cosplayers, Yunwu thought as the pandemonium group got into picture poses. They acted out scenes from the past over something in front of the hunter. Allegedly, they're formidable killers, work without witnesses, everyone knows them. The four goons lined up again and called out their names. Hyunwu didn't even bother to listen to them. At last, he waited for the end of the dismal performance of the strange company. The girl in the group said she was a high-level mage. This caught Hyun Woo's attention. But the haughty runt boasted, supposedly Hyun Woo must have known the great Mamazel. The mad hermit immediately shaved it off. These people haven't gotten a courtesy course in a long time. Shorty couldn't stand it and attacked first, dementia and courage. A very long cast began to cover up this delay, the short one again praising the great self. A large magic circle appeared under Hyun Woo's feet. The spell had finally worked. Purple tentacles grew out of the circle and entangled the mad hermit. Can draw circles, Hyun Woo concluded, while the girl was talking nonsense, like it wasn't the time to ask obvious questions. The mad hermit sighed, teaching fools only spoils them. He was asking to see if he should kill theatergoers or not. The boastful runt was horrified. The magic should have paralyzed Hyun Woo. Shorty's friends from the corpse rushed to her rescue in a bunch. The sun never set over China. The remote town drowned in the rays of eternal sunset. The underground bunker of the Windai Guild was completely destroyed. The boss of the guild and the bunker didn't live up to the invader's expectations at all. And that's the main base the girl said in a cold and cruel voice. Disappointed, the empress burned her boss with a scarlet gaze. How arrogant, mumbled the final boss of the level tiredly, all killed. He was left alone. The main forces would be coming up soon. The beauty looked at him confidently. Mockery, the wounded pedo guild enemy, was angry. Better death, he thought. The warrior slashed with his heavy sword as soon as the fierce beauty came close. He was horrified at how easily she dodged, as if she'd been expecting a blow. Though he's not worthy, but since the Empress wants to finish it faster, she'll do it. Rock, paper, scissors, lizard, Spock sounded words of power. She used a technique taught to her by the mad hermit. The power of absurdity, the greatest martial arts technique. The Empress took out the final boss in one hit. What a lovely day, what a lovely day, hummed the mad hermit's apprentice. Don't look for him. That's what the teacher conveyed to the empress. Sun Wind's henchwoman met the teacher before her. This made her angry. But he was waiting for his apprentice, the empress realized, and that was welcome. The teacher's words mean not to seek him out until all vows are fulfilled, until she builds a place worthy of heaven. Hyun Wu arrived at Cutie Seo Yan's guild. He owes a lot to the huntress. Pretty Seo Yan was very surprised by his appearance after meeting him at the entrance. He brought a useful shorty to fix the magic circle. He asked the slave just in case if she was sure she could fix the circle, and the captive nodded vigorously. Shorty naively asked if they would definitely let the enchantress go after that. Hyunwoo smirked and said to proceed. Pretty Seo Yeon recognized free slave power. Famous assassin wizard tentacle lover. How could he bring a murderer here? Little Seo Yeon asked. She was very surprised to hear his story about the puppet corpse of the pandemonium cosplayers. Hyunwoo's characteristics are definitely not okay, since he easily handled S-rank cosplayers, wondered the cutie. Hyunwoo thought they were weird too, but what can you do if the system has crooked developers? Even a Vedroid in this matter was powerless until the Guardian rank was raised. In any case, the runt is not dangerous. We'll plow on pain of death until exhaustion soothed the mad hermit. 
Kneeling on her knees, the runt begged for her life, for she is a reaper, a singer, and will do everything. To fix the circle, the short man did not need a staff or other tools. Hyun Wu handed the beautiful Seo Young, the short cosplayer's belongings, staff, and robe. Leaving the new slave in the care of pretty So Yun, the hermit went about his business. A satisfied Hyun Wu shopped for gifts for the Ares Guild. Worth giving them away, he thought, as he looked at the enemy guild's tower. The slippers of doom showed up on the horizon to bloody rains, astrologers reported. After all the events, the shaggy-haired hermit had 100% recognizability. The goofy goons stirred like boars in a pen when he entered. The funny people haven't yet realized that it's time to do the legwork or have to carry them off piece by piece in the building. Hyun Woo asked if Chief Hook Seong Woo was there and pulled out the gifts. The stick of justice, he wrote on the toy hammer. The polite hermit asked if everyone had health insurance. The game was called Hit the Mole, and Hyun Woo quickly got the hang of it. The citizens liked the gifts. They fell senseless with joy. The mad hermit swatted the guild hunters like flies. A couple guards stood in the way. Probably the bravest ones here, thought Hyun Woo. Perhaps they've already been signed off sick leave, he asked. The fair hermit. The dummies slowly flocked to the floor, out of fear of the common toy. Hyuk Seok listened to the call on speakerphone. Big trouble was coming his way. And with each shriek of useless goons, the buttocks clenched tighter. The mad hermit came to them with a single toy hammer. It's a shame they won't be able to wash it off for a long time if it's in the news. Whether to call the heads of the guild, the slippery headmaster fidgeted with worry. There was a gentle knock on the door, no time to think. The slippery principal popped out to greet the honored guests. How many years, how many winners, a fair hunter came in and said hello. The slippery headmaster's stomach rumbled violently at the unpleasant thoughts. Nakosha suckling, the fair hermit got straight to the point and sat his opponent down for further business negotiations. A pile of books sprinkled on the empty head. Not long ago, the partners discussed compensation for damages, and here we go again, Hunwu said. As soon as one costumed group finished touring, Hyuk Seok sent the next. Panday something, there was a group of assassins, the fair hunter marveled. Hyuk Seok wanted to answer, but clenched his teeth tighter, just in case they'd hit him again. It's too late to drink Borjomi, he resigned himself. Even S-rank is no match for crazy Hun Wu. Hook Seok wondered what would be taken from him this time and offered compensation. How good it was that they had established an intelligible form of communication, rejoiced the fair hermit. Twenty billion won, even his mouth turned sour, Hook Seok agreed. The chief instrument of negotiation fluttered in the hermit's hand. To land over the head of, a no-nonsense director Ares. Let him send anyone he wants, as long as he's willing to pay the bills, the mad hermit warned. Have him call an ambulance for useless knuckleheads, the hermit said one last time, and left the slippery director to streamline in a corner after business negotiations. The vengeful but rich goon pounded his fist on the floor. He liked that rake so much he wanted to get a third time. To deal with Hyun Wu, even S-class hunters aren't enough. You have to look in a different league, the director rattled on. He couldn't ask the main office. That would show his weakness. But there was definitely a solution. The fifth man on the world list is a fighter from China, Dragon Emperor. The eighth floor was ablaze with fire, its guards doing battle with the invaders. The last of them was barely on his feet, badly wobbled. He looked at his opponent in horror, feeling death at his back. He winced. In front of him riding a hellish millipede sat a girl demon. This city belongs to her now, the pointy-eared demoness said. The barbarian warrior, enduring the pain, refused to surrender. The demoness laughed as if she had heard an amusing joke. One step, she whispered, and the flow of mana went in circles. The barbarian warrior rushed at her to interrupt the terrifying technique. Taking another step, she simply stepped forward, unleashing more and more of her strength. The barbarian in the fur hat screamed in hellish pain. He was being torn from the inside out. The third step crushed the guardian warrior with a press, shredding his insides. The fourth step blew the city clean up, demolished it with an explosion. Hundreds of residents turned to ash with their last breath. The demoness stepped into the fifth circle of hell, her technique. A pillar of flame and mana as bright as a second sun illuminated the ashes of the eighth floor. The horned, pointy-eared demoness 
smiled contentedly at the job well done. A handful of ashes that vanished in the wind, all that was left where she walked. Only five steps out of ten that there is in the technique, so she'll have to change her name. The demoness smiled wickedly and spoke legion forward. An army of huge monsters rose at her command and headed towards the tall tower. Hyun Wu read the news lying on the couch. As soon as he got home, the gift distribution had already been written about. People were gossiping about this and that, about how badly Hyun Wu had demolished the Ares Guild with a single hammer. Forty-seven frags, said the homeless hermit to the cautious Shiken, the hammer of justice lying nearby. Shiken feared that Ares might press charges and take Hyun Wu into custody. Nonsense, remarked the mad hermit of justice. It's all self-defense, he's not guilty of anything. Yes, and the weapon was a toy hammer, Hyun Wu objected. But how many people went to the other side of the world in the process? Shiken asked. But the hermit brushed it off. Nothing like that would happen, he punched lightly. Hyun Wu jumped up like a shot, barely glancing at the time. He informed Shu Ken that it was time for his lessons, and if he was late, he would be stripped of his bonus. Shu Ken heard something about the lectures in Japan, so he asked if it was about the lectures, because Yun Wu had initially said no, but now he's changed his mind. Fifty million won, shown Yun Wu, money motivates anyone. He got a push notification of another illegal to deal with, right during class. A group of goons followed him and filmed his every move and word. Nonsense brushed aside the fair hunter. Even if the world is in danger, that's no reason to give up money. And he continued his crazy lectures on how to catch the boss with his bare hands. Good thing without an exam. Hyun Wu hesitated. The time of the android invitation updated twice. At the meeting, Hyun Wu flooded the bucket list with questions. The new illegal had shown up so soon, and he hadn't even promoted the rank for Yong Ma. The right to the right information didn't go up but he got something. The silver-haired bucketoid bargained. And what are those? The mad hermit wondered. Vedroid was in a hurry to give him information about the new illegal alien because Hyun Wu had a generous reward waiting for him. This time the illegal is not alone. He comes with the entire diaspora of rubber muzzies. Hyun Wu remembered that the first illegal tourist was also accompanied by a wave of monsters. But the Vedroid countered that the monsters were created by the system that time just to help the weak illegal. However, they are a weak support group and can only crush in numbers. They cannot be called friends, Av said. The new illegal was mid-level, slightly stronger than the previous one. Hyun Wu was surprised to hear this. Electrophoresis wasn't a weakling. Vedroid confirmed. Lately, she had been making strides in intelligence. Hyun Wu cheered up by defeating the illegals he could finally upgrade his guardian rank and access to the system. In a hurry, he returned to Little Seo Yeon's guild. The illegals were closing in. Hyun Wu knocked on the door and asked them how the magic circle was doing. The little witch told the hermit not to break the property, but he blamed it on bad habits. Pretty Seo Yeon asked him why he came. The hermit replied that, of course, to check the slave power. Short and tentacle loving, she was almost up to the task and even improved the magic circle. Great, thought the mad hermit, and gave her another task. The slave must not rest. Shorty's main skill, teleport, so he had her draw a teleport circle. Pretty Seo Yeon was surprised, such a skill in a captive. He asked the assassin why she didn't run away, and she said she couldn't do it without the staff. She needs the help of the magic circle to escape, so if she wanted to escape, she would use it. Realizing how her words sounded, the short girl became nervous. She excused herself when Hyun Wu came another text message, baby. So her asked the hermit where he was going, and he had just figured out the right place thanks to the spamming system. Germany met the illegals in full force, right before the rift. Useless hunters offered to surrender to the lolly demoness in exchange for a pardon. But the toothy little rascal only showed her fangs. Can't she see how strong they are here? The goon hunter shouted. The chancellor of sausage and beer lovers watched the broadcast from the safety of the bunker. He guarded the rear securely for the men on the front lines and was very worried about them. So it's just about numbers, the wily demoness asked. How great that they believe in the power of love and friendship, balked the horny one. If you are a force, said the lowly demon, we are a race. The rubbernecking diaspora of illegals sprinted forward. 
The dummies were scared. They usually beat half a pint of dark, not the barbell at the gym. The horned demoness took a long time to introduce her title and called herself the leader of the rubber muzzle squad, Horns and Spears. The warriors trembled, fear settled securely in their hearts. A parody of a shy hulud stood up on his haunches in front of a bunch of goons. A vicious mashup of sausage and crab sticks strode by with red headlights. And then she's just driven into the ground. Spice mass flew. Hyunwoo was looking at the tickets and was visibly nervous. The plane would take 11 hours to fly. The circle could be done in five. He hurried the slave. Little Seo Yun was reading the news when she noticed something disturbing. There's a rift in Germany, she said with all her pretty face. The mad hermit indifferently replied that he knew everything. An open request for help was all over the news. Hyun Wu saw it himself, his name was trending everywhere. Sweet Seo Yeon excitedly asked him if he would stop the disaster this time, too. She looked at him in surprise, as if seeing him for the first time. Even though she was older now, he was still like a big brother to her. But was he always so altruistic? Little Seo Young asked herself. Another bizarre video has been tossed up from the network news. The source of the rift offered a wager, the headline read. The horny, lowly bestie demoness offered an argument playfully wiggling her hips. The rules are as simple as chicken picking. She licked her sharp tongue. She will stay at the fault line for exactly one day. If she is defeated, she will refuse illegal immigration. But if the guards fail, she will burn city after city. The blonde bestie smiled confidently and said she'd be waiting. In a secure bunker in the rear, the terrified chancellor prayed the devil had come for him. He was puzzled where defense budgets had been divided, what had been done before, though he knew what, he himself had been involved. The disaster had already taken 20,000 lives, and the casualties were mounting. Praised S-rank hunters had already become fodder for monsters. A request for international assistance also failed. The official's cell phone vibrated in his pocket. He had been waiting for this call. The official immediately picked up the phone with the chancellor's consent. He had just gotten some good news and didn't believe it right away. Help was on the way, the same hunter from Korea, 40 Gigel to Furster Dalbude. The chancellor heard great news. The hunter who killed Zhang Ma in Japan will soon arrive with help. The teleport triggered, a pillar of purple light threw Hyun Wu onto the roof of the building in the center of the cleft. The hermit liked the free magic thing created by the labors of slaves. In one fell swoop, he was in Germany for a carnival of giant monsters. The living statue of Buddha creaked out a welcome greeting to the new viewer. Hyun Wu couldn't stand the grinding of stone teeth and immediately knocked them out with a duty kick. But it turns out the illegal monster carnival was organized by some wimps. With one leap, he climbed onto the back of another monster and ran down the back of a sausage with crab sticks and an ugly face. The monster also turned out to be weak. It seems they were only brought along for the carnival. The blow exploded on the rubber face, sending it into a deep knockdown. Border guard Hyun Wu moved closer to interrogate the illegal alien. We're the leader of the rubber face diaspora and documents demanded by the border guard. Illegal face huffed papers left at home because the behemoth has paws. Using drones, the media broadcast to people all over the world. Lowly the demoness with the strange pronunciation was waiting, as promised in the video, in the center of the square. When the ninth floor border patrol officer on duty arrived, <laughs> showed up dust-free, the illegal tourist of a crazy hermit. The demoness looked young but spoke like an ancient old woman, Hyunwoo remarked. There's a lot of murmuring going on. The demoness didn't like the mad hermit's treatment. She broke all the huts, who will rebuild them? said Hyunwoo, the border guard in charge. Lowly demon freaked out. The enemy in front of her is either too brave or just plain stupid, she said. To which the mad hermit offered to find out for himself. She's not fast, the demoness said. But she'll make an exception for the sake of an insolent border guard. Lowly the demon stood up from her makeshift throne, jokes aside. Is the young man as good as he says he is? She approached the mad guard. Five tops for Yashur. Seven for the bogatir, and how many he can handle, muttered the lowly demon. Hyun Wu could hardly understand the illegal immigrant speech, but he didn't call for an interpreter, as negotiations would end in a fight anyway. First stop, 
the horny lowly beast smirked and took one step towards Hyunwoo. Second stop, the little bare feet of the demoness took a second step. A tight life for demons, not even shoes, thought the border guard. He felt an unusual strength. The demoness was using a clever trick. A strange feeling was pressing down on the mad hermit. No enema but pressure, he wondered. Hyun Wu felt the mana around her behaving strangely. He was pinned to the ground. The mana pressure expanded and ripped the space ever more violently as the demoness took the third step. With each step, the mana ejection increased, the mad hermit realized, on the fourth step. The border guard immediately decided to move to apprehension and unleashed his strongest technique. Red mana enveloped his body, gathering into a halo behind his back. Loli Demon's sixth move caused a tsunami in the mana field. The seventh stripped Hyunwu of his mana control. The demoness pressured but and expanded his mana field. The mad hermit felt himself being torn to pieces. But he could still move and rushed forward to stop the lowly demon's technique. Stop eight coined the dream of a lover of women's feet, taking a step towards the meeting. Hun Wu applied the crowning funeral kick with his foot. Apprehension was out of the question, only elimination. But the familiar feeling of a blow to the head didn't appear. The horned beast playfully caught the border guard's strongest blow. Congratulations, almost could, she said. There's one more stop, however, the horned beast snarled. Stop ten, Loli said and took the last step. The gates of hell opened on the ground. The flames of mana swept in waves all around. The flames blinded the mad hermit, his insides tearing to pieces. No way, said the demoness. He was standing in the middle of a bare ashes where not even stones remained. He was able to hold all ten steps and stay on his feet. The demoness sneered as Hyunwu came to his senses. The puppet demon, he's got a happy face. Hyunwoo absorbed all the damage. That was the only reason the city remained intact. The last one she had wiped out in five steps, the demoness said. The mad hermit gritted his teeth in pain just as the bucketoid said, Demoness Loli was hitting harder than electrophoresis Chong Ma. What further will you do? mocked the horned Loli. Thou hast no more power to fight, she said to the hermit. A petition for clemency, come on or else a fight to the death, said the demon Hyunwoo, who was barely standing on his feet. Hyunwoo straightened his back. It was a little stiff from the long bends. Shorty forgot to add another option, where an illegal alien is apprehended, the hermit said. The horned demon Lole was greatly surprised at such words. She had already won. Dobre, dobre. A laugh escaped her lips. The mad border guard amused her. You crave a thrill on your scrotum. The horny one answered him, licking devilishly. I'll give it my best shot, like the god of a tabor of rubber illegals, said the demoness. Hyunwoo froze. Things had taken a bad turn. The demoness attacked differently. Many times stronger, a tsunami wave of mana was pressing down on him. The immense pain was interrupted by the system's message, as it was usually distracting during combat. Hyunwoo smirked. The s &M skill worked. After experiencing severe pain, he increased his resilience. On top of that, he plugged in the cheats and his body absorbed the demoness's mana, just like in the battle with electrophoresis. The mad hermit smirked. There was a reason he had peeked at all the cheats in the tower. He has mastered dozens of fictional techniques he has excerpted from short stories and manga and discovered the power of absurdity. In this long list of absurd techniques, there was one with the name Asura's Divine Longsword. Streams of mana coursed down his back as he unleashed this technique. Three lotuses appeared next to the mana halo, and four feelers. Lowly demon glanced anxiously at the mad border guard. Now the state border control representative had four hands to search. She couldn't stand it. She had to put everything on the line, the demoness whispered. One stop, she said. But the sneaky border guard grabbed her bare foot and began the search. Damn you, pawing at me, the lolly demon said indignantly. What kind of long brook is that only was away, wondered the horny one. The arm of the long-armed god stretched out and firmly grasped the horned Loli. The demoness kicked the rotten hands of the foot lover squeamishly. Loli the demon quickly stepped a second time but was again grabbed, raking hands. The lecher. She clenched her sharp teeth. No one had ever groped demoness so brazenly before. How dare you lousy mortal touch your feet lustfully, howled the lowly demon. She lashed out. Eight more stops left out of ten. 
her technique gaining strength with each step. One skip stop won't lessen the blow, the lowly demon reassured herself. The barefoot horned lowly took another step. She could still gain strength. You can't take a lie. But the crazy border guard wouldn't let the illegal lowly go so easily. The power of the divine lotus long rook awakened to its full potential. She suppressed the lowly demoness without letting her even step a foot. What a wretch, daring to detain me so, horny pushed back by the power of long-armed love. She was at her wit's end. The power of ten stops of annihilation wasn't working. What the hell kind of freak gropes beautiful lowly and does not let her step? She howled with a finger pointing at the hermit. Steps resuming Lolka hummed, words of strength, there goes a horny goat behind the little guys. And once again the sun shines, thought Yunwu. The table of fire devoured him whole. Nakosha sucked the lusty chump. Ten stops on him now, exulted the lowly demoness. Eat until you die, you bastard! The horned lowly bared her sharp teeth. But then the scythe hit the rocks, and the mad border guard interrupted her attack. Lowly the demon and the divine long-armored man met gaze face to face. Yako so, perplexed lowly demonica Otririshi Rotok. The power of the masochist, the mad hermit answered the unasked question. A lover of flogging horrified the horny lowly at her own miscalculations. Time to conduct a thorough search of the illegal demonic lowless, the mad guard said. The power of lowly love gathered in the cancers of an excited frontiersman. Fighting style ray lolly beam of love and kindness sent Yun Wu into the illegal demoness. She froze, unable to resist such powerful magic. The ray of love from the excited frontiersman struck the demoness in the heart. Such force the frail body could not withstand, the power of her love for the lowly pierced through her in a violent torrent. Dying by my mortal enemy came a belated realization to the unfortunate head, the power of love, a demoness without reserve. Hyun Wu moved into Av's bucket room. The silver-haired woman greeted cheerfully. Thank you for your border service, she congratulated the perverted border guard, and informed him that he's now been upgraded to medium-low access. She summoned a mad hermit to explain the changes that had taken place. Hyun Wu still hadn't recovered from pawing the lowly demon to death and was slightly taken aback. He was first called up right after the illegal was apprehended all because the bucketoid was in a hurry to warn as soon as possible. Hyunwoo was pleased with this arrangement, the sooner the better said the hermit. The room seems to have gotten bigger, he asked, looking around the stone sack where he always appeared. Vedroid Av confirmed that this kind of change happens every time Hyunwoo defeats the illegals. Vedroid told him that there were many changes, and one of them was the remote, which she held out to the hermit. By pressing a button, he could change the interior of the virtual room, just the thing for secret hobbies, Hyunwoo thought. The room transformed into a dark basement, evoking a familiar atmosphere. Vedroid shrieked as she recognized the first floor of the training tower. She cried out even more when Hyunwoo switched to the regular living room. Vedroid reported that he could not personally operate the system and was seeing the ninth floor people room for the first time. Av said she'd been sitting in four walls since she'd been in the system. So that's why she's so dumb, the hermit realized. And she went into hibernation mode between their dialogues right on the table. Hyunwoo suddenly felt sorry for the lump of neural nets. He was suffering because he wasn't taught properly. His skills have changed, the Vedroid continued, and the Barry Letting Go skill has also been added. The point is that once a day, Hyunwoo could come to Av's compound by himself which was convenient. He then asked the Bucketoid what was wrong with its status screen. Even though the characteristics had increased after the fight with the lowly demon, he still thought that his abilities were higher than indicated. Av confirmed that he could now answer the hermit since his level of information had increased. The mad hermit exulted. At last his labors had paid off. The creator of the training tower put restrictions on nerds, but they only applied to system skills and couldn't block his personal skills. Hyunwoo liked what he heard. He told the droid to continue. Unlike the status updates, Hyunwoo's body continued to evolve. How simple it is, the hermit remarked, and asked what the real difference between the indicators was. But that's a question the android can't answer, she said sadly. The reason he was stuck in the tower was also beyond his reach. 
The system was still brazenly exploiting him, the hermit realized. But since he was inflamed by the demon after the battle with Lole, he immediately demanded the next illegal. The little empress held the S-rank hunter by the throat like a kitten. She had hoped to have fun with him since he was considered strong, but not fate, the student said. All for nothing, said the tailed one, and dropped the man like garbage. Tired of the boring battle, she called for a servant, and the servant immediately appeared. Kim Hyanwu's photos from the battle at the German Rift, he reported to the hostess, holding out a tablet. The mad hermit's apprentice bit her lip in delight. The mad hermit applied the fist of the divine longsword in these shots. The empress was quite radiant with happiness. The teacher had met all expectations, as always. Breaking down, she demanded a report on the captured lands. She wanted to hear those words, China is captured. The small enclaves that remain belong to loyal puppets. Their great campaign of conquest is now fully completed. Excellent, said the empress, for she had waited many years for this. Now she could look the mad teacher in the eye when she met him. The girl delved into memories from when she was still a novice apprentice. Then the future empress made a promise that she would create a place worthy of a teacher. The snotty girl was talking her ass off, trying to please the teacher. In the flashback, the teacher affectionately escorted the tailed student before she left the tower. Nostalgia brought back happy memories since then the girl has grown up and turned into a strong and tough warrior. Time to meet H. Teacher, thought she. Hyun Wu took a long look at the list of rewards for eliminating Loli, but most of them were tax breaks. Judicious Shu Ken asked for the papers to himself. The friends had lunch together again. Hyun Wu got all of Loli's items, and the rest is a tax waiver, a house, a car, and an office for the guild. In fact, he was offered to move. This time the reward is more than from the Japanese, Quan Seo said, and asked what the hermit did with that electric sword of Zhang Ma's. Shi Ken boasted that he had gotten the sword, to which little Seo Yeon pouted her lips. But the mad hermit immediately cooled the woman's desires by reminding that earlier the girl got a staff mantle and a magic circle. Quan Seo took a drink of water, well, fuck him, changing the subject of the subjects, baby. So Yeon asked why still their friend is stopping the rifts around the world. The cautious Shi Ken had also long suspected something amiss and joined in the question as did Quan Seo. Not that there was any special reason to answer the hermit, lowly groping, illegal aliens being stopped, and anyone else who thought they were powerful. Just like that, the friends marveled, not knowing what to say to that. Hyun Wu tactfully slipped away to look out the window while his friends paid the bill, the cheapskate not being unfaithful to himself. The mall where they had lunch had a good view of the training tower. The training tower appeared with the monsters and summoned him along with the other people. The hermit sat there for twelve years for reasons unclear. Hyun Wu brushed it a thousand times, from the first to the hundredth, before he could get out, whereas his friends had long since left him, having gone to the outside world. And even his disciples left early, leaving the mad hermit behind. It closed three spatial rifts, albeit slowly, access to the system grew. When is Scrooge going to pay for himself? Little Seo Yeon asked him. But Hyun Woo wasn't bothered at all. Don't have a hundred rubles, but have a hundred friends. No need to worry, he replied to his friends. Money is not that important. A week after defeating Demonololi, Hyun Woo snuck back on the bachelor show. The mad hermit is regally spread out in the studio. Bored, he was on his cell phone, but he showed up at the studio anyway. At the last conference, he said something amazing the Fox presenter asked him, but the hermit brushed it off. He just told the truth. The girl host laughed, the hermit as always acting simple and direct. She invited the audience to listen to a recording from the conference together. After defeating Lola Demoness, he was asked what unique skill he possessed. Skills, wondered the hermit. He had just thoroughly searched one lowly, using the martial arts he had invented in the tower. After his words, martial arts became popular again, the presenter merrily chanted. Two out-of-nowhere grandfathers in pajamas entered the studio. They were invited into the studio. Hyun Woo skeptically examined the two geese, one gray, the other bald. Elderly lazy people performed ballet dances. According to them, those who practice them will reach the highest skill. 
Hyun Woo got angry when he realized that the two pajama grandfathers were just trading his face to make money off of it. The mad hermit stomped his foot annoyedly, interrupting the senior's pajama party. It seems like they misunderstood the crazy hermit and need to fix it immediately, Hyun Woo said. He snatched the bogus sword from the old goose in his pajamas. PR on the hermit's name and no money in the cash register. That's lawlessness. The martial art is him, replied the hermit menacingly to them. What matters is who uses them. Hyun Woo continued, not what exactly to do. A little demonstration would freshen up the show, smirked the mad hermit. He showed them a true martial art by releasing mana. The mad hermit copied the old geezer's strut, only now it radiated power. Keep your eyes wide and your pants tight, the mad hermit told them. I recently read a great novel about martial arts. The ridiculous movements took on true meaning, and an aura enveloped the hermit. A snake lizard beam, he shouted as he used his absurd force. The serpent punched through the ceiling, dropping debris on the heads of the studio workers. It's worth making sure everyone understands, the mad hermit continued. There's only one butthole in the building, and that's him, Hyun Woo said proudly. So they better not mooch money past the cash register. Hyun Woo returned to his office where slaves and dummies were laboring. He barely recognized the short slave. She had changed her style from cosplay to business, started to look like a human. Time to test the slave power, Hyun Woo thought, and walked closer. He kept her alive because she is a useful acquisition. How's the job? Do you like it? He asked the short slave girl affectionately, or might not like it. He asked the unfortunate woman, and she sharply shook her head to the side. Great, said the hermit. I promise to feed, water, protect, holidays off. But if only suddenly she thinks of running away, it's scary to imagine what he'll do to her, Director Hyun Woo intoned and then tapped his fist on his shoulder almost affectionately. The carrot and stick method, he remembered. If you behave well, I'll give you cookies, he said one last time. The girl thought for a moment. It had been ten days since she had worked for the guild as a staff accountant. Quiet, dusty work, not driven to death. Well fed, she thought. The creak of the printer interrupted her musings. The Ares Guild fax had arrived, successfully handed over the dungeons. Yung Wu shouted back at the slippery principal, Hook Seok, going in person to pay Joe's guild, with whom he had feuded not long ago. Devil Hyun Wu took all the dungeons for himself, dishonoring the headmaster twice. Such shame can only be washed away with blood. Fuck it, waved off. The director waved his subordinate away. They were both in for a hell of a ride. Yung Wu thought, after all the events, the principal's influence had fallen below the plinth. He'll soon find himself where he sent his predecessors in the race for the director's chair. Hooksun sounded like he was a little crazy and obsessed with revenge. But he was right about one thing. They were in the same boat. If one falls, Yung Wu will fall too, because the director decided to go all the way, the monopoly collapsed, and the influence of the entire guild was devalued. The head of all Ares guild branches listened to the report. Boris Mart. The inscription on his plaque read, listened attentively. He was informed of the Korean branch's problems. Director Hyuk Seong Woo lost part of the dungeons by making a mistake. Anyone can make a mistake, Boris Mart said, wringing his fingers. Only what was corrected later can be called a mistake, he continued. Such words should be said when everything is in order, otherwise it should be defined as a failure. He fiercely kissed each word. They will regain all the dungeons they lost and repair all the consequences of the failure, murmured the Lord of the Rings. The pagoda of the Imperial Palace was drowning in the rays of the eternal sunset. Hyuk Seong Wu arrived at the Forbidden City. He thought that the contract was already concluded, but the guild leader demanded a face to face meeting. He had strong doubts about everything, but was determined to go all the way. Fucking medieval, he wondered as he stepped inside. He was met by a masked gatekeeper. If he confirms the contract, Hyun Woo is definitely a dead man, thought the director. He was told to enter. The palace has numerous guards, thought the slippery headmaster. The place pressed its harshness upon him, as if he were back in ancient times. The gate in front of him opened, and Hook Siong squeezed his eyes shut against the glow of the lamps. The throne of guild leader Pei Jo, an imperial dragon named Mi Ryong, was occupied by a petite girl, the slippery headmaster marveled. 
He saluted formally and instinctively bowed as if in ancient times, too given to the atmosphere, Hugh Seong thought. But they didn't even answer him. He was confused and didn't know how to behave. A beautiful woman with a cold, commanding voice told him from atop the throne that she knew about his contract. Say a name, the empress said, and like a thunderclap, Hook Shong sensed something wrong. But it was too late to retract his words. He gave the name. The man who closed the rift in Germany, Kim Hyun Woo. He named a huge sum and a bunch of dungeons in payment of the contract if they took it on. Really called out that name, heard the principal's cold as steel voice. The empress slowly rose from her golden throne. Just now, he asked to kill the teacher, replied the empress in a steely voice. The shockwave pierced the roof of the pagoda, a pillar of fire. The empress was writhing. The entire palace was filled with a red aura. She was terribly angry. Huk Xiong Wu couldn't gather his thoughts. He didn't understand what was going on. What a reaction, he wondered why ordering Hyun Wu's assassination had caused so much anger. What other teacher? wondered the principal in horror. There must have been a mistake blurted out. He, as Kim Hyun Wu, could be her teacher. Huk Sun asked the empress where they had met, and she replied that it was in the tower. A ray of hope glittered just nearby. The empress just confused Hyun Wu with someone else, thought the slippery headmaster. He told the empress that Hyun Wu couldn't be a teacher, and the girl asked why in response. Each tower is assigned to a different region, each summoning people from a different region. The empress was tired of listening to the nonsense and interrupted the rascal. She sent him flying with a familiar kick of her ballet flats. The cruel empress kept the headmaster unconscious while she beat him. She wondered how that cockroach would get out, but he was just rambling on about how Hyun Wu wasn't her teacher. He picked up the principal by the scruff of the neck like a kitten shitting in his slippers. Unfortunately for this slug, said the empress, she was trained in the Korean tower. In those days, her father sent her into exile to re-educate her, a young major, and she ended up in the tower. Luckily, she met a mad hermit who took her on as an apprentice. The formal kipao dress, the loose hair gathered into a bold ponytail, the teacher's mark on the back, and even the name Miryong. All it is is the will of an insane teacher that a brainless cockroach would deny. How dare he now hope for an easy death, said the cruel empress. Twice the worm had made attempts on the teacher, and now on top of denying their strong bond, the little beast panted. Hyun Wu listened to the android's raptures. He'd run cable to the virtual room, and now the program could at least make some progress. This cheeky chip girl even asked for her own gaming console. She made a cat-like pity face, saying she couldn't do it herself since the android exists as a voice assistant. Hyun Wu wondered if it was worth rewarding, a runaway and what it would cost. But a clack of the remote added the console to the virtual environment, much to the digital babe's delight. Like a kitten, she rushed to hug the mad hermit in gratitude. And this sesh is good, Hyun Wu thought, learning how to manipulate his emotions by mimicking the role of a daughter. The white-haired kitten remembered there was something else he wanted to tell you. She was still speaking confusedly, but Hyun Woo asked bluntly what she meant. The hermit was called and found himself in the parlor with a succulent chicken in his hands. Prudent Shuken asked the hermit why he was not eating. There might already be an illegal without a residence permit on the ninth floor, the homeless hermit recalled the bucketoid's words. The Av girl told him that three rifts happened before the hermit got out of the tower and two of the three are still open, which means the illegals are not caught and are walking free. Quan Seo asked the hermit when he was going to Germany, Hyun Wu planned to leave in three days. A friend offered to go together and do some local sightseeing in the red light district, but the hermit declined. Quan Seo was upset. He knew a lot of good places, but Hyun Wu doubted that after the rift, everything was calm in the country for walking. Pretty C.O. Yeon answered him that first of all she eats, and secondly, the neighborhoods will be quickly rebuilt by magicians. Magicians, tile masters, gastarbiters will carry out all repair work. Without their contractors, the whole world would lie in ruins after battles. The hermit hesitated and asked if there was a reason why the friends wanted to go to Germany specifically. Hyun Wu heard about the item auction and asked what it was. The attentive Shurken volunteered to explain. These bids are arranged by the association and have not been canceled, 
even though an entire town was destroyed. That is to say, Hyun Woo clarified, the friends just want to use the teleporter on the ball and fly to Germany at his invitation. The mad hermit agreed. He wasn't paying anything anyway. Quan Seo assured his friend that the bidding could be interesting. The Hunters Association told Hyun Wu that the number of rifts depended on the hunter's ranks, the hermit recalled. If the android's suggestion is correct, there are two illegal aliens living on Earth. Their status is closed to the hermit, unlike regular hunters, so if they show up at the auction, he'll notice the illegals. But it added a lot of work, and the hermit had things to do as it was. Though he's gotten stronger over the last couple skirmishes, with Electric and Lowly Demoness. What if a higher-ranked demon shows up? I need to pump myself up, he thought. Hyun Woo accidentally said it out loud, and Beauty Seo Yan thought he was talking about bidding preparations. Hyun Woo smiled confusedly. Again, he's hovering in the clouds, remarked Tiny Seo Yan, and laughed. Three days flew by, and they arrived at the bidding hall where the gavel clanged. The guys besides the hermit dressed up, and babe. So Yan came in a gorgeous open dress so that everyone could appreciate the girl's beautiful figure. Young Wu was burning evidence and saying goodbye to his past life in his office. The director personally went to the Pijo Guild to meet with their head. But still no word from him, which could only mean one thing, Young Wu realized. It's time to get off your feet and cover your tracks. There's no coming back from the director. He had prepared for this occasion as he realized that their former enemies in China were very dangerous. Yung Wu had collected enough money with him. He's the boss's right-hand man, which means he's important as a witness and won't be touched, he thought as he suddenly stopped feeling his arm. He lifted it to his face to look at it, but only saw the brush separate from his body. Yung Wu fell to his knees, splattering the office with blood and writhing in pain. The killer was taunting him, could have killed him by now, but he enjoyed taunting his victim. The order of cosplayers, Jung Wu whispered, and the assassin laughed. The little brat knew about them. An order of cosplayers under the head office showed up for Jung Wu. He didn't have time to leave. Why is the order here? He asked a foolish and desperate question. The assassin chuckled and indicated to the victim that he should be perfectly aware of that himself. Zhang Wu really wanted to live and crawled pathetically towards the exit. Causing fountains of blood, the assassin cut short the agony of his target. All traitors await death, he added. His partner entered the office. He was blocking off escape routes in case of an emergency. Already finished, he asked his comrade in cloak and dagger business. As if anyone could hold them back, replied the braggadocious partner. Their second target remained in the palace of the Forbidden City, and they had no way of knowing if Hook Siong was alive or not yet. Shouldn't that man be dealt with? The assassin asked his comrade. But the latter replied that four costumers from the order had already been sent for. Four at once surprised the hunter, but the target could also single-handedly stop the disaster. The braggart continued to flutter his tongue and bluster their boss would definitely beat the arrogant one but the comrade told him to shut up. No need to openly discuss secret information, even walls have ears, he reminded the braggart. Thoth stumbled back, spreading his arms guiltily. They were done with business in this place anyway. The bidding had gathered quite a crowd, and the girl announcer announced the start of the bidding. Quan Sung asked the hermit if he would go to the Red District in gym shoes too, but Hyun Wu just sighed. Shiken didn't understand the hermit's choice of clothes either, but he was perplexed. It was better with clothes than without. Who cares answered Hyun Wu, and Shukyung agreed. Even the media had already accepted their friend's appearance as commonplace. Pretty Seo Yeon looked at the lot list disappointedly, not a single S-plus level item. They are still rare, Shuken replied, and Hyun Wu thought about it. He had seen this rank somewhere and fumbled for an object in his pocket, a lowly demoness essence stone, some of the information hidden, and how to use it. The hermit didn't know either. He received it at a ceremony honoring him for his exploits. The item had a high rank, but it gave no modifications or skills. It can't even be sold at a high price, the hermit thought. It made him want to learn even more about the subject. Well, for now, he went back to bidding and lots. But everything was boring. Nothing worthwhile was being sold here, and who would sell a good item? 
Hyunwoo boredly scanned the items with an information skill. The next lot is Ozlan's spear, he read in a long, semi-legendary text. Tired of the restrictions on information, he went to get some air and waved to his friends one last time. The mad hermit stepped out into the parking lot and breathed in the cool night air. Out of the corner of his eye, he noticed a quick movement. One civilian had just been killed. The hermit turned around sharply to see who was so bold as to decide to attack him. He took a step and dodged the swift assassins that suddenly attacked. A hand blocked Wolverine's claws, those damn cosplayers again, Hyunwoo thought. But this time, the cosplay succeeded well. The assassins kick, knocking the mad hermit backwards. Just another troop of traveling costumers, the mad hermit thought tiredly. The dummies stood in a picture pose and not original at all. At least they would have performed a birch tree. The hermit was indignant. The order of costumers presented their quartet. They kept talking instead of doing what they showed up to do. One even began to read a prepared speech, but the hermit quickly interrupted him. I can't listen to these trashy speeches, he said, and threw a rock right in the pseudo-Wolverine's eye. Five for effort, but still a two for overall credit, the politeness teacher said. Counting off one dummy each, the mad hermit prepared a second pebble. He smirked devilishly, chatter that the hermit was always escaping from the battlefield. Now he would show that it wasn't true. The performance failed, the actor was drunk, the quartet was deflated and came to grief. Boris Mart listened to the report. Hyuk Seong Woo has not yet been eliminated, but it's not yet. They have no right to make a mistake, he said to his subordinate. And the type. He asked about the mad hermit and was told that the battle had already begun. A ringed hand raised a glass of wine, whether or not his men could handle it. Boris asked his subordinate if he doubted the order's abilities. He demanded a list of those who had been sent, 4th, 7th, 9th, 10th, called the officer of the order numero uno. So it's already a foregone conclusion, he told a surprised subordinate. Boris Mart didn't think his men would win. He was just setting up an experiment to see if his opponent could read the status. When you kill an enemy, start looting. An ancient rule from the tower came to mind. He looked closely at the wolverine claws at his feet. Not a bad job, thought the hermit. The real ones really should be sticking out of the body. Hyun Wu called up the status window to evaluate the acquisition. The mad hermit was greatly surprised when he looked at the details. Bariska drank expensive wine. I wonder if his enemy will understand this joke, he thought. The underground atrium was once again left unlit, with a man sitting at a huge round table. A crimson aura of darkness surrounded him, as if he had bathed in manganese. How did it go? he asked his interlocutor in a monk's cassock. Already two illegal immigrants have been detained, chief. They are vile thugs. They don't give us any life at all, the monk answered him. A fifth-rate electrician was coming up to the ninth floor, and lowly Demoness, the servant monk, reported. Lord clapped his hands enthusiastically. He knew these guys. They were no wimps. He thought that on the ninth floor, the borders were weak, and illegal tourists would have an easy time getting through. Who is next? he asked the monk's servant, and the monk replied that it was still undecided. An unexpected obstacle appeared. The Lord of Manganese exulted. The taste of waiting is sweet, said he. What's in the bag, asked his chauffeur, Shea Ken, as they drove home. The hermit replied, found. It was a crazy hermit found in the middle of a mountain of corpses, said cautious Shea Ken. Fortunately, the cameras recorded everything. Managing to find out who it was, Shea Ken asked him, and got the answer that the interrogator had died after the first question to the head. Hyun Wu asked what kind of cameras are there that capture everything from good angles, and learned that it's the special magic of streaming. But does one's head come off during interrogation? asked a cautious Shur Ken. The hermit guiltily moved away that his hand had just slipped. He just slapped them, though. A wary Shu Ken remarked to the mad hermit, he really did just slap them, swatting them like flies, but managed to experiment a little, Hyun Wu recalled. In any case, they were hiding their faces with magic, Hyun Wu replied while Shi Kyung gathered for souvenirs. The mad hermit perked up his ears and asked who it was, but the cautious Shu Ken simply dodged the question. Hyun Wu remembered his souvenirs in the big bag. He rubbed the good stuff right out on the floor to get a better look and pour over it. Good thing now he has the scanning skill for items, 
Replica 123, that's how all the artifacts were signed, each quite high level. What does the replica in the artifact's name mean? Wondered the hermit studying them. Whether the artifacts were artificially created, the hunter wondered, but couldn't find out more. Hyun Wu sank into his memories, activating Sherlock's abilities. Yesterday's costumers knew exactly where and when he would show up. They work for Ares, or someone hired them from the outside, the hermit pondered. After scoring the artifacts he would sell anyway, he switched his focus to the costuming troupe's customer, who paid for their tour, he asked. It seems that the slippery asshole Hyuk Seong Wu has learned nothing at all, and he's made the same mistake for the third time, the hermit sighed tiredly. Now he wouldn't be able to get away with it, Hyun Wu decided, and knocked on the door of the guild's main office. Where is the director, he asked directly to a passing guild employee. The boss is on a business trip, quickly answered the mad hermit before he asked again. But that was already clear, and Hyun Wu politely asked for the exact location of the business trip. The office staff member fell to his knees, saying he didn't know anything. But the mad hermit squatted down and inquired, or rather, and so learned, that Hyuk Song was in China, in the Forbidden City. P. Joe Guild heard the familiar name by the mad hermit. In the evening, he hovered in the living room with a wary Shea Ken and watched TV. He asked his friend what he knew about P. Joe's Guild. Shu Ken replied that he didn't know much in general terms. They say they recently took over all of China, said Shu Ken, and Hyun Wu, surprised, not long ago, they only had half of it. Usually it's quite difficult, clearance paperwork, contracts, but not in China. It's the law of the jungle out there, Hyun Wu concluded. But it wasn't always that way, Shu Kyung added. Once upon a time, all the dungeons belonged to the government, and it was much harder to hand them over, Shu Ken continued. Everything changed recently. The head of the guild, P. Joe, pushed through the law and started the takeover, so he's very powerful, Hyun Wu concluded. The mad hermit plunged into memories from when he was still in the tower. Had he spoken to his apprentice about something like this? The hermit pondered. He played the role of a mad hermit teacher and sinned with cosplay himself, but his acting was real. The girl argued with him and bickered without taking her red eyes off him. He cracked her on the head with the edge of his palm. You don't argue with teachers, especially not crazy ones. As a teacher, he demanded three bows as his due, but the girl refused. He was conducting severe tests for her on the brink of life and death. There was no way she would die, he promised, affectionately. No way in hell would he let a dear student die, he reassured the petite girl. The main thing is not to offend him, said the mad hermit, and pushed him into the abyss with the monsters. The girl had passed all the initiations and reached the hundredth floor. There was nothing more to teach her, and the hermit was sending her away. The snotty girl denied it, but she really has grown since then and gotten stronger. No one else would poke at her. The mad teacher gently stroked her head. The little one cried from the excess of her feelings. All under heaven, he told her last. No one can be above her except the mad teacher, said the hermit firmly in character. The girl listened attentively to every like-minded teacher, his will the law. She mumbled something last in the same crazy spirit, and Hyun Wu vaguely recalled what it was. The hermit was too lazy to listen at the time, but who knew what it would turn into? They say Peijo has a whole empire, but Shuken didn't know anything else. He didn't care much about it. Hyun Wu rubbed his friend's hair contentedly. Time for a business trip, the mad hermit informed his friend, to China. Hyun Wu added, more specifically to the Forbidden City, the site of the main palace, the Pejo Guild. The Empress lay peacefully on the silk sheets and thought of her teacher. She remembered what she had said to him one last time before she left the tower. The one who used to solve everything with money faced many difficulties in the tower, and only the teacher was able to save her. Her father cared for her too much, and the girl grew up like a spoiled doll. But the mad teacher showed what the true path is. Unlike her mild-mannered father, he didn't coddle the brat but accepted her as an equal. He trained her to live by the rules he himself followed, pulled her from the shackles of weakness and laziness. The cruel empress fondly remembered her teacher hugging her knees. Now the entire empire was at her feet and she could bring him here. The girl walked to the window, hotly breathing in the cool air. 
Just a little dream she dreamed, blazing a blush on her delicate cheeks. Two goons from the order of numero uno costumers had just gotten the order for Yun Wu. Their predecessors higher in rank were already feeding the worms. Don't be scared, he's scared himself, said the fifth to the eighth. There's definitely a way out. As long as Huk Seong Wu isn't killed, they can stay in Beijing and not rush into another suicide mission, the costumers rejoiced. Why them? wondered the eighth, for their target had no weaknesses. The fifth didn't understand why either. It was the first numero uno of costumers to go on such a mission. Their target killed four with strong artifacts and higher rank. Direct contact should be avoided, said the fifth as suddenly the ground shook. The fifth, as the eldest and leader, reacted first to the new threat. But the powerful attack threw the costumer off like a rag. He had no time to do anything. Junior grabbed his weapon and tried to counterattack the unknown enemies, but in vain. He was being overwhelmed by sheer force, by unknown men in white uniforms and skull masks on their faces. Are they the ones who killed Yung Wu? The masked type asked them, chopping the killer's knives. The eighth recoiled back to flee, the enemy too strong. But he was immediately surrounded by dozens of blades. The dogs of the empire knew their business. The hapless dummy was slammed face first into the floor. Just don't whine, the leader of the empress's hound dogs told him. They dared to eliminate the one who relied on her highness. Now we have to drag the two goons to the empress, said the skull. Dummy chewed the ground helplessly, unable to utter a single word. The faithful slave finished drawing the magic teleportation circle, as usual, a laborious process. Hyunwoo was not eager to deal with the case. Little Seo Young suggested not to go. But everyone has a dark past they don't want to talk about, the mad hermit thought. He was orphaned early on, working hard to survive until he was summoned by the tower. He didn't have time for theatrical teenage nonsense before, but in the tower, time is infinite. That would be all right, but the past has come to the surface. He should take Hyuk Seong Wu and get away quietly, the hermit pondered. He was traveling to another state, baby So Young warned. The girl was worried that the mad hermit would not do anything, but he just waved away as usual and was gone. Belle was worried about her friend. A vague sense of unease suddenly came over her. The free slave nearly took her breath away from yet another overtime. Sweet Seo Yeon came closer to ask her something. Yun Wu stepped into the teleporter and immediately moved to China. There won't be any problems, he thought. But there was already trouble. Once he appeared at the gates of the Forbidden City, the hermit was stunned. The palace was decorated in the style of a mad recluse, with the gate flaunting an inscription of everything under heaven and his phrases. A complete failure, he really, really underestimated the extent of the insane problems. The dogs of the Empress's regime were there to spot the intruder. The guard's hand roughly touched the mad hermit while he considered what to do with what he saw. He jumped up to enter the territory of the Forbidden City. The little brats didn't bother him. First, he'll smash the slippery slug that's already made three attempts on him. The mad hermit didn't hesitate and immediately used the power of absurdity. He decided to finish here quickly. The blow shattered the main gate and the bloody inscription above it that he had once read out of novels about the Qin Emperor. The Empress's loyal dogs raised the alarm and surrounded the intruder. Everyone has a replica of the Mad Hermes mask on their muzzle and even their techniques. The minions persistently attacked him, but Hyun Wu easily dodged. The Mad Hermit noticed something in their strange movements. The loyal dogs used real martial arts, like the ones he taught the little brat. The small infestation had trained its people as well, the mad hermit realized. The hermit froze in place, falling into the role of a martial arts master, the power of absurd filling him. The intruder simply disappeared before the eyes of the acolytes. That's how you should use this technique, he said, appearing right in front of the guards. In one fell swoop, the mad hermit threw everyone aside, clearing a path for himself. I hope no one died from this. Hyun Wu shook the dust off of himself. Master, he heard with a huff, a familiar gentle voice. A mature girl was looking at him now with wide open ruby eyes. She would recognize him anywhere, the power of movement, the technique. Her heart hammered more often. 
But what was more important, thought the hermit, was that look she was giving him. My mad teacher, she thought student, thought the hermit. After so many years they met again, the mad hermit stood silently. It's been a while, sighed, accepting the inevitable. Ruby eyes burned through his gaze from beneath long lashes. She has come such a long way to give the master everything he desires. Gathered the guild, changed the laws, trained the people, the girl was on her way to the mad hermit. No matter what name she was called, no matter how tough she had to become, it was all just for the master. A step away, she got down on one knee and greeted him like a mad student. The girl counted down all the days and months of their long three-year separation. And now, the guild leader of the P. Joe Guild, the dragon empress that ranked fifth in the world, could finally bow to her master. Hyun Wu looked at the insanely luxurious golden emperor's throne and couldn't believe what he was seeing. A throne for the master, said the mad student. Throne, master, gold, Hyun Wu drooled. Don't you like the throne? the mad student asked. She was coming in trumps and knew how to touch the master's heart. Then she will execute those who made it to the hermit's horror cut off by the brat. Hyun Wu immediately interrupted her before someone actually got their head chopped off like in ancient times. He sat on an insanely expensive, gleaming, gold-trimmed imperial throne. So wait, how did he end up here? The mad hermit hesitated, imperceptibly succumbing to the mood. He doesn't usually go for this kind of thing, but this girl is really good. The mad hermit was completely unarmed under such sincere pressure. Hyunwoo couldn't understand why she felt this way about him, even though he had trained her in martial arts. But all the training it took to comprehend the power of absurd, that's why he didn't seek it after he left the tower. Disciple, the hermit sitting in the imperial throne mumbled, and she immediately kneeled down. No nothing said Hyunwoo, and the crazy disciple happily wagging her tail replied, Yes, master. Damn it, panicked Hyunwoo, what to do with her since she was so favorable to him despite him hitting on her several times. The hermit sighed and used the information skill on the girl. Always faithful, he read in the characteristics. Exactly abnormal, thought the hermit excitedly. Hyunwoo turned to her again, and the girl shone brighter than the throne. Hooksong Wu was delivered at the hermit's request and thrown onto the cold floor of the palace. The prisoner didn't look good. Mad Emperor Hyunwoo noticed. Daring to stammer about attempting to assassinate the master, the apprentice replied, and Hyunwoo gently praised the concubine candidate. The hermit woke the slippery principal with a slipper of doom. Demented Hook Siong's spirits soared when he saw the familiar face, and it was as if he had forgotten his hatred. How are you feeling, good sanatorium? the hermit asked, recalling Hook Seong Wu, his bunker with the sanatorium. The one clung like a tick to his sciatica, begging him to save him from his mad student and take him away from this place. Pathetic worm, thought the concubine candidate as she emitted a bloody aura. The mad hermit turned around to look at the innocent maiden. You'll live if you answer all the questions the mad emperor promised. The slug couldn't believe his luck. Oh yeah, you'll definitely live, said the mad emperor, thinking about how much in thrill there is to life. In an underground bunker on the outskirts of New York City, a meeting was in progress. Boris March gave the assignment to a trio of numero unos from the upper echelon of the costuming order. This time the job is difficult, Lord of the Rings told them. Do it quickly and you'll be supplied with an SST plus level artifact. The Numenera became excited at these words. They had no idea that an artifact of this level could even exist. Such an item increases the characteristics by two levels at once, something unimaginable struck by numero uno costumers. Do they think the Lord of the Rings might be lying? Boris asked. The existence of such an artifact has not yet been publicized. But soon, said Mart, looking at his hand. The friends were sitting in Quan Seo's guild office. Shurken asked them when they were going to re-enter the labyrinth. Quan Seo who had never received a gift from the hermit, doubted he would find anything useful this time. Shu Ken agreed with him. What's the rush? asked the beauty in the business suit. So young, if Shu Ken hadn't sold the artifacts from the last hike yet. The always cautious Shu Ken replied that he already felt a dire need for characterization enhancement. Quan Seo brushed it off. 
they were too busy with guild affairs, so they hadn't grown for a long time. The shadow of the mad hermit loomed over him, and he stumbled back, someone too far away from them. Compared to Hyun Wu, the always cautious Shiken admitted and didn't finish, it was already clear without words. Even the beautiful Seo Yeon sadly faded her blue eyes. So, they were sent by the Ares Guild, Hyun Wu asked, while looking at the two half-dead goons with numbers on their faces. Are they still alive at least? The hermit asked, and his crazy concubine candidate nodded affirmatively. Hook Song Wu finally went insane and crouched down at the mad emperor's foot, begging for his life. The emperor asked if there was a prison here, and the apprentice replied that there was a suitable dungeon with rats, which would not kill, but would bite to oblivion. Whoever remains inside will suffer the torment of hell, writhing in endless streams of pain, reported the mad student with a cute face. Thirty days, the emperor passed judgment to the great horror, the slimeball Hook Siong Wu. He babbled weakly, but the magic ballet flats pressed her head against the stone floor. I obey, master, replied the cruel beauty. From the pocket of the numero uno costumer, a ring fell out. What a lovely thing, thought Hyun Wu. He picked it up and activated the information skill. My lovely flashed on the edge of his consciousness, but Hyun Wu came to his senses. The ring also bore the name Replica. On top of Ares' men standing in his way again, the mad emperor was angry. At this he finished his business and said he was leaving, the mad student alarmed. Is the master leaving? <gasps> she asked the mad emperor, but he only waved her away. <laughs> but isn't the master going to take me over? The bright student asked. We'll talk later. The mad emperor remained cold, but he reassured his devoted student that he had to deal with the Ares guild first and then he would return to this conversation. The mad hermit has abandoned a devoted concubine candidate. The girl moved her finger, and two servants appeared before her. See the members of the Ares Guild, she said, all to be slaughtered like pigs. Hyun Wu brought the ring to the pawn shop appraiser, and the android informed him that the ring was not plain but fake. The mad hermit was surprised. It was the first time he had heard of such a thing. Artifacts are created at the bottom of the maze from items, and are powered by lore, which determines their characteristics and skills, the android narrated. Objects for artifacts are removed from the existence of the floors. The virtual girl vaguely replied. Illegals need to fully climb the tower for these things, she added, which further puzzled Hyun Wu. The ring, on the other hand, is just a quality replica. Without its own story, a replica, the android answered him. Perhaps even created by an illegal jeweler, heard a frantic Sherlock. The case was getting more and more confusing. The white-haired android wised up and made a sound judgment about the two illegals earlier, Hyun Wu recalled. You should teach this machine to clean up after itself, though, because you're making such a mess, you brainless neuron, the hermit told the android. But the white-haired product of dusky genius only waved it away, much to the hermit's annoyance. He clicked a button, and it was clean. The girl was even happy at first. But then discovered the console was missing. I'll pick it up before my next visit nailed the hermit lump of uninspired chips. Judging by her complaining cries and promises to keep the virtual house clean, he'd picked an excellent punishment. Neural Net. Went crazy, showing all kinds of remorse and pity on its cute interface. Late at night, the assassin sneaked into the Forbidden City. He noticed the hole in the roof that had been left during the day after Hyuk Seong Wu had appeared and ducked into it. Like a true ninja, he infiltrated the main palace. The third numero uno costumer was given a mission to rescue two of the younger ones from the order and kill the traitor Hyuk Seong Wu. There seemed to be rats in the palace, the assassin heard a predatory female voice say. Slugs of the Ares Guild, asked the mad empress in her own right. He bounced away like a hunted mouse that didn't even smell a cat. Try not to die at once, said the empress, so she would at least vent her anger. At that moment, the hapless ninja cosplayer realized that he was absolutely going to hell. In the palace added holes, but it's not a problem servants will fix everything tomorrow, thought the mad empress satisfied. Hyun Wu, back in the world, he had to calm down the upset neural network, for he didn't know that the save was deleted from the console. Suddenly he found himself with guests, though he hadn't invited anyone to tea. The guests were sprawled out in the living room, and they didn't even take off their slippers as if they'd come uninvited, the hermit thought. 
But more importantly, whether Shu Ken was all right or not, the hermit looked around. Hyun Wu remembered that his friend said he'd be back from his date in the morning, so he's not home, the crazy hermit realized. Costumer number one smugly reassured Hyun Wu that there were no guests at home besides them. The mad hermit smiled gloatingly at the guests. Now he could go full throttle. He asked the goons why they had come if he was going to join them. The guy in gym shoes was pushed back by a strong attack, and he flew out the window with a sharp clink of broken glass. The cosplayers chased the insane hermit right through the air. In preparation, they have no shortage of strength. Their artifacts also looked strong. The patlock attacked with an ice spear. The costumer hurled the spear at Hyun Wu with a powerful throw. But the mad hermit playfully caught the heavy weapon. Beat the enemy with his own weapon, he remembered his rule from the tower. But instead, the hand clutched the void as if the heavy spear had disappeared. The mad hermit was attacked again and thrown to the ground, and the spear was miraculously in the hands of the costumer. Hyun Wu applied his information skill to figure out what kind of tricks the uninvited guests were pulling. The SST Plus rank SST Plus return spear highlighted blue status. The name as well as other items of unlucky theater goers meant replica. The magic of accounting attacked the mad hermit the entire visual field covered with tax reports. Tax returns, financial statements, mortgage payments covered him in a dense cocoon. A magician accountant of the highest rank appeared before him with debt books in his hands. The report sheets precisely aimed at the homeless hermit who discounted all work to slaves. He gives out his wages in envelopes, said Hyun Wu, the costume maker, but the hermit dismissed him. You can't take him for that. He doesn't pay slaves at all. We'll definitely get you for tax evasion, a costumed financial analyst with a spear told him. There was a difference in speed, though. This dupe was performing better than the previous goons. However, the mad hermit is still faster than the tax audit cosplayer's exertions. But as soon as he took a big swing, the accounting reports came flying in. The hermit dodged easily and wondered what was next. Barely had he frozen, the homeless hermit was pinned down with a hard kick by the financial analyst. Clubs of dust rose up and blocked the hermit's view considerably. The costumer attacked sharply with his spear in front of him through the dust veil. The powerful spear took the S-ranked strength mad hermit as a test. And when he tried to counterattack, he was thwarted by the accountant's tax returns. An angry, shaggy-haired hermit crawled out of the rubble like a bear from its den. The battle had already lasted longer than a couple blows, so Hyun Woo decided to try something. Don't move, guys, while I press something, the mad hermit told them, and disappeared from sight. Omaiwa Shinderu, he said in an anime voice to the patched cosplayer. He didn't even have time to say a nani before he was hit with a heavy punch from Hyun Woo. But even after the shady move, the financial check cosplayer didn't lose his presence of mind. Two translucent sheets protected him from the mad hermit's blows. Hyun Woo was blowing dust in his eyes, but he himself remained in bad shape after the jump. His mana channels tangled. While Hyun Woo was distracted by the accountant, an analyst with a financial poker crept up from behind. Should he have dodged the attack supplemented the tax records, these costumers were really pestering the hermit. The accountant threw mana arrows, and the analyst cosplayer clamped down with his spear so the hermit couldn't dodge them. He figured out the assassin's tactics. These goons knew their business and attacked the hermit coherently. Hyun Woo's shadow move hadn't been finalized yet, and the assassin analyst was already approaching, but to his surprise, the target remained calm. The mad hermit kept suspiciously relaxed and open, as if lured into a trap. Since he's standing still, we should just attack, the financial analyst decided, and there was an explosion of impact. A cloud of dust rose up even more fiercely than before. The cosplayer had interfered with himself and was now wondering whether or not he'd gotten in. As he suddenly felt the strong, masculine hands of the mad hermit on him, caught the strained smirk of a homeless hermit, now there will be a different conversation with the IRS. He took advantage of his S++ rank resistance and let the enemy get close enough to catch him, and this time was able to give the cosplayer a good smack on the scruff of the neck. Time for a side trip, the mad hermit told the cosplayer and grabbed his skull. 
Shiken looked around his ruined apartment. What a party, he thought, and he wasn't invited. The homeless hermit consoled his now homeless friend, but he was not much comforted. What a mess they made in the bachelor apartment, baby. So Yan came to support them. But at least Shay Ken had settled in. Well, she finished the inconsolable friend who was sitting on the couch. The association will cover all losses and there were no accidents, Shu Ken replied to her. It's true the girl noticed and pulled out her phone to show him a video of the battle. On it, the crazy hermit grabbed the hairy cosplayer by the mane and in one mighty leap dragged him all over the building. They soared all the way to the roof on the hermit's galactic express, and it was immediately clear who had trashed inconsolable Shiken's apartment. Even the beautiful Seo Yeon felt sympathy for her friend. She thought it was good that the hermit didn't live with him. Why did he take in a homeless man? Seo Yeon asked him, but Shu Ken had trouble answering. The perpetually homeless use it, complained She Ken, driver, dishwasher, personal agent. After that time, Shay Ken's phone gets cut off by reporters. He complained to a beautiful friend. It hadn't even been a month since he changed his number, lamented an inconsolable Sher Ken, while the homeless hermit packed up all his belongings, putting his toothbrush in his pocket. An inconsolable Sher Ken asked the hermit where his conscience was and caught something shiny that Hyun Wu threw to him. Cheer up for now. He threw a bone to the faithful dog and himself headed to the guild office of the guild babe So Yan. An inconsolable Shuken looked at the piece of metal in his hands and immediately felt the incredible power of the ring to rule all. Woof! shouted the always cautious and loyal Shuken loudly into the hermit's back. Good thing there are useful slaves, the mad hermit noted to himself for the umpteenth time. The cosplayer quickly put out the name of the theater owner, worth the train ride. Boris Mart gave him the name. Guildhead Ares is hiding in a distant underground bunker, but with teleportation magic, it's not a problem, Hyunwoo pondered. The diligent slave reported for the completion of the circle, and after all, she had previously given a useless performance. Hyunwoo worriedly asked the talking tool if she was okay, or else it was a shame to lose her. She nodded weakly. Then, let's get started, the mad hermit decided but before he did, he remembered. He tossed the girl the phone so that she barely caught it with her tired hands. Pass it to Seo Young, said the homeless emperor. Let him keep it, he added. The girl with insomnia syndrome even brightened up at receiving such an easy assignment. Hyun Wu jumped into the warp portal. The slave girl perked up as he left, the homeless hermit noticed. He found himself in a dark, deaf basement, no windows or doors. What a strange place, the homeless hermit asked himself. It's not like his slave betrayed him and sent him to a place he can't get out of. A polite man stepped out of the shadows and said hello to the hermit. Boris Mart recognized the theater director, a mad recluse. Even as Hyun Woo confirmed, so many performances with his actors watched, said the mad hermit. The main performance won't begin until now, the director of the traveling theater informed him. They are well prepared, stated the Lord of the Rings to the ninth floor frontiersman. Gathering information didn't work, so it meant he was nothing but an illegal alien in front of him, the hermit realized. Great, said the homeless border guard. Two birds with one stone will close the theater and eliminate the illegal alien. This place is a trap in itself, Lord of the Rings said. They switched the coordinates so the hermit would fall into it. How nice of the miscreants to give away the base, said the border agent, and proceeded to apprehend the illegal. The blow exploded with a bright blinding flash. The hermit didn't mince words. But instead of the target, the hand hit the magic barrier, surprised Hyun Wu. This barrier is no match for his low-grade magic, the hermit illegal told the hermit. The shockwave threw the crazed border guard off. The illegal alien proved to be a tough nut to crack. Hyun Wu braked, leaving two deep furrows on the ground. The hermit noticed movement above him and looked up. Dozens of guns of various kinds loomed menacingly over him. The illegal spoke in a theatrical voice and decided to introduce himself again. The Magneto cosplayer gave out a long pathos speech, which Hyun Wu let slip past his ears and introduced himself as replicant. With a wave of his hand, the illegal artifact forger controlled the guns, attacking the mad border guard. Hyun Wu had to jump like a boar to dodge the constant attacks from above. 
the mad hermit applied a shadow step and dodged the powerful strike. A barrier as strong as the illegal replicants cannot be broken through with a normal attack, the hermit realized. Since it was such a big deal, Hyunwoo decided it was time to go for it and activated the power of absurd circle of mana. It was necessary to use the divine longsword's attack to stall for time, the hermit decided. The illegal hunter came close to the target. Will the theater director endure it? Divinely absurd slipper kick, shouted Hyunwoo words of strength. For a second, he managed to break through the Magneto's magical barrier. Noticing the effect, Hyunwoo stretched in a twine for a second kick. But suddenly the kick lost all absurd power. The glow of the red aura weakened. Boris Magnetovich grabbed the hermit's leg. How much mana for a single blow, he praised Hyunwoo's futile efforts. Lord of the Rings and swung himself up for a punch, clenching his ringed fist. A blow of unprecedented force, pierced through the mad hermit's resistance. The fighters returned to their original positions by the start of the battle. The homeless frontiersmen could gather mana more, it would immediately dissipate. Mana Freeze politely explained by the villain, the effect is imposed by the entire room. The illegal counterfeiter was well prepared for his encounter with the ninth floor border guard. As Hyun Woo fought the final duo of costumers, the illegal was watching him closely. Most of Mad Hermit's attacks depend on his mana. What a mouthful he is, interrupted the cosplayer of the Magneto, the Mad Hermit. Bariska continued to brag, isn't his opponent devoid of his absurd attacks now? Hyun Woo smiled back. Aren't they in the same position right now? Of course you're right, agreed the Lord of the Rings and waved his hand. An illegal replicant counterfeiter could still run his fakes. Hyun Woo was having a hard time dodging the illegal's attacks. Even the shadow step didn't work anymore. He took a direct hit from a heavy shell. Even for his stalwart, it was too much. Hoping in vain for resilience, Boris Magnetovich gloated at the hermit, drawing first blood, all forgeries exceeding S-plus rank. The room had no visible exit, and therefore the way lay only through victory, the hermit reasoned. The illegal counterfeiter prepared to attack and raised the barrier. Where is it searched Hyun Woo with his eyes, scanning every item of the illegal? What causes mana freezing? His gaze fell on the staff in Magnetovich's hands. This is it. Hyun Woo has gotten close to the theater director. The barrier is solid, but not enough to contain his pure power. The mad hermit dodged the counterattacks of the heavy shells. He flew up to the ceiling and pushed off again, changing his trajectory. The mad hermit somersaulted in the air. He recalled a special technique from the manga he had read this morning. Even though he had no mana, it could work. Holy motivational kick under his sciatica, shouted the hermit words of power. The punch worked at full power. Hyun Woo felt it perfectly. But Boris Magnetovich easily blocked the combat technicians with his shells. Oops, thought the mad hermit, and clenched his teeth tighter. At the last second, he parried the blow of the iron stick with the back of his fist. Magnetovich's swipe spun the mad hermit around as if in a dance. With cat-like agility, the border guard landed on all four limbs. Second time the barrier is broken, this time without mana, wondered the illegal forger. The performance was a success. Now the theater director can perform as well, the illegal stated. The specialty of this Cladenza sword, stated the relic forger, is that it adopts the abilities of other weapons. There is an ancient myth about a hero that fought with the power of friendship and love, the theater director went on to say. The Jedi sword in the hands of the gloating director glowed with a welding arc. That's what a proper build means, said the relic forger, throwing a hundred reinforcements on the blade. With that, he went on the offensive face to face with the unarmed hermit. Hyun Woo saw the movements with the corner of his eye, but he couldn't dodge in time. The sting of the blade stabbed into his skin. Without mana, there was little the hermit could do, and Boris Magnetovich was not letting up. Blow after blow followed blow, the mad hermit barely keeping up. The satisfied counterfeiter swung his chain mace. The spiky stuff hit. It was echoed by other sharp objects obeying Magnetovich's power. And lastly, the theater man pulled out another sword the only original among his fakes. Berserk's sword, with the debuff of inferiority complex, snatched he steel train rail. Hyun Woo stared doomfully at Gat's illegal cosplay. That's it, concluded the introduction by the director of the illegal. But the mad hermit was still standing on his own too, though covered in wounds. The guard didn't give up, let me ask you, he told the illegal counterfeiter. 
Since the guard looks like a beaten dog, we can have a chat, agreed Boris Mart. Why kill the border guard, the hermit asked. He wanted to get the illegal to talk. To ascend the throne, the illegal replied succinctly, as if it was implied in itself. Throne got the frontiersman new input in this difficult case. What more needs to be answered? It's time to end decided the illegal theater director. A bastard with strong items, Hyun Woo said. These replicas dealt critical damage, not simple scratches. Did you lose your mind before you died? Boris asked. But Hyun Woo replied that he had trump cards too. Mana, marveled Boris Mart at the dizzy glow around the hermit. No, not her, he guessed. But the hermit was already dissolving into the teleport pillar. Good performance, but he'll get his ticket money back later, the hermit said lastly. See you soon, the border guard said goodbye to the illegal artifact forger. Said the mad hermit to the illegal and disappeared into the warp. Hyun Woo fell out in the virtual room where the android girl lived. Ta ran up to the hermit in terror, examining him. But the mad border guard felt better than he looked. By pressing a button, he changed the interior of the room. Boris Magnetovich, indignant, the only spectator of the theater, and that one ran away at intermission. Illegal couldn't trace the coordinates of the teleport, and you need to catch the enemy while he's wounded. The thin thread of mana that the hermit had left behind caught his attention. Boriska realized that since the teleport thread hadn't been severed, it meant that the hermit had hidden in subspace and was in fact still here. The Lord of the Rings has prepared all his artifacts. The intermission will not be long. When the viewer comes back, Illegal will force him to watch it all the way through. The first floor of the training tower recognized the android girl in the room. The bandaged hermit was exercising his mad kung fu style. Though the android had used first aid protocol on the hermit, the hermit's wounds were deep. The silver-haired girl regretted not finding a healing potion or artifact, only a first aid kit. Illegal smuggler of fake artifacts also can freeze mana. The situation is lousy, pondered the hermit. Twenty minutes from now, the circuitry will be locked down and he'll be out. The mad hermit took a deep exhale. Finished, he said. Insane kung fu training complete, he replied to the neural network girl. Training, in his condition, the hermit looked unconcerned. The android was worried. She was part of his system, after all. Hyun Woo told the little girl that he was leaving but she worried that the hermit hadn't thought things through enough. He affectionately rubbed the neuroset on the silky fiber optic on his head. It's different this time, reassured the hermit android. He actually looked pleased. Bandaged as if after an encounter with a lawnmower, he came out of warp. The hermit looked refreshed after a brief intermission, perhaps snatching a drink for a friend, as a proper audience member should. Welcome back. Boris Magnetovich greeted him as if he were Prince Arthas. The illegal replicant was very happy to have a single spectator. But the mad hermit at once broke the serious atmosphere of the performance and laughed. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, it just slipped out. Excuse the spectator border guard. Illegal. Confused his prepared remarks and sprinkled them randomly, along with heavy projectiles, he attacked with pathos. Hyun Woo closed his eyes. How long can it be? He thought promising graves, death, instead of just doing, tiring of these theater people. He has trained countless fictional martial arts, thus gathering the power of absurdity. But there is something that is not a part of them. It was all about the principles of martial arts, the concepts on which they were based, their fundamentals. But you can't just learn this principle, every master saves his shoots of knowledge. However, in a short period of time in the warp room, Hyun Woo had undercut the cheats, in the sense of reaching enlightenment. The mad hermit summarized all the experience he had accumulated in martial arts, as well as the spirit of the duels with the illegal electric and the demon lowly that used the exact opposite experience. The artifact's chopping blow was repelled by his bare hand without harming it. All of this helped the mad hermit discover the principle of grafting. From each master, he cut shoots and grafted their skills onto himself. The rogue replicator staggered back, his power no longer working on the hermit. He thought as he watched the border guard reflecting all the requests for registration. Hyun Woo was jubilant. His new concept had already proven itself perfectly. Outwardly, nothing had changed. The wounds were the same, and the lines of the illegal theater goer still worked, perplexed Bariska. The level of skill turned the hermit into a different person, the Lord of the Rings realized. 
He had planned to play with the wounded man before finishing him off, but he didn't delay, feeling threatened. Bariska threw himself into a desperate attack to hell with the script when the whole theater is on fire. Hyunwoo was copying Dr. Strange's gestures with a smug look. He thinks it's a matrix, and you can block all the blows with one hand, the illegal director shouted. Boris delivered a stabbing blow with his blade to the hermit's chest area. An unknown force of cheater skills wound his arm, intercepting the blow. Bariska howled in pain, but Hyunwoo told him to clench his fangs tighter. Rock, paper, scissors, he applied his trademark mad hermit trick. Boris was thrown back by the senseless words of power. Right crown, left funeral, shouted the mad hermit and finished off the enemy. The counterfeiter was pinned to the floor like a steel battering ram. The hermit swung to kill the dog, but his attack was interrupted. The heavy artifact projectiles made him jump the boar again. The hermit bit his tongue, dodging everyone was problematic. Good for you in a mortar with a crushed vegetable. The wounded illegal asked and stood up. Cheater pumped in the pause menu before the fight. The theater director was angry. In one fell swoop, he unleashed the power of all the smuggled artifacts. Illegal snatched the sword of Berserk's inferiority. Its ability to absorb all the stats of other weapons let the replicant know. How childish to measure who has the most, the mad hermit remarked. Now we'll see if Boris Magnetovich decides to make the final blow. Unlikely that his body could withstand more than one blow with all the power of his inferiority complex, Boris put everything into one blow. The heavy steel beam came down on the insane hermit with a full swing. King Kong's penknife strained by its size even a demented border guard. Well, that eight who has a bigger gun is cooler, thought to himself illegal counterfeiter. Hyun Woo absorbed the full power of the punch flowing through his body and set the punch with a rail of inferiority. Mana? Boris thought at first, but then he recognized the familiar energy. The power of inoculation, said the mad hermit, and approached the illegal immigrant sharply. Illegal migrants will be detained, shouted the border guard in charge. Hyun Wu aimed his own punch at Boris, amplifying with powerful words of pathos and absurdity. Fucking cheater, the illegal shouted one last time and took a clean hit. Instant death tore the illegal's body apart. That's the end of the tale, who is the cheater and the good guy, exhaled the mad hermit. The remains of the illegal were disappearing along with replica artifacts. But the magic duffel didn't disappear, Hyunwu noticed the artifact. At least some loot, he thought, picking up an object from the floor. Hermione's bag prompted the system, the thing he could hold 15 items. The hermit buried the only real inferiority complex in the pouch. A bit stingy for a boss like this, the loot was appreciated by the mad frontiersman. Time to go home, the homeless hermit remarked. I wish I could find some clothes. He looked around, and the phone. The secret dungeon door opened, and the last of the wandering troop of costumers called out to the master. And I was horrified to discover that I had just become an unemployed actor. S-level luck no other way smirked at the hermit. He raced toward the secret wicket in the illegal director's trap. A numbskull cosplayer got caught in the clutches of border control. Any money drugs weapons? Asked the tired hermit and began a search. Need your clothes naked date hundred muttered the homeless hermit and your phone and your wallet and whatever else you have. Three days later, the mad hermit called a press conference saying he knew who attacked homeless Shea Ken. As always, the mad hermit showed up in a tracksuit. Hyunwoo stated that he would be brief, say what he wanted to say, and leave immediately without further explanation. Uninvited guests in Xu Hung's house, the hermit expounded, had come for him. In lieu of evidence, he provided a recording fabricated by Ave's neural network the day before, but who can ask the mad hermit? The note showed that the guild leader of the Ares International Guild, Boris Marth, was behind everything. Some might think he fabricated the tape. The hermit excused himself, but there is other evidence. Hyunwu hoped that the Ares Guild would give an explanation, but secretly expected more compensation from them. Three days later, when the homeless hermit was still staying with friends, a crowd of journalists gathered outside the house where Hyuk Seong Wu had gone, they shouted. The boss of the Guardian Mafia group was sitting in the living room. He told his friends the hard truth about their world. They actually live on the ninth floor of the Matrix, but there are others. They had a hard time accepting the truth. Even little Seo Yeon frowned her forehead, thinking about Hyun Woo's border service. Then just screw it, 
advised the haughty mad mobster. She hesitated to answer, but the hermit realized how unbelievable it sounded. That's about what he expected, the hermit thought, looking at the concerned faces of his friends. But sooner or later he had to tell them he could still explain the rifts and illegals. No wonder the not-so-altruistic Hyun Wu was doing the rifts, Shi Ken remarked. So an illegal alien was detained this time too, asked the cute Seo Yon. Not quite answering the hermit, the guild leader turned out to be an illegal replicant, two geese in one volley. The mad hermit wanted to continue the tale of his exploits of service, but they were interrupted by shouts from the street. Tired, the mob boss got angry, but the cautious Shu Ken asked if he was in the right state to talk to people. Mad unwrapped the bandages, flashing his bogatiric abs, and told his friend it was okay. The deranged mob boss walked out to reporters under a hail of questions, but when the hermit came out, he didn't see what he expected. The faithful apprentice meets the homeless emperor properly. Honoring the master, the bright apprentice formally greeted the hermit. Why had his dark past grown on his doorstep if the hermit had left him in China, he asked himself. The faces of friends who just found out this morning that their friend is Agent Smith and now also a crazy teacher. The mad empress faithfully caught every word of the master. Who is this? asked the hermit, pointing his finger at the black-headed best bodyguards, replied the mad apprentice. Let them go, he asked, and the bodyguards immediately disappeared. Quan Seo questioned his friend if the dragon empress from the Pijo guild was definitely in front of them. A cautious Shu Ken replied that it was the nickname of the world top five ranking, much to Hyun Wu's surprise. Fifth in the world rankings, the hermit glanced at the lovely apprentice before him. When he had trained her, he had only passed on some of the emperor's techniques, the mad hermit recalled. How did this meek sheep become so strong, he wondered. The mad apprentice bumped her forehead and begged the master's forgiveness. She apologized for not being able to follow all his precepts. After all, he had told her that there could be no one superior, but the hermit immediately interrupted his apprentice before she blabbed too much. But the flow of martial arts-inspired sentimental nonsense could no longer be contained. Hyun Wu pressed the off button on the monitor of the whiteboard. Don't make me raise my voice he said in the voice of a mad emperor, and the student blushed. The masochist's apprentice was drooling contentedly when the cautious Shu Ken turned to the hermit. Mi Ren, the hermit's friend, stuttered with excitement. The insane disciple was covered in a bloodthirsty aura of darkness. Then Shu Ken even heard her voice in her head, Don't you dare call me by my teacher's name. What binds them together, asked a cautious Shiken while Seo Yun, with Quan Seo tactfully removed. Apprentice, replied Hyun Wu, stroking the contented cat to calm her temper. Cautious, Shiken stacked at the bottom of the test tube. A rank five disciple, he muttered. The bastards are noisy, the mad emperor said, and the apprentice offered to finish them off. Everyone under the knife, she said with a cute face, but the homeless emperor stopped her. What can't she ask with the expression of a cute kitten? The mob boss smirked when he got the text message he'd been waiting for. I'll be gone for a while, he said to a dejected she Ken. Ares Moody's have made contact, the mad mob boss explained. They met at a cafe nearby. Hyun Wu was as usual neglecting the officiousness. Why not squeeze half of the guild in a diner? Let's discuss this directly, declared the insane mob boss to the weakling in front of him. Boris's deputy came to meet him in person. He was visibly nervous. Boriski's deputy was resenting why he should be the one to clean up the mess they'd made. Also, the hermit showed the number six at the conference, so he has the Numenera from the cosplayer order as a hostage and witness. It was probably because of this crazy guy that the boss was killed, Boris's deputy thought. The guild was bursting at the seams. He was in a hurry to figure it all out and asked the hermit what he wanted. The deputy promised to process the request for compensation, which the hermit will be satisfied with. All of Korea's dungeons, the mob boss declared to the deputy's amazement. But Hyun Wu had something to blackmail them with. There's a long tale of criminals following the guild, and the valuable witness has already put everyone on the take, the mad mobster hinted. He guessed at random, but from the reaction of the deputy, he realized he had hit the bullseye. Racketeering is his second profession, the hermit thought. But mercy is familiar to him, declared the homeless mobster, and he agrees to 40% of the Korean lands in the hands of Ares. 
tightly, he grabbed us by the Fabergé, horrified Bariska's deputy. Satisfied with business, the head-mad mobster left the diner, his empire slowly growing. The mad disciple didn't slacken her zeal despite the fact that they were far away from the empire. Told you to remove the extras, reminded the homeless emperor, and they disappeared. Her hand reached forward as if the girl wanted to touch the master while he grunted. He turned around and asked her what she was doing, but the mad apprentice only wagged her tail. She took one look at the pathetic slug in the diner and memorized his face. To bring it to his mad master one day, the girl turned her back, escorting the mad teacher with a look. In her hand, she clutched a small device of unknown purpose. All dogs gather, the chief candidate for the emperor's concubine commanded. Deputy Bariska, begging for mercy, help the hooligans are depriving his eyesight, shouted he. Black shadows hurled against the concrete wall of the parking lot. Nothing special stated the senior dog of the Empress's personal guard, the deputy recognized them as soldiers of the P. Joe Guild. The deputy shouted pathetic excuses for his lack of involvement, but to the Empress's hounds, his only fault was that Ares existed. The dogs ripped out the deputy's fingernails on his left hand so he could better remember their words. Dare to anger the Lord again and they will surely return, the men in skull masks told him. Cold wave complained the Advanced Function Neural Network. Last time Hyunwoo never changed the interior before leaving. But the girl could have summoned him, the guilt-ridden hermit asked guiltily. After using the schematic, five days he's unavailable, the android Av explained. Hyunwoo nodded. He couldn't wait to see what could be improved this time, so he asked the android. The girl cheerfully announced that an update had been pushed into the system. As that function of psychoanalysis remembered the mad hermit, not quite heard him answer the android. Each improvement requires a level increase. Hyun Wu had fallen out of reality. That's how long it took to work as a border guard in three shifts without a break. How to reach a high level in the system if progress crawls like a turtle, the hermit lamented. But the answer lay on the surface. If he wanted more information, he could properly interrogate the illegals, the android pointed out to him. In addition to the usual illegals, there are those who have already climbed the tower once and then started a new ascent. But why this recursion, the android did not know. Hyun Wu realized that repeat illegal aliens might know a lot more useful things. The forger replicant spoke of something similar, that there was a throne at the top of the tower, the mad hermit recalled. The words didn't say anything on their own, which meant we'd have to interrogate the other illegals, the hunter pondered. That's it for now, stated a sharp, defiant Hyun Wu, but the neural network stopped him. Hazyainama, Plestishanama, Vernimana rambled the muzzle of the electron. And how do you say no to such? wondered the mad hermit, whose mimimeter was going off the charts. Eventually, the android quickly learned to be nice and hack leather bags, he concluded. The friends met at a construction site where a huge mansion was being built. A humble dwelling for a mentor, reported the bright student, knowing the homeless hermit's weaknesses. Modest, Hyun Woo grimaced as Shi Kyung googled the place online. This land was being allocated for a new city he read from the news and was more horrified than the hermit. How much money is that? her mad teacher asked. He bit his lip, realizing the value of such a gift from the hands of a loyal student. What's going on? wondered the mad hermit why he was being treated so well, considering the devoted disciple. What is she hiding, he asked himself. A hidden motive, a secret identity. These questions kept the hermit uneasy. Always faithful, read his status to the surprised student. Apprentice. Turned insane hermit who lost his social skills in deep childhood. Maybe she's just a pervert, the mad emperor asked bluntly. Even the always reserved Shiken shrieked at the mad hermit. How can you say such a thing to a child, he sternly reprimanded his friend, but she is the little one, the hermit thought. Looking at her carefully, he asked when the crazy student was going to be going back to China. The owner wants her to leave, the girl replied with the look of an abandoned kitten, so Hyun Wu hurriedly clarified that he was worried about Pei Zhou's affairs. The only place she should be is under heaven, replied the satisfied cat. Oh, sighed the mad hermit and told her to just do something. The always cautious Sher Ken noticed something between the two madmen. What happened between them asked the hunter of the mad hermit. He portrayed a sweet girl that was beyond excited about the opportunity to serve the teacher, 
but the mad hermit told him to forget everything. Forgotten, Shuken agreed with him and asked when the mad teacher would go to the USA. He reminded his friend that he had received an invitation from the International Hunters Association. Hyun Wu was surprised. They want to bring the hermit into the S rank, Shiken explained. Hyun Wu remembered that they give money for ranking for nothing. And for the S rank, the payout was huge. Hyun Wu only memorized what was profitable. On the other hand, he's already rich, wondered the mad hermit. Having a place in the world rankings is prestigious, Shikian thought dreamily. Then it's worth a trip there, crazy hermit. A few days later, the trio arrived at the World Association building. Hyun Wu marveled at the size of the park around them. The mad emperor's ardent disciple offered to build one in his mansion, but Hyun Wu talked her out of it. Shikin said hello to the man who greeted them. The man with the monocle, his name was Liam, and he immediately recognized the living legend. Shaken introduced him formally as a member of the association's Supreme Council, Senator Liam. The latter suggested that he be called Qui Gon. He politely shook hands with the mad hermit, exchanging pleasantries. He also extended his hand to the mad student, recognizing her as the Empress of Dragons. But the girl didn't even move. There is only one sky, thought she. But why did the senator come in person? Asked a cautious Shiken, to which the wily politician replied that he came for Kim Hyun Woo's sake as a fan. Plus, the mad hermit came here to learn his place in the rankings. Qui Gon volunteered to personally escort them to the testing building. He opened the modernist door with his fingerprint and invited guests inside. The place looked like a state-of-the-art super lab, marveled the mad hermit. The test itself is pretty simple. You have to touch the purple orb, it will do everything, Senator Liam explained. So simple, the hermit asked disappointedly, to which Liam replied that wouldn't it be nice to keep things simple. Well, thought the mad hermit, now we'll find out. Not much he trusted these machines, even his status was floundering with readings. He approached the balloon. The mad hermit's hand rested on the warm neon quartz. Observers froze in anticipation of the results, not knowing what to expect. Error 404, the hermit read in the status that came out. What the hell, he thought, looking at the blank screen. Chic beauty. Seo Yan wiped her wet forehead and praised her group for doing a good job. The monsters are especially strong this time, thought the tired cutie. But more importantly, the monsters seem to have gotten smarter as if someone had pumped up their intelligence level. Then again, maybe she's just winding herself up, the stunning huntress brushed off. She learned from the news that a third ranker would also be coming to the hunter's banquet, and she worried about the mad hermit. A few weeks ago, Shu Hyun suggested to Tiny Soyeon that they move their raid to the maze. Planning to follow Hyun Wu, she teased her friend, but he wondered if she wasn't going to do that. Not really, the beautiful girl evasively replied. Business was over for today. She sighed in relief. Cautious Shiken held her back. He had one question left, he said embarrassedly. The gorgeous beauty listened attentively to her friend. What kind of gifts do girls like? An embarrassed Shiken asked her. The question caught her completely by surprise. In so many years, Shiken hadn't asked such a thing. Deputy Bariska, biting the remains of his fingernails, the guild's stock value plummeted the Lord of the Rings artifact also dissolved. But the biggest calamity isn't even angry shareholders. And the damn psycho Kim Hyun Woo, Boris's deputy, was wobbling that desk. Forty percent wailed, he. Someone walked in, annoyed corporate worm, turned on the principal, and wanted to reprimand the bother. But quickly disgraced, Geralt Mason, consul of the World Hunters Association, paid him a visit at his workplace. What brought such an important guest, ingratiated corporate worm, Boris March answered him with a white-haired politician. They really were quite close remembered, the deputy. But Geralt Mason assured that he had come to lend two helping hands to a man in need. All for Boris, Mason continued. What will it be like for him when he returns and the guild is in decline? He gently placed his hand on the shoulder of the corporate pad. Just do as you're told, said Geralt Mason's eyes. The mad hermit stared stupidly at the blue status screen. Again, the stupid system was messing with his head. Can't calculate, error. The damn program kept repeating. This has never happened before, a concerned Qui Gon informed them. The cautious Shuken volunteered to test the system and found that his rank had dropped. 
But this meant that the orb was definitely not broken and was working properly. The problem lay in Hyun Wu's crazy anomaly. Kui Gong, confused and didn't know how to hide the awkwardness, the cute student, calmed him down by calling him a redneck. Master Great Heaven, began the ardent, passionate student. Shut your mouth, quickly cut her off by the mad teacher. Looks like he's come all the way for nothing. The hermit was annoyed. But Kui Go Jedi speak switched him to food. The banquet would start soon, he assured the hermit. This hunter doesn't want to leave. He wants to stay and eat meat, Liam said in a strange voice. The mad hermit had had enough. The devoted apprentice kept a meticulous list of the future emperor's preferences. Qui-Gon was just contemplating how to further entertain the crazy guest when they were rudely interrupted. <laughs> They turned around to see who was so bold as to allow themselves to forget about politeness. Bald Hulk, the third place ranking was read by Hyun Wu with the help of a scan. The people around had also noticed the altercation and were avidly watching the outcome. So annoying like a fly, the hermit remarked. But Shuken cautioned that it was best not to mess with this hunter. This man has taken over all the gyms in the country, all the gyms he is abusing his power everywhere, quickly explained the cautious Shikin. The bald hulk flashed his bald head and clung to Hyun Wu. He clearly hadn't gotten a courtesy lesson in a long time, the mad teacher thought. I'll bet I've got a bigger stanza and bench press, bullied the square-headed hermit. You know how many squats I do, squeeze the jock hum everything, he said to the hermit, pointing his finger. These are the words of great men like him, brushed off by the mad politeness teacher. The jock himself discreetly signed up for a crash course in politeness from crazy relationship professor Yun Wu. Kui Guo tried to use the power of persuasion again, but it didn't work on the dumb ones. Hulk Crush swung his sledgehammers at the square skull, but the hermit turned away. Thanks for subscribing to the courtesy lessons, said the mad hermit, humming contentedly. Rock, paper, scissors sent the goofy jock flying. That one nearly knocked down the building's supporting wall, trapping everyone under the rubble. Is one lesson really enough? Hyun Wu was upset. He had prepared a whole course after all. But the bald hulk got up. If he had a brain, he'd have a concussion. That's the real talent, the bald bodybuilder, thought a cautious shake hen, invulnerability. The jock grabbed a bigger pebble with his clawed paws and threw it like a ball at the unperturbed hermit. It's no big deal to a crazy hermit after all the battles. Hyun Wu crushed the flying boulder into dust with a single punch. The square-headed hulk seized the moment and leaped a carcass behind the hermit's back. Pump yourself up, jerk, he shouted to the hermit and cracked his fists with sledgehammers. People scattered out of the hall in panic when two of the top-ranked people start a fight. It's better to get away. The hermit is being squeezed. Qui-Gon was surprised. We need to stop the fight, he decided. So Mason's faction will only get stronger. You want to get pumped, asked the hulk how. The overgrown closet chuckled. But the mad hermit only laughed, compared to the illegal jock boss, the red horse punk. It was all a joke. Only inhibited people with low self-esteem are swayed, the hermit replied, shaking off the dust easily. Now time for a reinforced course of politeness, leaped the mad hermit forward. Baldy got a good look at the fist flying straight into the stone tableau instead of his face. Fist of absurdity struck out and sent the hulk flying into the first space. Brickface scrambled, but resilience kept him going. Great, here comes the test punching bag, smirked the mad hermit. The cautious Shuken stood gaping. The faithful disciple was filming clips for nightly viewings. Kui Gong was lost behind. For all the Hulk's durability, he had accumulated a lot of damage, Shuken remarked. The stone brainless closet went into a deep blackout, still got off easy. The mad hermit defiantly wiped the sweat from his forehead. In fact, he wasn't even out of breath. Stone-faced in third place, the test showed that rocking is nonsense, concluded the mad relationship professor. So the third place belongs to him now, Hyun Wu concluded. Hut, hut, turn your back to the forest and turn your back to me, howled the wind over the monk's hut. The wind howled in the shutters of the ancient temple. The ink master meditated, learning the art of shadows. Congratulations to you came the voice of a man visiting the lodge for the first time in many days. Now the warrior is the world's greatest mangaka and divine ink drawing technique, executed flawlessly, admired the bearded one. Nothing special. The mangaka falsely modest, black body ink along the body. 
That's right, escorted the mangaka warrior with a glance, the bearded master. A person who has mastered all kinds of drawing and shadowing is a real master. What will you study next? The bearded man asked the great warrior mangaka, the one gawked with red eyes. Nani desu, Databayo thought he. Climb to the top, he said, to meet the master who painted the tramp. Pretty Seo Yan had already read in the news everything that happened to the crazy hermit. Again he made a mess, sighed the girl. Why worry about Hyun Wu? He has plot armor, replied the pretty girl Kwan Seo. She agreed. But that's exactly why it's worth worrying about. Forever such resilience will not work, will not be saddened the girl. Hyun Wu shattered the whole usual world of hunters by breaking into the ratings. He has too easily shaken the rotten foundations, the whole of politics. He's a layered man, Kwan Seo remarked. And tiny Seo Yan agreed with him. Cutie changed the subject and asked him if he knew about Shiken. And what about him, wondered the friend, and stared at the girl listening intently. He seems to have gotten a girlfriend, the sly fox, so Yan shared. Romantic Shiken was going through the goodies, smiling dreamily. There was a knock on the room door, and he hurried to disperse the pink flies. Qui-Gon, not knowing how else to entertain the guests and grease the mad hermit, placed all three in the association suite. The senator offered a flattering apology for what happened, but clearly it's all part of his cunning plan. The banquet was canceled, Hulk was taken to the hospital and given prophylactic enemas. A crowd of lackeys from the cream of high society had gathered around the mad hermit. And then Liam convinced the hermit to stay late at the hotel with his apprentice. Liam offered to have a word. It was about a deeper agreement between them, the mad hermit agreed. As he headed for the exit, he discovered a cattail behind him. Stay home, he said to the mad cat, and it fluffed its fur. One hundred percent of her hostility was directed at the cunning Qui-Gon. The mad student returned with nothing in her frustrated feelings. The cautious Shiken experienced the feeling of any guy when a beautiful girl sits down next to him, even though there is an empty seat next to her. It would be nice to be friends, thought a cautious Shiken. After all, they were both in the hero's retinue now. But a diminutive beauty with the personality of a violent berserker can't be approached so easily. He politely addressed her by her first name, Ms. Mai Ren. Two scarlet rubies scanned him for the importance of the conversation. The level of interest was somewhere between the baseboard and the floor. A cautious Shuken asked her how they met the mad hermit. The long eyelashes of a possible concubine candidate fluttered slightly. The mad cat agreed to tell, but set her own conditions to the hero's friend. What does the master like? asked the girl with the meekness of an angel. Cautious Shu Ken pondered the answer. At first, the mad friend was only dragging himself over food. But then he got hooked on money, so much so that he even lived with him for free and made him work as a driver and an agent and a housewife. The cat said thanks and perked up her ears, leaving a cautious Shaken wondering what was on the girl's minds after all. The mad student scurried away with a loud slam of the door. What bee had stung her, wondered the cautious Shaken. The mad hermit hobbled over to the expensive tea. The politician was clearly sucking up to him, but the homeless emperor was enjoying it. He quickly cut to the chase, stopping the flow of exhortations. Quan So Fake laughed in the spirit of Kao Chao at such a straightforwardness of a mad hermit. He asked Hyun Wu if he knew Geralt Mason, another influential member of the association. The man is closely connected to the authorities and to the top ranks of the hunters, Qui Gon said. Mason is slowly building influence and needs a counterbalance in the association, the wily politician continued. He bluntly asked the mad hermit to take his side in this confrontation. The homeless emperor wondered if he needed all this pile of problems on his scrotum. With the same thoughts, he returned to the room, politics greatly exhausting the mad hermit. He returned quickly, remarked a wary Shiken getting the cookies. The mad hermit immediately stuck his nose in, asking Shiken what he was hiding, forgetting about tactfulness decades ago. A souvenir, Shiken stated evasively, but Hyunwu kept up. Looks like a gift, to whom he asked. Embarrassed, Shiken changed the subject and asked how things were going with Liam. He might just be idling, the homeless emperor replied. Shiken took a new look at his friend who had gained a lot of political weight. An apprentice in the top five of the world. An enemy of the Ares Guild that was a bone in everyone's throat. 
One shadow of him could change the balance of power on the chessboard of politics, Shikhen remarked. Hyun Wu got the offer from the senator because of that, Shikang explained to his friend. That's right, remembered the mad hermit. The senator had promised a free teleporter. He really gave permission not believed by the cautious Shu Ken, but Hyun Wu was firmly convinced that he had heard about the teleport. The top 50 banquet was held in two weeks, and Hyun Wu would need to appear there. These are the terms of the senator's support. Geralt Mason took the chair of the head of Ares and quickly combed all the office rats. One such stood before him and fawned over the report. Boris's deputy himself realized that these were all temporary measures. Ares was finished, but Mason was helping to keep the guild afloat. Obviously, Boris March is just an excuse to use the rest of the guild as he sees fit, but the puny office worm pushed aside all the doubts that were eating away at him with venom from within and accepted what was. Mason noticed the office plankton's hesitation, and he fidgeted even more. It's all right, he reassured the puppet and prepared a present. He shoved some strange object into the hand of the simpleton, which made Boriska's deputy surprised. A black bug-like disc lay in the palm of his hand. What is it? The office worm asked. Do as they say, and he can control the members of the Ares Guild, Mason said in a conspiratorial tone. The bald hulk was coming around after the evening's prophylactic enemas. It was very painful and humiliating, especially from underneath. When he rose, he found visitors in his chamber. Geralt Mason himself was waiting for his awakening in the moonlight. They warned Hulk not to mess with the crazy hermit, but he didn't listen, and this is the result. Such painful lessons in politeness, the Hulk received from the master of ink manga, the patient said. Who looks like him? Another visitor entered the room. Speak of the devil, Hulk thought, hearing the familiar voice of the mangaka. What's wrong with your face? The mangaka asked and corrected himself. I'm sorry, it's always like that. Mason smiled contentedly. His mainstay in the political field had returned from training. He theatrically spread his hands and told them it was time to act. Qui-Gon did not move away from the windows. He was waiting for an important guest and lamented that he had not yet arrived. Is he still waiting for him? Another hunter asked the senator. Number four in the rankings, the boatman with a huge oar behind his back, suggested that Liam give up. It seems that Hyun Wu is not interested in this encounter. Don't people send notices by mail? Pigeons? Asked the girl with green hair, CC. Qui-Gon realized that Hyun Wu was a very peculiar wild hermit barbarian, and there was still hope. There was a knock on the door, time for the formal part of the banquet and his exit. The senator was great in public, after all, that's his main profession. The evening brought together political sharks from around the world, top-class hunters, and money bags. Everyone is busy consolidating their corrupt ties and making money out of nothing. Senator the Hall had recently been destroyed but was fine again. The guest turned to Liam. The latter laughed. Oh, those magical guest workers. The boatman touched the senator's shoulder worriedly. He was part-time Liam's bodyguard. He turned his attention to the Mason faction that had just arrived. The inky mangaka also appeared. He neither drank nor ate, as if he was waiting for something. This caused CC to be worried as well. The mangaka hasn't appeared at any official events since reaching the top five. Now Qui-Gon was feeling the pressure. The Mason faction represented here looked powerful and influential, which meant clients would move to them. Are all the hunters here? asked mangaka, the politician next to him and he looked around the room and confirmed that all the invited guests had arrived. He suddenly unclasped his arms, hitherto crossed on his chest, answered the man beside him, fine. No reason to wait any longer. Mangaka grabbed the guy by the skull and crushed it with his hand like a ripe watermelon, dirtying everything with scraps of brains. Ink Mangaka also indifferently looked around at the other guests, searching for a convenient target. Liam staggered back, horrified, as if he himself had been nailed to the floor. Why is he doing this in his guild? The crazy hermit was sternly asked by the cute Seo Yeon. It's good here, too, the cheeky hermit answered her. And there's no one here, he replied to her indignant claims. But the cutie got even more pissed off. There's no one here because she doesn't let anyone in here. That's right. Then let's change the location. 
said the carefree hermit, causing the slave to have a seizure. She rambled on about having to start all the magic circle work all over again. And what's the big deal? The mad slave owner asked, completely failing to understand the question. The girl collapsed in despair, night shifts, again. She wailed, to which the hermit suggested that she should save herself. Still a living slave was more useful. But after all, she still has her main job. The circle has to paint at night for two weeks. Just do the afternoon for her work. They'll find a friend to slave. The mad slave owner quickly decided. The cat nodded, her master merciful. The slave fell to her knees, rejoicing at the relaxation of the labor regime. But what about Liam's proposal, asked the hermit cutie Seo Yan. Traveling the world with magic circles, it's convenient, the hermit dreamily recalled. But the circle is only for apprehending illegal aliens, frowned cutie Seo Yeon. That's right, confirmed the hermit. You never know where a rift will appear and how many people will be affected, so the teleporter is useful. Hyun Woo approached the slave girl as he heard a knock from the back room. The man knocked when he heard their voices and asked to be let out. Oh, remembered cute Seo Yan, recently caught by the hermit prisoner, she said. I'd forgotten all about him, the embarrassed girl fussed. Let's let him out. She opened the door, but a scary, wild man's face appeared. Another time, the hottie slammed the doors shut at the same second. Why did she close the door? The hermit asked her. But the girl said she was just scared. The hunter in the back room looked pitiful. Hun Wu noticed as he opened the doors again. He begged to be spared. Good thing Seo Yan didn't lock him in the refrigerator and forget him there. It's been less than a month, and already it looks like this. The mad master of torture marveled. You say tell all, smiled the hermit. This captive has been marinating nicely. The banquet hall turned into a bloodbath. Bodies scrambled, blood splattered, the group of conspirators destroying everyone they saw. Liam was hurriedly getting his men and clients away while there was still time. But disaster was imminent. They would all die soon if no one helped them, the senator realized. It took less than five minutes for the conspirators to kill dozens of top-rank hunters. So great was the gap in strength. Bald Hulk's shadow loomed menacingly over the senator. <laughs> he turned around in horror at hearing the familiar bass and looked his death in the eyes. Boatman saved him from the steel vice at the last moment. The Hulk could have just crushed the weak senator. Crazy bastard. Boatman gritted his teeth. He was second in rank to the Hulk. Sitsi was also pinned against the wall. Her opponent was much stronger than the girl. Run, the green-haired girl barely said to Liam, telekinesis squeezing her throat. The Hulk came to his senses and attacked the boatman. Liam could only stare at his defeat. Why the hell, he cried out. Why are they doing this? Why have they crossed the line? The mangaka painted the last victim red. Just a necessity, he quietly replied to the senator, to destroy the world. What he was talking about, Liam didn't understand the madman's words, though he heard them clearly. Wow. They started the party without the main guest. The hermit was surprised he had just arrived with his faithful apprentice. That was it, he realized after scanning the conspirators with the ability. Ink Mangaka also recognized his main opponent. Why is this place trashed? The mad hermit asked the senator. Why is everyone so sad like someone died? Hyun Wu wondered. So that's him. The mad hermit heard and turned around. That's who was chasing the bald hulk, Mangaka came close. Some reenactor again? The hermit asked, and Mangaka introduced himself. No, he said, he'd just just come from a comic con. Who is it? The hermit asked, and the obliging faithful apprentice explained that the first number among the hunters was before him. Just in time, just as I was about to sketch, I heard Hyun Wu and wondered if they knew each other. Just heard. Mangaka replied and flicked a drop of ink off his finger. To climb the tower, you have to kill the border guard, said the Mangaka in the hat. Quick bold as a known substance, thought the hermit. The Mangaka emitted a jet of ink as if from a water cannon. Climb, the hermit heard and confirmed his hunches. There you are. You've been caught, you damned illegal alien, rejoiced the mad border guard. Requesting the information once more, he saw his status, which was quite unexpected. Not yet, Mangaka said, but soon I will be. It just takes one small step. The unrecognized artist took his hat off and instantly moved with a pop of air that closed in where Mangaka stood. And paint a portrait of him in blood, the artist continued. Hand moving, bandaged, the hermit saw a flying fist. 
Smells like ink and a lonely lifestyle, he managed to think. And ducked at the last second, Neo Matrix style. Hyun Woo did a somersault on his hands using his spinning energy. He delivered a sudden kick from bottom to top with his foot to the artist's jaw. Mangaka didn't just block the punch, he also caught the hermit in a takedown. Your martial arts, Mangaka said, appreciating the hermit's skills. Bottom of the pile, get out of here, said the unrecognized artist, and guided the mad hermit toward the exit with a slight movement of his hand. There were no doors along the way, so the hermit had to pave the way with his sturdy body. A devoted student became concerned and wanted to step in to help, but the ugly square face blocked the entire view. Wow, what a girl, let's dance, heard the crazy student. I don't dance with freaks, the dragon empress replied defiantly. What a nuisance, Hyun Woo thought. Then theater people, now artists. A crazy man of the art showed well-practiced choreography. He threw a lot of punches so fast that his movements seemed a blur. The mad hermit could hardly keep up with the complicated ballet pass. He's actually a bad dancer. Cosplayers, artists, now there's ballet, how long can it be? It's the entertainment of intellectuals. Give folk art, the mad hermit resented. The unrecognized artist was performing at the level of the illegals, perhaps even stronger than them, the border guard felt. Once clamped, one must respond, the mad hermit realized. Unleashed the power of the divine long rook. If it can't handle a two-handed hold, it needs more. Mangaka let the border guard go and thought about it. He'd stuff stuff in his pockets and you'd never notice. The unrecognized artist felt something strange. The mana field around them was expanding. Everything seemed blurry because of it. That's the benefit of two weeks of practice, grinned Hyun Woo. The fist of the divine longsword itself. Only Lole is good for groping. But if the target is apprehended, a thorough search can be conducted. The mad hermit applied the ten-stop demana Loli technique, expanding the mana he had delayed the artist. Thanks to her, he had increased his internal mana supply. The unrecognized artist was pinned to the ground. He was unprepared for such criticism. The raking hands of the border guard reached for the artist. No one can cross the border illegally, Hyun Woo exulted, neither inside nor outside. He used a wave of love lol on an unrecognized mangaka. The whole neighborhood was flooded with iridescent pink light. The shock waves went round and round on the ground, so that the hermit squirmed, the strong wind throwing sand into his eyes. After assessing the results of the apprehension, the mad border guard was greatly surprised. This unrecognized mangaka preferred older women. The love of Lolas did not touch the heart of the unrecognized artist at all. Loli sucks, the unrecognized artist said, and got behind the hermit's back. Real artists draw mature sitters. Mangaka cracked the hermit on the head. That's a lolly to dislike so much. Couldn't get over the mad frontiersman. What had they done wrong that nature had harvested them like that? He gasped with indignation and got a kick in the ribs from an unrecognized artist. All those who say that in women, the main thing is the soul. Hypocrites, said the artist. So what? Objected the hermit. All are good in their own way, he replied confusedly. All your preferences should, firmly stated the unrecognized lone artist. He just likes everyone else and doesn't follow his ideal like your goofy mana. That's what's wrong, Mangaka continued. He's been practicing martial ink arts for hundreds of years and knows what he's talking about. Even if he doesn't even think about winning, he told the hermit. Hundreds of years, wondered the frontiersman. And you look as young as you are, you're human, muttered the hermit. Yun Wu checked the status again. Mangaka was human, but with a special ability. He was constantly reborn and could train martial arts for hundreds of years. Nonsense, thought Hyun Woo. What's next? Celestials will descend from the sky. So be it, he said, for such a persistent frontiersman. He uses the best ink, said the mangaka releasing black mana. To show the true meaning of martial arts, divorces of ink flowed out from behind his back. The unrecognized artist used a strange but very powerful attack. She tossed the fighter in gym shoes back to his corner in an instant. But as soon as he stopped, the unrecognized artist crept up again from the rear. Punch calligraphy shouted out words of power, Mangaka. A powerful blow fell upon the honest frontiersman. The attack had taken effect despite the steadfastness of the high rank. And the artist kept responding to criticism of his work. A calligraphic power punch, a percussive dose of pathos, dared the hermit. And the text did not end. 
The artist shouted it out and made calligraphic strokes. He paused for a moment, accumulating ink, and unleashed another volume of calligraphy punches. A victim of postmodernity carefully assessed the results of his strikes. The resilience of the mad hermit amazed even him after all the blows he remained intact. Strong realized the border guard, someone else would have died by now reading the intricate calligraphy. Isn't it time to make use of the bailout room? The hermit thought. But if you back down now, a loyal student will be jeopardized, and that's a sin. The frontiersman was determined to stay until the end, and adopted a fighting stance. The artist hesitated, either out of pity or love of the theatrical pause. The mad hermit tensed. Everything was at stake now. Everything was blurring in front of his eyes. If the technique didn't work, he would definitely die. Blue screen window, gave out base, cheats enabled, masochist power triggered, stamina boosted. I can't figure out if the artist has given up. Is he stubborn or just dumb? He asked the hermit. I'll finish him off so he doesn't suffer, he said, ending the theatrical pause, and spat out all the ink at once like he was hiding a squid up his sleeve. But the hunter dodged, simply disappearing from the line of inky attack. Good evening, the artist heard a man's voice from behind him. The mad hermit applied a shadow step and instantly got close to the artist. Zhang Ma's fist, needing to be used like this, broke the artist's ribs with a single blow. Sneaky bastard, gritted his teeth in pain at the unrecognized mangaka. He broke the distance with the opponent that he had undercut the cheat. The hermit was applying some strange principle of motion recognition. Strike the enemy with his own weapon, the ancient principle of the tower, leaped upon the enemy by the mad frontiersman. He gave the artist back all his calligraphy strokes, only without the ink. The artist fought back with difficulty, though he knew these movements, for they belonged to him. Hyun Wu folded his fingers, mirroring all of the artist's actions. A calligraphic blow, he unleashed a volume of text on his enemy. How? asks the unrecognized artist, how he was able to spot everything the first time. Hyun Wu had learned the power of the dark side, and now the artist could not overpower the hermit. After intense training, the mad hermit had unlocked the sharing in within him and could now see all of his opponent's movements. The artist's martial arts are so good that his movements were easy to recognize. However, for using other people's martial arts, there was a price to pay. Impossible, the unrecognized artist could not believe what he heard. Learning to draw just by picking up a pencil and drawing a picture of another artist, Mangaka marveled. Of course, the difference between drawing and making a replica is huge, agreed Hyun Wu, but earned experience in battles and tower training, and also having advanced mana channels and cheats enabled, nothing is impossible. Well, it's time to start apprehending, i.e., the hermit. Meanwhile, a devoted student was blowing off an exuberant suitor. It didn't get any easier, Senator Liam noted. Hyun Wu is busy, and whether a high school girl can blow off a grown man. After all, she's only in fifth place, and the cabinet wasn't even third until recently, the senator worried. You can just sit on your knees, square-headed offered her, and he brought his friend with him. Get lost, I told you I'm not dancing, the mad student replied to the annoying man. Tea and coffee, beer and vodka, let's dance, the giant did not stop. The girl was pissed. She wanted to leave the pricks to the master for an appetizer. But since he's busy, we should bury the assholes now, the dragon empress decided. Stonehead didn't realize where the girl had transgressed to with a pop of air. As his buddy was already thoroughly mopping the floor with his tongue. And wipe it well here. The empress pressed her foot a little harder. What kind of kids are they nowadays? They don't understand jokes. They immediately get into a fight. Puzzled the bully. But what does it matter, thought the empress. When to kill the goats, now or later. I'm gonna slaughter everyone, came out a mad student that even the Hulk shrunk to a mini version. Yit, he just thought, stands the girl beautiful, lonely, bored. How did it come to this horrified the stone head? The dragon empress quickly explained to the harasser why it was bad to behave this way. There were two masters fighting in the air, a reincarnation cheater and a sharingan cheater. The fight was on equal footing, with the sides exchanging hundreds of blows. But the mad hermit had a little more cheats in store. He brought the unrecognized artist down to earth with a mighty kick. After this, Mangaka lay down to rest on the comfortable stone slabs. Bastard, he hissed. So his cheat getting stronger while you fight. Phase two, 
said the artist and poured all the ink onto the canvas. Like a squid, he sputtered the ink around him. The mad hermit covered his face against the suddenly rising wind. The real boss, thought the border guard, had lived to see the second phase and was not even technically an illegal alien. Master Bonsai's descendant was covered in ink as if he had bathed in it. The unrecognized artist held out black tentacles toward the hermit. That's an ability he won't be able to replicate, Mangaka told the hermit. There's something just as good, the mad border guard replied and let out red tentacles. You're not the only one who read comic books when you were young, the mad hermit noted. Hyunwoo remembered the skill that electrophoresis used well, even though he couldn't copy it back then. But it's different now, because he understood the principle of grafting, and he has a sharingan, Master Banzai marveled, a form of mana around the mad hermit. Hyunwoo performed his signature electrophoresis as an illegal electrician in the past. Dominate, dominate, humiliate, the mad student remembered the principles of the tower. The little cunt wailed at the stone-headed man, multiplying his pain in vain. What's the matter, he wondered. This was the second time in a row he'd been bent over like a boy. The miniature ballet dancer taped the stonehead's filthy mouth shut. The empress crushed his sturdy skull in cold blood. How dumb. It's not about skills, it's about martial arts, the girl said. A storm was brewing outside, rattling with man-made lightning strikes. This sight gave the dragon empress pleasure. Discharges pounded the ground where the two martial artists collided. Hyunwoo crowded Master Bonsai everywhere, prescribing him a relaxing electric massage. Master Bonsai responded with inky tentacles. They fought as equals, and both of them flew apart, receiving a counterattack from the enemy. Even the enhanced resilience, the mad hermit had stopped working. Master Bonsai also felt that he wouldn't win with simple attacks. In addition, the electrophoresis technique was taking up a lot of mana, and the mad hermit was getting noticeably weaker. The cheater in front of him was getting stronger all the time, Master Bonsai noticed. So the conclusion for the mad hermit was self-evident. Now, realized the Bonsai master, gathering all the inky powers in one point. Prolonging the fight was not beneficial, the two martial artists realized. Hyunwoo concentrated, tracking his opponent's every move. The ink blot of the osprey continued to shrink to a small dot. What it is, the mad hermit didn't immediately realize the enemy's technique. The black blot stained everything around with ink, and it was best not to get caught under it, the hermit decided. He had already seen this technique, Hyunwoo realized, a nine-tailed bomb. What's the deal, outraged mad hermit? It's not a martial art after all. It's a blob of mana. It doesn't matter. What matters is that it works the bonsai master blurted out. Remnants of mana gathered roundly between the unrecognized artist's hands. And then the bonsai master blasted the nine-tailed man's rasengan. The inky tsunami rushed towards the mad hermit, a wide radius. From something like this, even s rank strength would fold, reasoned master bonsai. But the mad hermit used the principle of grafting to devour the ink mana. Thanks for the treat, said the polite border guard. Blocking the nine-tailed bomb with his electrophoresis surprised Master Bonsai. So who's got the cooler cheats, bragged the mad gamer. Now it's my turn to show off my nagging skills, said the hermit, and applied all of the skills without a cooldown. The Bonsai Master lost back when he spat out all of his powers into the tailed bomb and forgot to save before doing so. The bright flash of the explosion incinerated Master Bonsai's body without a trace. A duty text beeped confirming that the frustrated illegal alien had been eliminated. All the cheats spent on him, the mad hermit thought tiredly. All that's left of the master of adult manga are the horns and the weird bandage. Hyun Wu looked at the unusual object that had fallen off the failed illegal. Master Bonsai's secret, it said he wanted to become illegal to meet his teacher, read in hermit status. Already through the foggy shroud, he saw the faithful apprentice rushing towards him. Nothing to worry about then, relaxed the weary hermit. Even with the cheats, the rink was not easy, but the opponent had his own cheats, he fell to the ground. And yet he won satisfactorily, sighed the mad hermit. The lens of a digital camera kept a careful record of the entire battle. The atrium of the gloomy dungeon was once again occupied by the manganese lord. The hidden mountaineer and the illegal hiker candidate are defeated. <laughs> Listen to the lord's report. <laughs> Impressive he said, scratching his crimson chin. The dead were strong. No pain, no gain, 
he uttered an ancient principle, only through crises do one become stronger. The guardian border guard of the ninth floor is this crisis, asked the servant of the Crimson Lord. Had he met a top-ranked mountaineer, the Lord asked, and received a negative answer. However, the border guard is yet to meet such a tourist soon, for even gods avoid the eighth floor, the servant monk added. Hyun Wu lay resting, waiting for the stretcher, his faithful disciple leaning over him from above. How quickly he would reach his limit, thought the carefree, tired hermit. The helpful goons from Yun Wu's guild were discussing the hot news. A veritable massacre horrified the docile office girl. But her co-workers, on the contrary, rejoiced in the awesomeness of the boss they worked for. How so shrunken office cluelessness in the world is going on, and they are so calm. Only nine people survived the bloody feast. Regional associations have already stated that the losses will not affect the overall strength. There are still plenty of worthy hunters to replace them. The dummy didn't give a shit. All they cared about was the boss's status. The media lies heard the obvious truth. All for diversion, said the slave accountant. If the head finds out, he won't like it, realized the redhead. Better not to say that in front of the hermit, added the slave girl. Cutie. So Jan flew in to check on her injured friend, looking lousy. The one lay bandaged like a mummy and sassed back, so it wasn't all bad, the lovely huntress realized. The cutie left to go about her business, leaving the hermit behind. Even after several days had passed, he was still not back to normal. His wounds ached. The consequences are no joke, stated the mad hermit. It could have been even worse if it wasn't for his special cheats. His mana would have just been destroyed. Energy was still circulating improperly in the tangled channels. He turned on the cheats intuitively, not knowing all the details of their use, and it made itself felt. What to do next, the mad hermit asked himself. Train on his own or find a mentor. A couple days later, he asked how to use Master Banzai's portmanteau. The android girl did the appraisal as an experienced pawn shop employee. Also how to get rid of the restrictor, the mad hermit asked her. Android has clearly improved the search engine in the time he's been away and has done a search. Pretty quickly, the white-haired android found the clue. Whatever the item is, you have to go down into the maze to open it, the girl informed the neural net. Okay, Hyunwoo realized, the system wouldn't give any big answers anyway. Are there any new awards, the mad hermit asked, and there was one. The system now gave access to thoughts, twice a day, similar to telepathy, Hyunwoo realized. It's hard to use this skill on hunters, but it's quite easy to use it on ordinary people. A notification system had been added as well, of the time and place of the hunters, but Hyun Wu didn't quite understand what it was. The android made a cute face again. She'll be begging again, the mad hermit realized. The console, he guessed the neural network's intentions, and it pouted its lips. But instead, he decided to share some important information with him. Hyun Wu tested his new telepathy ability on a test student. It was better he didn't. All her thoughts were on the mad teacher. Is all well with the teacher? asked his ardent and eager student. Hyun Wu regretted seeing her thoughts, a solid stream of worry. But where is Seo Young? he asked the devoted disciple, and she replied that the huntress had gone to process the hermit's discharge. Will everything be all right? The undesirables have gathered on the first floor, the student reported. Ah, those simpletons, the hermit remarked to the reporters. The student offered to eliminate, but Hyun Wu volunteered to escort them himself. As soon as he left the hospital grounds, he was bombarded from all sides. Shoving recording phones right in his face, they wouldn't let him say a word. Let the steamer go, the hermit waved his wings to disperse the pesky journalists. One even got a painful elbow to the chest. Even the wounded hermit easily scattered the wretched humans. One slippery paparazzi took great offense at being treated that way. This hunter considers the rest of us to be untermenschen or something. The journalist was indignant. Hyun Wu started as soon as everyone quieted down, but he was rudely interrupted. Is it true that the massacre at the banquet is an excuse to kill the unwanted? asked a cheeky journalist. Even the other journalists were taken aback by such directness. Hyun Wu wanted to continue, but the insolent reporter, sarcastic further, whether the hermit's answer could be considered an agreement, he asked. The damned smurd has lost his way, thought the mad emperor. Great, gloated the cheeky journalist. That's what he wanted. 
But Hyunwoo didn't respond to the barbs and bluntly told the jerk to disappear. The journalist faltered at the direct threat. He wasn't used to this. Usually his victims acted within the law. Hyunwoo gave 30 seconds for the reporter to disappear or there would be no interview. Not far away, the dragon empress summoned a hidden servant. She merely held her hand at her throat and looked in the right direction. Spring had sprung on the city streets. The devoted student never took her eyes off her teacher. The ever-circumspect Shea Ken read the news about the hermit and his run-in with reporters. There he was called polite. The mad hermit opened the door as usual after knocking lightly and returned with his apprentice. Soon he will be traveling to the labyrinth, the mad hermit reported. Shaken wondered why all of a sudden the hermit had enough money, and he replied that he wanted to check something. Hyun Wu also said that Shukin's guild was needed. It's all about the cards, the mad hermit explained, and he couldn't even read them. Shikin realized, the labyrinth is a place where you can't rest and there are monsters everywhere. He said he would prepare a raid next week. The satisfied hermit ran his hand through his apprentice's silky hair. The candidate for the first concubine immediately blushed scarlet. Scratching the cat, the mad teacher, remembered a familiar feeling. There was another student, too. A face popped up in my memory. Is everything okay with that kid? Wondered the mad teacher. The image of the girl with the rose thorns surfaced in his mind. Back in the old days in the tower, he played the mad teacher scenario and planned to escape afterward, but it didn't work out well. But the other child himself asked to be apprenticed to the mad hermit. It was too late to teach absurd's martial arts to her, so he trained the girl differently. Since he hadn't heard from her at all, that in itself was good news, the hermit decided. Hyun Wu is hovering in the clouds again, a cautious Shi Kyung remarked, rummaging through the papers. What the hell, he thought as he read the other news in the feed. It was written that the slippery and arrogant reporter who harassed Hyun Wu disappeared after he quit the association. It didn't look like the mad hermit was settling matters quietly, thought the cautious Shurken. So it's about this sweet and loyal student with a violent temper. It's worth being nice to the mad hermit decided for himself, cautious Shuken. An expected but not at all unwelcome guest arrived in Deputy Bariska's office. He adjusted his tie. Hard negotiations were coming. The deputy couldn't just give the dungeons to the hermit. Turning to Mason for help can't be done either the deputy pondered. After the massacre the hunters from his political faction had caused, he couldn't act in the open. It didn't matter if the politician was personally involved or not, he would be closely monitored. After this incident, all influence in the association was seized by one man. The office was entered, and Boris's deputy turned around. The crazy hermit in the sweatpants had already trodden a path to this office, so many times he'd been here. So what's the answer? Went the hermit straight to the point. Time to bargain with that creepy type. The deputy barely opened his mouth as Hyun Wu rudely interrupted him. Let's finish this quickly, said the crazy mob boss. From now on, say only yes and no, the mad hermit pointed his finger at the simpleton. The one couldn't stand such insolence and jumped up from his seat. But what's the big deal, the mob boss asked. Only 40%. He could have taken all of it, but he took pity on them. The damn psycho went straight into spin mode, pissed off the office slug, but he heard a familiar voice. Hyun Woo turned on his phone recording before he diligently spoke the taken tongue from the former costume gang. The voice of number six, the office plankton recognized it. Just in case, the hermit said, if they refuse to volunteer to donate to his guild's fund, it's only going to get worse, said the country's most powerful mafia group. The office slug was covered in sweat in an instant. One more question, said the mad hermit. It's all completely voluntary and pro bono, the mob boss reminded us. And who's the principal now? The office slug has clenched his knees. The dragon empress listened to the minion's report. Thoth proudly reported on the new conquests that the empire's troops were bringing in right now. Good job, praised the minion with a satisfied cat. The teacher's house is almost complete. All this time she had been so cold and cruel it was unusual for a minion to see the mistress happy. Without noticing him, the girl indulged in sweet dreams. The secret guards appeared, the chatterer eliminated, the empress asked. But got a negative, the answer, a third party, took care of the reporter. And who dared to take their spoils, asked the mad empress. 
The servant raised the clipboard to her eyes. Here is the only clue, mistress. This sign was left on the victim's desk, reported to her. The kidnappers wanted to make themselves known, the henchman continued, and were ordered to investigate everything. In the same instant, the head of the secret guard vaporized with a slight pop. He let his chief minister go as well, but the latter asked lastly when the lady would return to her homeland. The satisfied cat informed him that he would return when the emperor wanted him to, but until then, let him keep an eye on things. Recognition blossomed the chief minister of the empire. No one had ever received such confidence until now. He bowed to her, but the contented cat didn't care, purring about his own. The homeless hermit was visiting with Xu Ken again when he asked him how the deal with Ares went. The deal went great. In two weeks, the guild problem will be sorted out. By using telepathy, Hyun Wu discovered the slug's dastardly plans to install a device in the dungeon on Mason's orders. The mob boss thought he was taking over the business, but Mason's rival organization showed up. But who would just let go of their chance, reasoned the crazy mob boss. The dungeon stank horribly of sewage, a prime place for a slimy office slug. Half-decomposed dead people and skeletons walked around. Another work-weary office plankton. Trying not to breathe, the still-living office slug snuck in here. So that's where the souls of burned-out employees go, Ares' office goon realized. Having a good stealth skill, he avoided the zombie planner. He took on this risky assignment for a promotion. They were already being handed out left and right. The guild was having a rough time. You just have to bury it, the slug followed instructions. When he ran into a crime boss, why this racketeer was back again hung the mute question of Bariska's deputy. Sorry, got held up, apologized the polite mobster. It's been six hours, he greeted the office plankton. Words fail, these feelings cannot describe, thought the slug. Let's talk, suggested the polite organized crime boss, but the deputy rudely called for security. The guards showed up at the same second, though a little different than he'd expected. Two from the box propped up the hapless goon. End passenger, with your stuff out, said the goon to the polite mob boss. It was recorded in the case file that the victim accidentally cut himself while playing with the knife. It's no big deal, it'll heal before the wedding, the mob boss reassured him. But the plankton continued to scream loudly in pain at the cut. Knock it off, said the polite mob boss, or they'll think he's a bad guy. How does he know everything? Read the polite mobster on the slug's face. Hyun Wu sighed, what to do about it now? It wasn't the right time, or he would have rolled it into a barrel of cement. If you realize you're in trouble, start begging for mercy, he said, and the model student nodded her head. How did he figure it all out, said the hermit, very simply politely asked. This whole damn bastard guild keeps stepping on the same rake just like that, Hyun Wu simply answered his question. Now start talking, allowed to slime the crazy mob boss. If not, we'll find out which is stronger, the head or the stone, the hermit said. The polite mobster gave a moment to think, and the slug deputy agreed to tell all. A few days ago, Mason gave him the device and told him to install it in the dungeon that Hyun Wu wished. But what was he given? The office slug asked Geralt. Catalyst, replied the white-haired scumbag cryptically. You've heard of the monster wave, he asked the office goon. If you don't kill monsters for a long time, they accumulate and burst out. This is the monster wave. So this thing in his hands causes an artificial wave of monsters. Hyun Wu will be criticized for not keeping a good eye on his dungeons, and Ares will be able to bring them back. If everything goes smoothly, Mason said, He'll continue to help keep the guild together. That's the way it went down with the clean-cut slime ball. The loyal student remarked very strangely and frowned her beautiful forehead. Why did Mason go for it? Because earlier, he didn't have a problem with Hyun Wu, the girl wondered. Unless what was said was a lie, the empress threatened to retaliate. It wasn't his fault. Mason came to him himself, justified the slug. Under the pretext of helping him, he was plotting something against the mad hermit. The goon had no other choice and agreed to such terms. He excused himself pathetically. How ridiculous, Mason thought, rubbing the strange bug-shaped objects. Master Bonsai failed. And after all, this was the first step to destroying the ninth floor. He sipped red wine from his glass. Looks like the math was wrong. Mason underestimated his opponent. The ninth floor was defenseless. Meeting Boris Mart made sure of that. They had a plan and they were sticking to it. Step by step, they prepared to destroy the entire floor. 
there was nothing the hunters could do. With the help of Ares, they would control all the dungeons of the world, and with the help of the association, they would attract the best hunters. If a massive wave of monsters in all dungeons and a bloody feast at a banquet happened at the same time, the world would definitely collapse. As soon as the border guard appeared, everyone wanted to get in, and it says, Don't get in. You'll be killed. Mason laid out the pieces on the board. The mad hermit has even gotten to Boris Mart. But part of the overall plan is still in effect, Boris's pawn. Though he suspects something but is too stupid to realize it. Everything was going swimmingly, but the unrecognized mangaka took a gamble on losing to Frontier. Stop, Mason raged, the glass bursting in his hand. However, thought the illegal, there's always a plan B and even a C. There are still plenty of letters in the alphabet. No need to get upset if the plan called A didn't work out, he thought. He seemed to be paying too much attention to the bonsai master, believing that without supervision he would fail, Mason recalled. But Mangaka grew on his own, effortlessly becoming ridiculously strong. Mason looked around at the dozens of boxes and the monster catalysts in them. He was satisfied. Happy as an elephant after an enema, remarked a voice from behind the chair. All right, Mason replied nonchalantly. <laughs> he turned around and saw the intruder, who appeared like a devil from a snuff box. Kim Hyun Woo, he shouted his hated name. Where are you going? Private property. As he just guessed, the mad hermit gloated and added that mafia bosses don't write the law. Hyun Woo remembered how the android Av had warned him that Mason was possibly a hidden, illegal alien. No such person existed before the rift, the girl's neural network figured out, and then he shows up and spins everyone she added. How else would the bonsai master know about the world beyond the ninth floor of the Matrix? Of course it's all hypotheses, the silver-haired neural network smarted. If the Guardian didn't recover, it was best to forget about it, worried the android girl. I had to wait, Yunwu said, to personally show up and squeeze all the business. More reasons are piled up prominently, the mob boss echoed himself. Burglary, bullies take away your eyesight, Mason chimed in. Gathering information didn't work on Mason, but a negative result is a result. Detain the rich illegal and take the property, saying it was lost or destroyed in the battle, pondered the mad mob boss. And put the plan into action. The floor of the house exploded like it was a house of cards. Mason took off with a rocket to count the stars. Such was the force of the blow. Good evening. A suave Hyun Wu nagibator appeared from behind. Absurd's textual power kicked Mason to the ground, where it sealed itself into the welcoming concrete with a deafening explosion. What kind of detention is that? He has rights? The illegal subplot boldly stated. The right to chew the ground, the mad hermit replied, and sealed Mason deeper. No passport. Give me a coin, said the honest and incorruptible border guard. It won't hurt at all. The law enforcement officer pulled out a mop. Can't mop, Mason thought, and squeezed with all his strength below his back. The illegal migrant smirked and said one word, freeze. That was enough to keep Hyun Woo's slipper from sinking deeper. The mad hermit was surprised. He was completely unable to move his body. He slumped onto his back as if petrified for once and could no longer keep his balance. Hyun Woo was perplexed as to what was going on while lying on his back. An illegal migrant rose to his feet. Miraculously, he managed to avoid detention. Bastard, he said, and kicked the mode dog in the ribs for threatening him with a mop. Like a plastic soldier, Hyun Woo flew aside, unable to move a single joint. An unspecified force held his body in an interesting pose. The illegal immigrant was well prepared, studied the laws, and brought with him the first volume of capital, just in case. A strong wind picked up as the streams of power came into motion. Lands to the workers, factories to the peasants, no matter who deals with the bourgeoisie face, Mason told the hermit. The outlaw with the theatrical traits dressed up and introduced himself again. The voice of the people, Len in Yich. The place where they are is an area of communism he has been working on for years, Mason explained. The defenders of imperialism are powerless here. I knew that communism could develop in an isolated area, the hermit declared. Revolution is the movement of progress, gibbered Len Ying, delighted with his success. Get ready, you bourgeois face, we're going to rascalish him, Mason told the hermit. He has nothing but non-profit businesses and charity, Hyun Wu said. And how many are so gifted, he asked Mason. 
You're desperate, you imperialist muzzle, Len Yich realized. Trivial question. Working people are the source of all wealth and talent. They show up all the time, Mason stated. He doesn't know, Hyun Wu realized, and asked one last question. Does he know anything about repeat illegals who have already served their time? Hyun Wu asked. They're the ones who were deported and stripped of their citizenship, Mason replied. And to get it back, they're climbing the floors again. Former citizens, Hyun Wu wondered. And then who are they? It's unnecessary, Mason said. He's going to die now anyway. Discharges of black lightning traveled across the mad hermit's body. Something doesn't look right, said the mad hermit, rising. He moves again, squealed the illegal revolutionary. In the field of communism, there is no capital movement since, could not make out. Len in. People always find a way out, black market, under the table trade, instead of monetary capital, social capital, and the rest follows. It doesn't matter. Socialism, communism, people remain free because we are one biological species, the mad hermit explained. Damn it. The teachings of Marxism are true because they are true. Don't move, imperialist, ordered the rich hermit Len Ying. The waves of the planned economy have tugged at free capital and were easily repelled by the free market lightning bolts. The time for revolutions was not yet upon us. Hyun Wu destroyed all attempts to nationalize his property. Mason grimaced. What about Marx? What about Len Ying? The spells didn't work anymore. Hyun Wu moved easily completely smashing the opponent's ideology as untenable. After the battle with Mangaka, he had gained enhanced mana control, and now no outside influences could affect the hermit. Similarly, the attack of the long-armored fist was blocked by Mangaka. Even though the hermit still lacked experience, the technique was working. Mana came into motion again, and the mad hermit unleashed it to strike. He easily unleashed a volume of calligraphic blows on the illegal revolutionary. A clot of bloody mana slapped where the failed revolutionary stood. It's simple if you don't get hung up on one school of economics, the mad hermit said. But the liquidation alert never showed up. Old dogmas are surprisingly resilient, Hyun Wu fretted, always finding a loophole in unformed minds. He was left alone in the midst of the ruins. An illegal revolutionary escaped. The wounded mason occupied the golden throne. He could hardly move. One more moment and the border guard would have definitely detained him. Plan B can still be executed because he still has the KGB. They started out as a small security department and then they grew to include everything bad. Mason sighed contentedly. If there is power, any doctrine will become true. Long time no see, greeted the illegal, his guest. A girl as beautiful as a rose walked in, gracefully swaying her hips. She was smiling sweetly at the illegal revolutionary her shoulder epaulets of a skull mask flaunting on her shoulder. Let him listen to it first, Hyun Wu handed Senator Liam the tape. He feigned concern, though of course he knew what would be on the tape. The wily politician pretended to hear everything for the first time, Mason's voice confessing to Master Bonsai's crimes. That voice, he shouted, playing the play out to the end. Hyun Wu was quite satisfied, this kind of reaction. Political games are not for him, but he came to make a deal. The record is authentic, the senator asked the mad hermit, and the latter nodded in reply. Mason is an illegal revolutionary, one thing that gives Liam an advantage. Now he can oust his men in the association and put in his own, all the money and contracts will flow through him. It used to be hard to imagine such a thing. A politician would have been accused of abusing power. But now it is easy to sway public opinion to your side. So what's the price of the deal? asked a wily Senator Liam. Not much at all, said the mad hermit. It's best not to mess with politicians, just play around with the media a bit, he replied. All the hermit needs to do is get out of the journalist's focus and act freely, a deal win-win, smiled the hermit. The senator agreed. If Hyun Woo had personally laid out all the evidence, he could have been declared biased and dodged. That's the end of it, said the hermit and left his seat. There's more, Senator Liam detained him and asked. There was a huge mana explosion at Mason's house, which was shown on the news, the senator said. Is he dead or is he not? Asked the wily politician bluntly, still needing to find out the full circumstances of the transaction. Hyun Woo sighed. He was easily figured out. Messing with politicians, not easy. No, said the hermit, not yet, clarified without wavering his voice. 
The Empress's bloodhounds scoured the wreckage and the surrounding area, but found no trace, not even a fugitive illegal. After an illegal dies, there is always a notification, but this time there was none. It's unlikely this system glitch. Hyun Wu was finally tired of thinking about politics. He should kill the illegal alien as soon as possible and forget about everything, the hermit decided. I'm counting on your help in the search, he wanted to say, but was interrupted by a system notification. The system just credited him with eliminating an illegal revolutionary. Rose walked confidently past the secret agents while holding her sword. You look tired, he told the revolutionary illegal. We need to take care of one person, he said, and gave her a name, Kim Hyun Woo. The girl was dumbfounded when she heard it. That's how, without changing his tone, calmly replied to the illegal. But there's nothing to worry about, the illegal said, because they have Rosa and the KGB. No, not like that, interrupted the boastful ramblings of the chump by the pretty girl, and made a small jab with the sword in the chest area. The pretty girl leaned toward him to assess the implications. It's a shame he's such a chump, Rosa said, mocking the illegal. He could only stare impotently as he was pinned to the throne. What the devil do they do when things like this happen? Mason looked at the agents. What are you doing? He wheezed through holy lungs. Apprehend immediately, gurgled the illegal. Capture, quarter, cartwheel, and other uncultured words escaped his bloody lips. But the agents didn't move, betraying their superior. Why wheezed the illegal revolutionary, Contra underhanded grabbed the girl's collar. Ta easily brushed it off. What was he thinking? asked his agent Rosa. Betray friends? And they were never even the same team, the agent smiled grimly. I mean, he's just a handy dummy who gave money. Did he really think she had created the KGB from scratch just for an illegal revolution? The real owner of the underground was not an empty-headed revolutionary at all. The whole organization is a gift to him, the true owner. Agent Rosa waved her hands. It would be proper to inform the illegal what killed him. Rosa gripped the hilt of her sword. And in one motion, she cleared the way for the blood to flow from the wound. Simple, he was trying to eliminate her real boss by her own hand. The illegitimate man rested in peace, breathless body condemned on the throne. Hide all evidence, the girl ordered the agents, furniture included, on file, tripped over a knife but the body vaporized without a trace. So even easier thought the girl, no body, no case, remembering the words of the teacher. So he really is an illegal Jedi, vaporized if he's chopped, the agent confirmed her hunch. She gently touched the epaulette of the skull mask, whatever he had to face. She will help the master eliminate everyone who stands in his way, the girl thought softly. No doubt about it, the white-haired android confirmed it all. Len Ying is dead. He blamed it on the system, but it looks like there's no error, even though he got a promotion. It was good that the fragment wasn't taken away. But what happened? Hyun Wu pondered. Did he die himself? Or did he have help? That's the question. The mad hermit rubbed his beard. I don't care if he stabbed himself while making sandwiches, the border guard said. No more hidden illegals, he asked Av, and she agreed. Since that was the case, he was about to leave, but the girl held him back. Is it for games again? asked the hermit. No, pouted the embarrassed android, averting his gaze. But she wouldn't let go of his hands and quietly pulled him toward the laptop screen. This one pointed android cute finger at the VIR glasses advertisement, extortionist thought Hyun Wu. Android said it could do better, kept hacking away at the hermit's cuteness. And how can you say no to a child, sighed Hyun Wu when he heard the request. A few days later, the homeless emperor was greeted by a concubine candidate. To the entrance of the labyrinth, said the mad emperor to the coachman, scratching the cat behind the ear. What if the others aren't ready? His satisfied student asked him. One will be enough, the emperor replied briefly, causing the student to blush. The master will appoint her head wife, the satisfied student blurted out in her dreams. Hyun Wu quite read the news, not much time has passed, and the cunning senator has already made up his mind. This problem is solved thought the mad emperor, there's so much to do lately. The hermit pulled Mangaka's portmanteau from his pocket, the progress on the lock moving slowly. Kai, my sweet squeaky goblin with open arms, to get punched in the cheeky face by a non-human at the same second. How nasty the monsters are now, the hermit wondered, and there are many more perverts here, the mad emperor wondered.
A devoted student volunteered to disperse all the supremacists, but the emperor refused. He wanted to slap the rubber faces on their hats himself. Time to get pumped up on the boars, he said, and lunged at the stupid mobs. The genocide of the green non-humans ended with a couple of powerful attacks, while the rest of the raid group quietly smoked on the sidelines. Sotona, said Quan Seo admiringly. Cute Seo Yeon couldn't get used to this fact either, even though she had known about the hermit's power for a long time. Even all together in this tight passage, fighting back against the troll perverts would not be easy, thought a cautious Shi Ken. Maybe that's the difference. The hermit always drags the roller in solo reasoned the hunter. Boss, turned to Shi Ken by the excited loader of the squad. He thanked me for bringing him along. The guy kept a record of the whole raid. A bunch of people flocked to his airing with the crazy hermit. Even the cautious Shi Ken was surprised by this number. Their friend had become too popular. The mad hermit raised his hand and stated that he was going upstairs. He had already leveled up. Mangaka's stupid portmanteau opened if you filled the strip with monster kills. Cautious Shuken asked a couple of madmen how they would climb if he didn't have a map and couldn't read them. The mad hermit quickly glanced at his apprentice, but she pouted her lips and turned away. The student, the mad teacher, addressed her, but she hid her gaze in embarrassment. Clearly understandable, said Hyunwu to the crazy student. All in the teacher, he realized. They were bailed out by a part-time blogger loader. Though his fee for the raid wasn't full, he agreed. No problem, the guy said, because he's a loader for the soul, and he makes real money from streaming. The prisoner was awakened with a bucket of cold water in the face. He found himself in the middle of the interrogation room, chained to a chair. Who knows what they're holding him for, said the agent in the dark glasses in the basement. They said interrogate him. They're interrogating him. A graceful girl entered the interrogation room. Agent Rosa herself went down to the detainee. Contra breed, confuse the unformed minds, means she became over the prisoner, defame the name of the leader of the party. The chief, blurted out the nasty reporter in surprise, defaming the name, the leader, he interjected. Is it really about Kim Hyun Woo? The journalist was horrified. Agent Rosa stepped up to the switch, with a cute face, good interrogation the key to a clean confession. It was a good thing he'd figured it out, said a sweet voice, and the switch clicked. Mercy, I swear by my mother not guilty, screamed in pain and horror of the employee of the Wall newspaper. Liar, said Agent Rosa, and who wrote nasty philippics, made up poems, told jokes about the leader. You say you don't know anything, but you were warned that everything first to submit to the censorship commission, the agent continued. Censorship wondered the independent media worker. But what about freedom of speech? From the girl's collar, an all-seeing eye looked at him. Big brother is watching you. The dreaded motto came to mind. A few days ago in the newsroom, he asked the question, isn't it all suspicious where the free press has gone? Isn't Kim Hyun-woo too heroic, he asked his colleague. No surprise stated, a co-worker, the guy's a hero, stopped Master Bonsai. All articles are commissioned, no criticism, just one-sidedness. Citizens should see different points of view, the reporter insisted. Stay out of it, he heard from a colleague. Quieter you go farther, free speech fiction. Write what they watch, what they pay for, chase the hype, or you will be left with nothing. A colleague trustingly slammed the journalist. But is this honest journalism, democracy, freedom? The reporter was outraged. What a tattoo, he wondered with a glance at his comrade's neck. Recently made, he replied embarrassedly, adjusting his collar. Now I remember, smiled Agent Rosa. Freedom of speech is when it is against whom it is necessary freedom, and about the leader it is free to write what we say. Double standards horrified the idealistic reporter, but for what, he asked. It's the duty of the intelligence services to keep order in the state, isn't it? Asked the agent with a nice face. Mangaka's portmanteau is now ready to be used, but only once since he didn't become illegal which means the effect isn't perfect, the hermit read. Use the sword of electrophoresis, the system suggested. I will be away, the mad emperor informed his apprentice. I will be when I return. Need to visit an old friend, he informed his devoted student. The portal worked perfectly and threw the hermit into an unknown location. He looked at his hands in surprise. Taking anything from the outside here was impossible. 
the mad hermit felt a presence behind him. The hermit turned around. The same guy was standing as if nothing had happened alive. A fifth-rate electrician, an illegal electrophoresis, stood with his back to him. The warrior noticed the intruder and turned around, giving him a serious look. The eighth floor was ablaze, the dragon Smaug, lying on the ground with broken wings. The winged lizard was spitting blood from its torn innards. And that's all he can do, sounded the taunt of the enemy. Thought you were a guardian, said the monkey with the cockroach mustache on his hat. Hehe, <laughs> laughed the missing link in human evolution. What animal are you? asked the monkey. The dragon Smaug. An animal himself, replied the hominid. He would now show all his strength. Watch carefully, cold-blooded, blustered the monkey, pulling out a stick. I'm going to take this stick and bludgeon you, and then I'll skin you, boasted the evil monkey introducing himself as the Monkey King. Hyunwoo caught Thunderbolt by surprise. He barely had time to put on his pants. Just sat down to pee in the bushes, electrician Chong Ma was surprised. The mad hermit was surprised. This was not what he expected to see upon arrival. Normal people go to the latrine, thought the mad hermit. Didn't they teach you to knock when you come to visit? The electrician asked the intruder, who knew that even in virtual space there was nowhere to take a dump. The hermit was indignant. But the electrician remained indifferent to meaningless excuses. Turning on Sherlock, Hyunwoo realized what had happened. He'd been pulled into Electric's hard drive, and the key turned out to be Master Banzai's portmanteau. He was on his way here for martial arts, and since Electric was here, he could train him. The humble apprentice greets the master, struck his palm against his fist by the mad hermit. You should be ashamed of your modesty, Chong Ma rebuked the hermit. Sensei, teach me everything you know, Hyun Wu insisted, but was rebuffed. Who would want to train a border patrolman to apprehend him? The mad hermit realized. Shifu, Posea, teach me. The hermit gritted his teeth. Get lost, snipped the last thread of patience from the proud electrician. First one with cheats and now come to learn reproach the hermit master. So what's a couple of cheats? What's the big deal? Hyun Wu wondered sincerely. Who needs that hardcore, the mad hermit declared. Your cheat set still hasn't changed. Evaluated at a glance electric hermit mana paths, except a drop, he added. With cheats or not, defeat is defeat objected, Hyun Wu, and he can do it again. Bullshit, said the warrior electric. Cheats don't work here. Let's see, the mad hermit rushed to the attack. All the insane cheater power descended on the fifth-ranked electrician. But he threw out the paper, and paper beats rock. The cheats really didn't go away. Here he is faster than before, Electric stated, and shooed the mad hermit away to think about his behavior. With no cheats and no way to view his movement, the mad hermit noticed. Even though he had gotten faster, Electric was still ahead of him. Still crazy kung fu is cooler, Electric, said Hyun Wu, jumped into the fray. But all his blows were repelled by the local Morpheus, with his eyes closed. The electrician easily grabbed the mad hermit's arm and kicked the failed chosen one in the side. This isn't the Matrix, he thought. Hyun Wu lost his temper, responded with a defiant kick of his leg, and resented it. Things weren't going the same without the cheats. But there weren't too many cheats before. Something was obviously wrong. In the past, the electrician explained, he'd done the call and set the limits. Because he was playing for an illegal alien, the system imposed additional restrictions. What does the hermit know about illegals? How ranks are determined? Does he really think it depends on personal power? It all depends on the recognized achievements that the system counts, no matter who you play for, illegal aliens or border guards. So when you get too strong, the balance system intervenes, the hermit asked. And he's smarter than he looks, the electrician stated to the hermit. Combat skills are at the level of elite illegals, but without achievements, they are greatly diminished. Balance by the system, explained the electrician, such as during their battle, he told Hyun Wu. So be it, suddenly changed the electrician's mind. You can kill me. I'll show you a couple of tricks, he offered the hermit, exposing his sword. It's a good thing he hasn't changed, the hermit replied cheerfully. But if smash the electric martial arts are unlearned, the hermit remarked. This is the training level of the Matrix. You can't die here, the electrician explained. But you can experience the full range of thrills, he said, and cut Hyun Wu in half. This is how the mad hermit experienced his first death. So Hyun Wu disappeared as he touched the port key, asked the always cautious Shu Ken, the lone cat, and she nodded. 
This was the end of their communication. A dead silence. Again, he got into trouble. He could have warned him, breathed a cautious chicken. The devoted student now looks like an abandoned cat. I'll gouge your blinkers out, the irritated girl hissed, and Shuken quickly retreated. Best to avoid her, he thought, and glanced up, noticing something strange. The secret guards changed their spot of observation, silently disappeared, and what his house had just become, Shuken lamented. Not even in his own house of rest, only troublemakers resented the hunter. When the apartment is fixed, he'll go there, cautious, Shaken decided and silently left the abandoned cat. She wouldn't let anyone near her anyway. The girl waited faithfully in the place where her master had left her. And carefully, she heard the voice that came from Hermione's pouch. So you can hear the voice soldier came from the bag. The devoted cat stared at the strange object, whether it showed or not, she couldn't tell. Was she really the only one who heard that voice? The girl puzzled. Suspicious, if it wasn't for the master's things, I would have buried it deeper long ago the loyal cat thought. You can hold your strength a little, my child. I will give you the strength of a bogatir, led persistent agitation voice from the bag. What kind of talk went on? The dragon empress didn't understand. Don't be frightened. The first time is always a little painful, but then you get used to it, said the voice. Loli Dimenes, a voice with an ancient accent, introduced itself. Morpheus continued training the under-elected Neo on the secret level of the Matrix. The mad cheater was using dirty tricks all the time, but each time without success, the electrician could not be taken by such tricks. Pressing the attack button doesn't mean fighting, criticized the hermit master, and chopped in two like a Greek salad, the mad hermit. At this level, Hyun Woo could only rely on his own abilities. Why sweat in a game where you can quickly complete a level and learn the story? The mad nerd resented. How many times had he already passed this level? The hermit resented. He had tried a hundred times already. So this is a bonus level, smiled the electrician. Just go on, he suggested to the hermit. Don't you dare underestimate the power of Korean nerds. The mad hermit clenched his fists. Don't you get it, replied the electrician. He won't pass this level. Hyun Woo thought about it. An award, there would be no award, no achievements either, except a check mark on the list of credits. One hundred rounds to dry, he reasoned. Is this passage worth it? Electric is strong. His technique can't be broken by stepping on his foot, the hermit pondered. Doesn't use fake bling like Replicator Boris. Doesn't go crazy in a difficult position like the Master of Bonsai. He cannot be defeated, for he has no weaknesses, the hermit concluded. And yet he was back on his feet. If there remained a fucking level not passed, it would haunt the hermit for the rest of his life. Impossible for now, Hyun Woo thought and smirked. There are no invincibles. Told you not to underestimate the power of nerds said the mad hermit. Again, the rubbing is empty, breathed the fifth-rate electrician. Hair, wait a minute. Hyun Woo got ready for another fight. Use force, Hyun Woo remembered the ancient principle of the tower. Think good thoughts and piss whoever you have to, concentrated the mad hermit. Gathering his wits, the hermit went for another direct attack. Bored to death, sighed the electrician. At least he could think of something new, and sent the mad hermit on a restart download. The digital image of the hermit slowly tightened, but the pain didn't go away. But despite this, he attacked again, electric. Different from the previous one, such a pressure surprised the master, which didn't stop him from disemboweling the mad hermit again. Many rounds went by unnoticed, and each time Hyun Woo was smashed in one punch. The hermit had been killed hundreds and hundreds of times, each time mocking him, but raising his fist, he would not give up. Her mind clouded over and memories of the past flashed by. Hermit was often bullied at the orphanage by other kids. The educators reprimanded him when he dared to fight back against bullies. Had to work hard at construction to survive. To argue against the unfairness of teachers at school. And even in the tower, he always kept going forward. And even when his imprisonment brought him to the brink of losing his mind. The mad hermit never gave up. The fighting spirit gave the hermit new strength and their fight ceased to look like a dull beating. He's crazier than he thought, the illegal electrician remarked. It's a hidden level, on a hard disk. There's no time, aging, death, no limits. The system puts all the illegals killed here. Normally no one but the owners can get in here, but a crazy hermit somehow managed to. What he said seemed to Yongma amusing, but only at first. 
Hearing such nonsense from his own assassin was strange to Electric. It was interesting to see how long the hermit would last, and so Chong Ma made a condition. He wasn't going to teach the madman, just wanted to vent his soul zeroing in on him time after time. That was how it was at first, for the hundredth time. Nothing had changed, except that Electric was enjoying his revenge. The always brash cheater now looked meek and scared. But he would not give up, and the endless bouts dragged on. The feeling that he was being chased was spreading stronger and stronger, and the electrician began to exert himself to the fullest. On the two hundredth zeroing, Hyun Woo couldn't parry a single hit. For four hundred rounds, barely a hermit could take three hits. Seven hundred rounds, nice to keep the hermit from taking the final shot. The thousandth round, all fighting techniques unraveled and destroyed, the hermit has nothing more to do. The electrician was sure that after this, the hermit wouldn't be able to take a step. The mad hermit was slowly going insane from the pervasive, endless pain. But he would just rise again as if nothing had happened. This was beginning to irritate. Electric, having no other way to get rid of the hermit other than to force him to surrender, he continued. An unpleasant feeling was building up in his chest. Such a weakling couldn't even make a couple moves, but he didn't give up. Without noticing it, Electric has been putting more and more of himself into these rounds. What is this feeling, he asked himself, striking blow after blow. Only after the 2900th did he find the answer. The same feeling he got a long time ago when he became an illegal alien. The sensation was quite faint at first, Electric noted. He used increasingly destructive techniques on the pesky fly. But he definitely sensed danger coming from the hermit. What if this guy never gives up and drives him crazy with boring fights? To hell with it, Electric decided. Imperceptibly, he had caught fire from the duels. He faltered, noticing that he had slightly misjudged his movements. And the hermit did not miss this opportunity, immediately counterattacked. Gathering all his will into a fist, he landed an uppercut to Electric's chin. His fist hit the target and exploded with pain. For the first time in thousands of battles, Hyun Wu had gotten his opponent. Five to three thousand counted by the mad hermit. There's nothing infinite except Korean nerfing, the mad hermit cheerfully informed. Fucking nerds. Thunderball was really pissed off. The monkey king looked off into the distance at the blazing horizon of the eighth floor. Quickly came the voice of an ally from behind me. The fat lion appeared before the monkey in a disheveled robe. The monkey was indignant, but his comrade waved him away because the monkey's buttocks are stronger than a stone, he said. That's right, said the monkey, in the three months he'd been waiting. His sciatica had become attached to the rocks. Since fat line is finished, where are the others chilling? asked the monkey. Roast cock and white elephant don't ask where the trunk is arrived shortly after Tolstoy. Did you have a good time? Lev asked the couple who had arrived, and they confirmed that they had all had a good time, especially Rooster. How funny. Everyone has already climbed the tower and been illegal, and it took three months to get one zone, Monkey bragged. It's just that the balance of the system sucks, Fat Lion justified. Trinity got achievements for abusing animals and getting their powers. The system only counted them. Don't ask where Elephant's trunk is, you might get upset. And don't ask me how to become a roast rooster, resented the lion. The excuses of wimps teased the damned macaw. Shaking the ground, the Tower of Pisa appeared, leading to other levels of the Matrix. Passwords are the same, addresses are the same, shouted the monkey and ran forward. Twenty-five again will jump on his stick, breathed Fat Lion. Everyone takes on one side of the world, the monkey reminded. Two months for everything, boasted the talking monkey. The always cautious Shea Ken was torn from his paperwork by a phone call. They were looking for a missing Hyun Wu who hadn't been heard from for a long time. The rift happened, reported the cautious Shu Ken. In three hours, the enemy will be in Korea. The sad cat was still waiting lonely as ever for her mad teacher. But he was in no hurry to show up and comfort the betrayed cutie. The electrostimulator sword showed no signs of waking up. The fight continued the mad hermit still catching pitches the same way. The only counter he could keep was the battle count. Time did not exist in this matrix. The hermit was doing well and was already forcing Thunderbolt to move. In went the electroshock attacks, which hadn't happened before. New sensations, 
pleasantly invigorating after the usual stabbing foreign objects. The mad hermit was now attacking crazily and unpredictably. Striking a blow, he spun the turntable, messing with the electrician's mind with his nonsense. Just a trick. Hyun Wu fires a fist instead of a leg kick, but Electric dodged it all. Crazy nut job. Five thousand deaths later, said Thunderbird. Isn't that tired? The crazy asshole asked, nudging Electric. I wonder if nerfing is also a cheat, Thunderbird wondered. How many times can we do the same thing? This guy is definitely nuts, Electric decided. Let there be no fatigue here, but is it normal to have a 5,000 BO session, he thought. He should have surrendered long ago, for since the middle of the fight, Electric had made full use of all electrophoresis techniques. The mad hermit was practically reaching his target, but nullified at the last moment by lightning strikes. Thunderbird felt someone touch his pants. You sure are a rabid dog, said he to the mad hermit. Aren't you bored, he asked the wordless Korean nerd. But even in this position, his eyes said he wouldn't back down. Only girls grab for clothes, Electric said. You'll do just as well, replied the mad hermit. The sense of danger turned to awe at what else a crazy asshole could pull off. On the way to the top, Thunderbird slaughtered many different illegals. But this was the first time he'd seen such crazy nerds. Dumb as an oak, but persistent, the fifth-rate electrician realized. Everyone was cracking up after meeting Thunderbird but not that dumbass asshole. It broke all his skills and fighting techniques, but the madman reinvented them and was rising again. It's as if someone turned him into a robot that doesn't know how to give up. Because of this, even Thunderbolt felt awe in front of this madness. No one could change the nature of man. Everyone gives up sooner or later, thought the fifth-rate electrician. Shadow Step Thunderbolt noticed the hermit's technique. He had seen this somewhere before. The warrior, once again, easily dodged even a high-level attack he had seen it thousands of times. It takes three steps to execute, said the fifth-grade electrician. Hyun Wu froze. For the first time in so many fights, he had received advice from a master. Hundreds of discharges struck a single point with a bright arc of electricity. Martial arts. It's not fancy moves and buzzwords. See the root of the matter, he instructed the mad nerd. Concentrate on the basics. Forget the complicated names the fifth-rate electrician demurred. Simply copying won't help with electrophoresis techniques, the master explained. It's not copying lightning bolts with mana that's important, but containing them in mana itself, the hermit traded 8,000 nullification for advice. When the lightning bolts are inside the mana, it's only worth it to give them the shape they need. The discharges vaporized Hyun Wu's body, leaving large gaps in her image. He'd already lost count of how many zeros had gone by. Each step was like water and different from the previous one. This is true martial arts, the mad hermit realized. Then he broke the mold of what he had gained again, 10,000 nerd nullifications. After 15,000 zeroing in, he finally figured out how to use his brain. The mana in each cell creates lightning and dozens of other techniques emerge from them. And they all merge into one electrophoresis god technique. The last step, having studied the shape, is to break it instructed Master Electric. In the past, Hyun Wu would have said it was all contrived nonsense to give mystery and importance to simple truths. After all, his teachers were all images from the books from which he drew the power of absurdity. But now he finally understood the true meaning of true martial arts. Their battle hushed, rekindled, both were equal. There was turmoil in the center of the Korean Association. They belatedly reacted to the invasion. Senator Liam took over and led the defense from the bunker. When the first calamity appeared, he wasn't worried as he was hoping for Kim Hyun Woo, but then three more appeared. The situation is deplorable everywhere. S rank hunters could not do anything, the secretary reported. We need to prepare for the worst realized Senator Liam. Even if there is no communication with Hyun Woo, there is no need to worry about Korea, the senator reasoned. Hyun Woo, gone a cautious Shurken informed his friends. You can assume he's on another planet. He's been hiding it for a month, but not anymore. To stop the disaster, one must rely on one's own strength, said the always cautious Shurken. What will the dragon empress do? Shurken asked his loyal disciple. The girl looked at the hunter for the first time as something other than a blank slate. Fifteen thousand zeros, the Korean asshole counted wordlessly. They exchanged a hundred punches without Yunwu zeroing in. 
he was no longer dying, and they could clash as equals. His mastery of mana had reached perfection, the halo behind his back turning into a raven. A deranged lunatic, Electric looked pleased with the result. This form embodied the essence of his martial arts, the halo and wings. The now insane hermit was now crowding the fifth-rate electrician. Surprisingly, it didn't hurt the electrophoresis god's pride. He enjoyed a battle of equals, something he hadn't experienced since he'd gotten a little stronger. The mad hermit used both ranged and melee attacks. His facial expression hadn't changed since he started this climb. The face of a crazy nerd, if you agonize long enough, something will break. What kind of monster had he raised in these battles wondered Electrophoresis God. But who cares? I'll finally get a break from the endless fights, Thunderbolt thought. The full power of his technique as performed by the insane nerd unfolded over him. This is the way, thought the fifth-rate electrician. Hit it already, don't pull it. But the fatal blow only slightly ruffled a strand of hair. After 15,000 nullifications, the hermit stopped. Why didn't he finish it, Thunderbolt asked him. The hermit turned around. He shyly rubbed the hair on the back of his neck, thinking what to say. Can a student show such disrespect to a teacher, issued the hermit. What? Thunderbird said. I don't remember taking on a nerd as an apprentice, he asked. Since that's it, let the people rest, Master Chong Ma waved it off. Even asking him to stay, he would still leave, heartless. Hyun Wu threw Hyun Wu in the aftermath. The mad hermit, however, pondered to add, Thank you, teacher, even though you're an asshole, he blurted out, disappearing into the light of the portal. What a jerk, thought the fifth-rate foreman Thunderbird. Crazy Korean asshole, dead tired, he said afterward. A disciple, after zeroing out all the data in an infinite matrix, isn't so bad, thought Chong Ma. The association troops met the disaster at the very rift and prepared the first line of defense. Finally, the rift cracked and someone came out of the portal. The bird climbs out, repeat, the hole opened. Zo, squeaked in the radio hunter commander. The cannons fired the first volley at the target. It was hard to see what the huntress meant, so they decided to just shoot. Missiles and shells streamed toward the lone target that left the portal. A huge ball of fire appeared in the sky as they all hit the target. The dummies are standing by to await the results of the artillery preparation. What a warm welcome, came a mocking voice. I was planning to quietly mop up everyone, but there's no need to hold back, said the monkey with the cockroach mustache. May day, sos monkey lord nish kaput, Furstein. In a panic, the commander rambled into the radio. Birdie snapped out of, she didn't finish as monkey took the walkie-talkie. No one understood her orders anyway. We'll mop up the weaklings first, the macaw boasted. Rusty, shouted merrily the monkey king to his stick. Rooster landed in Thailand and amidst the mayhem that ensued. Such a simple floor, he said, folding his chicken wings. What another feathered misunderstanding, the rooster heard. And I saw a guy in sweatpants and flip-flops in front of me. What kind of madman dares to approach the great sage, Hyun Woo heard. I'll kill you first, then I'll roast you, shouted Roast Rooster. But the mad hermit wouldn't listen to any more inane clucking. I just got back, and the roosters were here, the mad hermit marveled. Now the border is already crossed with chickens, he asked the animal. The rooster hammered under the electric shock. Apprehension succeeded to perfection. The mad hermit incinerated Firebird with electrolysis. That's when the illegal chicken detention notice came up. But what the hell is he doing in Thailand? The navigation system is clearly malfunctioning, Hyun Woo remarked. Baby Seo Yeon lay passed out, disheveled hair falling over her beautiful face. The always cautious Shiken received a powerful kick and flew into the wall. You fools are kidding, Fat Lion, mocking the weakest of opponents. But the wild cat Empress didn't give up and covered Shiken. It was fun to play with Kitty, Fat Lion told her. But now I'm bored and the rude bastard swung his paw. The fat, uncut lion put the cute girl in the belly. Pain circled around the miniature body of the devoted student. <gasps> the mad hermit studied the system mail that had been missed during his absence. So the illegal immigrants had set up a passageway here, Hyun Woo realized from the words of the android Av. On is already rare, but to four at once the floor is not a rubber floor where only climb, asked the mad hermit. Demonololi, on the other hand, took an entire diaspora of rubber faces. Hyun Woo recalled. There's a good chance these illegals have a gang leader too, the android calculated. A strong illegal alien, 
can take Ocean's friends as a team and cross borders together. One of the three is definitely of high rank, the mad hermit concluded. The silver-haired girl bowed, confirming his conclusion. The hermit thought of asking how he found himself in Thailand, but the time was not right for that. And where is their leader, asked the hermit, and the girl showed on the map, the United States. Hyun Woo looked at the location of the three and figured out in what order to eliminate them. Getting to their leader and destroying him would be easy, the hermit thought. If he goes to the U.S., his friends in Korea, they'll die. On the other hand, there's a faithful student there, thought the mad hermit. On the other hand, a girl is not the equal of an illegal alien. Hyun Woo pondered over the difficult choice as the notice appeared. After reading carefully a couple times, he was still very surprised. The cautious Shu Ken assessed the situation as that was it. Here we go. Dragon Empress has fallen victim to a couple of punches from Fat Lion. The hunter himself was on his last breath, having used up all his strength and mana, and where only Hyun Wu is wearing regrets in a moment of weakness. But suddenly dismissed those thoughts. What was he thinking? He himself decided and persuaded others to fight for his home with their own forces. It's not the mad hermit's fault that the friend in his retinue is just a weakling. The dragon empress came to her senses and hissed. Miraculously, the fragile, exquisite girl was able to get to her feet. Powerless even with a martial arts master, the girl thought. Her teacher's words had endowed her with the absolute certainty that the imperial arts possessed immense power, and they were enough. If they don't help win, she's just not strong enough, the master told her. The mad disciple didn't consider herself strong. She walked under heaven. She considered all weaklings below her as chumps. And that way of thinking had brought her to where she was now, bitterness surging up her throat. She only admired the master's power and watched him from afar, not even thinking of reaching his heights. That's the end of the fairy tale, and whoever listened is well done, sang the fat lion. I'll do you the honor, growled the uncouth man who beats women, and I'll show you how to become fat, he continued, devouring hundreds of thousands of soldiers. A lion's roar threw the weakened dragon empress off. There's not enough bogatir strength to borrow, the girl heard a voice from Hermione's sack. I see, I see, came the voice, and the girl glanced at the source. Same voice she recognized Demonololi with her strange speech. Keep strength, Bogatirsky, and help in the Rathi will be, persuaded Demonololi. But the master told the student of strangers do not take candy. Do not trust, Demonololi realized, when the fat lion has already opened its mouth. Let it go, the demoness said, and released her Manololi. The dragon empress cried out in surprise, a year's worth of power enveloping her. It hurts the first time, the demoness said. The magic of the flawless demon Loli filled the dragon empress. Now you can feel the strength of a Bogatirsky, whispered ancient Loli. The miniature mad student's appearance was completely transformed, with the traits of a cute Loli demon manifesting in her. A horny goat is coming for the little guys, grinned the warrior maiden. The fat lion was surprised to see a young goat in front of him. Suddenly to himself, he found that he couldn't use his mouth. What is she? Horns grown and teeth, wailed the fat lion. So be it, goats are very nutritious, declared the lion, and tried to open his mouth. One stop, he heard a soft, gentle voice and crouched to the ground. Loli's strength kept him from moving, and the girl walked quickly in his direction. Fat Leo was being crushed by the roller, with every step of his miniature feet. The always cautious Shiken took a moment to pull out the wounded friends who were unconscious. Though it was a shame to run away from the battlefield and leave the girl alone up close, he would only get in the way. No one can resist Loli's strength, the transformed disciple leaned over Fat Lion. You think you're the only one whose strength was cut, said Loli Demoness. With each step, the pressure of Loli's power grew and flattened Fat Lion. If I were a queen, the demoness said, turning fat lion into flat lion, called the lowly goddess, the demoness said to the flat lion in the aftermath. Illegal Slonjara went through Mexico City, and everything was destroyed. The girl with the trunk froze in place amidst the destruction. And she couldn't move. She had absolutely no idea why. Do your eyes hurt without blinking? A stern female voice asked her. What did she do? Elephantine asked, squeezing the rest of the air out of her lungs. 
Right in front of her appeared a miniature cute girl, Agent Rose. Just animal experiments, the agent smiled sweetly. She had recently found a great book. Nothing to be afraid of. They are a humane organization. They don't torture animals, informed the agent with a cute face. Sick bastards objected to elephant paw, but the agent gagged her, not for an elephant paw who had trampled an entire town to say that. On behalf of the KGB, let me express my gratitude, Rosa smiled. They used it to eliminate their rivals in a dangerous business. Who is she? The girl with the trunk asked in horror. Better get back to our sheep, said the girl, and opened the first volume of Capital. This experience is intended to reveal signs of dialectical thinking, smiled Agent Rosa sweetly. The injured baby. So Yeon was slowly regaining consciousness in the hospital. Awake, the girl heard, was the voice of Quan Seo, who was on duty nearby. Realizing where she was, she immediately jumped up in bed and asked what had happened. Quan Seo didn't remember much. They got beat up by an illegal, and the staff said Shu Ken brought them in. The hunter himself returned to the battlefield after dressing his wounds. Damn freak, horrified cutie C.O. Yan, but Quan C.O. asked to keep the guy. Friend understood after a giveaway like that. The guy had reason to be disappointed. The cautious Shir Ken looked down from the roof of the hospital. He could only escape by tucking his tail, whipping himself. The hunter whipped to himself. The doors behind his back opened. Someone had come to the roof as well. Cautious Shuken turned around at the sound of the doors. He was greatly surprised to see the girl's familiar face. The Monkey King blasted the troops to smithereens, explosions blazing everywhere. The battle was already boring, but something changed where he sent the clones. The clones were equal in strength to low-ranking illegals, and 300 would be enough for the entire ninth floor. In an instant, half-destroyed, he thought as he heard a quiet, Good evening, you're in charge here, behind him. Delivering noble knockers, ordered, the hermit Hyun Wu appeared. Monkey deftly blocked the blow with his stick. Who is? asked the monkey king of the mad hermit. But the latter performed a double leg kick instead of submissions. Makaka flew toward the ground and struck out, raising a cloud of dust. Rusty! shouted the monkey king, and a large stick flew towards the hermit. But he deftly dodged the macaque's surprise attack. The monkey appreciated the hermit's abilities. The man was not simple. Jumping like a monkey, he pointed out to the mad hermit. Have you been looking in the mirror for a long time? Asked the macaque mad hermit. Part-time zookeeper, part-time border guard, the hermit introduced himself. Humans are monkeys too, the clever hominid objected. But more advance, now we'll teach you too, the hermit scoffed. In the same instant, he received two alerts for the elimination of illegal animals. Rusty, shouted the evil monkey, and hit Hyun Wu with a stick. Nerasty, he blurted out when the mad hermit was suddenly in close proximity. Now it was Rusty again, played with his stick by the nasty monkey. The stick rocketed him away, away from the mad hermit. A pillar of flame rose in its place and engulfed the mad hermit. But from beneath the rubble, the frantic macaque was grabbed by the chain arm of a border guard. Animals also need a declaration to be signed, said a state border control official, and put a wet stamp on the refusal of entry form, cheeky monkey. You'll be in the monkey house, he told the illegal intruder. This was something the insolent monkey king couldn't stand. But the border guard was strong. And that's all a high-ranking illegal alien can do, scoffed the mad hermit, and talk was what it was all about. The cheeky monkey became frustrated, unable to break away from the mad hermit. Then the macaque took the fight on the spot, waving his telescopic staff. Goddamn monster, where the hell did he come from, the brazen illegal alien? It can't be helped, said the macaque, and activated phase two. Unleashing all of Rusty's power, the staff reached into the low clouds. A fiery lightning of enormous size flew towards the ground. The magical ranged attack flew precisely at the target, but the mad hermit only grinned and gathered, released his mana in the form of a bloody crown. What's the matter? wondered the cheeky monkey. He wasn't the only one who had phase two. Hyunwoo also knew how to control lightning and easily repelled the attack macaque. The headquarters could not tear themselves away from the spectacle and stared mesmerized at the screens. Even Senator qui looked on with his mouth open at what was happening. This is beyond normal, the wily senator gasped. 
Far from here, the ground shook with the blows of real monsters. A crazed hermit was chasing an illegal macaque, but he deftly dodged the detention as a macaque should. Do you think you can hurt a Sith with lightning? The mad hermit asked him. Bloody electrolysis discharges flew toward the macaque. However, he managed to swing away with his paws and a stick. And while the Monkey King was distracted by the lightning discharges, Hyun Woo crept closer and kicked the brazen illegal animal straight in the face. The monkey rolled over the stone bumps, tumbling funny. Monkey gritted his teeth, but there was nothing he could do. The mad hermit ran the mana at full speed, activating all abilities. The fist of the divine Longbrook has sent a wave of love to the lesser brothers. Mana increase sparked the height of an unkilled macaque. A fiery wave of rays of goodness crowded the insolent macaque. Hyun Woo looked around at the results of the finishing magic. The roasted macaque was not going to surrender alive, resisted to the last. Why only such a monster on the ninth floor perplexed the illegal monkey? Not bad for a monkey, mocked the animal by the mad hermit. How dare he look down on the king of all monkeys, then humans too, the macaque lost his temper. A halo of mana lit up over his cockroach mustache cap. If you can't go higher, I'll take you with me. The monkey king decided to fight his last battle. Clones sprouted from him in all directions, monkeys like him. Each one is equal in strength to a weak illegal, and he has spawned many of them. Hyun Wu rejoiced at this kind of fun after leaving the hidden level of electric, he could subvert the cheats again. Come closer, banders, he said in the voice of the wise Ka. Reached the kite cursed, and the monkeys rushed to the Atka. Just what we need, thought the mad hermit. Close combat is his specialty. Monkey casts 18 nuclear strikes. A ball of red-hot plasma turned the remains of the buildings to dust. A monstrous shockwave of mana blew the entire city away. The cheeky macaque was assessing the results of the ashes he'd made. It worked, he wondered, after he'd blocked his own view. With a flap of his wings, the mad frontiersman soared out of the dust cloud. He landed easily and staggered toward the insolent macaque completely unharmed. It didn't work, the Monkey King realized, but it was too late. The training of a fifth-rate electrician was not in vain. Spending all your strength in one attack is the height of stupidity, Electric had taught him. Don't grumble, unwind one piece at a time, and may the power be with you, he admonished. Hyun Woo waited for the moment when the macaw was fully exposed and hit a crit from close range with a final attack. Another nuclear mushroom rose above the remains of the city. The rumble of the explosion from a thousand bombs rolled through the neighborhood. The flames scorched the ground red hot, the dust clouds slowly settling. Only one mad hermit remained in the middle of the crater. Hyun Wu exhaled after a hard run and flipped through a bunch of notifications. He gingerly groped himself for injuries. His arms were fine. His legs, too, no mana problems. This time, the illegal got off with a little blood, not like the last few times. A long training session with a fifth-rate electrician has had an effect. Pure victory realized fist, mad triumphant. What a rolling pin, he thought as he saw the familiar object. The staff of the Monkey King, Rusty, can enlarge and copy himself read Hyun Wu. There is a great use for this wand, grinned the hermit. Grasping tighter, he pondered the direction of the hunter's association. And with a shout of Rusty, he rocketed toward headquarters. At headquarters, the mad hermit was given a clean tracksuit. Not a bad design, appreciated the update hermit that has not changed clothes for many years. Waged such a battle and is now perfectly fine, the wily senator remarked. What's his appearance worth falling from the sky on a huge stick on horseback? Qui-Gong marveled. So Korea didn't suffer much damage, Hyun Wu recognized. By the way, there is one small request, the senator asked. Shiken looked at the crazy couple. Together they were visiting pretty Seo Yeon in the hospital. The contented cat sat meekly unmoving, all in a fervent blush. Never mind, thought a cautious Shiken, and wondered aloud how the hermit had gotten to the U.S. from Thailand. Just jumping, replied the hermit in a mundane tone. Iron Man Triathlon Herd, he asked his friend. Is that even legal? Lunged a cautious shuriken at the bottom of the test tube. But it was actually a different question that plagued him. Cutie So Young heard their conversation from the hallway. Shuriken asked about the special training the hermit was undergoing in the Matrix. 
Could he pass it too? asked a cautious Shaken, much to his friend's surprise. Too weak, little Seo Young heard, and tactfully did not enter the room. She reprimanded her friend for leaving the hospital without healing his wounds and giving her a thrill. It was hard to accept myself as a weakling, justified the cautious Shaken. But the thing about illegal aliens is that they're strong, said little Seo Yan. Not only, argued the hunter, she is also strong. Remembering the Empress of Dragons, he clarified. Ah, cutie. So Yan saw the fight on tape, it looked epic. Previously, Shiken was able to avoid the topic by simply writing it off as the power of a mad hermit. But now, Shiken realized, he must learn to protect what is precious with his own strength. Beauty Seoyan only smiled, happy at her friend's growth. He looked so excited, she chided him, did something good happen while her friend was out. Sweet Seoyeon waited for her cautious friend to finish. Quickly, he made up his mind, she noted, Shu Ken's endeavors. The mad hermit reflected. It's great that a friend decided to grow up. But can he handle a fifth-rate electrician, and will he want to teach him? If it's not too urgent, I'll return the sword later, the hermit decided, and Seo Young entered the room, informing him that she would be discharged tomorrow. Hyun Woo himself wondered how much his characteristics had changed after passing the secret level of the Matrix. Nothing much changed, the hermit looked over the long list. But WhatsApp, shuddered the mad reader, rereading again. The age column listed 118 years old. The hermit improved the virtual room for the neural net girl. The system poured in bonuses for apprehending an illegal menagerie and got to expand the virtual room. The girl rejoiced so ebulliently that the hermit suspected the nether of self-interest. Ta, of course, denied that he was looking forward to more games of games of games more than his wins. After the secret level, the meter counted, he's a whole 118 years old. System glitches inside the time matrix, no, but the hermit's internal clock kept ticking. The time paradoxes, attributed to the difference in the computing power of the matrix processors, went faster at the hidden level, Av said. A hundred-year-old virgin, the mad hermit was horrified, not enough to give an archmage for such a thing. On the other hand, he had already been through something similar, in a training tower. The main thing is that the muzzle hasn't aged and everything else you can live, the crazy hermit decides. Is there any information about the tower's creator? He asked the android girl, and she clapped her hands and said there was. Finally pleased the mad hermit after so much effort. The creator is the creator? The white-haired runt gurgled. What next? The hermit couldn't wait to get an answer. The creator is the creator, the neural network repeated, obviously not understanding what was confusing the hunter. Okay, I was a fool myself for hoping for a crooked system, the hermit resigned himself. But the girl resented this indulgence and shrieked. Five days, the young neural network coined loudly. No, not even seven days, and she could find his location. Of course it's not certain, but it's important to believe, the android blurted out. Okay. The mad hermit has long since gotten used to the network's antics. So the essence of Loli Demoness spoke first and gave strength, the mad teacher clarified. A new word has been added to the status of apprentice, successor. I've warned him that a force of illegals was still present on the ninth floor. Turns out there's another receiver in Mexico and Mason's been hit. There was a connection. Turned on Sherlock the hermit. He glanced at the slumped, frantic student who sat dumbfounded. She berated herself for using the master's things without asking. The girl felt the wizard's hand reach for her. For a second, she shrank into a lump, but instead of punishment, she was praised. Without you, everyone would be dead. She did the right thing, the mad teacher told her. Faithful Cat didn't expect to hear such words at all. But when she received the praise, she blossomed with mad happiness. Senator Liam was hosting an important guest, and asked to repeat the request in case he misheard. The guest, eagerly twirling his bug-like tendrils, wondered if he had been misheard. This staff belongs to Montana, said the fat seal, part-time governor of Montana. As a collector, it's not surprising that he was interested in the staff, but it's Kim Hyun Woo's booty, Senator Kui Gon said. But that's where our union was operating, the seal said defiantly. <laughs> it's enough to meet Kim Hyun Woo and figure it out. The fat dumpling rubbed his mustache defiantly. Senator Liam frowned. That was the problem. He'd dealt with a crazy hermit before. About me and without me, there was a knock at the door. 
Liam jumped up with a premonition of trouble. Who there wants his staff? Asked the mad hermit hovering over the fat carcass. Hunter Kim Hyunwoo wiggled his bug whiskers at the dumpling. The hermit looked intently at the seated misunderstanding that sprawled across the chair. He handed over the staff for inspection and registration as required by procedure, but already they were swarming like flies to honey. Fatty held out a sweaty palm and introduced himself as the governor of Montana. Oops, let's skip the details. Shut the insolent greaseball's mouth, the hermit. It's about how he shoveled it all out for everyone, and while he was gone, someone decided to steal the loot, got it right, the hermit said. In general terms, mumbled the fat, sweaty dumpling. There seems to be a conflict of interest, said the master of diplomatic negotiations. Liam didn't know where to call anymore. Hyun Wu smiled sweetly. A smile can solve hundreds of problems. And having a strong fist can solve all problems, cracked the hermit to the insolent bug. The fatso still didn't understand anything and poked the hermit with a wiener. He wouldn't leave it like that, squealed the pig, and immediately got a refill from the master of aggressive negotiation. Any more questions? The hermit asked. But the client was already peacefully asleep. Don't be afraid, he told Liam. He was just tired after negotiating. No need to worry, just return the stick to the digger, the mad hermit asked. The next day in the association's parking lot, an agent showed up. What did your boss Evan say? Asked the agent with glasses to the tired employee. Can't eat as he wants to poop in Hyun Woo's striped slippers. How funny, grinned the agent. Is there a plan, he asked the mole. Sew him up, clarified the recruited defector. Ten years of undercover work. Sewing it up like that, the agent asked. But the mole only waved his hands, still a job not to his liking. Certainly compared to working here, the underground agent noted. All for our director and the KGB, said the bespectacled agent. Let her rule the world from the shadows, he read the organization's motto. Master Bonsai's portmanteau wondered the cautious Shurken examining the much-used portmanteau. Wrap a sword in it and a secret level opens up, the mad hermit explained. Shurken glanced to the side, at the preparations the slave girl was making. The poor girl was working late again to draw the teleport circle in time. Going to Mexico, she can asked, secretly sympathizing with the slave girl. Just need to check something out, the mad hermit replied. He should have found a second receiver, Hyun Wu thought as he looked at the surprised student. Successors of persons of indeterminate orientation may become either border agents or illegal aliens. They can do nothing, or they can take over the world to rule it, the hermit learned. Anyway, that doesn't mean they're definitely bad. Pulled out Hyun Woo's Hermione pouch. It's yours now. He tossed a stone with the essence of lowly demoness to his apprentice. The girl immediately recognized the object that gave her strength. Use it as you wish, the mad hermit allowed the devoted disciple. It's good to have a lot of capable border guards, and one shouldn't expect betrayal from a female disciple. Hyun Woo pondered. You can be trusted, said the teacher, but the faithful and ardent student heard something of her own. I will when I get back, he left the contented cat drooling. Will you go at once? asked Hyun Woo, the cautious Shirken, to whom he had given a portmanteau. Tell Electric, said the hermit, to build himself a latrine instead of going into the bushes. Hyun Woo was walking through the ruins of the capital city and was thinking about where to start his search. Gas arbators of the magicians were already laying new tiles on top of the old ones. An agent in a chintz tea suit came into view. They were waiting for him. The agent made a low bow, know how to invite, the hermit noted. On the jacket glittered an all-seeing eye, the symbol of the organization. Let me invite you for a cup of tea, the agent offered. Cautious, Shikin took up the electrophoresis sword. A hidden level had indeed appeared. To be or not to be, whether I am a shivering creature, the hunter pondered just recently fixed up the apartment, and now he's leaving it again. He has a bad temper, like a real fifth-rate master, and drinks a lot of vodka, Hyun Woo warned. She Ken pressed a button and went to the nerd level of alcoholism. He was transported so quickly that at first he didn't even realize where he was. Everything felt real, indeed a matrix, realized a cautious sure Ken. Just had a craving, and there were guests, the hunter heard the voice. The drunken fifth-grade electrician glared menacingly at the uninvited guest. Indeed he is, recognized the master cautious Shiken. But what can I say? 
I want to become a drunken master, blurted out the cautious Shu Ken. Any fool can become a drunk, Chong Ma breathed, but not everyone can become a master. But wait a minute, what does he have to do with a crazy nerd? Electric asked, and Shai Ken nodded. Korean nerds shouted out in anger at the drunken Electric. Just when I've sold one of them, another one shows up and the foreman gets angry. The latrine was definitely not worth asking about, realized a cautious Shurken. No vodka, said the electrician sharply. You can go home. You don't know how to rest culturally anyway. Only to get drunk like a pig, replied the electrician. Shiken, horrified, he had definitely come here for a new discharge after all. After all the agony, he couldn't step back and walk away with nothing. Let's have a small drink just once, the boy pleaded. Discharge is very necessary, please teach master blurted out the cautious Sher Ken. If he doesn't agree, the hunter promised, he'll sit here and watch. That Korean asshole, he's also trying to take me by force, the master was angry. But since you ask so much, we'll do the same. You'll drink alcohol until you know the power of vodka and cultural recreation. She can heard the answer. Maybe then you'll raise your discharge, said the electrician, and opened the first bottle. The first shot is downed in a volley, said the master. Like that. You feel your eyes opening, and clarity of vision the world becomes more beautiful, asked the electrician. Tea party, with the boss, you say, pondered the suggestion to the mad hermit. And if you refuse, he asked the agent, what will you do then? Then we'll have to leave with nothing, the agent said, leaving the choice to Hyun Wu. The hermit realized that the agent spoke well, but he would not say anything new. It didn't look like an ambush, the mad hermit decided. Besides, they were most likely what the android girl was talking about. Hyun Woo agreed, and the agent escorted him to the headquarters, the entrance starting at the golden elevator. Such luxury surprised the hermit, just for an ordinary elevator. Under the ground, a whole castle resembling a cathedral awaited them. As soon as the door opened, the agents lined up on either side and bowed in respect. Even a seasoned mob boss was caught off guard by such a good greeting. Waiting for you, master, the hermit heard and saw the girl smelling of roses. A cute beauty with purple hair smiled gently at him. That's how the mad hermit met. Though a Sith is only allowed to have one apprentice, he had two female apprentices, disregarding all tower regulations. One of them is Mi Ryong, a wildcat, the empress of dragons. He immersed himself in the memories of long ago when he wandered around the training tower. The weak girl was attacked by her former associates. They wanted to kill her to raise their characteristics. At the last moment, the girl was saved by an unknown hermit. And he sent the talentless to get some fresh air, which saved the girl's life. This is how he became the hero of Hana Rin, or Agent Rose in reality. They had an unusual relationship, the mad hermit recalled. The girl turned out to be a good conversationalist. Of course, he trained her as well as Miriong the Wildcat. So easy and carefree, the girl spent a year and a half with the hermit. Until she cleared the tower, promising to get everything ready for her goodbye. So she killed Mason. The hermit listened to Agent Rose's story. What about the castle underground? Asked the mad master. What's it for? Didn't the master say it would be cool to build one? Agent Rosa reminded him. Everything else is ready too, sang the girl in a sweet voice. Two hundred hectares of American land. Headquarters in every European country, casinos, and money for the rest of her life, she continued to twiddle her thumbs. But when he said he wanted it, the mad hermit forgot. There was one similar conversation, though, when they were rafting down the river. What would he want, the beauty asked him, and the hermit replied that many things. To sleep, not to work, to live like a rich man, dreamily answered the one, and also a castle, a casino, a harem. Not in a lifetime, she remembers realized the reality of the mad hermit. The girl laughed contentedly. She liked the teacher's reaction. To remove all doubts, Yun Wu used the skill of telepathy on the girl. Anything the master desires, he saw her secret thoughts like a faithful cat. She's out of her mind, too, the mad hermit realized. But it was worth sorting things out. The gal is now a receiver after killing Mason and acquiring the first volume of Capital. What is she going to do with all the power she has now? He asked Agent Rosa sharply. The problem is, she's unclear on whether she's borderline or illegal. Even the system can lie. If the girl betrays him, he'll have to deal with her. All my powers are only for the master. 
she said in a simple answer that discouraged the hermit. So she killed the last illegal elephant too, the hermit asked, sitting back on his throne. Checked out a couple possibilities of Marxist ideology, the girl replied. The city in ruins had a hard time asking the mad teacher. It's part of a long and bold plan, the hermit heard. You said you wanted a whole city, and now you have the space and resources. She presented the whole world in the palm of her hand. So now you can let your imagination run wild, fantasy master, shown Agent Rosa, and play Sim City. Mad student number two sparkled with happiness. She's more schizophrenic than Mi Ryong, the hermit decided, and cooled Rosa's fervor. They hadn't met before because the girl wanted to prepare everything, and working with the media was also her handiwork, the hermit learned. Not normal at all, Hyun Woo decided, while watching the girl wagging her tail contentedly. And why are the apprentices like that, since he's perfectly normal, the mad hermit lamented. That's it, I bow out, the homeless emperor told her, and left the throne. What about all this stuff she had prepared, Rose asked, to which the hermit waved back. See later, the girl quickly realized everything. The master was not in the mood for fun right now. Then I'll walk you out, master, said the pretty girl with pink hair, Hyun Woo, marveled so easily let go. But why did she stand in the circle, the hermit asked her, and was answered that it was the duty of the disciple to be near the master. What about the organization, he asked, but Rosa easily replied that the KGB would manage without it. He'd heard that somewhere before, the mad hermit thought. I'll just take it with me, no problem decided the hermit, and told them to stay close to the center of the circle. Teleports are handy, breathe magic and jump, the hermit remarked. Loli Demoness tempted the inexperienced cat to sign a long-term contract on Loli's strength, but to pondered. In any contract, there's an addendum in the fine print thought the faithful cat. Innocent maiden, wants to know the truth, asked Demona Loli. Sharing thought, feeling, and fighting the supposed together, the whole contract, resented the demoness offering an equal contract. Over the whole body to give up control, the loyal cat wondered what the demoness would do. So you can take the body at any time, said the dragon empress. But demoness denied that the contract is voluntary, honest. The offer is tempting and from that suspicious. While she was thinking, the teleport circle in the courtyard lit up. Master, exclaimed the happy cat and jumped up to greet the master. Master cut off halfway through her voice as she came downstairs. Suddenly, the cat realized that she wasn't the only candidate for concubine. The thief was holding the mad emperor under her arm as if she had to. Dragon Empress took crushing damage. Waiting, greeted the master to the faithful student that stammered poking at the master's new surroundings. Why are you clinging to him? He asked the other cat, but she wasn't going to let go. He told her to hold on to him. But it was about something else the mad emperor didn't understand at all. Since this was the case, everyone should be introduced, the hermit decided. Here is the first Koshkojin disciple, he pointed to Mi Ryong. Here is the second Koshkojin disciple, the emperor pointed to Hana Rin. Questions. Second master, Mi Ryong Cat couldn't believe what she heard. What's wrong? asked the mad emperor who had lost all social skills in his childhood. I hadn't heard about the other student. Excitedly, the girl mumbled. The rival smugly grinned, obviously who was now the emperor's favorite. Her gaze spoke. I told him to get off, and the hermit pulled away, but his clinging paws wouldn't let him go. Shoo! The jealous cat couldn't contain her emotions, and fell into deep precipitation at the bottom of a black hole in the middle of space. What do you want? Loli Demoness asked when she was suddenly awakened. Accepting all terms heard her sudden agreement. There seems to be an unwanted obstacle on the horizon, a jealous cat on fire. What the? thought the mad hermit as he moved into the android Av's room. A total mess, he noticed. The sloppy net didn't know how to clean the basket at all. How are things going? he asked and heard the question. And what was it from? The white-haired neuro set. But as soon as he reached for the TV remote, she knew immediately what he was talking about. So what information? the mad hermit demanded. Location could not be set. Android girl appeared, rights insufficient. But there's better than a key, a drawing of a key, replied the neural network cryptically. There is an item that can help establish the exact location of the creator. Pretty Yan stopped at the door to the living room in indecision. 
She brought the papers, but she didn't feel like going in. A storm was raging outside the doors. They watched the carnage, Hyun Woo chilling, Beauty Seo Young watching anxiously from the balcony. What are these two doing? asked the cute little mad hermit. The first cat girl and concubine candidate is her, Mi Ren insisted. Malavka, on the other hand, Rosa replied. They were having a light sparring session. But it was more like a mortal combat, so Yan worried. The forces of the two successors were equal, so they systematically trashed the entire courtyard. Freeze created a zone of communism, Rose, and immobilized the Dragon Empress. Ta got a straight punch in, but was able to pull guard. Shouldn't we stop them? Shouting over the hurricane, the cute Seo Yeon asked futilely. The serene hermit replied. Scum, 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 scum. The girls were pulling each other's hair out. Harlot of Babylon, courtesan of the port, exchanged compliments with the students. Basta Karapuziki, the mad emperor finally intervened. But it's just light sparring, Agent Rosa objected. Easy, he pointed out to the jealous proprietresses. The destruction of the house, like a cat and dog, reprimanded the hermit's disciples. Everyone in the corner to think about their behavior, he sent the girls out of sight. Pretty Seo Yeon gave the girls a glance, but who is she asked her friend. Second apprentice, replied the mad hermit briefly. How many of them do you have? Wondered the pretty Seo Yeon. Just two pieces of Koshkojan formalized in the tower, the hunter replied. One wasn't enough, dreaded the cute Seo Yeon. If these two get into each other's hair, it's not like she'll be able to pull them apart, the girl lamented. And Hyun Wu was just absent. Hyun Wu rubbed his burning ears as if someone was recalling him. What's wrong? The android girl asked, but Hyun Wu just scratched behind his ear. Where is the artifact that will point to the creator, he asked the white-haired neural network. Between the 8th and 35th, the android Av said. The eighth floor is divided into a bunch of sublevels and is different from the ninth floor. It's hard to search there. Hyunwoo didn't understand a damn thing about the droid's complicated, cobbled together descriptions with poor translation. Is there a passage to the eighth floor? He asked the white haired woman. Need artifacts? The girl replied and produced a long list. Five pieces puzzled Hyunwoo, but he was reassured that they were easy to find. Three out of five are in one person's possession at all the girl assured me. Hyun Wu checked all the data and made sure it was accurate. If that's the way to go, said the mad hermit rising. Easy peasy. He smiled when he saw the familiar face of the proprietor. From where, Miriong Cat asked, pointing to the mask. Rosa. Special epaulets that the master had given her. The pink-haired girl proudly replied. No way, exploded the cat, the mentor saving every mask. Right, the pink-haired girl replied. And didn't he give her anything? She asked with a sneer. I'll slaughter them all, raged the jealous cat at such insolence. That's how the master listens, spanking again, asked the mad emperor, suddenly appearing in the house, and looked unhappily at the stubborn students. They had a lot in common, the tactless hermit thought the girls would become friends. Oh well, time to keep them busy, decided the homeless emperor. The sparks of rivalry flared up again between the cats. But the hermit sent them to different parts of the world, tasking them each to retrieve an artifact. Anything else? Agent Rosa sweetly teased, but received a negative response. Just end peacefully. In Montana, the fat governor sputtered, spitting spittle. Even for a generous fee, they refused to cooperate with him. Hauser yelled dumpling, no one wanted to write stinking blather about Kim Hyun Woo. He got a dozen refusals and berated the hunter for nothing. There's someone here to see you, the secretary reported though the dumpling wasn't expecting anyone. The meeting wasn't scheduled, he just showed up, the secretary said in a conspiratorial tone. The ravings of a madman, the already angry dumpling was shaking with anger. The room was entered without knocking, nearly overwhelming the fat governor. The seal appreciated the redesign and panicked even more. How much longer can you yell like a slavering pig, a familiar voice asked him. The mad hermit came for a cup of tea, even though no one called him. How dare you, the seal indignantly poked the wiener toward Hyun Woo. What a question. So much slop spewed behind my back. It's time to pay up, said the crazy mob boss. Hyun Woo listed all the people the fat, arrogant pig had contacted. He didn't know what to say and anticipated a quick autograph session. Hyun Woo discarded the list. Too long to read all the way through. So interesting to write nasty things, he asked the fat governor. 
The insane mob boss smiled sweetly. The beginning of the negotiations had been made. How could you, jerked towards the secretary Fatas when he realized he'd been betrayed. All it took was good behavior, the defector replied. And here's where the guilds he cooperated with gave the secretary another list to the hermit. Wow. Even so, acted as if Ares was a guild, the mad mobster marveled pictorially. A complete failure, taken like a goat by the beard, horrified the dumpling. You're supposed to roll him in asphalt for this, but today he's kind, the hermit said. So let's make a deal. The mad hermit crouched closer to him. A couple trinkets and we'll solve this misunderstanding, smiled the mad hermit sweetly. The dragon empress quickly found the collector she needed and summoned him to the carpet to talk over a cup of tea. Such people and no guards, the local sycophant asked her. Blind man's compass on the table briskly, the empress said briefly in lieu of greeting. And in return, a pathetic cockroach dared to squeak and nearly lost his life. We'll do it to the best of our ability. Quickly change the pathetic collector's mind only three days. Three hours, not that. The empress ran her palm over his throat, leaving no doubt as to what would happen to him. But this thing is far abroad, dared the excuses and mumblings of a sycophant. He had incurred the wrath of the already demonic dragon empress. The first one to follow, she ordered the henchman. Gotta tackle it faster than that pink-haired thief, thought the empress. The blind man's compass lay in the palm of a local appraiser of stolen goods. In just two days, it could have taken a week, wondered the white-haired girl. It just worked out well, replied the mad hermit sprawled out on the couch. Hanarin did it in less than an hour, and Mi Ryung did it quickly. Now you just have to put these artifacts together, because they were already one piece before. The android girl put each part in the right place, and began setting up a sophisticated artifact control system. Hyun Wu wondered greatly what was going on here, for once the android was useful. The white-haired woman delved into the layers of information and blue screens. The mad hermit squinted against the bright light as the fusion began. The result was a strange and tasteless bling. The compass looks different now, and the status has changed, the homeless hermit noticed. This is the true face of the compass of the blind, proudly expressed the girl. Now Hyun Woo could easily get to the 835th floor, through the maze, with the help of a compass. The mad hermit yawned tiredly, killing stupid mobs was boring, but there was no other way to get through the maze. How much further to stomp, he asked himself and pulled out his compass. Ariadne's yellow thread stretched toward the exit and the labyrinth where he had long since lost his sense of time and direction. You stay, he told the two spunky cats. Let everyone in, let no one out, ordered the mad emperor. We can only take one, the sly pink-haired fox suggested. The master's first apprentice, the dragon empress, will definitely protect this place, Rose suggested. The dragon empress was outraged. Only the first apprentice has the right to protect the emperor. They were again arguing for the place of the first concubine candidate. Wondering if they would destroy the city worried the hermit when he was interrupted by a squeak. A bunch of green bums jumped all over him. Even without cheats, the hermit took down such weaklings with a single spit. What could he think of that would make weaklings flee in fear, he pondered. Hyun Wu looked at the stiff man that lay at his feet. No pulse was palpable. The patient died from the autopsy diagnosed by the mad doctor. The hermit was glad to see that the labyrinth would soon be out of the labyrinth, since there were only weaklings around. The threaded room shuddered in anticipation of an imminent exit. Cutie. So Yan came to say goodbye to Hyun Wu before leaving. But slave girl Anya reported that the master had already left. As he always does in his own way, the beauty was upset and gave the coffee to Hyun Wu, his slave. But what was that familiar object next to Anya, the girl wondered. She easily recognized the sword because she had seen it so often. Anya blanched awkwardly as she asked the question, the dark circles from overexertion never leaving her eyes. Don't be shy to ask, offered almost as a friend, the cute Seo Yon. When exactly will Hunter Kim Shiken return? The slave girl asked, sweetly embarrassed. That's it. So Yon Seo Young was stunned by the news. The illegal hungry eunuch frolicked with a huge axe. The Empire's first sword, Master Tums, weakly fought off the formidable illegal. The monster chopped his comrades into cabbages, the shredded ones lying at his feet. He turned to his soldiers and tried to cheer them up. After all, they were the last defenders of the empire. 
But the evil unit cut them down like grass in a hayfield. The soldiers fell cut in half by the huge axe. He was already tired of playing along with weaklings. The eunuch scoffed at the pathetic effort. Time to show your hungry eunuch strength, said the illegal intercepting the axe. As soon as he swung, a thunderous shout came from the sky. Rusty. A large dirk stabbed into the ground where the eunuch had swung his axe. Master Jerk couldn't make out anything in the cloud of dust from the impact. A soft landing. Rejoice the matter. It's a good thing there's bedding here, or they made the exit from the maze right in the air, he said. Defeated an illegal of ours, dumbfounded Master Cheeks and the remnants of his company. Stomping again, the mad hermit shook the blind man's compass to illuminate the direction of the quest. But the thread was breaking here, for he had already arrived at the right place. A few battered natives came up to say hello to the mad hermit. Whose villain are you going to be? The knight asked him as he came closer. Shaken gritted his teeth. The vodka was no longer flowing, but the electrician kept pouring. At the same time he forced to do strengthening physical training, the hunter had a hard time. Who drinks like that, without a soul, one after another in a volley, admonished the fifth-rate electrician after a hundred shots? But Shiken didn't give up. He had come here for a discharge upgrade. After so many leaders, he had strengthened his will, hardened his liver, and wanted to get stronger. Just as the hermit had told him, Shiken tried to keep up with the electrician, but it wasn't easy to outdrink a fifth-rank master. He'd already forgotten why he'd started drinking, why he kept getting hung over every time. Go get some sleep, suggested surrendering to the electrician. No chance here, he argued. Drinking is an art, not the college binge drinking that Shea Ken was used to. Discouraged everyone from quitting electric. But without a grade, he can't be a decent hunter, can't protect what's precious. Shea Ken cracked his face so that he wouldn't get completely intoxicated. Master Electric, he thought. There was something about this kid that made sense. She Ken sighed with a broken nose. He thought a little too much. Until he develops an immunity to alcohol, there's no way he's leaving, he decided firmly. A true Korean nerd like Buddy inhaled Master Electric. We'll have to learn a little two sword approaches and a little of each, commanded the electrician. Pretty Seoyan stopped by Slave Anna's house for coffee to ask how the guild was doing now. They used to be a mess. But now that they're working together, things have improved, the girl said. Tiny. So Young looked outside and noticed a huge and tall building that was being built in the neighborhood. What is it? asked the huntress. On the left is the palace of the P. Joe Guild in Korea, the Mad Empress of Dragons. And on the right is an unknown guild slave girl Anya shared. Building where there were already two major guilds, the newcomers only caused the lovely Seo Yon to be surprised. But then she remembered the fight between the two mad students. And an eerie hunch he knew neighbors suddenly dawned on the girl. The mad hermit was invited to a reception at the palace that glittered with gold and luxury everywhere. The Palantir of Truth, a national treasure, but the savior of the empire will be reported to the emperor, Master Bellybutton promised the hermit. They themselves led to the right place. The mad hermit rejoiced quietly. The servants opened the doors solemnly before him, and the bright light of the hall cut his eyes. The emperor stood alone on his throne, but it was certainly not as high as the golden throne in the Forbidden City. The local monarch greeted the guest floridly. He held himself as arrogantly as any of his kind. The Korolek blurted out flattering and noncommittal praise for the hero. Hyunwoo wondered if he should follow the local etiquette, but he dismissed the idea because he was a true master negotiator. Korolek noticed the hermit's bluntness, but he begged off and went on to thank him, but he was interrupted. Hyunwoo was not impressed by the promises to throw a feast in his honor, fame, and authority in the local underdeveloped state he does not need. The hermit asked directly about the Palantir of Truth, but received a curt refusal. Such intransigence was annoying. It was as if these underdogs didn't realize that the hermit's wish was not a request. The king excused himself by blaming it on his vassals, who would not allow the treasure of the people to go to a foreigner. But instead, he would give a generous reward, he promised. And if the hero faithfully serves the empire, then perhaps his request could be considered, grabbed his head from such nonsense Hyunwoo. 
No so much time to mess around with underdeveloped natives who don't know their place, raged the hermit. Master Tyr, unaccustomed to palace intrigue, kept a bad face, and the hermit suspected something amiss. He used the telepathy skill on the kingpin it would work on a weakling like this with no problem. They're completely starstruck, the hermit decided when he read the monarch's thoughts. We'll send him to the north to deal with the barbarians, give him a title, marry him if he refuses, we'll eliminate him, reasoned the insolent and stupid monarch. There's a dementia-ridden old bald man out of his mind, a demented hermit. The sacred animals that are chosen by heaven accumulate energy within them. Gradually learning about themselves, they acquire a mind similar to or even better than the human mind. The fox has lived for 2,000 years, practically a sacred animal, and was now standing at the portal to the ninth floor, rubbing timidly at the entrance. And it won't fizzle. The vixen timidly stuck her paw into the drain between the floors and was surprised at the level of magical powers at the exit of the labyrinth. Still and somewhat for a wary fox, the ninth floor looked like a dangerous place. But she had no choice. She had to leave anyway. Making up her mind, the fox jumped into the portal between the levels of the matrix and pressed drain. Shawarma subzabor, from the shabbled of the market I hear, the vixen has landed right in the center of a furious altercation. The fox pretended she wasn't here. Cloud, 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 and not a bear at all, she hummed to herself. The owner has put her in charge of the catwoman, Agent Rosa said, so she'll take the fox. The first concubine candidate disagreed with this statement, and the fight intensified. The girls were no stranger to going wild, raising hurricanes with one blow that the fox pinned her ears back in fear. Come on, you saw it, you saw it, horrified the vixen. She wanted to run away quietly, but she stumbled awkwardly, attracting the attention of the two beasts. Woof, or whatever foxes say a fox says just to see if it'll work. But it didn't work, standing pelt, shouted in the wake of the fleeing and terror fox mad students. The mad master negotiator approached the local aboriginal kingpin. Thoth gasped at the unheard of impertinence. No one dared speak to a nasty monarch like that. But after all, he has his reasons for saying so, continued the mad hermit. He defeated an illegal that could have wiped out the entire empire, and in return for his gratitude, found out he was being used by the local goons. They wanted to dust him off with promises of reward and glory, but that's only for weak-willed heroes, so Hyunwoo was blocked. Living in a medieval barn might appeal to the uneducated schoolboy, the hermit continued. But for a man of a highly advanced civilization, this is nonsense. He turned the blades of Cheek and his soldiers into crumbs. Master Tums was the first to realize what was coming next, and rushed to the defense of the stupid king. His majesty will bear it all, the knight declared. It seems it's time to show the natives who can slaughter them back to the Stone Age, the mad hermit realized, and unleashed some of his magical powers with a clap of thunder. Azum is the king and god who came down from heaven, the mad hermit told them. The palantir gleamed brightly in his hand. Strength the main trump card in any negotiation again, he reaffirmed his rule. The purple ball hid its status data, except for how and what it was for. Yunwu heard footsteps behind him and turned around. Nightbelly came out to see him off. Told me not to see him off, or does he want to flip? The hermit asked the knight but the knight had come to return honor and ask forgiveness. Though he was a vassal of the feckless king, he felt his guilt. He bowed low and apologized, but the hermit brushed them off. He is a simple man. He does not remember grudges. Here's a present. He tossed the native a package for good measure. This is delicious, said the hermit, and settling on his staff, an equal exchange, he remembered the rules of the tower. Rusty commanded the madman and took off for the entrance to the labyrinth. So he won't retaliate, Nightbelly exhaled in relief. But what did the mad guest give him instead of a national treasure? The knight examined the army's dry rations. So many times he's already tasted it, and he still hasn't learned how to drink. Even the hermit was doing better, Master Electric said. So neither to maintain the conversation nor to pour in time, pressed the teacher Thunderbird. But it's not without reason that everyone, asked a cautious shuriken, has been drinking and exercising for a day. One hundred thousand more times and he would definitely, 
outdrink a fifth-rate master, the hunter said. The master only smiled, a yellow-haired student, who had barely finished his studies and was already aspiring to be a master. Electric welding technique is not at all suitable for such a talentless man, he stated sharply, but reassuringly, there is something. Even such a youngster can do well if he learns a simple assembly course, heard the excited Shiken. No longer will they drink and learn electrophoresis, the master declared. Before he started his illegal climbing, he met a stupid guy once. Other than persistence, he had nothing. But that was his strength, just what a Korean nerd needed, the master explained. They're coming, stay alert, warned the mage to his partner. The skeletons of the labyrinth are very strong, he admonished. Everyone take positions, commanded the squad leader. The girl tensed in anticipation of the wave of monsters, following the directions. Something doesn't add up, boss, she asked the squad leader. Though skeletons don't have faces, it was obvious even to the inexperienced girl. That shabby faces flee in terror from the dreaded scourge. The squad leader was dumbfounded. Are monsters capable of such a thing, he asked himself. There's an even stronger monster behind, he realized, and commanded a retreat. But an unknown force had already turned the monsters to ashes, shattering all the bones. Rusty heard the leader shout loudly in the midst of the general commotion. Something long and heavy rushed past them that they barely had time to duck. Which one? Both hunters were dumbfounded and looked up. Wow, the humans showed up, smiled the mad hermit. That means he's back on the ninth floor, rejoiced the man with topographical cretinism. Even with a compass, the journey took two weeks. He returned to the manor, where he was immediately surrounded by his loyal apprentice. Spit it out, he turned to the dragon empress. Ta presented the mad hermit with a fox energy ball. This time, an unintelligent animal tried to cross the border. The fox shrank with fear and shook all his tails. The girls immediately set about figuring out who got the nine fox collars on the coat. How did it go? The hermit asked the mad disciples. All by herself, all by herself, said each of the jealous cats. Fine, he sighed. Let the first Koshkojena speak, said the mad emperor. Obey and obey the satisfied cat rejoiced. The association requested help, and the two girls set out to catch the illegal animal. It was like that, just a little overdone in the process, the dragon empress reported. A little, the emperor interjected, reading the motley news headlines. However, that was all right, since no one was hurt. But why didn't they remove the skin? The hermit asked, to the fox's horror. She immediately chewed off the strip of duct tape on her pretty face and squealed, pleading for mercy to the mad hermit. She has no strength without the ball anyway, Hyun Wu heard, and was surprised the first time an illegal wanted to live in his memory. Without the balloon, the vixen was really only good for a fur coat. So why left alive? The hermit asked the mad couple again. Someone interrupted. Agent Rosa replied evasively, dimming her eyes. Ha, wasn't that her? The dragon empress asked her. They started fighting again and figuring out who was in charge. So they were going to kill the fox, but they hadn't decided who would get the coat, the hermit asked them. The girls were embarrassingly silent, even stopped looking at each other. They had always been incredibly strong students, but what a kindergarten, thought the mad hermit. Fine love, decided the mad hermit. No one wears fur coats anyway. You want to live spit out everything you know about the Matrix Tower, Hyun Wu threatened with his fist. He kicked the mad apprentices out of the way and listened to the long story of the talking fox. Some of the information turned out to be useful. The illegal alien was questioned for a reason. Illegal hikers receive a medal for hiking from the Matrix Master and can claim a place at the throne, the hermit found out. But what do these accomplishments mean? wondered the hermit, and heard the answer, any desired power. Why suffer so much for the sake of some power? wondered the frontiersman even more. Getting the achievement is like realizing a dream, explained the fox, such as goblins, said she. The goblin can get the kill stick achievement, the fox said, and Yunwu asked if that meant he could use that ability. But not only that, the fox stated, advances allow one to take possession of everything their original owner has. By defeating a sword master, an illegal becomes a sword master by adopting his karma, all abilities, memories, and habits. Hyun Wu thought about it, getting Electric's karma without a hundred years of dueling, a tempting offer. 
The fox flattened her ears, spilling everything she knew to the mad hermit. I promise to go to the litter box and not to yak at night, take me, asked the vixen. We'll decide later, the cold-blooded emperor replied, causing the fox to ruffle its fur. But maybe she wants to be skinned right away, the hermit asked, and she shook her head. Lord Manganese was once again sitting in the empty atrium at the round table. Is it true, asked the lord upon hearing the good news. There is a possibility that he came closer to the truth, Monk reported. Creepily curious as to what this will amount to, reacted the Lord of Manganese. This outsider will climb the tower without even being illegal, the monk wailed. He faltered, realizing he'd let himself go too far in front of the Manganese Lord. His words make sense, the Lord calmly replied to the monk's apology. I wanted to see how far this outsider could go, too bad he learned too much, the Lord said. Send one top-ranking illegal, he ordered the servant monk. That's right, the Palantir of Truth confirmed the relic to the fence of stolen Av. When the waiting time has passed, the Palantir can be peeked into to find out where the creator of the Tower of Learning is. But might as well ask the orb at once who imprisoned him in the tower, suggested the mad hermit and the android agreed. Of course he'll get to the creator too to return the favor. Hyunwoo asked if the beastie that escaped from her matrix floor could be petted, and the android hesitated. The illegal fox's strength had weakened so much that it had disappeared from radar altogether, the neural network reported. There would be no problem if we let her live, the girl concluded. Still, it's better to be sure. What about putting him on a chain and training him? She asked the hotelier. The ninth floor has many interesting artifacts, including a magical chain for role-playing. And how many relics must be obtained to assemble the device, asked the hermit lazily, and pulled away when he heard the number five. It's simpler than it seems, the girl told Neuralnet. The relics are in the same hands. Here he has it. He showed the photo of the lucky man to the mad hermit. Wow, what people in no guards, smiled the mob boss. The fat dumpling from Montana, a little slimmer, but he's still got some chutzpah on his face. That's better. Appreciated the efforts of a novice master alcoholic electric. Now at least you won't fall off after the first shot, he said to a cautious Sharken. Thank you, master. The satisfied, slightly inebriated hunter blurted out in gratitude. If you're done, get lost. I'm bored with the same toast, said the electrician. She can let the phrases pass his ears as it was still blurry in front of his eyes. He looked at the back of the departing master. He had not managed to drink him too much, but at least he hadn't tried in vain. Thank you very much, the slightly tipsy Shai Ken bowed again. At the same moment completing the secret level of the Matrix. What a troublemaker, he forgot to drink on the horse, thought Master Electric. But at least he's polite. Not like Korea's first asshole, Hyunwoo. Shu Ken appeared in the middle of the ruins. Dark night. Not at all where he entered the Matrix. Apparently the hard drive was glitching after all. He perked up when he noticed the sudden change in his surroundings. At his feet lay a multitude of dead and wounded hunters of unknown origin. A new sweetie, met hunter, illegal barbarian with tendencies. Just sobered up and a job came up, said a cautious Shu Ken. Come here, pretty college boy, jumping on the young meat. His hand reached for the sword that lay beside him, but at least he wasn't shaking like a true master. But his skill is more than enough. Shu Ken got into a fighting stance as well. Master Electric told him an ancient fable about a small but very persistent bird. It's better to practice 10,000 times one punch than to practice 10,000 punches, Electric said. The warrior was thrown out of the temple for not knowing a damn thing and only messing up, but he didn't give up. He studied one strike and one technique, and that's all he did for 50 years until he became Master Lomister. Firebrand technique, shouted out the cautious Shurken and took down the pervert with a powerful attack. The mad hermit stared in surprise at the alert that had just appeared. I wasted Anka's time drawing portals. The illegal alien had already died. The hermit was upset. If it wasn't the students, then who? wondered the border guard. The gathering of an inquisitive crowd of people suggested where to look for the answer. Oh, not Shea Ken. The mad hermit recognized his friend. In one motion, he jumped over all the pandemonium and found himself next to his friend. When back asked the hermit nearly crushing a couple people. Already at home, Shea Ken brewed a cup of coffee. After vodka with no appetizer, it was going fine. That bastard, exclaimed Hyunwoo, after hearing the whole story of Shu Ken's training from the drunken master. When the hermit was practicing, they didn't even offer him a sniff, 
they put him right behind the welding machine, the hermit resented. It's been so long since we've seen each other, don't you want to chat? The cautious Shurken changed the subject. Wait a minute, the hermit remembered. Had he told him about the latrine, he asked Shay Ken. Oh, that Shurken remembered, trying to think of a quicker excuse. Said he wouldn't know how to live without your sound advice, relayed the words of the electrician, Shay Ken. The mad hermit was indignant at his insolence. Never mind, he was just shy, tried to reassure Shurken. He was actually pleased, noodled by a cautious Shurken. Whatever, the mad hermit changed the subject, sprawling lazily on the couch. It's a good thing he didn't tell him everything, rejoiced the cautious Shu Ken. He didn't shit in the electrical box for nothing, the mad hermit thought. But maybe he could still tell me what kind of BDSM play with animals is, Shu Ken asked casually. We've got a fox, we're training it to the litter box, the hermit said. An illegal fox, it can be used for fur right away, the hunter got worried. Mercy, I'll wear slippers, squeaked the fox but the hermit shut her up with his finger, threatening to let her buy a coat. She immediately fell silent, training subject to Shurken concluded with an experienced look. I was just curious what it would be like to mess around with a fox, the hermit said. Foxes are not only valuable fur, he told his friend, but also useful information about the tower. What if it runs away, asked a wary Shurken, looking at the fox powerless with fear. She won't run far, she's weak, the hermit replied nonchalantly and we'll put her on a leash. The frantic students burst through the doors with a report. Shaken only had time to shift his gaze from the apparition and to the mad hermit. Why are there two of them now? Shaken cautiously asked the hermit. The second student, Ha Na Rin, introduced the girl Hyun Wu. Two at once, the always cautious Shaken was stunned by his friend's antics. The rain man sat in a sky hut without legs, blown about by all the winds which made the hatter very upset. It was always raining in his shower. A guest appeared in the heavenly hut. When will he stop this rain, all the storm drains flooded? The monk asked him. Didn't he get rain man karma? The hatter asked. I can cry wherever I want, he declared. You must go down to the ninth floor and deal with the outsider, monk interjected. If they can manage it, they'll pave another lane, the monk reported. If that's the case, smiled the hatter, we can go for a walk, he said. The lightning bolts of an experienced electrician burst from his hand as soon as he raised it to the sky. Fine, agreed, Hatman Minister. Celestial, sprinkler, 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 will kill everyone, so tell him so, he said to the monk. Alice the fox, nicknamed the illegal animal by a deranged hermit. There's not much pleasant about putting on a collar, sympathized Hyun Wu, the animal. But where to go the animal without a leash cannot and got used to it already, he realized. I wonder how the collar looks in human form, thought the hermit. The android girl and apprentices well done, now the hermit had a will-suppressing artifact. A very handy thing the mad emperor thought, if he had to get more slaves. He could now read the vixen's mind, and decided to test the ability right away. The fluffy shawarma was snoozing without hind legs, as if nothing had happened. Soft, warm, chugging behind the ear, Feeding high, he read the fox's thoughts. Why the hell did she go to the tower if she wanted to lie there and enjoy herself? The hermit wondered. Other illegals went all the way to the end to earn karma as if their existence depended on it. One day I'll ask her why she went into the tower, the mad hermit decided, looking at the fox. A guest came into the house and he turned around to greet her. Sweet Seo Yan said hello to the not-so-frequent guest in her own home. The pretty girl had come to study Taoist magic, the hermit recognized. Kiss kiss, called out to the pet fox, Beauty Seo Yeon. She jumped up at the same moment, wagging all her tails. They settled in like homeschooled students. Hyun Woo didn't understand a damn thing the girls started talking about. First, Shi Hyun got a discharge from Master Electric, now cute so young, learning Taoist magic from Fox Alice, thought the hermit. Not the slightest clue what was going on, as if they were speaking elvish, Hyun Woo decided. But the lovely Seo Yun, she was studying so hard that she couldn't take her eyes off so she'll do well, the hermit thought. The Truth Palantir rebooted and ready for use, Hyun Woo received a system notification, which made him quite happy because he had been waiting for this for a long time, time for the main quest. 
Even the white-haired android met him dutifully at the living room table. On such an occasion, she even refused to play games, marveled the mad hermit. Can the balloon be trusted as much as Av? Hyunwoo asked with a squint, but the fortune teller Neuronet pulled out a purple palantir and embarked on a seance in search of the developer's spirit. Hyunwoo was surprised as this was the first time he had seen the source code. Before this, the system had only shown itself through the interface. He squawked at the bright light of the system notifications that threw the orb when it was turned on. The balloon had a firmware change and was now running better and faster. A white-haired android in the guise of a cute girl wiped away non-existent sweat as if she'd unloaded a railroad car. The Palantir worked on the principle of a modem and allowed you to search for the answers you wanted, the android explained. Formulate a question mentally and you'll get the answer. That's the whole instruction, the hermit learned. Time for important questions, Hyunwoo thought, choosing his search words more carefully. Even the little android covered her mouth to keep her non-existent breathing out of the way. The mad hermit recalled how the curse of the tower had been placed on him. Like being separated from dear friends for twelve years. Like being made to go crazy climbing the tower over and over again. Who had locked him in the tower sounded the ultimate question in the hermit's mind. The modem was silent, and Hyun Woo even touched it lightly with his fist to check if it was working or not. The palantir hummed harshly with its cooler, but refused to give out information. Maybe you should tap it to get a better signal. That's what my dad used to do when Hyun Woo wanted to kill the slow modem. The little android could barely contain the mad hermit's rage. As the connect passed, a light discharge on his fingers felt Hyunwoo. Ego was ported inside the modem's hard drive so fast he didn't realize it right away. Communication is one way, stated an unknown voice in violet space. The hazy image of a man flickered ahead as if someone had hidden him. But the feeling was more like that of Av's neural net, just as inanimate. The hermit sensed from the voice. Hyunwoo demanded clarification but the image reminded him that communication is secure and about one way. Find the developer's tower at the source of the bad weather conveyed an image-encrypted message. Then he would know the truth about himself, the image enigmatically said, which annoyed Hyunwoo who wanted immediate answers. The frontiersman must find him, the image told him, for he was the one who had locked him in the tower. Having said that, the image began to fragment as if someone had erased the message they had listened to. Hyunwoo rushed over, was to hold back the escaping information as if he had forgotten that he wasn't in physical space. Guardian, the white-haired girl shouted above him. It seemed that only his consciousness, not his body, had been ported into the modem. The mad hermit rose gradually coming to his senses. But what was he going to do, bringing his hand up for a punch? asked the worried neural network mad hermit and why his cheek hurt. Av replied to him that it just went down after connecting to the modem. Hyunwoo's hunch was confirmed. He was in that place with only his mind. The message left more questions than it answered. What else was the truth associated with it, the hermit recalled. Trying to reconnect again, he inquired, but the modem had gone on perpetual recharge. He seemed to be in a bad mood, the android girl remarked. But Hyunwoo told her that he had something to do. Yeah, and there's one huge question. Who is this crooked developer? Now his target. The creator of the tower. The one who called himself the developer. Whatever the truth was, the mad hermit promised to get to the bottom of it. What's the developer tower? He asked Av to find all the information about it, stroking his head. With that, he was about to deflect, dumping all the system work on the neural network. But she held him back. Did you find it so quickly, he asked. But that wasn't the point. It looks like it's necessary to go immediately worriedly blurted out the girl Neuronet. An illegal conqueror who had already gotten karma climbed to the floor, Av informed him. Taoists are those who practice self-discipline and live off the donations of others. Lazy bums that puff people up with pseudo-philosophy about exaltation and celestials. Usually he didn't hurt anyone, but there were those who took orders to eliminate the hatter looked thoughtfully at the city below. Come to think of it, he didn't know who the outsider was, and he needed to be found. Though tedious, we should just kill everyone, said the pseudo-philosopher fascist. The people below were running and taking cover from the sudden downpour. When a multitude of lightning bolts struck the buildings, ignoring the lightning rods, 
panic rose, and they ran as if they were being attacked by monsters. The Hatter gained celestial karma simply by climbing the tower, became immortal by killing the blue dragon. The media, as usual, went into a frenzy over such a brutal attack. One hour was given to a hat fascist, threatening the residents of the ninth floor of the Matrix. Don't pull, let the outsider come in, he stated into the lens of the video camera. Hyun Woo contacted the association's headquarters, much to the relief of President Qui-Gon. It's embarrassing to admit, but without Kim Hyun Woo, they weren't capable of dealing with illegals, thought the president of the Hunters Association. Sometimes the thought crossed his mind that maybe the world really should be destroyed, he muttered aloud. And they're already living longer than they're allowed to after so many disasters. It looks like Hyun Woo is the only one keeping the world from collapsing, Liam pondered, but he was called away. No matter how strong the enemy was, they only had to have faith in the mad hermit. The Nazi in the hat yawned tiredly. He was waiting at the spot he had just cleared. Time crawled by snail's pace for an immortal slacker. Maybe finish what the non-human in the hat had in mind, but changed his mind. He felt someone's swift approach in the air. What is it he wondered as he watched the veil of clouds and rain break through? There he is, exclaimed the hat monster joyfully. The outsider has arrived, he realized as he spotted a guy in a sports coat riding a bailout stick. Hyun Wu flew, covering his face from the rain. Streams of water soaked his suit and obstructed his view. Some electrician turned off the lights again, and he lunged at the illegal. The hatter saw off his movements with a cheeky smile. He ducked easily, as if becoming a ghost would be more than the hermit realized. The Skywalker can walk on air, the hatter declared of his chits. Hyun Wu barely kept his balance on Rusty, shifting his weight to the other leg. You're smiling, electrician. Let's see how you smile now. The hermit returned the grin and pulled Berserk's inferiority complex out of Hermione's sack. It made even the bum in the hat's testicles clench. Size matters, said the mad hermit cheerfully and knock the bird with a steel rail to the hard ground. Did the bastard slip away? Hyun Wu thought as he surveyed the landing site. No way without compensation, the hermit heard, a voice from beneath the rubble. Not called an outsider for nothing, the illegal bum stated. Not even his stupid hat was harmed, the mad hermit remarked. Exactly right. Just someone has a small sword, the hermit said. And where does such power come from on the ninth floor? Wondered the lazy hatter. You can't kill just like that. You have to cut it up properly and study it, ignored the fascist Hyun Wu. The mad hermit was angry. This illegal was steaming his brains more than before. Hey, Mr. Shortshot, why the hell did you turn off the power in the whole town? Oh, the character of a pervert. Tough luck? Teased the lazy hatter. I hear from a ballet dancer, answered the mad hermit. What an uncouth bumpkin, the hatter returned the hermit's insult. And he can't do anything but women's dances, the hermit said. The hatter got angry and was the first to lose his temper. What does this monkey allow himself, he thought. It's a man's suit, not a woman's dress, the hatter blurted out. Pathetic excuses, it's just a hobby. Everyone has one, the hermit remarked. That he hadn't heard of the ancient Taoists, the hatter was angry. Oh, are those lazy bums from kung fu movies still flying cables? Hyun Wu asked. The hatter blurted out and Hyun Wu honestly admitted that he didn't go to school. After all, his parents died a long time ago, and since childhood he had to work to survive. The hermit said and kicked the illegal intruder with all his might. The blow hit the target well, and the hatter flew off again. I thought celestials are known everywhere and revered everywhere, but here it's just rednecks, shook off the imaginary Taoist. I'll have to teach the mind who the immortals are, said the man in the woman's dress in serious cheeks, thought the hermit. I beat women too the hermit admitted and pulled out a bailing stick. The hatless hatter struggled to hold back the blow with his sword scabbard and responded with a powerful chopping attack from above, but the mad hermit dodged and immediately got a counterattack from the hatter who fought without taking out his blade. They exchanged a couple punches as Hyun Wu was surrounded by clones that the girlfriends had brought, he asked the hatter. The technique is not new, uses who only wants it, resented the hermit. He was surrounded and mobbed, as is proper in a fair one-on-one -on -one fight. Whoever didn't bring friends was at fault. With a powerful attack under himself, Hyun Woo broke free from the encirclement and soared into the sky.
To create doppelgangers, you have to read the Hokage's secret scroll, Hyun Wu heard. A blue Dao mandala lit up behind his back. The enemy had used an unknown skill. The restraining magic of the chains broke free from the mandala behind her back. Will there be no bazooka? Hyun Wu asked angrily. The enemy had many abilities. Two dragons, the Ain Node and the Cathode, explained the illegal electrical engineer without a hat. Now how to close the electric target, then we'll see who's a baller, gloated the lazy Taoist. Hyun Wu short-circuited heavily between the dragons, one surrounding with water, the other hitting with electricity. The invigorating shocks crept under her skin, bringing back recently forgotten feelings. The sparks decomposed the water into ions, and a hydrogen explosion occurred. Learn chemistry well, kids, thought the Taoist slacker to himself. What choked the immortal as the cloud of vapor dissipated? Have met various electricians before. Thanks for removing the circuits, thanked the mad hermit. And now it's time to end the dance. Hyun Wu was angry. The absurd calligraphic kick of his foot knocked the Taoist to the ground again. The winged hermit landed at the crash site of the Skywalker. Good thing he didn't die right away, the illegal Taoist said. The outsider needed to be alive. Clones have a small sword too, the mad hermit asked. Discharges of red lightning burned the air around the clones. Hyun Wu shattered the inferior illusion technique once. Why didn't you tell me you had a welding license? The Taoist resented. And why speak when you can show at once? Replied the mad hermit. Just as I'm about to weld all the holes, Hyun Wu punched the Taoist. And who gave him a grade? The hatter gritted his teeth. The outsider was pulling a fifth, if not higher. Birds flying low to rain the mad hermit noticed. A few drops fell on his face. I hope it's really raining, horrified the hermit. Rusty, saddled with a stick by the mad hermit to climb higher. The clones certainly wouldn't have been able to drop that much. So the rain was real, and something was coming, the hermit realized. In the midst of the heavy downpour, the Taoist's caustic chuckle rang out. Now we'll see whose kite is longer, the mad hermit heard. Where he hid the boa constrictor, the mad hermit sensed something amiss. Needing to stop the hatter as quickly as possible, Hyun Wu changed the trajectory of the bailout stick. A hail of lightning from all directions fell on the hermit as the Taoist recounted his boring biography. Hyun Wu extended his staff again and tried to brush off the pesky narcissist. The point of his long life of waiting for the water to flow under all the rocks, he gathered mana at one point. The mad hermit missed and lost his footing, began to fall. A ball of lightning of enormous size exploded in front of the hermit. We need to finish off the illegal installer before he shuts everyone down, thought the hermit falling down. The distance kept increasing between them, but he had a disadvantageous position from below. Suddenly to himself, the hermit took quite a bit of damage. The immortal hatter who lost his hat stood in the sky and gathered more strength. Super mutant mode. <laughs> Activated! The Taoist smiled, starting the second phase of the battle. He drew his sword, and his hands and feet became chicken feet. Hyun Wu made a superhero landing and came to his senses. The chicken dragon Dao had already attacked him from close range. He accelerated noticeably that Hyun Wu could barely keep up with the mutant. They crossed their guns, shooting sparks in all directions. The electric arc swept over the insane hermit himself, and who promised to show a master class in seamless welding, welded a chicken hybrid with a discharge. I'll be right there, the hermit replied, but I'll just put in a thicker electrode. But the chicken doze slashed not weakly at the lightning bolt, stunning the hermit. He spat blood. It was no joke. The second phase of the battle was making itself felt. No one gave a rest. The chicken douse pounced on top. They fought in streams of electrical discharges, jumping here and there. The mad hermit took a lot of heat for every blow. Chernobyl bastard, he motioned desperately to the Taoist. But the chicken's foot pressed against his chest with the arcing discharges of multiple bolts of lightning. It's not working, the hermit gritted his teeth, and yet he had defeated a fifth-rate electrician. He jumped back sharply to break the distance between them and buy some time. The hermit would have died many times over if he hadn't undergone master electrophoresis enhanced training. A douse with the strength of a chicken dragon couldn't be killed so easily, stated the hat, knocking out a spark. In the pouring rain, he gathered the lightning bolts into a tight bundle, raising a chicken's foot. A torrent of encouraging discharges of high power descended upon the mad hermit. 
Each raindrop contained lightning, and the discharges had more power than before, the hermit realized. Taking out a bailing stick, he unfurled it in the manner of an umbrella to keep the rain off his body. Mimicking a helicopter, mocked the chicken leg at Hyunwoo. A helicopter will not save you from a relaxing electric massage, chortled chicken foot, as the hermit was chilled to the bone. Hyunwoo was in distress. He couldn't even use Av's bailout room and sneak away to her place. Well, said the lazy Taoist in the world of electrical engineering, has many more thrills for the hermit. The massage worked perfectly, completely relaxed the whole body, stated the Taoist, evaluating the results of his work. So great that the client is still conscious, a great consumable for testing, heard Hyun Wu's voice from above. As a thank you for choosing our services, scoffed the Taoist, I will show the final technique of full electrolysis. The coming of the chicken dragon, the Taoist said, and a large face appeared in the sky. A suit of lightning bolts lashed out at the defenseless hermit. He grabbed the bailout stick in the manner of a lightning rod and squeezed tighter. It was unlikely to help. But what else could he do? The Makaka King's voice came from the bailout stick. Hyun Wu didn't immediately realize where he had loaded to. The battlefield with the chicken dao had disappeared. Instead, he found himself in blurry mountains with a couple of pine trees, obviously in an incomplete level of the matrix. The wounds were gone, too, the hermit noticed. If post-mortem had happened, he thought when he was called. Couldn't strangle the boa constrictor dummy, said the monkey king. What are you hatching? You were the first to start measuring who has the longest and the right. You said so, sarcastic macaque. Oh, there are monkeys in the forest, too, remarked the hermit of the macaca king. Yunwu asked where they were, and the macaque wondered what definition to give to the special level of the matrix where they were. He doesn't know himself, and he's being clever, the hermit paused. The situation was about the same as with Master Electrician. Consciousness connected to the secret level of the matrix, with a separate processor that ran faster, and that was why Hyun Wu hadn't died yet. And what next? The mad hermit spat on the cold stones. Pretty soon he will die from the chicken dragon's final blow, realized Hyun Wu. So will you give strength? He asked the Makaka King. Why all of a sudden? No, of course, teased the cheeky monkey. Just a break between rounds, it's nice to watch a man being mutilated by a lizard, laughed the macaque. Now let's see if there is pain in this world, raged the mad hermit. The monkey, the zookeeper, the illegal menagerie, recalled to macaque, everything Hyun Wu had told him before. And now you come and ask me for power, but you do it without respect, monkey said in a picture voice. In principle, it is possible. If you ask nicely, I'll take pity. The talking monkey gritted his teeth. The boa constrictor has to be strangled somehow, Makaka said. The hermit seriously wondered if it was worth it or not. Maybe he should just quietly weld the monkey. Forget it, he decided when Makaka was ready to make concessions. The one immediately squealed how so, but the hermit waved it away. He didn't need that power. In the end, what could an already dead monkey do? Even take out his power. Hey. A viper would definitely be strangled. The Makaka king couldn't stand the ridicule. You can't prove it if you don't show it, said the mad hermit. Show me how to strangle a python, suggested Hyunwoo, to the macaque. The monkey king realized what a cunning trap the little man had driven him into, and he could not refuse his words. So brave, and now head in the bushes, asked the mad hermit. What a nasty homo sapiens, the monkey king thought to himself. A rare bastard, he said to the hermit. Life is like that excused the quickly demented hermit. The image of the chicken dragon was rapidly approaching the helpless target. The emo Taoist was already anticipating the reward he would be given for the outsider's head. But what is that going on down there, where the dragon should already be atomizing the frontiersmen into atoms? The Taoist asked himself. Red lightning bolts burned through the image of the chicken dragon, meaning the border guard was still alive. A supernova star lit up below so brightly flashed the point where the hermit stood. The star exploded, dispersing all remnants of the chicken darken. The snake had been strangled. The emo Taoist was horrified. How was that possible, he thought. And the coil of Tesla under him did not think to subside, continued to send discharges, until a mad hermit in a monkey king costume jumped out in front of him. The snake has been strangled. We will strangle the lone chicken, smiled the hermit. The monkey king saw off the insolent guest, 
who disappeared without even saying thank you. Well, they had a quick contract and a pretty lucrative one at that, Macaque pondered. He thought it would be possible to extract favorable terms on pain of death due to time constraints. But the hermit is either stupid and therefore not afraid of anything, or really reckless, Macaque recalled. On the other hand, for his purposes, just fine, Monkey decided. If Kim Hyun Woo is really the outsider that he is thought to be, he's a monkey's pact. He looked around the vacant lot he lived in, a reward for being an illegal once already. A bare rock, that's the whole apartment. But maybe with the crazy hermit and the rights will work out, Monkey thought. And he was still talking about dresses and himself. Rain Man was horrified. The mad hermit sped past as if riding a rocket. Wait, shouted after him Ima Boy. Don't, Uncle Uncle! The rocket broke through the dense veil of clouds and flew farther away. High enough to ask the mad hermit at the bailout stick. He thought back to the plan they had worked out together with the macaque. Let the blue dragon chicken strength be great, but not to this extent, Macacus said. This one is definitely a cheat, Monkey said. But there it is, exclaimed the hermit. Hyun Woo shrank the bailout stick and swung it around before the Emodows caught up with him. He smashed the electrical panel that powered the blue dragon chicken. Do you think you can win now? The Emodow asked. Why, yes, answered the mad hermit with a question to a question. He had obtained the Monkey King's golden armor with good insulation. And now he could not fear the chicken dow's lightning bolts. Ugly, he lamented after shutting off the arc welding. The cheater needs to be set straight, the hermit swung the stick. By now Hyunwoo could already crowd the fidgety emo dow. A knife would still be fencing, the hermit scoffed. Now he had more, advantages again. Frankly speaking, the emo Taoist was good with a sword and moved very fast, the hermit noticed. But compared to a fifth-rate electrician, his movements were mediocre. The crazy asshole has spent a hundred years honing his swordsmanship on a stealthy level. No one can compare to Chong Ma. He sent the arrogant Emo Dao flying. A stick massage is as good as an electric massage, the hermit said. This is not a massage, but a real flogging. Pain is free. You don't have to worry about it, the mad hermit replied. Emo Dao literally exploded with anger. Hyun Woo clenched his eyes as the stone shard scratched his face. Now let's see who's the chief masseur and electrician in the neighborhood. The emo Dao's took off and sparked again. Show, again, a downpour of emo Dao from the sky. Hyun Woo was upset. With his finger, he beckoned the discharges and clouds as if to a lightning rod. Chicken Dragon's power was still with the Taoist, and he threw all the lightning bolts at the hermit. The discharges covered Hyun Woo. In his armor with good insulation, he could not fear heavy breakdowns. He smiled. If two are equal, the one with the better defense wins, he remembered the ancient principle of the tower. What? The emo Taoist didn't realize noticing the massage stick near his face. It was the third time the hermit had brought the lazy Taoist down from heaven to earth. One should always learn. Thanks for the informative lecture, said the hermit. Now let's test all his knowledge on the teacher, smiled the mad student. Chicken Dragon Force, thank you for the new technique. Hyun Wu released all the mana. He pinned the Taoist lest he suddenly escape with the Demonololi technique. Black Rooster Dragon, shouted Hyun Wu, infusing absurdity power into the technique. For such a massage, the emo Dao was definitely not ready and panicked. He ridiculously put out his sashimi knife to defend himself, but the Black Chicken Dragon swallowed him whole like a nut. As usual, the mad hermit stood in the midst of ashes and devastation. The special pelt monkey armor itself came off of him when it ran out of mana. The hermit flopped on his back after a hard massage. Time to use the cheats is up. Good thing my arms and legs are in place, thought the hermit. Before I pass out, time to check the artifacts, he said, and looked at the blue orb in his hands. But the information was even more classified than before, the hermit marveled. Screw it. It's still a pawn shop to carry an android to an appraiser of stolen goods. In the meantime, we can sleep and wait for the evacuation team. The hermit relaxed and snored loudly right in the middle of the muddy swamp that the city around him had become. Three days later, Agent Rosa saw him off from the sanitarium. Straight home, he asked the hermit. Where's the first one? Hyun Woo asked. Rose smiled slyly and said that Mi Ryong was busy, although she was the one who gave her the job. It's been a while since I've been to the guild. It's time to clean up the mess so that the useful goons don't relax, the hermit decided. The second Koshkojan humbly took a seat beneath the mad emperor. 
Ta smiled triumphantly. Now she was alone with the master. While that girl is gone, we need to seize the moment. Agent Rosa's ears perked up. She had specifically told the driver to take her time, and now she could stay with the master longer. Or maybe even dream the girl when the mad teacher said he was going to leave. I will when I get back, the hermit replied to the bewildered girl. Just took and slipped away, could not reconcile with such a turn of Agent Rosa, not already to another, she was horrified by her thoughts. A mute question, and that now rang out in her mind, the whole plan to the cat's tail. Just circling the neighborhood, gave the order, Agent Rosa, to the driver, once a girl decided something, there was no stopping her. She'll be sure to take her time with the master one-on-one. -on -one. The android appraiser was fidgeting with the hard drive dropped from the emodaus. But the assessment did nothing, even with the white-haired girl's hacking skill. Apparently there was nothing to be done, the mad hermit realized. The thing might as well lay down. What about the developer and his secret apartment, he asked the neural network. This secret level is at the very top of the level tree, Av answered him. What else is the top of the tree, wondered the mad hermit. The developer has put together a special level, but it's not clear for what purpose, the android girl reported. Just need to go up, resulted crazy Ochelnik, but the problem is where this top added android AV. The place in the hierarchy of matrix levels is known, but where he is physically in the memory is difficult to understand, the girl explained. Hyun Wu, who didn't go to school and didn't know the slightest technical details, just tell me what to do and where to go, thought he. It'll take a little time to figure it all out, calmed him down android girl. He remembered the developer's vague encrypted message. It would not be easy to understand. Wait a minute. A great guess occurred to him. The hermit jumped up. What if one used Chicken Dragon's energy source and Master Bonsai's portmanteau, they should be enough, Hyun Wu suggested. With that, he walked back and was immediately surrounded by the scent of rose-scented perfume. The blooming girl smiled welcomingly. Why is it taking so long to get there? He got upset, to which the girl replied that it was just traffic jams. She gently leaned her head on his shoulder. He could feel her shampoo. She seems to be in a good mood, as the asocial hermit always failed to read people. Maybe she just likes riding in the car, wondered the goofy hermit. The king has arrived, fall down, Hyun Woo said, and opened the doors without knocking. How unexpected to catch a couple in each other's hot embrace. BTW, smiled the cat, but the mad hermit still didn't understand what these people were up to. And when it started, he asked his best friend that he started dating a slave girl, five minutes after figuring it all out. Before sending Hyun Woo to the association, the cautious Shuken said, After a battle with the illegal fat lion, Anya supported him, the humble hunter said. Hyun Woo looked at both of them carefully. He basically didn't care what the slaves did as long as they worked. This isn't an interrogation, wondered the hermit at the reaction of the confused men. He looked sternly at slave Anya she had been acting about lately. Still, she has a dark past in the costume gang, and Shay Ken, his dear comrade, the hermit pondered. The past is in the past, however, he decided, but it sounded like a lord's blessing. But there are cozier places, the tactless hermit wondered, which made the couple shy. Master, the slave turned. There is a contract for him, she said. Agent Rosa immediately perked up her ears as soon as she heard it was a contract to advertise Abibus suits. Master clutched the girl's hand in his while Hyun Woo listened to the terms of the contract. Money, money, and more money, Agent Rosa explained lucidly the benefits, but she was clearly not interested in them. We should definitely go, the girl urged him fervently. She did it so insistently that even a couple in love were surprised. A few days later, Shiken was on the podium at a press conference. Cutie. So Yon was watching the broadcast in the dressing room and was waiting for a friend. Good performance, she encouraged the always reserved Shiken. She did a good job, too. He returned his thanks to the cute Seo Yeon. After the Border Control Guild forced Ares out and took their dungeons, the Korean Hunters Association began to come to life like after a rainstorm. Hyun Woo didn't break the price and now hunters could develop in low-level dungeons. The guilds of friends also acceded to the hermit's terms and formed a cartel, but agreed not to jack up prices. So far, there are no problems with profits and competitors, and none are foreseen, concluded a cautious Shekin. But, 
he thought, and got distracted. Something was confusing him. Isn't it Alice the Fox? He asked the cute Seo Yeon. And what is it chewing on? Snacking on cat treats, So Yeon said, scratching the fox on her lap. Cute little vixen, really, she said to a cautious Shea Ken. Don't worry, said Baby. So young, she is litter box trained and rides in a carrier. She Ken hesitated. From afar can be mistaken for a cat, of course, but is it normal? Still, the creature is half human, half fox, tensed Shu Ken. The mad hermit was put in interesting poses and filmed. But what it meant, he never realized how it had come to this. The dummies in the studio are silk, the antisocial hermit remarked. A job is a job, he reassured himself. If he had signed up, he had to do it. But the photo shoot for the tracksuits evolved into something else entirely unnoticed. What's with the flowery poses? perplexed the mad hermit. The two devoted disciples enjoyed the process and waited patiently for him. Oh yes, gleamed their eyes with a conspiratorial look. Good job, praised the hermit photographer when they were done. I'll get the suit, said the suddenly awakened mob boss. I'll take my leave now. The hermit waved goodbye. Not only was the money given, but he also squeezed out the suit. The hermit rejoiced. As Mi Ryong returned, the peace was gone. Even a simple ride in the limo felt like being between a hammer and anvil. Scylla and Charybdis were arguing over who would sit next to the master, their shouts ringing in their ears. Tomorrow, the portmanteau will charge into the labyrinth to open the chicken dragon's hard drive, the hermit thought to himself. I'll definitely go alone, he decided. After only a glance at the two beasts, if I should get a third one for balance. Late at night, the photographer was processing the images. The shoot was a success. The silent shadow of the dragon empress' personal guard grew from behind. Mistress's will is law, whatever she asks for, pulled out the guard's pocket knife. The monsters were raging on the fourteenth floor of the labyrinth as they heard a scream. Rusty flew at the runny faces with a long stick. All died quickly and almost painlessly, with a single blow from the hermit. You're holding the extension stick wrong, grumbled the annoying Macacus. Now they had a permanent connection. It was so quiet the hermit resented. Now we have a contract, Monkey declared, and the stick must be used properly. Learn the art of the killing stick, Makak said. But when Hyunwu replied, well, you could always try out new skills on dummy monsters, the hermit decided. Doesn't know anything at all, Makak lamented. Hasn't even heard of the principle of borrowing power, he asked Hyunwu. Illegals borrow strength from those of higher rank, but if the difference is too great, it's useless. The power can't be used, explained Makak. Bullshit, the hermit replied to this and pissed off the hairy ape. Bald dumb monkey, without skills with a stick, the monkey king's strength won't show itself, yelled the hermit Macacus. A digging stick is useless in the hands of a dumb macaque, and useful in the hands of an intelligent one, which is not clear, wailed the king macaque. All right, I'm tired of listening to the monkey's inane squeals, hermit. Macaque did have a good handle on his staff, combining punch combinations well. To try everything out, the mad hermit went down to the level below, where the monsters were at least suitable for training. I wonder where in the contact is prescribed mutt on the interlocutor, thought Hyun Wu, listening to the endless grumbling of Makaka. It was so quiet before. Why are you talking now? he asked the monkey king. What do you mean to piss off, Hyun Wu? Was already thinking of cracking the stick, a.k.a. hard drive harder. But just in time, the stupid labyrinth mobs showed up. Crocodile face came up. Macaque suggested that the hermit not chop at full speed, but learn basic bailout stick techniques. Okay, let's begin, said the Shaolin hermit and swung his staff. The first crazy catwoman took the throne in the manner she built for the hermit. This throne she had made smaller and not as luxurious at his request, but now the two of them wouldn't fit in here together. But on the other hand, you can sit on your knees, the student dreamed but she was interrupted with a report by a guard. That's the one, the innocent maiden blushed pink. She almost fainted from the excess of feeling. The hermit was too good. Don't peek, said the Empress of Dragons, embarrassed, to the experienced demon Loli. Why not, since that's the case, asked the ancient priestess of the Loli. I'm leaving, I'm leaving, the contract girl dutifully bowed out. She could still see everything from the inside. The embarrassed cat reopened, cautiously uncovered her treasure and sprawled on her throne in the pink drool of a passionate, innocent maiden. She launched into lengthy, girlish, fantasy-soaked reveries. 
They had nothing to do with reality, but that didn't stop the maiden from dreaming. A little more, and the girl would not have been brought back from the dream world. She pressed the folder of photos right to her heart, as if she were hugging a teacher. I would have stayed on the throne drooling, but I heard a noise. Who is it that came crawling in uninvited? The first student asked angrily. The one who doesn't need an invitation, replied an equally defiant second student. The masked warriors still posed a problem for her, so it was best not to put up a fight, Agent Rosa decided. You came to stretch your buns, so can we help, asked the Empress the guest. Her buns are perfectly fine, trim, and smooth, but here she is for the deal, said the second student. The master likes mine better, Agent Rosa smiled and got down to business. It's about the picture she's holding, Rosa said, and pulled out the exact same gray envelope in typography. She gave her rival a sly glance and pulled out the contents. Bug, the dragon empress wailed, but Rose stopped her. Not only did Miriang come to borrow a photo before publication, but Rosa showed up for it. The mishap is that now everyone had their own set of photos, and Rose showed up for a fair exchange. Haven't, she guessed, the first catwoman, changing from anger to mercy. Rosa took the photographs out of the envelope and beckoned them like a jewel. These pictures don't you want, spread her web agent Rose. Saliva flowed treacherously from the corner of the delicate lips of the first candidate for concubine. The Monkey King watched the mad hermit's progress through his live feed. Hyun Woo's actions impressed even the experienced Makaka, but he still had his doubts. The hermit effortlessly removed the valuable crocodile skins and ended it all with a pathos-driven finishing blow through which the power of absurdity could flow. Can this bald monkey handle it? The hairy monkey king asked himself. At first, the actions of the mad hermit were clumsy, too reliant on force. But as he used it, he got better and better at sensing the distance and the rate of extension of the bailout stick. The essence of the bailout stick is that it can be both a melee and ranged weapon. With a wide grip, you can wield the stick like a spear, shortening like a dagger in close combat, quickly switching between the two. It all depends on how to hold the bailout stick, and so the art is hard to learn and takes time, Makak pondered. Hyun Wu crumbled the monster meat one by one while holding the dough rolling pin correctly. In an instant, the hermit extended his telescopic baton and drove it into the muzzles of the tall reptiles. With only a couple of grumpy Makaka's advice, the hermit quickly got the hang of it. The kid is definitely a genius, realized the monkey king after all the observations. The hermit pulled his shoulders, the unfamiliar movement and exercise making them a little stiff. Training with Electric had not gone to waste and was still helping him learn new skills. His entire training consisted of endless jousting, and he learned those lessons well. In battle, every step and movement is important. You should think about good things and kill whoever you are ordered to, remembered the hermit. But Hyun Wu had studied more than just that, the style of attacks, the ways of all-round defense, in endless variations over a hundred years. But precepts also solved a lot of things, greatly reducing the debt of the path of learning. Any fighting technique is now his forte, said Hyun Wu in the middle of the mountain of crocodile corpses. Cheater, Makaka thought to himself, just very diligent, the mad honors student thought to himself. Will there be more instruction? The hermit asked the monkey boastfully, and muttered that that was enough for now. Mangaka's portmanteau was almost discharged, assessed the mad hermit. No need to use the bailout stick anymore, he asked Makak. And he agreed, Hyun Wu had mastered the weapon sufficiently. How about using the digging stick in conjunction with the chicken dragon force? Monkey King asked, thinking, Hyun Wu replied. But why did Makak ask, he thought instead of answering. What that could mean, the mad hermit didn't understand. A disappointment awaited at home. Mangaka's porta potty didn't work on the chicken dragon ball. The power of the chicken dragon could not be used, and will not be used for the time being, Monkey Face clarified. I had traveled to the labyrinth for nothing. The hermit was upset, tasting the deception. It seems the master is angry. I will come back later, said meekly slave Anya. He got a contract again, this time from Rita's suits. And with pretty good terms, too, the slave girl reported. Two sly cats were standing right there. If the hermit could read faces, he would have noticed the first one blushing. 
It wasn't a bad offer, the hermit appreciated, but he didn't look interested. Just say no, he threw away the contract. In his spare time from his main tasks, he preferred to loiter. There was enough money without that. He leaned back on the back of the sofa. Why work when there was so much slave labor around, the hermit thought. Isn't it wonderful to do a master photo shoot? Agent Rose smiled sweetly, squeezing her eyes shut. Again, resented the hermit. But he was gently and decisively taken aback. It was not at all necessary, quipped the apprentice. Such an investment would definitely benefit the master. There is no such thing as a lot of money. The apprentice stood her ground. He was lucky he didn't see Miriang's face. That's someone who could give away their plan head on. What do you think, first Koshkojena? He suddenly distressed the student with a question. The woman hesitated to answer, but the goofy hermit still didn't read the atmosphere. Pictures are good, squeezed the tomato-red innocent maiden. These two are conspiring, suspiciously, even more so than when they are rivals, the hermit thought. And not so long ago, we were like cat and dog, fighting about everything. They look like they've become friends. The mad father came to an illogical conclusion. At the same instant he received the system notification, Av whipped out an invitation to him, just in time for him to slip away from the heavy questions of the persistent female students. But what a mess! He looked around the room and the drooling android girl. Get up, you digital slob! He pressed the hibernation exit button. Just worked up, the girl said when she woke up. Where does all this food come from? The hermit asked, and learned that digital food can be endlessly replicated in this dimension. Convenient logic, the hermit appreciated the benefits. Might as well move here, he thought, but wondered aloud if he had managed to find out anything about the developer. The secret level on the twelfth floor, with significance, pronounced the extracted information the android. The twelfth, the topmost, recalled the hermit's meager knowledge of the tower. The search designates it as the original developer's apartment, but what that means, the hermit will have to figure out for herself, she said. But how to get there? asked a hermit with topographical cretinism. A blind man's compass, he suggested. Trouble, he saw the android's concerned face, but she shook her head, it would be fine. But there's some but, the hermit asked the perpetually slowing system. Time, said the girl, to complete so many levels you have to spend a lot of time. The transition could take a couple years, the Av girl sadly stated after all the calculations. It's too much, he immediately dismissed that option, the mad hermit. Still, he's the only frontiersman on his level of the Matrix and can't leave it for long. Of course, there are capable mad students. They can fight the weak illegals. But if, like last time, an illegal conqueror shows up, there will be trouble. The pressure, the chicken dragon, was still fresh in the hermit's mind. The floor can't be left to these two, Yunwu decided. Try looking for more loophole, asked android girl, crazy cheater. Denied, no loopholes, replied the white-haired neural network. Is it really that hard, burst out the mad hermit, smashing the virtual furniture, the little girl barely saving her pizza. It was a nasty thing, Hyun Woo resented. Each time this quest required more effort, time, and dedication. After a bit of thinking he had a good guess, there was someone to ask. He quickly jumped to his feet and changed from anger to mercy. After all, there's a ponytailed guy who knows the Matrix like the back of his hand. The white-haired squirrel reached for the delicious food again. The monkey king scratched thoughtfully behind his ear. Hyunwoo waited patiently for Makakas to deign to answer one simple, direct question about how to get to the twelfth level of the Matrix quickly. Is it pouring or what? asked a cheeky macaque asking for details. With nothing to occupy himself with, the mad hermit asked sharply, Macaque asked a lot of questions. In any case, what he can say about the Matrix is limited to the system. He jumped out of the tree. Even if he says so, the system may not let that information through. Don't pull the cat out of the bag. Tell it like it is. The hermit couldn't stand it. Okay, took pity on the chatty Macaca at the very top of the Matrix tree. His voice was drowned in the white noise of the interference, so that the hermit could not make out a single word. The foam squeaked nastily against the glass, and the hermit squeezed his eyes shut. Macaque sighed with a look. They told the fool, and he didn't believe it. He beckoned the hermit to the sandy ground and drew a line. 
This time, blurred not only the audio signal but also the visual perception, the system saw his thoughts as processes and filtered out those that were undesirable. As if he'd been drinking methyl alcohol, the hermit rubbed his eyes. So there's no way to find out, Hyunwoo said annoyed. Some simple, not particularly important information can be learned, Makakis pawed. You can answer the question about the twelfth level, chuckled the Makaka king. Come here, baboon-tailed, the mad hermit was angry. Let it go, the manganese lord thought. Whoever he was, he had a high level of access in the system. He had no trouble observing Hyun Wu inside the Makaki level. Hatter Emo Dao destroyed, just a borderline outsider that got his power reasoned aloud to the lord. Fine, the manganese lord is satisfied. The border guard created to check, now becoming an outsider, kills the illegals who passed it. What wonderful karma, the Lord rejoiced. But his servant was not pleased with this development. Leave the outsider alone, asked the servant monk of the Lord. He has gathered so much. I even wonder how much more karma and skills he can absorb, this guy answered the Lord. So let's give him some time, he decided. How many bananas do you want? Asked the mad hermit, surprised. I've said a thousand times, a kilogram every day, Macaque insisted. And the ass won't crack raged the mad hermit. He doesn't know the matrix with infinite palms. After haggling at half the agreed-upon amount, Macaque finally told him how long it would take to get to the top of the matrix tree. The journey will take almost two years, require many quests and a few other things. Illegal has a ninth-floor assignment to complete, Macaque answered evasively. But the rest of the data was again rubbed out by the system's censorship. Say that again, the hermit asked, and Macaque figured out how else to convey the meaning. Each level of the Matrix has its own peculiarities, he continued. But can't the time be shortened, the hermit asked. He has to protect all its residents as a frontiersman and can't be away for two years. King Macacus wondered if he was selling his precious data cheaply. Cough up the moochers, where is the secret cheater's wicket, pleaded the mad hermit. King Macacus smiled. Who would he be if he didn't know all the sneaky loopholes the Dury Cloud had been heard of? No matter how much running he did, he still returned to the guild, the loyal cats taking up waiting positions left and right. The slave girl stammered again about the contract, and a bouquet bloomed in the room. But the mad hermit refused, and the flower bed immediately wilted. The hermit gnawed insensitively on his waffles while surfing the net. With the Dury Cloud, he could go up the Matrix catalog much faster and reformat a couple of hard drives in the developer's brain that locked him in the training level. Girls, the mad hermit remembered his faithful disciples. And seeing the wilted flower garden, even the tactless hermit had a twinge of something. To cheer them up, the emperor pulled out his cell phone. He called to slave Anna, watching their reaction. The cats perked up and asked me to send him a contract to shoot for a commercial. The girls flashed with joy and beauty again. Even a dullard would get the point, the hermit realized. And so, he turned to the mad disciples, who did not even hide their joy. I need to get something, asked the mad emperor, his minions. The first catwoman is at your service, sir, nodded Mi Ryong. The head apprentice is ready to execute. Just order the head, thumped Agent Rosa's chest. Catch my drift, said the mad emperor. Sometimes it's good to have servants, he thought. A new illegal was prowling the levels of the Matrix, got the hermit system notified. Where do they get them from? They've already run out of cemetery space, Hyun Wu said angrily. Again, to fight with all sorts of small things fell into apathy, hermit, for such illegals, not even rewarded already. Ride it all on horseback, the mad hermit decided. No one would interfere with his rest. Here comes the vacation, thought the goblin strung on the spade. Only between revivals he could be said to be resting. And so no pension or vacation pay. Slavery within a system where you are just fodder for the horses. The ninth floor rumbled with an illegal tale. He took a long time to snicker and sputter vile saliva before leaving the labyrinth. Bouncing in at last, the pedal-powered polite hermit from the lounge area said hello. Tell me your number, I'll bet on you at the races, the hermit asked politely. What's the small-minded one, the centaur miscarriage asked, jabbing his stick in the hermit's direction. So you have not been given yet, and you have a passport. How do you want to come in, cattle, or humanoid? Asked the border guard. Whatever. The mutant stomped his hoof, he said to the border guard. No documents means we'll write it down as servalat, the border guard decided. You've got to be kidding me, 
rumbled the unintelligible Przewalski's horse on the mini-map. Didn't they teach you how to behave at the border? wondered the polite border guard officer. It means the responsible border guard, Hyunwu, is tired of lying on the dock. And dragged the horse's croup or chest into the midsection of his mysterious anatomy. The horse has plowed a deep furrow without a plow after such a blow. I'd rather be racing, thought the half-horse. What a monster at some ninth level. We need to urgently turn on the cheats, thought Polkanya, and turned on the fortune teller. Why he's got his eyes on the systemic trajectories of the future. The inverse centaur shrank back in fear, looking through all the available quest options. Everywhere there was a dash and the word death. Only for sausage, and as you thought to ride, hooves are not enough. No back like a centaur to ride, said the hermit. The question is fast or slow, how will you die, asked the mad hermit. Hyun Wu read yet another flattering review of his inconsequential exploits. It was worth relaxing two loyal students broke in to report on the completion of the quest. The mad emperor discreetly praised both of them, the cats purring contentedly. A pipe with for smoking ganjubas read the hermit's status plate. The necklace is part of a big and bold plan, so Hyunwoo smiled. I will be when I return, the hermit scrambled, leaving his faithful students behind again. I'll be quick this time, he said, and wrapped the tube in Mangaka's portmanteau. Agent Rosa was surprised. This was the first time she had seen this ability of the teacher. Master, the dragon empress sighed languidly. When he gently put his arm around her shoulders and leaned in slightly as if he wanted to say something, she couldn't take her ruby eyes off him. He had the courage to steal a young maiden's first kiss. His lips approached slowly, and his breath stung the skin on her face. She closed her eyes, completely dissolved in his embrace, gave herself over to the heat in her chest. Cutie. So Yun dropped her phone after reading all that. She scoured the internet until she hit clickbait and read a fan story about a teacher and a disciple. At first, she thought it was a novel, but it turned out to be a snotty drama, but about friends she knew. But what a suspicious content horrified tiny Seo Yon, who could have written such a thing. The always cautious Shuken knocked, entered the room without hearing an answer, and almost died. Cutie, so young, didn't know what to say, and as her friend was coming around, he misbehaved, asked Shuken. Hyun Wu had infiltrated another secret level. This time, a forest in the mountains, he noticed. There was no mistake, so it just needed a good search, the hermit decided, and jumped up to look around in case he noticed something. But what is this pissed-off mad hermit? What a stupid level. The forest and the mountains are a solid wall of impenetrable forest and nothing of importance. Already falling, he saw the cave. It was already more like a focal point. Performing the superhero landing that it's never too late to practice, he headed towards the cave making their way through the woods at breakneck speed. Until I'm at the edge of a strange well, no other objects nearby, so it's definitely needed. The hermit jumped in. Good thing the passage wasn't deep. After treading through the cave for a bit, he saw the light again and marveled. In the breach grew a huge branching tree that looked like a willow. Who is he, the plan is, the voice of a local resident asked him, and took a proper drag on his pipe. Now that's a great level. Bushes are there. And Ganjubas thought the hermit. The great Kuretz Gashishin, the hermit recognized without difficulty, Kuretz Dason, called the full name of the hidden level owner. Use within reasonable limits, but who will you be yourself? Kuretz lazily asked the hermit. Hyun Wu replied that he had come for the cloud of Duri that the monkey king had bequeathed to him. Okay, Kuretz Gashishin answered him without even turning in his direction. It is clear. Again followed a leisurely lazy answer, which finally pissed off the impatient hermit. He was already thinking of giving the native a smack, but he decided to answer suddenly. But before getting to the dope, Gashishin warned him. And again, he took another savory drag from his pipe, his brains clearly drugged from the stupefaction. The hermit was angry. How is the younger Kuretz Gashishin, or rather brother Monkey King? Dason asked. The fool, he said, after hearing the story of Makak, who had fallen at the hands of the hermit, and now contracted with him, still wanted to climb the tree of the Matrix. And whereas the bailout stick asked Kuretz Gashishin, and the hermit admitted that he was not with himself at the moment. Mangaka's portmanteau only allows you to connect to one server at a time. You can't take a second one with you, Kuretz realized. 
The Monkey King has already climbed the tower and not alone. What does that mean? The hermit asked. Heard of the seven Kurtzes? Dason answered the question with a question. Seven strong yukai, companions of the Monkey King, Kuretz explained. At this point, none of them are climbing the Matrix Tree, except for the goofy Monkey King, of which there is now a remote server left. What do they do then? The border guard asked. Do they do nothing? Just snoozing and smoking hookahs in those dreary shards of the Matrix, explained Koretz Hashishin. But why did he give up illegal tourism himself? The hermit asked. There is one obvious truth, he realized, Gashishin said. No matter how high they get, it's impossible to fully regain all the karma and authority in the system. Especially them, that guy, muttered Gashishin cryptically and took another drag. That's it. Koretz made it clear that the character's third-party dialogue about the lore of the world was complete. If the Monkey King is still fighting, it's a good thing, Koretz yawned lazily. The hermit sighed. They always cut off stories in the middle. But now that they're done, let him give up the cloud of Duri already, the hermit said. Will he be able to hold it? Gashishan asked, exhaling smoke. Don't mess around, the hermit replied sharply. But Gashishi explained that he wasn't going to clamp down on the Duri cloud at all. This level allows you to transfer accumulated skills, but there is no easy way to get them, Kuretz replied. Strength is forged from the steps traveled, Kuretz continued to explain. Did Emo Daus use the chicken dragon's abilities as freely as his own? Kuretz asked. But this place has its own methods of transmitting karma, Kuretz pulled. We need to repeat the karma of the Monkey King, enigmatically uttered, Gashishin. What a strange logic this Matrix has, as if someone had long forgotten they lived in the game, wondered the mad hermit. The two lords sat at the world map and divided the spheres of influence. How do we divide? asked Agent Rosa, the main rival. She'd like to rebuild Mexico City herself after the white elephant attack. But right now it's chaos and anarchy. Of course, it would be easier to clean up all the gangs with the KGB, but that could cast a shadow on the teacher, she thought. But Pijo has a lot of experience in taking territory, and their skills could be useful in Mexico City. Here they could create the master's dream city. The maiden conceived a cunning plan. Half made her terms, the first candidate for concubine. Half of the city she will build up as she wishes, the dragon empress proudly declared. Okay, for the sake of cooperation, Agent Rosa was willing to make concessions. We'll draw the border here and the elevation difference here. They started the business partition of the pie. To get a dope cloud, you need to get as high as the king of the Makaka, Hashishin said. What? Han Wu wondered. That's how much to blow out, he wondered. Shouldn't he have been trained first, but Gashishin brushed it off. The hermit must comprehend the art himself. After all, he is not strong in the art of smoking Dao, and is more specialized in physical strength, showed his biceps, Hashishin. Doing everything himself eventually gave up on the crazy hermit. What a damn macaw. Couldn't explain it all at once, the hermit got angry. Even if he knew, there would be no point in helping him. Because without repeating karma, you can't get power, Kuretz Gashishin explained. And brother Makaka himself, he did it alone, without help. So one must pull as he did, the hermit realized, and then he would be credited with it as personal karma. Well, it's worth a try, the mad hermit thought. I cannot stand to watch others work. I'll go lie down, answered Kuretz Hashishin. Something else, remembered before I went into Nirvana, remembered Gashishin. Duri Makaka's cloud, among those clouds that Gashishin put up earlier, so good luck finding it, Kuretz said. Touche, Hyunwu looked up at the sky. That's how much slacker is smoking here already. A multitude of white clouds floated peacefully across a looped infinite sky in a bounded matrix. Boundless mountains spread out on the horizon of this strange server. The hermit has aged imperceptibly after being on the accelerated server for three whole years. A hundred years had gone into the electrophoresis technique. But with the Tao of smoking, he was dealing with it for the first time, resented the hermit. At first, he tried using the five elements by applying the power of absurdity, but the cheat failed. He would then jump clouds, hoping to find the right one but that quickly got boring. Even after pacing like a master electrician through the clouds, nothing worked. Riding the cloud didn't work after all, it's just water vapor. Hyunwoo didn't give up and tried connecting the clouds with magic. He tried to squeeze them forcefully, but they turned to rain and disappeared. 
Eventually he realized the step of emptiness and began to walk across the sky. Pushing off the dense mana beneath his feet, he could run, but not for long. Barely losing concentration, the hermit immediately rocketed downward. He'd better ask the king of the Makaka, the hermit thought, forgetting his pride. But then he imagined how he would abuse him, so he gave up. What else is there to do? He thought, looking at the vast clouds floating peacefully across the sky. The hashishi chicken had left the den and was smoking outside, adding new clouds to the sky. The mad hermit was startled. A hunch struck him, and he shouted a battle cry. You can really walk on the sky and surprise teacher Gashishin. Or not, he thought, as the hermit flopped to the ground again. The hermit took off again. So you can, amazing thing the Tao. Works though it shouldn't, puffed Gashishin. But perfection is still a long way off, a lazy Kuretz remarked. This is the second attempt to fail, although the guest had previously fallen to cloud level, Gashishin noted. It didn't matter whether it worked out or not. From that day on, he lost all hope, Kuretz recalled. But why was Macaque clinging to this troublemaker so tightly, Dason wondered. He even told him how to get karma, which is quite unusual for a macaque. The mad hermit was hot from the exercise, or maybe he was already starting to feel the cloud of Dury. Why had he taken off all his clothes, hung Kurtz's mute question. Good thing that psycho left his underwear on. A naked man in the sky doesn't bode well. Hyun Wu hovered above the clouds, treading carefully on them with his feet. It would have to work this time, he realized with a final inhalation of the stupefaction. Eventually, he revisited the power of the absurd through stories of flying wizards. One master had a light body technique. If you can't make the clouds denser, you have to relieve yourself. Recalling his strength, Hyun Wu noticed that the usual physics of vapor and condensation did not apply in the clouds of this matrix. By applying the basics of body relief in Master Electric's bush, one can sense the clouds, the hermit realized. The void step he applied earlier was incomplete. Now he stood on his inner energy as if on the ground. Wow, Gashishin noted, the hermit used to be bursting with magic, but now everything comes easy. The hermit and WPIM stepped confidently on the cloudy surface as if it had texture. The dewy clouds immediately reached for the mad hermit. Finally, he exclaimed happily, he'd caught the damn parish, and collapsed on the cloud as if it were a soft feather bed. Ports would have put on already. Exhibitionist, through clothes, curettes, gashishin, it seemed heavy to the hermit, for he had had time to wean himself off of it as well. To his age of virginity was added a dozen more at what cost to strength. Don't worry, you'll catch up, soothed the innocent hermit curate's gashishin. Here's a keepsake ring, with an expansion feature handed to the hermit by the artifact. But why did the cloud of Dury become a ring of Dury? asked the hermit, but Kuretz only shrugged his shoulders. When you catch a parish, and not such things are seen. Expand the hermit decided to try out the upgrade, and the cloud of Dury became a cloud again, poured out into the sky. Squeeze, the hermit cheerfully commanded, pondering the methods of application. The cloud had become a ring again. The matrix was taking on an increasingly convoluted logic, the hermit realized. Just don't use it too often, the great Kuretz warned. Of course, replied the hermit confidently, and wanted to press the exit button. Pass something to Brother Makikich, asked Kuretz Hashishin. Okay. The hermit listened carefully to Gashishin's lengthy message. Peaceful dispute about the division of spheres of influence turned into open warfare, forgetting everything girls fiercely swapped pillows. As a familiar voice called out to them, the cats turned around happily. Girls don't fight, the crazy hermit is here to check on the students. But what is it, he asked, looking at the design madness. What a madness they had built, the hermit marveled. Mastered the Dury cloud, well done, supported macaque. But why, he asked. But he himself said to get a cloud, Dury resented the hermit. They both froze, staring at each other in cognitive dissonance. Didn't Bart Kuritz tell the hermit how to bring the cloud of Dury? Makakich asked. No, replied the hermit incredulously. He was told to repeat all the rituals of smoking. Was there any other way? He asked the monkey king. And from his silent reaction realized that yes was, ten years horrified the hermit for nothing. What the hell was he doing catching parishes for so many years, resented Hyun Wu. Makak remembered. His brother hadn't listened very carefully to the instruction on how to pass the Dury cloud. 
Well, and let it be, real time spent not much, the cloud received new experience, also consoled himself a hundred and twenty years old man. Actually, you could have done without that. Macaque shook his head. He could simply share his karma, for the cloud is part of it, and thus pass on the hermit's control abilities. What's done is done, you can't regret it, the mad hermit said to himself. Time to go up, Macaque said, and Hyunwoo interjected. Through the labyrinth, he suggested. You can't ride a cloud in a narrow space, Monkey shook his finger. We need to get into the rectum, he told the hermit. The specifics of logistics in the Matrix Tower. The warrior swung his spear, repeating for the thousandth time the futile movements in a world where magic and art strikes. Why have you come? He asked the unexpected guest who had interrupted his valuable training. About that man, the warrior asked, but the monk shook his head negatively. That's how, the master realized, the conversation was going to go the wrong way. I'll have to listen, he decided, and sat down with his foot on his leg. Beneath her sciatic, the Maritza materialized a stool, a special skill that all the years of training had gone for. Next, he loaded up the entire diner in one piece and even a shot of pepper jack to himself. Maybe I should pour you a cold as a tear, the warrior suggested to the guest and prepared to listen. Can't drink on the job, the monk refused, and swallowed his saliva greedily. Then I'll take a sip myself if that's the case before it gets hot, the warrior said. So why are you here, said the master of the quick pour. Need help. Briefly communicated the purpose of the entire visit to the monk. <laughs> Amazing, the master said. It was the first time he had seen a monk go against the Lord's will. What's up with that kid, the warrior asked a leading question. He needs to be cooled down, he's getting too excited, the monk replied. Outsider. The warrior clarified that it was about one person. So Emma Boy Dows is already that, concluded the pepper master. And the talk was, chicken claw, electrical installation, grinned the warrior. Laziness, he replied in refusal to the monk's request to deal with the ninth floor. Direct passage explained Makakich, but only for experienced illegal immigrants. In one day, you can rush to the twelfth. One day instead of five, due to new abilities, is good news for the hermit. If it didn't work out, he would take on the apprentices again. But there was no need for that now, the hermit decided. But since the passage is for experienced illegal aliens, how can a poor border guard squeeze through? The hermit asked. Let him not worry about it, said the macaque. For the pass is already there. The last time the right item fell off ammo boy. Chicken dragon karma can only be obtained illegally, but it's proof in itself, so it'll do for a pass, Monkey explained. We can go right now, suggested the Monkey King. But first, we need to fill Mangaka's portmanteau, the hermit reminded. One foot in, one foot out, I'd really like to kick the developer's ass, said the hermit. He just doesn't want to get his hands dirty, the warrior explained his refusal, taking apart the portable pourer. And nonchalantly went back to his useful pole training. If done well, gets karma. Two paths, the monk offered. Trump came in, realized the price of bribery, master of the poor, no need to even go down into the tower. Two trails for one hair, he interjected to the Lord's servant. Don't forget your promise, he said, and immediately transgressed. Though the Lord had told him to leave the outsider, but he must be eliminated as quickly as possible, the monk muttered. The best craftsman in the world that uses a technique named after him. There are many strong people in the Matrix Tower but not so many who have gone beyond human capabilities at their levels. The poor master had less karma than even Emma Boya. However, to get her, he would do anything, the monk pondered. So he came to the manganese lord and asked a favor. And in return, he promised to serve as a faithful dog of the regime, the monk recalled the story. Are they even going the right way? Asked the hermit, and Makak told him to shake the compass. Hyunwu shook, and the Tamagotchi vibrated and glowed. The pointer beam struck the sky for sure to be spotted. Squeeze the chicken dragon ball and on your way, instructed Macaque. Hermit was worried about the cat girls, how they were doing without him. He left without explaining anything as usual, but the girls are not timid, they can handle it. Clutching the chicken Pokemon tighter, he took off in a rocket. The ball sputtered from poor contact with the direct pass server, but still plugged into the right level of Matrix, the Hermit found himself at the bottom of a deep well. He said go, and waved his hand. Riding the cloud of Dury, the hermit began the climb up the shaft. The slave accountant was going through contracts and turned down a pesky agent. 
Toth didn't want to fall behind and was hoping to carve out a loophole on how to get the hermit to agree to another photo shoot with their brand. But the girl was left to refuse and send the agent to hell with his suggestions. The host's popularity skyrocketed and caused a lot of anxiety. Abibus ads are now at the top of the search terms, and everyone wanted Hermes sports shorts. Good thing Master refused to advertise, the slave girl exhaled. But the work did not become less. She was still mercilessly exploited, even in spite of better working conditions. Have we arrived yet? asked the hermit. And now, and now, he repeated every five minutes of dull climbing. It's even nerdier than sticking around in the Hashishin level, bored hermit. Ultimate, here we go, reported Macaque, tired of listening to the whining of the mad hermit. A door. Hyun Woo saw it and asked if this was the place for him, as if there were many doors here. He brought the chicken dragon Pokemon key to the door, and something clicked loudly. Imitating the creak of a rusty, long, uncleaned gate, the virtual door opened. The twelfth floor looked like a strange set of abstracts and was poorly displayed due to its complexity. Some kind of inscription, the hermit thought, but he couldn't read it because he was bad at school. No built-in interface with Windows jumped out, and the hermit conceived another way to get in. Aggressive plugging, he said, and stuck a stick digger into the turret. You can't get to the hidden level with other servers, so he left his here. The hermit pulled out Mangaka's portmanteau. The system suggested it be used for a secure connection. On the floor of Soyan's guild, the girls were drawing pentagrams for the witch's spell. And you can also guess, Fox Alice said with significance. It wasn't easy for cute C.O. Yeon to see an illegal immigrant in homemade underwear. There's all kinds of divination, on bones, animal entrails, coffee grounds, hair, the vixen listed. The fortune-telling circle can be spun back and forth, conjuring up the past and the future, Alice explained. But the all-seeing eye of the Matrix doesn't let you cheat and see the future, but you can find out if you're lucky or not, said the fox. How about some dough, suggested the vixen, much to cutie so young's delight. She folded her palms, twirling, twirling. The fox hummed magic words. The fortune balloon emerged from the magic circle. Now you just have to wait, instructed the vixen. But the balloon gave out the inscription full P.E. instead of an answer, so what that could mean, the girls didn't understand. The level began to rearrange itself, right in front of the mad hermit's eyes. The textures of the wooden ship grew out of the tower textures. As the ship chugged along, the hermit noticed an entrance off to the side. Inside, everything was covered in dust, scrolls with blueprints lying around, and round clouds of scenery hanging instead of lamps. Each cloud represented some level of the matrix. Hello, Mr. Anderson, came the greeting tape as he passed the entry point. Who's the Joker? The hermit asked and turned around, noticing the presence. Developer, the patched programmer introduced himself. The joke really is outdated, he commented to the bot at the door. What other biblical references are there? The hermit asked after looking around. There's a secret archive of matrix blueprints, the developer told him. Volumes of code and stuff. That's why it's an arc, he explained. Noah introduced himself to the programmer by his nickname, the creator of this place, he said. And he called the hermit here too. Ah, developer, rejoiced Hyunwoo. That's right. The shaggy-haired programmer confirmed the input again. He also created the training tower and put a hermit in it like a red maiden. The developer nodded his mane at everything. How long he had been looking for him, exclaimed the hermit joyfully. A good opportunity to close the gestalt and return the favor, smirked the mad hermit. But they're not the enemy. The developer hastily raised the firewall. I know, said the hermit, but duty is duty, and he continued to batter the developer's defenses. As if he didn't know what he was in for, raged the mad hermit. The defense cracked, and the puny programmer was taken by the collar. Don't worry, I won't hit you hard, Hyunwoo said and swung wide. Sounds of profanity. Coughing and muffled kidney punches rang through the ship. The developer's virtual head swelled badly from the aftermath. What you sow is what you reap, the mad hermit fulfilled his long-held dream. Now we can have tea, Hyunwoo said to the developer. My mirror, my light, tell me the whole truth, sang the master of negotiations. The programmer was stunned at the programmer's insolence, but the hermit dismissed the accusation. He was the one who was locked up for twelve long years like a prisoner. 
If there was a reason, then spit it out before your fists itch, the hermit threatened. The reason why he was locked up, Hyunwoo wanted to know first. It would have been nice to tell the whole background of the story first, but the developer left it out. He chose the staunchest tin soldier. The programmer pointed his finger at the hermit. The ravings of a madman a masochist found resented Hyunwoo. No details realized the dim-witted developer, who had also lost his social skills. Each floor of the matrix in the tower has its own logic and physics. On the ninth floor, it's a level reset. The 21st load cycle has now begun on the ninth floor, the developer explained. That's right. He confirmed the hermit's hunch. He too had booted up many times, but he didn't remember it. But in past uploads, the hermit has proved himself properly, so the choice fell on him. In the sixth cycle, he'd be a regular hunter, maybe a little stronger than the others. What's more, he didn't even have any special skills like other hunters. However, he was still able to kill the illegal with a mighty jerk. But the main reason is that the hermit has distorted the standard scenario in the matrix of the ninth floor. All levels of the matrix, originally just testing programs, the ninth floor screened out the bottom half of the list of illegals. Each time it had been destroyed, but now the mad hermit had broken the noose. There was something else that was reassuring, groused the programmer with a broken nose. In that, it is the mad hermit who will be able to change the entire matrix, Neo's chosen one. The developer inadvertently blurted out. And because of that, he was kept in the tower as if he were a prisoner, the hermit exclaimed. What's so special, Hyunwoo wondered. And the developer replied that the twelfth cycle was particularly memorable. The hermit lost his arm in a fight with an illegal alien and was bleeding. All the comrades had already fallen and lay dead beneath his feet. The hermit lured the illegal to a nuclear plant that was nearby. Applying the curse artifact on the illegal, the hermit pressed the detonator and blew up the nuclear reactor, taking the monster to the grave with him. The developer wanted to recount everything, but the hermit brushed it off, whoever he was. His current personality is the product of a single stream of memories. The imprisonment gave the hermit time and strength, because resilience alone cannot change the entire matrix. But the tower had a limit to the monster's strength, the hermit objected, a training device of sorts. Normal level citizens could only gain karma in the Tower of Learning. Outside of it, the recruitment of karma and thus power is greatly reduced, the hermit learned. X2 experiences, that's the main feature of the tower, the developer said. Understood? Accepted. But what are the changes to the matrix that the developer wants to make? The matrix is being misused, the developer explained, originally with five people on the team. The designer who drew the matrix and its concepts. The engineer, the one who designed its mechanics and logic. The tester, the one who tweaked everything and brought balance to the system. The developer programmer wrote code for everything to make it work. And the sysadmin, the one who makes sure the system works, called everyone Noah. Without the team lid, the mad hermit assumed. The problem started when the designer, the tester, and the engineer colluded with each other. They stole the access passwords from the sysadmin and tried to erase the developer. He was lucky to be saved on a secret server no one had access to. C's admin had to hide as well, Noah assumed. After they stole the project, started using it with their blackjack, and underbid the developer. He noticed something and fell silent doing a quick search. What's wrong? The mad hermit asked the silent developer. Half Indra, the shaggy-haired programmer told him, an experienced illegal immigrant had descended to the ninth floor. At the triumphal arch, the pole pusher master appeared. How strange, he thought. No one meets, no flowers, no loaf. Not even a drink is offered. The dummies were taking pictures instead of running for cover in any unclear situation. The people were completely weaned from monster attacks. The guard shouted shoo-shoo into the horn. He's come here for an outsider, but there's no choice, the poor master thought to himself. And opened the door to the underspace refrigerator. Hundreds of dummies with cell phones turned to ice. The pouring master took another swing, long dirk in hand, and caused another ice age on the streets of the city. How else to make ourselves known? Make a phone call, give a note to the newspaper, put on an ice figure show, our choice. Sweet C.O. Yeon and Alice the Fox anxiously listened to the news stream. Better not to run into an illegal, said Alice the Fox. They will die at the mere sight of that monster, she told the pretty so young. 
Fox is lower in rank than Master Electric or Demon Lowly, but since even he says so, thought Seo Yan. The poor master didn't just use plain ice. There was no mana visible in it at all. So everything he's created is his karma. The fox ears perked up. There are even receivers, Empress Lolai heard, breathing heavily. Already met a couple times in past cycles, said the pouring master. He towered over the girls on the ice column, just amused while he waited for the outsider. What a monster. Empress Lolai could barely breathe and had already wasted all her strength. She hit it with the power of absurd and the power of lowly, but to no avail. Even the power of the first volume of Capital, as performed by Agent Rosa, didn't work. The book was getting covered in ice faster than the girl was reading the spells. Two whole heiresses with such strength, the poor master muttered enviously. And all because of the outsider, to test the girls, but time is short, he lamented. Let's make this quick, grinned the master ominously. From below, Demonololi shouted, warning the contract woman. The girl turned around and saw a huge wave of ice coming at her. At the last moment, she dodged the ice age. But the master of cold pouring showed up on top of the Empress LOL. The big dredge was approaching the tiny student. It's going to be a long damn elevator ride down, the mad hermit said nervously. As soon as he left the border for a day, the illegal immigrant showed up, and now the hermit was worried about his shift. Get the Pokemon Pass, Monkey commanded as they arrived. We'll be there in ten minutes guided the topographically cretinistic hermit macaque. The ruins of Rome have been replenished with new ruins. There will be no shortage of tourists, thought the hermit. As Scary noticed, the stranger's uncle was pawing at his cat girls. No forgetting, no forgiving, illegal crossing, only elimination, shouted the mad hermit. But the poor master managed to dodge from a hard blow. Oh, there's the main customer because he's tired of waiting, said the criminal. The hermit gently held the Empress Lole, pulse palpable he checked across his chest. Maybe they will offer a drink at least now, asked the pouring master. We'll give you a light too, the mad hermit replied menacingly. Appeared right out of nowhere. Where was who he saw, asked the pourer. The hermit asked the monkey king to move the cat girls away from the battlefield. He gently placed them on the cloud. It was a good thing they were both breathing. Dury Cloud turned on autopilot and sped away with the students. Dury Cloud, an unusual thing, remarked the anomalous artifact poor master. The mad hermit released bloody mana without further ado. Wow, magic isn't bad either, the illegal was amused. At level nine, but is that really all there is to it? Looked more closely by the pouring master. For Emma Boy to get pummeled with just that, wondered the illegal. This is a flower, said the hermit. And now there will be berries. But the illegal muzzle didn't understand the local metaphors and stood with his mouth open. We'll weld your saddle, the mad hermit raged. Welding means you learned welding, dazedly looked at the hermit master of the pouring. Seamless, weld all the hatches shut, the mad hermit hissed. He exchanged a few blows on the bailout sticks. A lively battle of equals ensued, the hermit wielding monkey's staff well. But the master of the poor had something to answer with. He struck with icy projectiles. Not a big deal, he issued pathetically after the attack. But now the mad hermit stood taller, his power clearly underestimated. As a master of close combat and face-to-face -face negotiation, he rushed toward the illegal. Absurd's zero-distance punch applied Bruce Lee's technique, hermit. The illegal's carcass rolled on the rocks, ringing with each impact. Rusty, the illegal heard, and noticed the rapidly enlarging inspection device. What kind of endoscope is that for a giant? The illegal was horrified. Wait, not yet agreed, pursued the enemy by a mad border guard, and attacked with a series of simple punches with a bailout stick. And the illegal fought back with a steel crowbar with which he had practiced extensively. But the bailout stick hurt more and the illegal drinker was squeezed. Turn around for a thorough inspection, the border guard asked politely. Carol, the hooligans are taking away your eyesight, wailed the pouring master. And the border guard backed off. He doesn't want to bend over nicely to the inspection. There will be another conversation, said the insane hermit and applied the long-armed fetishist technique. But then he got an unpleasant surprise. The mandala behind his back was covered in frost. Now I see how emo boy was apprehended. The illegal poor master gritted his teeth. Since you've endured the duel for so long, it's worth introducing yourself properly, the hermit heard. Ice didn't break with lightning. 
wondered the hermit because he didn't do well in school. Master Refrigerator, nicknamed Glacial Zapoya, introduced himself as an illegal. The developer was worried. Let the frontiersman swat Ammo Boy. As luck would have it, his opponent was a legendary creature. He's a repeat illegal alien and definitely has karma, and all of the developer's powers went into locking Hyunwu in the tower 12 years ago. The mad hermit tensed up and removed the glaciation. The hermit let static currents flow through his body for self-heating. Thanks to the Monkey King's karma, this movement was able to be concealed. Enough demonstrations, said the refrigerator man, it's time to finish the repairs. He moved toward the mad hermit himself, closing the distance with a single leap. The steel crowbar collided with the bailout stick of the mad hermit. The freezer was chilling him to the bone. Rusty, he pulled out the telescopic staff of the monkey king. What kind of karma is this? He asked Makaka, himself not freezing, from his own refrigerator. But monkey knew nothing about the karma of the illegal refrigerator. Omaiva Shindaru sounded the foreshadowing of a critical blow from behind. Just not that way, the hermit struggled to block the heavy blow with his crowbar. The impact carried him to a cliff of building rubble, their battle changing the landscape beyond recognition. You're not doing too bad, said the Freon master, and was sent to the erotic pedestrian. And who promised to fix it with welding, snarled Freezer. It's almost done now. We'll be sealing the whole thing soon, the hermit replied. Good, so it won't be boring replied the pouring master calmly. How about this one? He asked and turned on the ice maker. It's always like this. You order a drink and it's all ice. The hermit was upset. Ice stakes flew towards the mad border guard in large numbers. All he had to do was refuse his order and retreat. Your order, pursued by an illegal part-time bartender. The metal of the leather vest was covered with frost. The main thing was not to lick it, the hermit thought. Now we'll set the accelerated freeze and call it a day, exulted the freezer man. I'll finish him off in one blow. He pointed the crowbar at the hermit. A cloud of dust and ice crumbs rose up from the impact. The freezer man was surprised. The blow hit the target, but without the desired effect. His steel tuning rod was gripped firmly. Gotcha, thought the mad hermit, and took the crowbar away. You can't fix a refrigerator without a tire iron, he told the illegal. Hold your teeth swung the hermit around for a mouth inspection, and fist-bumped the fetishist, the drunken freezer master. Hyun Wu looked at the effect of the punch, but the fight was clearly not over yet, he realized. Fuck you. The refrigerator man happens to have a second specialty. He had changed his clothes in the settings and now looked like a plague doctor. Phase two is like a real boss, the hermit frustrated. Lord of delinquency, the freezer man introduced himself again. The ice crows pecked the hermit, didn't think the first specialty wouldn't be enough, the refrigerator man remarked. Looks like it's time to say goodbye. No one can digest procrastination anymore. That he's already got indigestion, Master Procrastination asked. The mad hermit was rapidly being covered in ice. Thanks for the introduction, fool, he said, and squeezed the detonator. The magical chains were firmly welded to the freezer's arms. A well-fixed client, no need for anesthesia, the hermit said. Get ready now to start welding all the holes heard the alarmed illegal alien. What kind of tricks are these? They didn't agree to this, faltered the grizzled freezer. Have a nice vacation in our prisons, said the polite border guard goodbye. Let him sit in the monkey house to think about behavior, the hermit exhaled. The abandoned birds began to melt away, and without mana fueling them. After them, a blinding downpour hit the ground, smelling like stale food from the freezer. The hermit looked at the secret seal device that Raz Rabotchki had assembled in his haste. Shit. The illegal handyman graduated from a vocational school, not a PTU Sharashka, caused trouble. Borrowed karma kicked back with muscle spasms. Thanks to Noah, he sealed the illegal for five days, but the danger was great. He could still deal with the karma of the glacial drunkenness, but not with the procrastination. His stomach wasn't ready for that. As they say, you can't win, turn off the cheats, thought the hermit, looking at the sun that came out of the clouds. The dragon empress recovered in the hospital after a hard fight. Her thoughts were confused, and she had trouble knowing where she was. The girl moved, and her guard immediately emerged from the gloom. Report everything, the dragon empress ordered. What about the illegal? She asked the servant after listening to the servant's report. The mad teacher had saved her but there was no more Dimanololi could say. 
Their magic could be felt everywhere, but understated the demoness. At some point, the illegal disappeared, for details to the hermit, demoness said. In this fight, the girl's attacks were completely useless. Don't get discouraged, Loli said. Still, this illegal was too strong. But maybe you want more Bogaturski strength, seduced Loli. A shadow of determination ran across the dragon empress's face. Is it a dream? realized Agent Rosa to herself in a strange place. She remembered exactly herself in the battle and how she had read marks. But then the memories cut off. Maybe it's death, a bitter guess crossed her mind. But there was still so much this and that she hadn't done to the teacher. The innocent cat girl nearly cried. It's all right, it's not death, the first volume of Capital spoke to her. Who is it? Agent Rosa asked, a strange artifact that hasn't acted like this before. The essence of spirit. Not Marx wrote this volume, but Hegel, the spirit of their book. It was he who taught Mason, the labor theory of value. So Mason wasn't the owner of the artifact, Agent Rose wondered. And the spirit resented that the man was only a pathetic worm who sought the truth. So it's not post-mortem, but then where is this place? The girl asked. Remote server reported Hegel's spirit she is currently in the hospital. He had long ago noticed the girl's talent, but her grasp of philosophy was still weak, the spirit noted. But it would take a lot of work before she could become a true seeker of truth, Hegel's spirit informed her. Recovery isn't quick, Noah noted when the hermit grimaced painfully. From the hermit's account, the illegal alien possessed a special anomalous body in the Matrix. These bodies are born of myths and they have twisted logic, so they are stronger than the ones the hermit fought, the developer explained. But there is a solution, since he was called here, the hermit suggested. Exactly, confirmed his speculation, developer Noah. It takes, and he paused for a hidden commercial, but Hyunwoo didn't fall for the fucking clickbait. You need karma of the same rank as Freezer Procrastinator, it's simple, said the developer. Karma beats karma, the mad hermit asked the game master. It's not even about quantity as much as rank, Noah answered him. Damn cheaters. The hermit resented when he learned that there were those who cheated more than him. Who's to say, sighed the developer, and continued to outline his cunning plan. You can't get by with cheats. You need similar karma in rank, and there aren't many ways to get it. However, he does have the right karma already, Noah said. The hermit glanced at the balloon pass with Chicken Dragon, He's here because Noah allowed this server to log in. Now the protection on the Chicken Dragon server was lifted and it could be used. After all, it was the one who wrote those servers with hidden levels, the developer said confidently. These devices compress karma and store it, he explained to the hermit. I'll open the developer tools now, said Noah, and conjured up some programming magic. A lot of tabs and dialog boxes with a crooked and uncomfortable interface opened. But what can you do? The whole matrix was programmed by five people. One karma can be defeated by another, but what about the essence? The hermit asked. Each karma has its own essence. Just as fire cannot defeat water, so karma can be incompatible with another. Like the region of freezing and lightning clarified the mad hermit to Noah. He only has chicken dragon karma, the developer said. The Pokemon's ball shimmered again with a bad connection in the programmer's hands. But he quickly fixed it and gave the magic server to Hyunwoo. Is that it? The hermit asked. The preparation's complete, he heard back. You can upload. The rest is up to you, Noah added. But what to do with this Pokemon? Asked the hermit, whether to strangle the snake or not. He looked at the azure ball. It's simple, you just need to... Noah paused for your commercial, tame the dragon. Either give it a light and still tame the dragon, the developer added. Connected that way, Noah said, giving the hermit some thought. There are three ways to fry for the chicken dragon, but everyone is different in the amount of time one can spend and the final nutritional outcome in karma. By speeding up the server, Noah was able to win the hermit three days for roasting the dragon. Hermit, booted into yet another secret level of the Matrix, it was raining perpetually and lightning was blazing. Here comes the fresh meat, spoke the huge kite that flew in the sky in front of Hyunwoo. He remembers me surprised the hermit, for they had fought when the chicken dragon karma belonged to Emo Boy. A kid with the karma of a hairy monkey, said Chicken Dragon. Damn boa constrictor, who's the hairy one here? Somehow the Monkey King's mind was uploaded to the server as well. Monkey's here too, 
marveled Chicken Dragon, leaning over to the bailout stick. There is, tail, hairy, so macaque and is, laughed Dragon. So you know each other? The hermit asked the two digital creatures. The old friends began to argue loudly, and the hermit was tired of it. By the way, can't you turn off the shower already? It's cold, Hyun Woo asked. You can't see a damn thing because of this downpour. What kind of fantasy was the developer who came up with this? The climate control is broken, and you're going to run now anyway. You'll warm up, smiled Dragon. Who knows why consciousness was preserved, the dragon said. But it was obvious that the hermit had come for his karma. So what are we going to do? Chicken Snake asked the hermit. He could repeat the path of the chicken dragon, the snake suggested. There's no time for that, the hermit quickly replied. Crawling like a snake takes too long. You can grab karma, or you can get recognition, which means you can make a contract. <laughs> Capture will give an achievement in the achievement list for defeating the dragon, but the bonuses from it are half-hearted, suggested the second snake option. The last option, recognition of karma itself. But the level of possession will depend on the user's skill, named the last option chicken dragon. Only confession means, the mad hermit decided unhesitatingly. You just have to fight the chicken dragon for recognition. But you have to fight without help or cheats, said the sneaky snake slyly. So you can't use a bending stick. The hermit tossed the staff aside. Great, we just need to defeat the kite, he said. Simple as that. Good decision, dragon said. But it's going to be hard, he warned. Aren't they equal in power to the monkey king? The hermit asked. Makaka can only fight with a stick, and that's when dragon is asleep, the serpent laughed. But still, the monkey king was defeated, the hermit said. This was in a tower where the balance system reduces abilities. What the hermit was fighting wasn't even half of Macaque's strength. Is it true, asked the hermit to the tailed man, and he confirmed, the Matrix has a twisted balance. Winning with an actual dragon summon on his server is impossible in the current situation. So the serpent offered his option. Five minutes of real combat attacks, that's what a mad hermit has to endure on his own. All in all, stated the cocky cheater, let's get through the level quickly. That's right. As soon as you move, the timer goes off, Chicken Dragon said. The main thing is that the boa constrictor should not retract his words later, the hermit warned. There will be no such thing, replied the dragon, but he so smugly stated the serpent. Hyun Woo released all of his mana at once and attacked the query dragon. Meanwhile, the rabid freezer was sitting on a tight leash. The chains were perfect, nothing could break them. But for such durability, they were paying for it with time. There was not long to wait for them to sleep. I'll get out of here, I'll freeze like a mammoth, said the illegal Santa Claus. Noah watched the broadcast from the server from his desk. Despite the prolonged use, the dragon's karma was full, practically 100% of true strength, he noticed. Originally, his remote servers could only hold half of the true powers of the image. Has it really been possible to improve the server, wondered the developer. The remaining trio was able to do something, he remembered his former co-workers. So it's great luck that such a full-fledged karma server fell into the hands of a hermit, Noah thought. The boy will be able to gain much more strength than before, though through much pain. Love to endure pain. Used self-hypnosis techniques on myself, a hermit. Where did the cocky boy go? Chicken Dragon asked him. The underbelly snake. This is cheating, shouted Hyun Wu. The deal was no cheats, so don't cry now, grinned Chicken Dragon. Not at all like fighting an Imoboya Taoist, the hermit remarked. He was working in a special Monkey King uniform at the time, and he didn't get electrocuted much. The Chicken Dragon's lightning bolts hit orders of magnitude harder than the Taoists, and without the monkey's montage vest, it hurt. But more importantly, he couldn't see them, even given that the Matrix had slowed the rate of discharges by several times. Usually people died from electric shocks, Dragon noted, but the hermit was holding up well, masochist karma taking its toll. Why don't you just give up, Chicken Snake suggested, but Hyun Wu defiantly refused. Then we'll pull the switch one more time, smiled Chicken Dragon, and turn the electrical stimulation on full blast. It didn't hurt, shouted the hermit. Stop putting up with this. Hyun Wu quickly realized that even masochist karma wouldn't help here and escaped the lightning whose charge moved several times slower than light. Hey, you viper, said the monkey king over the hidden link. What do you want, fleabag? answered the old friend. Busy a little, said the dragon. All your plans are devious on your face, said Macaque said. 
Do you want to hand over your karma to a crazy guy? asked Monkey. The dragon looked at the hermit, who was running back and forth from the discharges of slow lightning. Also voluntary, Macaque added, which was quite unbelievable. You picked the furry guy yourself, too, Dragon said. The only one trying to get back the stolen karma, Snake added, looking at Macacus. If even he lent his karma, then the guy is worth trusting, Snake continued. So why not join the winning bid, Chicken Dragon asked. There's nothing else to do in this world of rain and thunder anyway, and the chance is worth the risk, Snake said. What's he babbling about, Hyun Woo thought, noticing a kite high in the clouds. Is he a lightning rod, raged the mad hermit. What to do with this electric worm, Hyun Woo didn't understand. The hermit pondered as soon as he stood up, the lightning would strike, but he could not dodge them on the ground either. For the first time, lightning struck slightly behind him, Hyun Woo noticed. Glitches. Or they started moving slower, wondered the hermit. Another discharge flew past, only slightly hitting him. No, he was the one who was starting to get used to the speed of the Matrix's slow-motion lightning bolts. Starting to duck, Chicken Dragon noticed, finally getting used to it. Even more, now the boy saw them, and therefore deftly dodged them all. Now we'll play like grown-ups, said the hermit, pleased with his success. Three charges were hitting the target at once. From such a sudden jump in difficulty, Hyun Wu simply froze. Boom. The zippers exploded, drying the tracksuit dry, but it still soon got wet. Cheating again, shouted the hermit climbing out of the crater. Didn't he order the full course? Chicken Dragon asked. A full course of electrotherapy, said Dragon. Or he thought he was getting karma for nothing, said Snake to the hermit. Now I can see why Tailed doesn't like that snake, grumbled the hermit. You can always go out, Dragon said. But Yun Wu immediately refused. Pain. Let the pain pass through you, and it will go away, the hermit continued practicing mosaicism. Painful. Still painful, squirmed the hermit from a dozen lightning bolts. Continue training, the obliging sadist asked, and the hermit gritted his teeth in anger. There was no way he could dodge more than two, three lightning bolts, whose speed and strength kept increasing. Maybe we should run in all four directions, the hermit pondered. But that would only make it harder to control everything, so you have to take a face, he realized. The Korean nerd's strength to the max Hyun Woo began practicing evasion. After hundreds of frying, his senses began to sharpen, the system adding to his reaction speed. Now he was playfully dodging all the lightning bolts because he could see them so well. The hermit prepared himself. He waited for the discharge. Now he could see the slowed electricity of the matrix flowing. His arm swung up to meet the charge, taking it like a lightning rod. And easily deflected, the resistance of the skin of her hands grew to the level of rubber gloves. The mad hermit could pick up bare wires with his bare hands without fear of electrocution. Changed the movement of the lightning, surprised Chicken Dragon, the kid showed a good result. But from most of the lightning still, the hermit had to dodge, the electrocuted coach reckoned. Even with infinite revival on a training server without much comprehension skill, it wouldn't be that easy for the system to rack up stats. Already in the fight against Emo Boy, Chicken Dragon realized that the guy is not ordinary even among Matrix cheaters. It's not like he's been saving up skills for a long time, Snake observed. What is the source of the cheats? Self-discipline, Dragon wondered. But it doesn't give as much power. You can't extract too much mana from a human body either, thought Dragon. That's it, he remarked, observing the Korean nerd for a bit longer. The one no longer screamed in pain as the lightning bolt struck him, enduring in silence. Every time after a fall, the crazy Korean rocky asshole would get back up. It was the thing in his eyes, Dragon realized. No complaints, no regrets, a steadfast spirit, and a little bit of Sharon. The hermit fended off another lightning bolt. Incredible focus was pushing through the mechanics of the Matrix. He had sped up his own time, relative to everyone else's and now he could already catch lightning bolts that weren't slowed down. The hermit easily controlled the flow of electricity with his fingertips, repelled, deflected, and received all the lightning bolts that the chicken dragon sent at him. Suddenly the rain stopped, the mad hermit noticed. Five minutes at full speed, as agreed, said dragon, having completed the test. That's it already. Couldn't believe the hermit. Do you want a refill? Ask the flying Tesla coil. 
Give me the contract, the document where the bounty issued sly face, said the hermit. But after all, karma is received since the rain is over, said the cunning snake, but Hyunwu did not feel anything. The thing is, he's gained access to karma, but the skills themselves are still locked, Dragon explained. The hermit remembered that the Monkey King had said the same thing when he was training him to use the staff. Now, too, the hermit realized, the use of karma already depended on personal skill. Even possessing blood acceleration cheats, it's not easy to get the skill to use them, Dragon said. So from that moment on, the mad hermit began to suspect something amiss. That's right, get ready to receive the full anus zapacanus technique, grinned Chicken Snake. Master Freezer patiently counted all the sheep, and he waited for his, the chains slowly fell off, with slow motion animation. The tech was already asleep, but because of the video picture, he was still standing in jail, I had to wait until the end. Whether it's an ice age or a stitch-up in all the supermarkets, Master Freezer was wondering at the exit. Well rested in our punishment cell for the rabid, a border guard greeted the prisoner. It was dark in the cell, so when Freezer climbed out, a bright light hit his eyes. Have you gone completely feral already? asked the merrily mad border guard. Didn't run away then, the master of the hidden poor replied calmly. And when he escaped, he went straight into phase two of the procrastinator. Matrix changed her clothes to a strange garb of medieval motifs. You'd better think of a way to get home, the hermit suggested. He doesn't think he can take care of a freezer in five days. The hermit didn't hesitate either and put on his vest, monkey. Rotten monkey already seen it, said Master Freezer. So that's not all. There is a special technique learned recently on himself, said the hermit, and covered in static electricity to keep from freezing. Lightning bolts struck the ice crows with procrastination inside. And who put the horns on? The freezer asked the mad hermit. These are horns like a trolley bus, explained the polite border guard. Electricity supply. Now we'll wire the freezer too. And shined his contacts right into the freezer master. The one was struggling to wave his crowbar away with a tire iron. Ice age, the wizard chanted, and blocks of ice appeared around the hermit. Rusty activated Hyunwoo's telescopic baton, and he swung his stick properly. A wide radius attack shattered all the ice around the hermit. Just turned on the ice maker and he's breaking everything, the freezer man resented. Great, the chicken dragon techniques were working, the hermit rejoiced. Tao techniques were given with difficulty, as the hermit did not do well in school. I had to adopt something else, not from the Tao techniques, the hermit remembered. Having studied this thing, according to Chicken Snake, there will be no more restrictions. The nature of this power is the complete opposite of freezer ice's karma, but Hyun Wu was still worried. But now he was easily the ice master of procrastination. Ego cold energy couldn't get through the heated vest. A new hermit skill. Where did the horns from the chicken trolley come from? Master Stitching asked. Five days ago, that wasn't there. The ninth floor frontiersman was a mere average guy, Freezer recalled. The manganese lord had only authorized the use of the chicken dragon karma to aim a boy. Whereas this guy had gotten it, the hidden poor master was perplexed. Determined to pour quietly, the mad hermit asked the frozen freezer. Thoth was actually distracted by the stack and missed the hermit's punch. Now we'll file it as illegal smuggling of freezer appliances, said Hyunwu. And we'll write a fine for late fees too, the hermit added. And we'll take away the vodka, gloated the good border guard. The hermit quickly read his driver's license and made a correct arrest of the illegal alien. No injuries, the detainee himself accidentally tripped over the border guard's boot whereupon the honest border guard made a thorough search in all places. But the illegal didn't want to give up, so he turned the freezer back on full blast. With quick, concerted action, the frantic border guard cut the power to the dangerous device. The freezer fell to his knees, he decided quietly. Even if you have to use all your strength, abruptly tore the illegal alien aside. I'll freeze it like a mammoth, the illegal promised and added wings to the image. Did you spend all your gold on skins? The hermit asked him in surprise. Oh, froze the montage, but it's going to crumble now from one hit of the bailout stick. Hyunwoo teased. Don't worry, it's a special metal. It's stronger than a monkey's staff, Freezer said, offending Makaka. And like a true warrior went bayonetting in a world with magic and art strikes. The hermit dodged. Still, it wasn't worth it to expose himself to dangerous blows. The procrastinating ravens flew at him again from all directions, Freezer combining attacks. 
but Hyun Woo quickly turned them off with a lightning bolt from the chicken trolley. Unfortunately for him, there was no less procrastination. More was coming from the freezer. Chicken Dragon's karma was running out. Felt the hermit. It was time to end the fight. He let the enemy get close and grasped the bayonet with isolated palms. Didn't mom teach you not to touch other people's stuff? Master Procrastinator asked. And he was surprised when he was lifted into the air with the tire iron, just to be slammed to the ground like a bag of bones. And there's nothing to stick in your face, the hermit replied to the lying illegal alien. The hermit concentrated. Time flowed slower for him than for the others. He had learned to use his fingers deftly to control the lightning, but it wasn't enough. Use the power of the chicken dragon, the serpent told him. The karma of lightning that was given to the dragon from above shimmered in the hermit's hands. Hyun Wu absorbed all the karma in one decisive blow. Sha Kritanu, he held his breath. Together with the acceleration of his CPU, he could perform such powerful attacks in an instant. Chicken Snake's Speed Thunder activated the hermit skill. The crit was successful, and the animation of the Jedi dissolving into the Force started. With only the plague mask left of him, the hermit was finally able to catch his breath. A notice has gone out that another illegal alien has been eliminated. Flashbacks of Vietnam rolled through the hermit, how long he had plowed to upgrade his information, and it finally happened. Perfect time to visit the white-haired woman, the hermit decided, and commanded the entrance to the bailout room. But nothing changed. The download failed, or the command didn't work, he guessed. Der password, sim, sim, open, he muttered the magic words, but he still couldn't get in. Five days later, Shu Ken would pick him up after the interview, moonlighting as a hermit driver again. Five days later, he still hadn't been able to access the system. And even though he had increased access to information, he couldn't read the characteristics of the freezer's server. Maybe something happened to the white-haired neural net worried the hermit. He got hit hard by the CPU acceleration and was in the hospital for a bit and couldn't charge Mangaka's portmanteau in the maze. Of course, you could have entrusted it to the ardent and passionate students. Master, here's the best medicine in the form of candles. Call you to cure them, they jumped on him. But the hermit brushed it off due without alternative medicine. The girls were very upset, but they didn't stop dreaming about it. After all, they are his faithful disciples, smiled the hermit. Good work, he ruffled their silky hair, let them rest. Obey and obey, replied the disciples in chorus. At least in this they agreed, thought the hermit. Once he loaded the porta potty and visited Noah, everything would become clear, Hyun Woo decided. He looked around. The Hikikomori programmer's workplace was clean. Hadn't decided to clean up the pig, the hermit asked. It's so clean, the hermit couldn't get used to it when Noah asked him what was wrong. Here, Hyun Woo held out the freezer's mask, coincidentally, his server. The lights aren't on on the modem, so there's no connection, the hermit asked. Appearance isn't important, explained the programmer, but this karma still wouldn't fit a hermit. You need to be good at magic to use it, the developer explained. Hyun Woo was disappointed, but that wasn't the only question for Noah. He couldn't get into the system room, the mad hermit said. What do you mean, enter? The developer asked instead of answering. He looked surprised. Help the room where Av lives. Doesn't Noah know about this thought, the hermit? Why is he getting serious? Hyun Woo thought as he watched the programmer's reactions. This requires an introductory explanation to answer, the developer said. That system room isn't as simple as it looks, Noah prepared for the story. All this time, the system information was going to Hyun Woo through the help room with Av, the developer clarified. Still, he was confused, the programmer rubbing his beard thoughtfully. This place was not created by the developer, he told the mad hermit. This space is kind of not in the Matrix, Noah explained. But it's only gotten more confusing, Hyun Woo thought. He is not the only frontiersman in the Matrix, there are others, the developer said. And such a thing was seen. The developer opened a system window in front of the hermit. It's a search skill that comes with the rank of border guard, but Hyun Woo didn't have it. After the Matrix was created... Someone exploited a vulnerability in the system and created this room. It's only a hypothesis, the programmer said, but it's possible he knows the girl Av. She may be related to the sysadmin they created the search box with. The hermit was stunned at such a statement that a white-haired runt could do such a thing. Av Sai said men, he couldn't believe his ears, that neuron what? 
a slob, a computer game enthusiast, a network with a weak processor, he remembered the girl. Such assumptions, just finished the developer's thought. We'll have to ask her herself, the hermit thought. How to get to the system room, he asked the developer. Noah promised to find this room, and Hyun Woo breathed a sigh of relief that at least something had been dealt with. Now get him to tell him everything he didn't tell him last time about the illegal refrigerator smuggler. The Lord of Manganese was sitting in the empty hall again, conferring with himself. The monk was on his knees, wondering how to account for the lost karma. You can't leave an outsider alive, replied the monk, timidly. From the beginning, they wanted different things. The monk heard the will of the Lord. He knew everything beforehand, but he didn't stop the monk because he wanted to see what would come of it. Everyone trapped in the Matrix has different desires. Of course, we are talking about players, not mere mortals, said the Lord. Do as you wish, smiled contentedly Lord. He would benefit from either outcome. No restrictions. Let him go and kill the border outsider. The Lord spread his hands, giving full carte blanche to eliminate. But everything should take no more than a month. If even after so many victories, the frontiersman is defeated by a monk, he's worthless. But if the lad defeats the monk and gets to the top, heard the monk the Lord's terrible wager. That then becomes the best dinner, grinned the cruel Lord ominously. So the original purpose of the tower had changed and it had become a laboratory for testing, the hermit concluded. And so illegals seek to climb the matrix tree by following a new script. Some may become illegal for personal reasons, but not all, Noah explained. And all for karma, the hermit asked him. Destroy their world to get back the stolen karma? Yes, they are nuts decided by a crazy hermit. That's right, they are scoundrels and moral freaks, Noah confirmed. So there's something to discuss, Noah said, and poured something stronger into a glass. If Yun Wu wants to help regain control of the Matrix, how quiet. The hermit guarded the couch all alone. On the other hand, someone was still present, but she couldn't be called human. <sighs> Alice the fox was sniffing quietly on the bed, with her tails fluffed. The illegal fox used to run around like an animal, but now it's back to human form. What a pose in view, the hermit was shy and decided to touch the vixen a bit. Don't snore, animal. He poked his finger at the fox to get it to wake up and stop whining. Woof, master of the house, broke out a runaway animal not knowing how to behave. Why was she only climbing the Matrix Tower? The hermit asked her. And why all of a sudden she wanted to answer with a question, with a question but she faltered at one glance from the hermit. I'll tell you everything, squeaked the vixen. The furry pelt's former habitat was destroyed. And so it escaped, said Fox. Someone stole her karma and said he'd give it back if she went up the tower. He took the karma of the whole level, too. There was no other choice, the fox continued. But Hyun Woo heard a familiar white noise. The system put a filter on this information. So now she doesn't need to climb the tower anymore, the hermit asked. She'd had enough of her karma, her litter box, her food bowl, and she'd been branded, the hermit thought, examining the living coat. Master will give a yummy treat, the fox asked and wagged all her tails. So take it yourself, what's the problem? He asked as he watched the fox jump to the shelf. He brought out a jar and held it out to the hermit. There was an inscription on the lid. No more than one stick a day, wrote cute C.O. Yeon in her beautiful handwriting. They're trained, the hermit wondered. He's the one who has that effect on them, Hyun Wu thought. You can eat as much as you want. We'll buy more when you run out, said the irresponsible hermit. It's not drugs, he thought, and left, saying goodbye to the fox that was already drooling. How's it going at the zoo? The hermit asked the hermits of the seniors that had hooked up to the same server, who made a pile under his favorite pine tree, resented the hairy macaca. It's a natural process. Snakes have a cloaca, Chicken Dragon explained. All the more reason for it to clean itself, he said. But Makaka couldn't stop stinking for another week, he shouted. I'll chop in now, the server owner indignantly pined, the hermit listening to their altercation. Chicken Dragon was a useful source of information, but was constantly bickering with Monkey. Enough already, are you like animals? The hermit tried to stop them. There's something I want to ask, he told the old farts. The two muzzles stared at him with interest, oblivious to the altercation. Why did they stick their heads into the tower? The hermit asked them. So they went into the tower to fight with the people upstairs who were in charge, Hyun Woo realized. That's why there were only scrappy images left of them. 
not a full body, the dragon explained. And they started bickering with Monkey again about minor details. Maybe put them in enclosures too, thought the Mad Zoo director. Why such questions, wondered the Monkey King, asking the hermit. Yunwu wondered if these two might respond to the idea of a tower tree crusade. As long as the system stays the same, illegals will pepper and genocide every level in their path. First, we need to eliminate the tester, said the developer, naming the first item in their plan. He regulates the balance in the Matrix Tower and all matches, and is located on the ground floor, Noah explained. If you eliminate the adjuster, you get an important key, Noah explained. But how to get there? asked the topographically cretinistic hermit. Underground floor, the menagerie interjected, the hermit nodding as he asked them the same question as Noah. It's easy, and killing the tester is easy too, said the hairy macacus. He was already climbing the tower. Isn't she strong, thought the hermit upon hearing such an answer. Before the meeting, however, there is something to be done, Macaque thought to himself. But the journey itself will not be easy. He gave out secret information. Floor zero is not tied to the tower tree, and you can't get there in the normal way. But exactly how, Macaque didn't know, which infuriated the mad hermit. You should also beware of corpses, Mikasa said meaningfully. Empty shells of illegal aliens are collected at Ground Zero. The consciousness images are stored on the servers, and the bodies are transferred to the morgue in the basement. Useless minds are disposed of, and the strong ones are preserved in hidden levels of the Matrix. The morgue kept the physical bodies in the morgue just in case, Macaque said. And why such a separation? asked the hermit. The two monkey kings tried just to speculate, as their ears squeaked nastily from the data filtering. We need to get to the first floor, the hermit realized, and from it jumped to ground zero. The journey would take ten days, he learned. He would find out the rest from Noah, the hermit decided. To get to Noah again, it was necessary to charge Mangaka's portmanteau. This infuriated the hermit. For frequent use, this was becoming a problem. It was all about timing. He's a border guard and couldn't be away from duty for long. I gave you a vacation. Why did you come back? He asked the student who entered. It's been a long time since we've seen each other, she spoke in her demon lowly voice. De Monololi, asked the hermit warily. Too wary, too he feared, stated the ancient lowly. There was no need for that, she said, and the hermit grabbed her by the horns. They really are real, he pulled them to the side, comfortable to hold, the hermit thought. She says not to be wary, but how to believe her asked Hyunwu, since they fought before. Believe me, the demonic lowly in Miryong's body almost cried. After playing with the horns, the hermit let go of the demoness that sat in the body of his dear apprentice. Ta tried to convince him to be honest, but just kept repeating the same thing. The fox was snoring peacefully, not even awake. What a useless animal they have made, thought the hermit. Come on, talk, he said to the offended demoness, who did not understand how only the mistress of the body could follow after the mad teacher. Mi Ryong was training in the inner world, and Demana Loli was in charge of her body, just cleaned up, the hermit thought. And why that? the hermit asked. But the hermit only replied that the cat girl was similar to Demona Loli, and therefore of interest to her. What a soulmate, the hermit wondered, and the demoness confirmed that this was exactly how they could become even more alike. Tomorrow I'll tell the rest of the story, interrupted the insolent demoness. She wasn't going to share much, and the hermit thought about cracking her open. What kind of training, he asked. It didn't seem like there was a threat coming from the demoness at the moment. Because of the past defeat, the dragon empress had expressed her desire to become slicker and was now swiping at the demoness's servants. So Miriong will get karma too. It's in their favor anyway, thought the hermit. Illegals will be walking around here no end, so it's good for the girl herself. But there's a small request, the demoness squinted slyly. All from the influence of this body, but her own interest too, Dimonoli spoke cryptically. Miriong's identity is on a secret server, but here her body is still on fire, the demoness sang sweetly. Because of that, Miriong's essence remained the same. She gave the hermit a sly look. Closer to the body, the atmospherically inept mad hermit told her. No big deal, just stay the night, the demoness suggested. Nightmares are dreaming. At first, the hermit didn't understand the sentence. 
but then as understood. An old demoness in the body of a young cat, nightmares will come to him. What's with the face, Noah asked cheerfully, pouring a fresh kefir. Is there any way to get to the secret apartment right away? He asked the developer. To get here, you have to use Mangaka's loincloth. It's been sweating for a long time and it stinks, the hermit explained. It's really not pleasant, Noah thought, and took a sip of the invigorating tea. Okay, I'll put together a separate artifact, but it will have to wait, promised the lazy programmer. It will take two, three weeks, Noah said, and Hyun Woo was fine with that. Moving on to the main issue, he said. What's the fastest way to get to floor zero, the morgue, he asked the developer. It would be a problem if a strong illegal like last time showed up while he was away, the hermit said. Find the testator item, Noah told the mad hermit. It takes an item related to the tester to get into the morgue, just like he got into Noah's secret apartment. But how to get it, the hermit asked, and Noah promised to see. Strange, no matter how many times I look, I don't see a crooked programmer surprised. Just using the secret passage, asked the annoyed hermit. Perhaps he can take advantage of that, reinserted ad space developer. And so the secret back passage is still there, the hermit clarified. Is there any problem with it? He asked the thoughtful developer. Not now, there's even a navigator for the dumb. Noah gave the device to the hermit. The hermit looked at his status, navigator for stupid people with topographical cretinism. It meant there. But what's the problem? The hermit couldn't wait to hit the road. The artifact leads reliably, but the road itself is crooked, the developer explained. You can only get to the location that is entered in the coordinates. But if the place is destroyed, he can't come back from it, Noah said. Hang in the space of imaginary numbers on the fields of the Matrix, the developer explained. It's like the secret servers of illegal aliens, asked the hermit Noah. No, Noah said. This place was different. This space in the outer wall of the tower, once there he was doomed to wander forever in an endless void. Why was it created, the hermit wondered. And Noah replied that it was put together by the renegades on the development team. If it picks a navigator and finds the right space, it will get there in a matter of moments, the developer said. Long and soft, or fast and hard, the essence of each choice was realized by the hermit. What to choose? pondered the mad hermit with topographical cretinism. Resolved, Hegel's voice came from Agent Rosa's book. No, replied the girl sitting in the KGB main office, and the book asked why. Why think so long? Others will sell their souls for the truth, seduced by the philosophical grimoire. Really, wondered the girl with the flowery nickname. Even though she was better than all the previous underdogs the book had taught, she still mastered only half of the book. And really, it was worth studying philosophy to the end, the girl decided. She had thought so, back when her teacher had told her the truth about the Matrix world. Especially since that little one has also started practicing, intelligence reported. But that means that the mentor is alone. In other words, no one will interfere with them, the girl dreamed. The little splinter kept getting tangled under his feet, and their strength was equal. So there was no way to simply get rid of it. But since she's not here now, it's time to take the bull by the horns. Rose smiled sweetly. So it's best to put philosophy aside for now, the mad emperor's successor jumped in. Is there anything more important than getting power? Asked Hegel's spirit. Much, trampled on all book pride, in a word, chief cat lady. If training can be interrupted whenever you wish, then you will begin training, asked the book, not knowing how else to entice the student. Hold the portmanteau, but wash it afterward gave the hermit the source of the horny one's evil. And what is she for? He asked the demoness in her apprentice's body. In order for me, Ryong, to receive Loli's karma, the demoness replied. Is it so distrustful? Demoness asked, after seeing the hermit's suspicious look. Mi Ryong asked for a tailor and was very nervous. Maybe she was threatened, the hermit thought. It's worth apologizing for the past, the demoness said, and the hermit didn't immediately know what she was talking about. Then the dragon empress became very angry, the demoness said. The demoness shook her hands. She didn't admit her guilt, and Mi Ryung remembered all the dialogues the demoness had. That's goodbye for now, said the horny beast, and waved her cat girl pen. Be careful out there, she said. What another show of concern, the hermit was wary. Rather worried about the girl host, said the illegal lowly, what the girl might do if the hermit goes missing.
And to Chicken Dragon, say hello to that lizard, she said lastly. Some kind of freak show, thought the hermit. And more and more of them. The hermit pulled out Hermione's pouch, time to hit the road. The two Ekai recognized the horned one and remembered her in no mean quiet words. What is this about? asked the hermit. But Chicken Dragon got off the subject. Does he really know Demona Loli? the hermit wondered. And the dragon marveled at how the devilish called herself even more. Also karma, the hermit heard, through the long hesitations of the censored matrix. Ask Loli directly, Macaque suggested to the hermit. We'll deal with that later, agreed the mad hermit. Do you want to send a cloud of Dury to test the artifact? Monkey asked. Then through Macaque's karma, the location of the Dury cloud could be illuminated. But if they miss, it's just a consolation that he's not the one who's missing. The hermit summoned a cloud of dope, and Kumar filled the entire house. Putting on the monkey's flea vest, he directed the cloud at the artifact. That one was slowly sucked into the drain like a portal, the hermit thought. Move, he commanded to the lazy developer's artifact. Cloud successfully connected to the remote level. Noah's modem squealed. Since the hermit had now gotten Makaka Karma, it would be easier for him to control the cloud. Hyun Woo tuned his senses and immersed himself in his inner vision. He slowly opened his eyes inwardly where the cloud was. Great, there it is, the hermit saw, the back of the matrix in front of him. There was a mountain of corpses decomposing in the morgue, bodies lying huddled one on top of the other. Frankenstein girl, digging through that stinking, rotten pile of pus. The thing being sought glowed faintly in the darkness of the morgue of the Matrix's ground floor zero. Found a trinket, rejoiced the Frankenstein girl. Preparations complete, the smallest thing left to do, the chimera climbed up on her multiple limbs. What's in it for me, read in the Buddha statue's eyes, once again it acted as a punching bag. And not just her, others from the Damanololi rubber-faced diaspora have gotten a lot of flack, too. The Dragon Empress had issued everyone a certificate for sanatoriums, but they still couldn't be used by anyone in this level of the Matrix. The girl finished off one and immediately shifted her gaze to another target, instantly destroying a fearsome-looking monster. One at a time, they were worth little. And even piling on all of them, and there wasn't much of a diaspora. But their main virtue was that the freaks never ran out and kept on peppering. Exhausted, the dragon empress reacted more slowly, and the raking hands got to the fragile girl to paw at her. The rubber faces did not forgive such miscalculations and rushed after the enemy. Damanololi stopped the simulator-beating rubber friends, and they melted into thin air. What are we waiting for, Demoness asked when she entered the training cave. Away from the fetishists, in the safety of the inner server, she could walk freely in all her glory. Why the hell did she do that? The first Catwoman nearly cried, clearly not because of the monsters. So angry, clapped her hands admiringly at Demonololi. Don't change the subject whenever you want, the dragon empress shrieked angrily. But she apologized already as the girl asked, Demonoli replied. Helped a little. Since they were now sharing the same body, the demoness excused herself. Every night only dreamed of the teacher, teased by the insidious demoness. Poor thing, what to do now, innocent maiden, said the devilish with her hands. With a teacher covered in flames, a mad student, but she likes him, objected the demoness. He's a teacher, cried out the embarrassed maiden. But she loves him after all, said the demoness bluntly. And that's why she drools with rainbow dreams every night, demoness finished the girl. Suffering only makes things worse for herself, she told the frustrated dragon empress. But I won't joke like that again, promised the demoness in the contract. But in that case, the secret weapon's usefulness would be lost, she said, and Miriong's ears perked up. How old do you think she is? The demoness asked. How many men she has seduced? She began a sly conversation. Who would fall for such a thing? The dragon empress said indignantly. He'll succumb at once, said the grandmother in maiden form, smugly. No doubts we must strike while the iron is hot. The insidious demoness has set her nets. There is no more skillful woman in the entire Matrix, smiled the devilish slyly. A noble monk with centuries of abstinence, he could not resist her charms. The emperor, with his many concubines, fell at the feet of Demonoli. Everyone fell before the charms of the extraordinarily beautiful demon Lola. The girl's teacher is still an insensitive chump, 
but even he can't resist Demonololi's charms, she said proudly. In one fell swoop, Demonololi chattered self-consciously, but Mirayong listened with her mouth hanging open. This meeting will be fateful, noodled the inexperienced maiden, the old grandmother. She can only share the secret with the Empress of Dragons, the demoness said, the innocent maiden both wanted and poked. Don't you need a teacher if you've been thinking for so long, the devilist said to the innocent girl. However, first, you need to get Demonololi's karma, named the devilist the price of seduction services. A crowd of rubber friends surrounded the shy and innocent maiden. Polkan, the first floor border guard, stood guard at the only entrance to the floor. Woof, he blurted out as he spotted the intruder, wearing a tracksuit. Please, here are the documents and the pass, showed everything to his colleague, the mad border guard. Quickly he, the hermit said disappointedly, but Macaque asked hurriedly to find the keys. This one, the hermit asked, fumbling for the only key in the guard dog's pocket. There's a small slot in the wall for it. The hermit remembered the developer's instructions. The morgue doors automatically unlocked. Now we can go down to the basement, the hermit thought. There was no order in this crypt. All the bodies lay as they had been thrown here by the system. The e-book with Hegel's spirit was slightly battered by the current of bad contacts. What a piece of junk Agent Rosa thought as he leafed through the ancient artifact. Reached Nietzsche, well done, third step, praised the book. But what is that languid look asked the book? All because of him, because of the teacher, clarified the book. He was not there, the maiden replied. When she went to visit him, it turned out that the teacher had already left without saying goodbye, Rosa recalled. Such an opportunity is in the cat's tail, angered the devoted student. After the third step, she became even more irritable. Not good, Hegel's spirit reflected. Do you want to seduce this mentor, Hegel's spirit asked, and the cat girl perked up her ears. The solution lies quite close, the spirit told her. The girl listened attentively. If it reaches the last stage of the book, we'll be able to control the feelings of the mentor. The maiden heard the suggestion. Are you suggesting playing with your favorite teacher's feelings? Agent Rosa asked sharply. Hegel's spirit at once denied everything, but the cat girl did not restrain her anger. The thing is, he's not the only target. The book quickly corrected itself. The language of the soul can be used on that little girl, quickly dusted off the Talmud before it was wasted. Agent Rosa marveled at the little girl, changing from anger to mercy. And conspiratorially propping her chin up with her fist, the Talmud gave out the deed. Sounding great, Rosa thought of all the creative ways to use her new powers. Control of that girl will be possible after going to the fifth volume, Encyclopedia of Philosophy, said Hegel's spirit. Good agreed the maiden steadily applying the new plan. Split in half and die, Agent Rose said, as she used the force on a simple book. In stage three, she could use the force on inanimate objects. The magic clearly worked on one of the many books from the Len Ying library. The book went to recycling with the spine cracked as it was ordered. Yuck, yuck! The mad hermit kicked the rotting piece of meat and it slurped up slop. The morgue reeked of death. The freezer must have been stolen from here, and the tester was still nowhere to be found, the hermit thought. If left in place, the rotting zombies would continue to pester, he jumped on the head of one of them. Pushing off, the hermit flew higher to look around. It seems the right point was at this level of stench, after all. In the distance in the mountains was an abandoned castle, the only structure amidst mountains of corpses. It was crawling with zombies that were poorly preserved without a freezer. Let's go take a look, said the hermit when he reached the castle gate. Be careful, the monkey king warned him. These zombies are not so easy. These are no ordinary corpses, he said, as the bulging eye sockets of one of them glittered with anger. One zombie warrior attacked, a powerful chopping lunge, so that the hermit barely had time to dodge. Hyunwoo pushed off from the opposite wall and rushed to meet the zombie warrior himself. The blast attack tore the one apart with a deafening pop but a bunch more semi-autonomous corpses ran to take the place of one. They suffered the same fate, the hermit quickly disposed of them. The impacts left a deep crater underneath, so powerful had it become. He certainly suspected that the corpses of illegals would not be easy, but in fact, they still retained physical attributes having overcome rigor mortis. The Matrix allowed them to move, 
but they still weren't serious opponents for the hermit, Makak said. Mobs to farm hero awesomeness points, the hermit realized, and started earning those points with a series of simple punches. After training with the chicken dragon, his internal processor worked faster and his reaction speed increased. So the steepness farming went on without a hitch. His movements had yet to keep up with the speed of perception, the hermit noted. But the current level for mindless, rotting corpses was quite enough. The corpses acted on reflexes, but they're not capable of much more than that, Chicken Dragon said. The select miasmas of procrastination hit the hermit's nose again. What an abomination, he tried to plug his nose, but the odor wafted through, even as he inhaled with his mouth. So that's where the noise was coming from, a voice suddenly boomed in the morgue. And here we have visitors, the Frankenstein girl said, hello. Damn it, Wonder Woman, what an abomination, said the hermit. Even the menagerie lost the gift of speech upon inspecting the Transformer model. You don't understand anything about beauty and practicality, the Chimera smiled. Why did you come? the Frankenstein girl asked. So she is a tuner, the hermit asked, and the girl nodded. A mortal cannot understand the beauty of her body. Good of you to come, I needed a live test subject, the hermit heard. Just about done with the experiment, the Chimera said. She stepped forward, the one who controls everything in her tenacious paws and claws, said the Frankenstein girl. Queen of the Hive introduced herself to the reckless Transformer girl. This is what a tester is supposed to look like, the hermit asked in disgust. To hell with talking, needing to pull herself together, she pulled a couple of her limbs out. Burn the witch, recoiled the hermit from the vile sight. Dozens of insectoid tentacles and legs emerged from the crazed tuner. The hermit dodged, but the chimera was hitting pretty hard. Stop with the Kunstkammer, he said, and gave the ugly girl a smack. The one recoiled from the staggering effect of the blow, before that only corpses could be opponents. The constructor with the name Build a Girl fell on its back. Is that it? wondered the hermit. Is she kidding? he asked the arthropod tester. Too weird, suspected Macacus. No way, said he. It's her body, said the Monkey King, first noticing its features. A strange magic ignited inside her ruined body, the hermit saw. The ground suddenly shook beneath his feet. The hermit understood nothing. Two huge searchlights peered out at him from the darkness, the eyes of an immense monster. Even the spiritual menagerie was stunned at this reversal. And the guest is no ordinary person, said the monster in Chimera's voice. How would a normal person get here? asked the mad hermit to the foolish tester. As soon as such a goofball got a position in the Matrix, he provoked Chimera. From above, Chicken Dragon shouted to him over the telepathic bridge. No way, said the gaping hermit looking up. The magical attack hit with a radius, so he barely dodged. His feet froze and the monster attacked again with magic. The lightning discharges were slowly approaching. The hermit had turned on combat mode and could see them. He ducked at the last moment and donned the vest of a flea-bitten monkey. Rusty, the hermit shouted the command and swung harder. But the huge muzzle managed to dodge the wide blow. What kind of nonsense she had done to herself, wondered the monkey king watching the fight through the live broadcast. He felt the vibrations of different karma in her, his former associates and enemies. Even the karma of the chicken dragon, Macaque said to the snake. That's it. She had connected the karmas of the murdered illegals, Makak realized. The ugly millipede laughed throughout the castle, so he has helpers, she said. That's not the whole puzzle, Chicken Dragon said, also taking a good look at the creeper. A worm able to utilize the karma it has joined, he remarked. The lightning that struck earlier belonged to a snake, agreed the Monkey King. And ice crystals from Master Procrastination's freezer, the hermit confirmed. What clever mortals, laughed the vile arthropod chimera. The hermit watched the beast crawl out of the deep hole. The zookeeper on the way out was also stunned, disgusted, looking at the ugly woman. The queen of the hive spilled out all of her cock-headed bods. And this is a queen, the hermit grimaced, more like a shabled host. This body is excellent, provocations are useless, the monster rumbled. Useless, as it were, who had just gone off the chain, replied the hermit. So demanded hive the adjuster. The chimera mumbled, showing signs of schizophrenia. Lord of corpses and their abilities flapped the chimera's mouth in a fit of megalomania. The diagnosis is not comforting, thought the hermit. And why all his opponents are brain dead, 
The Matrix has had a bad effect on them. Better be careful, said Chicken Dragon. The Chimera has quite a few karmas. At least several hundred, he added, warning the hermit. Okay, Coddle, move. Pushed away from the microphone, Snake the Monkey King. The Chimera gathered all available mana and hid ominously behind a stone ledge. What a toxic energy. The hermit unwound the bailout stick in the manner of a fan. Look around too, the hairy macaca warned him again. A firestorm of many fireballs flew at the hermit. Along with him, waves of cold flew from the other side in a combined attack. The ghosts of regrets and poorly spoken phrases pounced from behind. Meteors, ice, flames, curses, a multitude of magical attacks spewed out at the hermit. Pikachu, I choose you, he squeezed the chicken dragon balloon. A barrage of light flashes engulfed the entire battlefield. The hermit aimed a powerful punch towards the chimera. Get shouted, he did. And in one fell swoop, he blew up the rock behind which it was hiding, throwing the millipede into the air. Here I am, he said, and landed in the area of the back of the parasite's head. The chimera released the spikes from its neck to block the surprise attack. But the hermit had already released the power of a divine fetishist with many hands. The mad hermit went full blast, and there was a monstrous explosion. The millipede lay torn to shreds after such a magical attack. But the vile arthropod creature was still moving. And now the mad hermit rushed toward Chimera. But suddenly her bodies interlocked like pieces of a jigsaw puzzle. Body recovered, the hermit realized the unpleasant news. Hunwu once again dodged a series of lightning attacks, the monster attacking immediately as it recovered. He approached and swung the telescopic thunderbolt properly. The hermit nailed the schizophrenic girl so hard that sparks sprinkled from her eyes, but suddenly discovered a magical barrier in front of him. What a wall, tapped the hermit on the transparent barrier in front of him. The dragon empress was breathing heavily, emitting a bloody aura. Loli Demonis looked anxiously at her ward. The girl was doing well at first, but accepting the mind of all the yukai was still a bit difficult for her. The dragon empress smiled a devilish grin. Ended up losing her mind, Loli Demon sadly remarked. What's the firewall, the mad hermit asked the team from the zoo. It looks like the earthen wall of Horseshoe Mountain, Monkey replied thoughtfully. The energy is the same, only it's been made transparent with different karma, Macaque suggested. That's not the problem. Better look at her body. It seems the Chimera has infused most of her powers into regeneration karma, Monkey said. The farther into the forest, the thicker the partisans. Scratched the back of his head, the mad hermit. So we need to beat up the creep, faster than recovering, he said. I thought to leave the guest intact, but I guess it wasn't meant to be. Chimera excused herself. Especially for you. I'll show you my true colors. The Chimera rumbled with a rotting mouth and bit her own tail, sinking her sharp teeth deep into it. What kind of auto-cannibalism, exclaimed the hermit, the menagerie huffing again at the bizarre creature. The chimera curled into a tight cocoon and emitted an aura of dark mana. It now looked like a slimy ball of rotting flesh with an eye of rotting flesh. The lump of rottenness attacked with a multitude of thin cockroach legs. The speed of his attacks had increased greatly, and the hermit was barely dodging everyone. He moved close to the mythbo to stretch him properly, but Hrensgora's transparent magical barrier got in the way again. He was attacked by black lightning, but Hyunwu repelled it with a bloody aura. He stopped to see if his attacks had worked or not. Once again, a multitude of legs flew toward him from one point. Rotten tentacles tried to surround, but the hermit fended them off with a bailout stick. The eyeballed thing regenerated literally from a piece of flesh. If even that's not enough, we need to come up trumps, the hermit decided. Let's check out the new technique, he said, as he prepared a sheaf of electric arcs. With a kick, he tossed the stinking ball of flesh farther away to get out of range. But the cockroach's thin, nasty legs reached for him again. A pain in the sciatic, clenching his teeth, the hermit dodged a multitude of attacks. Cuttlefish, covered in sinister mana and fully recovered. Not bad, thought the hermit. His opponent wasn't particularly powerful. Balls of ice flew towards him again, the creature switching to ranged attacks. Hyun Wu easily knocked down the weak magic with a bailout stick. Fireballs flew in, in exactly the same order. The devil chimera had simple attack patterns that even the hermit became bored. He easily repelled the already known sequence of magic shots, but even so, the problems didn't end. 
Not too absolute a regeneration power for such a rotten thing strained the hermit. If he procrastinates any longer, he'll simply run out of strength and the creature will win. The chicken dragon swept up the same thing, time to wrap up, said he. Better suggest a weak spot, admirals, shouted Hyun Wu to the menagerie. But he is gone, replied the monkey king. A monster almost immortal, agreed the chicken snake. But there is one oddity said the sly macacus, stretching his words to annoy the hermit. At first, he thought all the karmas were gathered in the center of the huge body, coddling the furry one while the hermit was beaten to death. There's a karma battery, macaque concluded, somewhere outside the body, indeed realized. Chicken dragon, <laughs> agreeing with monkey. <laughs> you can whenever you want, said the serpent, at least you're good for something fleabag. All you can do is fly and shit. The hermit heard his friends bickering again and shouted to them to look for vulnerability, not talk. What were those strange sounds? The hermit froze for a second to look around. A huge fireball flew at him, covering his entire field of view. The magic swept past, scorching the skin on his face. He barely dodged it. The snake wagged its tail as if it had noticed something, something wrong the dragon had said to the hermit. Is it true, Captain? asked the hermit, dodging another attack. There is a faint connection between the pillar and the cliff, Chicken Dragon outlined. The hermit looked at the lone stalactite that stuck out like an antenna. All the other stalactites had long since collapsed, but this one remained intact, he noticed. Hyun Wu decided to quickly check their guesses and rushed towards the target. Meat Thing tried to hold him back by freezing his legs off. Oh, if she's reacting like that, there's definitely something there, the hermit exclaimed. Don't, Uncle Uncle yelled the strange creature after the mad hermit. The level boss got nervous, how wonderful, gloated Hyunwu, and with a mighty kick, he broke the stone pillar to pieces. A magic crystal shone brightly in the middle. Good thing I didn't have to gut anything, the hermit thought. There goes the Koshai's needle, said Chicken Dragon, recognizing the item he was looking for. Thanks, Cap, the mad hermit answered him and held out his hand for the crystal. All the claws that MIT boy had on hand reached out to Hyunwu but he had already managed to mercilessly crush the beautiful trinket. Deep in the yokai tabor, a mad dragon empress ran rampant, tearing immortal images with her bare hands and bathing in their blood. A normal person would have lost their mind long ago, Loli Demon remarked, but the girl held on. Albeit faintly, reason still flowed in her frantic head. The craving for madness was getting stronger and stronger. Every second, she could lose control completely. She tore the monsters apart over and over again, and it wasn't enough for her. The meatball shrank, its magical connection to the source severed. It was writhing in agony, cursing the mortal who'd taken karmas. The beast unleashed its last magical powers on the hermit, hoping to defeat it with a single attack. Time is short, suggested the monkey king. We must hurry, he stated the obvious. Fed up with the admirals, the hermit gritted his teeth and dodged the schizophrenic monster. The time of borrowed karma with the flea bag vest was coming to an end, Hyun Wu realized. Now let's go full castaway, the mad hermit decided. Thunderclouds suddenly gathered in the dark cave who touched the climate control, wondered the tester. Dragon troll mode on, the mad hermit plugged in his horns. This is where it ends now, he gathered a tremendous amount of power on his fingertip. Mana from the clouds rushed towards his outstretched finger as he put his hand up. What a trick. The ugly creature was horrified, sensing something amiss. To interrupt the hermit's cast, simple but powerful spells flew at him again. But he still stood unwaveringly without canceling the cast of magic. The art of the Tao, it's not like showing electroshock tricks Chicken Dragon taught him. Let the energy into the sky and seize space, the hermit recalled practicing the Tao. Add a drop of ink to it, don't try to make it perfect, the dragon taught. Just enough to touch the clouds with your energy. At the very end, unleash all the lightning that you have into everything that moves. Outline the essence of the Tao of the Chicken Dragon. This is the essence of the lightning tree technique created by the Chicken Dragon. The craving for madness overtook the devoted student with a headache. He stopped hearing his thoughts altogether. The momentum didn't wane despite the fact that she'd already held on so long. Maybe that kind of strength would be enough. She's already holding on longer than last time the apprentice doubted. Maybe she should go after her secret desires already, she thought. How much can you hold back and wear yourself out? Whispered a voice from within. 
Why become someone's puppet apprentice? Suddenly heard the master's voice. She looked in his direction. The demons inside subsided and retreated at once. He appeared before her as he had the first time, mysterious and majestic. Is she so weak as to not believe in herself? The hermit image asked. All because of her parents for controlling her like a puppet on a leash, he asked. Since that was the case, nothing needs to be changed, wondered the foreman. If the past bothers you so much, just blot it out. Erase it from your memory, the mad hermit advised. And reassemble yourself from now on as if your birthday is today, he said. Past erased, he gave her a new name after a session of intense psychotherapy. Her name is Miriong, the image of the mad hermit smiled. The rotten Scolopendra squirmed in the hundreds of lightning discharges that burned through it. The shock therapy worked perfectly on the schizophrenic girl. She was squirming in pain. That was a good one, the hermit marveled, pleased with the result. In past fights where he fought smaller opponents, such a technique could not be used, but on a huge Scolopendra, it would be fine. A useful thing these Daos of yours are, the mad hermit realized casting aside past prejudices. From the strong recoil, the lightning bolts blocked the monster's regeneration. That you're not recovering anymore, he told the rotten sod. Here he bit the electrode. It will be easier now, he soothed the dead animal. It won't hurt, because the current will vaporize the nerve tissue faster, the caring vet explained. Rusty, he pulled out his stick, tearing his body from muzzle to tail into small pieces. The dragon-headed Scolopendra let out one last pitiful wheeze. The mad hermit exhaled and surrendered the flea-bagged robe to the owner without even washing it. A dropped tester item appeared in his hand. Some of the information about it was hidden by the system as usual. A secret place was set up for experiments. Something there, Hyunwoo read. If it's a developer's key, there's definitely something inside, the hermit realized. I'll just pick it up and show it to Noah, the lazy hermit decided. He pulled a ring from his pocket and commanded a cloud of Dury. Now needing to find a way out, the hermit soared over the mountain of corpses. He hovered slowly, trying to figure out where to go. Topographical cretinism was taking its toll. It seems to go to the south, Chicken Dragon suggested. Or west, the serpent hesitated. His orienteering wasn't any better. Just stand on the cloud and look around the walls, suggested the hairy macaque. The dragon empress came to her senses after remembering her teacher. The crowd of yukai surrounded the girl again, but now she felt empowered. She gathered Demonololi's energy around her, letting the rubber diaspora get closer. Perfect. Patted her demoness who was watching the battle from the side. The damsel was talented and, and, and very quickly mastered Loli's power. With nothing else to do, out with the stuff, the deviless constructed a portal. But the girl hesitated, not knowing where to begin this conversation. What's the matter? the cunning demoness asked. She knew what it was, of course, but watching the innocent maiden tremble was a pleasure. This crumpled the innocent but very persistent student, becoming suddenly meek. Give me the secret weapon, she told the wily deviless. A secret weapon made the horned beast look incomprehensible. To hell with it all. The maiden couldn't stand it any longer and was about to run for her life. Chill out, it's about which secret weapon she wants, the demoness reassured the girl. An experienced lowly priestess should have more than one weapon, the deviless admonished. Depending on the character, status, relationship, strategy of seduction can be different, shared experience, priestess, lol. So one needs this and that, this way and that way. The more she spoke, the more the dragon empress's eyes flared. The girl liked it so much she didn't want to let go of the experienced lowly. Each weapon has its place and time, said the demoness. Here we play innocence, here seductress. It's the basics, she said. But the choice is yours, the priestess of Lole shared. I'm not sure what will work. On the mentor, she answered Miriong's question. There are two things. The first attack a little bit, but persistently, signs of attention, light touches, but most importantly, persistently. Stubbornly, wondered the mad student. Right? agreed the demoness. That was the only way to achieve an unusual atmosphere. But at what point, the innocent maiden, like the hermit, confused her social skills? Well, or solve everything in one salvo, continued the devilish, risky, but if it works, depicted the devilish obscenities. But the clueless dragon empress still didn't understand anything, and she knew love from children's fairy tales. How much easier, priestess Lole clenched Miriong's cheeks.
Fast but risky, slow but sure, explained the devilish essence of the choice. But what else could a mad apprentice, a mad hermit, choose? It was a warm spring day. He was lying on her warm lap. She was stroking his hair with a gentle hand. The gentle rays of the sun warmed the couple that couldn't take their eyes off each other. The girl looked at him with her ruby eyes in love. He couldn't resist her innocence and his hand reached up to pluck that flower. For a moment she staggered back, not knowing what to do, but then bent to meet him like a flower after a rainstorm. Cutie Co. Jan's ears were slowly turning red from the pages she had just read. She looked away for a moment, took a breath, and went back to reading. In the end, this love fanfic pulled her in really hard and she was curious to know what was next. It's not every day you read about your significant others. Especially since what was written was not without merit, the apprentice really did not move away from her master, the girl tensely pondered. She's usually completely unemotional, as if she doesn't care about anything remembered cute C.O. Yan. Written clearly fiction, but the author wrote very vividly, I wanted to know the sequel. Arrived, the driver interrupted the embarrassed beauty's pondering. Is there a magical teleportation circle here? Asked the fox Alice, when they found themselves at the mini replica of the Forbidden City. They came to experiment with magic circles. As soon as they showed up, they were already greeted by a cute Seo Yan who noticed the minions. They suddenly formed two rows as if they were holding an official reception at the Imperial Palace. The Dragon Empress's servants were letting them through so they could enter, decided the girls. It's a big building. Maybe we should split up and find the circle faster. Ah, heard a languid sigh coming from the closed room. Cutie, Seo, Yan. Ooh, what a sound surprised pretty girl, and peeked inside. Teacher, a languid high-pitched voice came out, and the cute Seo, Yan was stunned. First floor, said the eyed devil who had just begun her ascent. But what is it? He noticed a peacefully snoring body, not far away. The examiner's out of it, you know red-faced, drunk or something. What the devils are here, a replacement or something, heard the red-faced one. The eyes in the back of my head considered the guy in the tracksuit who entered. The new examiner, asked the red devil, of the guy who entered. Heard there's a lot of funny types in the tower right on, laughed the devil. I'm so sick of these lunatics. The morgue is nearby, if anything, the hermit replied. You're cheeky, have some more fun, said the devil, but got a sleeping pill in the form of a slipper. Sleep a little said the mad hermit, and put the red-faced man to bed. Mocking the weak is not good, it's embarrassing, sneered Hyun Woo's beasts. The first catwoman arched her back, too hard and tense than required, but her talents were in her face. A little more curve and lift, she twisted her hips in front of the mirror. But it's so embarrassing, do we have to do this? The dragon empress thought to herself as the cute Seo Yan walked into the room. Now turning back, Mi Ryong spoke without noticing that she was being watched. What's going on? So, Yan didn't know what to do, whether it's that Mi Ryong is crazy or not. Witnesses don't live long, the mad demoness muttered. Pretty Seo Yeon shrank fearfully in front of the mad empress's face. Since she is the teacher's friend one cannot kill, reasoned the innocent maiden in anger. Just erase the memories. Don't worry, yokai will only bite her once, said the mad deviless. I didn't see anything. I don't know anything. The frightened cutie so young begged for mercy. A little bite. It didn't hurt at all, soothed the mad empress. Wah, use it. But it's a disgrace, argued the student with the demoness while Seo Yeon froze in horror. You'll come in handy. Let's leave the memory wipe for now, the apprentice said. But in return, So Yeon heard Malaka and tensed up at what they might ask for in return. You'll be working for me, the mad student said menacingly. Agent Rose focused. She stood in the center of Len Ying's library. Let's get started, the determined Catwoman commanded, and got ready. Dozens of books flew out of their places on the shelves and sprinkled in hail. The girl commanded her to stop, and the books obediently froze as if alive. Place, she shouted the command from the book magic again, and the books flew back. But one strong tome with a literacy on the matrix hit me on the head. The fourth step is still a bit heavy, concluded Hegel's spirit. No one had ever reached this level so quickly. The spirit didn't finish. The girl grabbed the relic tightly. Why didn't you put it away at once? Resented the girl strongly. She gripped the page like she was ready to let it go to toilet paper. 
Just a test, Spirit yelled. Don't tear it. What was the point of this training if she was using this ability before she even met the Spirit? Strengthening exercises before the next step, the student heard the Spirit's explanation. The mind grip is inside the control radius. Master it, then she can defeat that little brat, Rosa realized. Where does the master wear the slave accountant wailed, so many documents still to be approved? Cautious Shiken came to help the girl. He asked her to give him the documents. Here, she held out a stack of papers to him, and as he reached for it, lightly touched the slave girl's hand. Thankful for the help, the couple turned away in different directions in embarrassment. Shiken, the slave girl addressed him embarrassed, and he took a step closer. An arm lightly clasped her waist and pulled gently towards her. Shurken gently leaned towards her. Idly, friends burst into the guild room with food and other snacks. The couple pretended to work and looked unhappily at the entrance. Hyun Wu brought the item to another appraiser, while the pawn shop at Av's was temporarily closed. Was she definitely a tester? the hermit asked. She looked too dumb. He briefly described Chimera with a bunch of karmas and schizophrenia, to the point where he wondered about the downfall of a former employee, Noah. The girl had originally planned to create omnipotent karma, but ended up stealing other people's karma, and this led to insanity. Everyone associated with the Matrix Tower Project are sick bastards, said the hermit. Now we can visit the vault, Noah said, since the waiting time is over. The hermit picked up the tester's crystal and looked at its status once more. Pass, he commanded, and moved to the vault's internal server. The connection was established quickly, the server was small by the looks of it. Boris Mart put him in a similar cell, and the hermit looked around in the confined space. The frozen images of the illegals stood before him, gray as if they were statues made of concrete. Great job, mewed the fox, happy to be finished, and soon to be delicious. Dying of fatigue, stretched beauty, Sio Yan with a sporty top. Progress is great even with the system stated the fox, grabbing a stick. Sweet Seo Yeon looked at her characteristics and her status. In just a couple weeks, she had gotten one mana discharge. Normally growth boundaries are set in a tower. Once you leave it, growth slows down, but now it was growing fast again. Isn't it time to go? asked Alice the fox, reminding him of his errand. The dragon empress asked for something, the fox said. Ah, that very thing, a shiver ran through her body. The hotties in the sports top had better wipe her memory. Like a statue, the hermit picked Boris Mart's nose as the real one marveled at him. But how they should help. Hyun Woo didn't understand why there was all this fuss. Oh, Thunderbolt Electric, he saw the concrete sculpture of a fifth-rate foreman. It's an image of an illegal alien, the hermit heard the hermit explain. There is still karma emanating from the body, even though it looks like a statue. Besides, look ahead, and Hyun Woo glanced further down the hallway. He was very surprised to see the familiar statues, the illegals, Emma Boy, Macaque, and Master Freezer. Everyone who died in the tower gathered in this vault, Monkey said, true to the serpent's confirmation. His body should be here somewhere, too. The hermit looked up and saw a huge boa constrictor above him. So you went to the vault, Noah asked him on his return. A terracotta army, but what good are they, the hermit replied. None so far, the developer evasively replied. But what if they become allies? How else, wondered the mad hermit. He held everyone back. What is this? He asked Noah as he pulled a strange ball out of his pocket. A thing that will help turn said things into reality to change everything. The hermit heard and rejoiced greatly. Convince the illegals to fight for you, Noah simply suggested to him. It's been a long time since he's been beaten up, the hermit thought. Once again, everyone is beaten up or something said by the main character of a shonen manga. Is there another way? He asked when Noah gave up on the previous one. The procedure is simple, in and of itself, the programmer decided to explain in more detail. You need to go to the remote server to the illegal, talk to him, download your consciousness into this stone, and then come with it to the vault where the body is imprisoned. The hardest part is convincing them to support him. Noah explained calmly. Convince these lunatics, the hermit remembered all the lunatics he'd dealt with in the last hundred years. And is it even possible with the fucking menagerie he's already packed? Okay, hermit, it dawned on me. There's someone who won't fight back. There it is, he blurted out to the clueless programmer. There is a way. The menagerie has been with him for a long time, so they can easily be revived. 
But what would he do himself then? The developer asked him. You revive the Monkey King. You'll have to pay back all the karma you borrowed from him. In other words, you can't use it anymore, Noah explained. And the chicken dragon gave up a mere grain of karma, which means he'll only be reborn with it, and it won't be much use. The annoyed hermit sat back in his chair, and he just thought he had found a way out. But you can also give up borrowed karma, Noah suggested. But the hermit refused. He still needed it. He sprawled out on the table. The thought of eliminating an important bump in the tower only caused more problems. To end the Matrix Tower, eliminating the test mate was necessary. It wasn't for nothing Noah had calmed down. By the way, what about Av? Founder asked the hermit, remembering about the white-haired peeper. So far, nothing he heard the answer. More importantly, the Fenka he asked for is ready. The developer held out the device to the hermit. Now he could get into the developer's secret apartment from the ninth floor without Mangaka's portmanteau. Resurrect us and you can't use karma, confirmed Makak, the programmer's words. So they didn't hear the conversation with Noah. At the secret apartment, the hermit asked and learned that the system carefully filters all leaks. Is it possible to resurrect the menagerie so as not to give away karma? The hermit asked them. <laughs> there is one way. The monkey king cheerfully raised his finger up. To do it, he didn't finish. Just act like you did with the Dury Cloud. Get personal credit, said Makak but it wasn't fast enough for a cheater. The chicken dragon understood Hyun Wu's indignation and informed him that there was another way. Master, we're back, sang the fox Alice as she walked in with the cute Seo Yoon. All done, his haughty friend asked, and he said he was fine. Great, said the girl and sat down closer. The hermit realized it wasn't for nothing. Two weeks ago, her performance glasses grew a lot. Does he know anything about it? The girl asked. What did Shu Ken say? asked the hermit. He thought that such a stature was something common. After all, he was a cheater himself. But Shuken's characteristic points had also increased dramatically, the hermit recognized. It must be the consequences of his dismissal of the tester who had been in charge of the balance of the system, but it had only been a week, the hermit thought. While he was thinking, the cute Seo Yun had her ears perked up, time to casually ask the main question. But he's such a tightwad. So Jan worried about whether it would be okay, and finally decided to say it. What kind of girls does he like? The cute Seo Yeon asked bluntly. The hermit, with his low social sense, did not understand the question itself or its meaning. He strained all his meager knowledge of the subject, and strained to think. What? shrieked the gears, unable to process a normal request. Just describe your type, said the girl annoyed. He wanted to give out the only hypothesis he had. Maybe she liked him, but he didn't finish as the cutie got really pissed off. For journalists, the hermit asked, but the cutie sharply replied no. But then why didn't the hermit with low social skills understand? Just lay it out pressed on him by his persistent friend. An ideal, and one he had in principle, of seven celestial women, the furry macacus dreamily declared especially the first of them, drooled, lustful Makaka, that even Snake shamed him, on whom he opened his mouth fleabag. The Monkey King asked him in retaliation, and the Chicken Dragon replied, Of course, he has very different roots. And the fourth one came to the hayloft by herself, said Makak. The dragon was indignant. Don't you dare defile the daughter of the Jade Emperor, he said. And who in the heavenly brothel almost had their karma stolen while they were scratching behind their ears? snickered Macacus. Gad, blurted out the dragon, and who took women as victims finished him monkey. Hyunwu thought how tired he was of those voices in his head. That's when he got another brilliant thought in his bright head. Finally remembered, rejoiced cute Seo Yeon. Now I won't have to endure a bite from the tiger. And he showed her the screen of his phone. For a couple of seconds, the girl scrutinized what she saw. What a taste he has, Hermit Isvarat. The girl was horrified. I wonder who he's already decided who he's going to resurrect, he thought. But when he caught sight of the copy stone. And speaking of birds, thought the slacker programmer. He walked over to an elaborate hologram that acted as a Google search. Looked like a magical pentagram, but essentially an extra dumb effect. Noah swiped his finger across the touch-sensitive portion of the holographic screen, and a status window appeared. Why doesn't she want to see him? He asked himself, looking at the message. 
When the time comes, I'll meet him myself, don't say anything, was written in a message signed Av, Red Developer. What to think? Everything will definitely work out, whispered the innocent maiden experienced lowly, but she still doubted. Are you scared or what? Demoness asked. You're worried. If anything goes wrong, the relationship will never be the same again. The innocent girl thought about these words. Lend me your body for a while, the demoness asked. Ten hours, and she'd charm him completely, she offered as a guaranteed option. The servants reported that Seo Yeon had come, and the maiden tried to hide her embarrassment. Did you manage to find out the master's preference? The impatient student asked, and the cute Seo Yeon timidly said, Yes. Here, stretched out he telephone screen, the Empress of Dragons brought the phone closer to take a better look. Such, wondered the girl. Twelve of the thirteen levels of the Matrix are closed, the monk reported the unpleasant news. And what is the reason? asked the angry lord of Manganese. A glitch? Or a system glitch? Maybe a Trojan was caught? Monk didn't know the reasons. But it is known who has access rights to control the Matrix levels, Monk said. Ah, that beastie, realized who he was talking about, the lord of Manganese, and smiled evilly. The possibility cannot be ruled out, the monk replied, recalling Sishyadmin. I thought she was dead, but she was found, and she's with a border guard outsider, the lord said, and the monk was surprised he didn't know that information. Like I said earlier, the lord released some manganese effects and hit the indestructible textures of the tower with them. I'll be idle, he finished the sentence. What crooked effects they drew from the destruction, the monk thought. No gimmicks or tricks, said the lord, striking a spark between his fingers. The battle of the two welders would be legendary. But this time there were too many harem elements attached to the border guard, envied the lord of the manganese. I'll help once, he promised the monk, who couldn't have hoped for such a gift. She closed the floors briefly, sparking the lord's wiring so he wouldn't come down, stalling for time, he concluded. In that case, we'll use another place, he promised the monk ominously. Crazy day, even for a crazy hermit, Hyunwoo sighed. Let's get back to our dragons. What was the method he was talking about? Karmas can be studied at the same time, Chicken Dragon suggested to him. The hermit scrambled to listen to the explanation, but the gist of it was that there was a trick that would make it quick and cheater-like. We need to use the spatial time circle, Snake said. The technique divides into several parts, he said, and the hermit recoiled from his nightmares, but the dragon reassured him. The program was just triggering his consciousness. It was possible to create, for example, five virtual copies and give each task and study five karmas at the same time. The cheater had to like this. Big rewards, big risks, just like in life, the dragon warned. Strain your brain intervened Macacus when the hermit asked what he was risking. The costs of spiritual power will become higher, dumbass, the monkey king replied to him. The burden of the Duri cloud was equal to ten years. Five karmas would equal the burden of half a century of effort, Macaque warned. All due to the acceleration peculiarities on the server, Chicken Dragon said. According to the rules of hidden levels, there is no fatigue, but pain is felt to the fullest. In other words, it all depends on the amount of spiritual power, the hermit concluded. Right now, the best option is to create just two virtual images, the dragon said. There is no other way, Makakich confirmed. This training session will be different from the previous ones, because the goal is to get two animal karmas at once. Okay, I get it. The hermit accepted. It's not going to work to create a thousand shadow clones like in Naruto. Speaking of birds, the Monkey King changed the subject. Is it true, he asked, of the hermit? About your preferences, clarified the furry monkey when the hermit didn't understand him. Of course everyone has their own perversions, Macaque condescendingly remarked. Isn't it a little small? The dragon wondered. It's not just that, Macaque added, and the hermit asked them what it was about. The girl in the picture he showed cutie, so Yon reminded monkeys. I made it all up. I just showed the game screen, the first thing that came to hand, justified the mad hermit. He's making excuses, so he's definitely hiding something, Isvar Shinets, whispered quietly to the dragon. Monkey, generally similar to his female students, Chicken Dragon agreed, definitely insane. Lolodemon adjusted the antennae. He knew the hermit was strange, but to be so, she said to the innocent maiden. So the reason why nothing had worked before, the dragon empress asked a leading question. 
Forget the word defeat childishly, replied Lolly Demon. Prepare to act according to the plan we discussed earlier, he told the innocent maiden over the telepathic link. First let's do this, then that, and then wow, that one, the demoness whispered to her. And even that very thing, the innocent but devoted student was embarrassed. Sweet Seo Yan came to her senses and vented her soul by reading love stories. Her low blushed with embarrassment, and she confessed to Kim Hyun Woo, read Beauty Seo Yan. And yet the fanfic matched the real story. Is there really something between them began to suspect the teacher and student, Seo Yeon. The picture shown was for diversion. The hermit was too asocial for such a thing, Seo Yeon realized. But if she went to the dragon empress empty-handed, there would be a disaster. What I bought, I sold, let them sort it out themselves, the girl decided for herself. Apprentice, the hermit scrutinized his ward, head to toe, and once more in reverse order. Yes, teacher, humbly greeted his faithful student after so many days. What's this? He finally asked, pointing to a case of liquor nearby. Alcohol, answered honestly the student, but he could see that already. He looked at the open top and the bare belly of the mad student, and there was no way he could grasp the context. Why is she dressed like that, like a heroine from a game into cosplay? Wondered the hermit. The maiden caught the teacher's gaze in embarrassment. At the exposed parts, he involuntarily lingered longer than he should have. But why should I show my hobbies didn't understand the hermit as the apprentice opened the first bottle? Master, she held out the first glass with ice cubes. Please, master, the girl stood up to hand him the alcohol. What is it? he asked. Just drink it, she replied. He asked again several times but got the unchanged answer. Just drink it. She was too insistent, and the hermit felt uncomfortable with the pressure. I knew it. The demoness grabbed her horns. The dopey girl never drank. That's why she's doing it so slick. Why offer a drink without an appetizer and just for no reason? The horny one asked. But the girl brushed it off. I see a goal with no obstacles. The fool is inexperienced, but oh, he's no better either, huffed the demoness that she had underestimated the couple's social skills. If everything was solved by alcohol, there was no need for all the other techniques, the demoness said grudgingly. Shouldn't everything be like this? Didn't the dragon empress realize she had done everything right? Getting the teacher drunk and cementing the relationship isn't that right? The devoted student reflected. One glass won't be enough, for one so hard-headed, the demoness said. What hangs on now, perplexed the mad hermit, completely unaware of other people. Cosplay, now drinking, sure she's of age, she can do what she wants, but why, he thought. Wanting to just relax after everything that had happened, he imagined a fun sit-down. But the alcohol that she took was meant to get wasted, he remarked. Only absinthe tincture is stronger, the hermit looked into his glass, we could start with beer. Let's finish this quickly and get out of here, he decided, and suddenly took the glass from the cat girl's hands. Hyun Woo knocked it over in one gulp and regretted it. It was like taking a sip of jet fuel. Act the innocent maiden, the horny lowly suddenly became excited at the unexpected good fortune. Offer another glass before he regained his senses, insisted the demoness, and talk. Though no, she changed her mind. Better not talk. But what to do, the cat girl freaked out. It was time to make decisions, she uttered, discarding other unreliable options. One of two things, or retreat, said the lord of Lolai. Either drink it yourself, go to plan B, commandeer the seduction operation of Lolly Demoness. Either he'll fall or you'll get intoxicated, since you can't outdrink him anyway. And a slight hint would be enough, the demoness whispered to the innocent maiden. Now is the best opportunity until the competitor isn't around, the demoness reminded the hesitant cat girl. If this is some kind of joke, began the hermit. But the mad cat woman jumped up sharply. Wait five minutes, better. Three, she became incredibly serious, as if she was going to kill someone. Good, agreed the hermit, wondering what the hell was going on in the maiden's heads. Luckily for him, an invitation came from a long-lost friend. The invitation turned on immediately upon reading, and the hermit immediately moved. Welcome, he was greeted by a Pisea, who had arrived recently and the virtual apartment was unusually clean. A white-haired android, the hermit wondered if it was her. What if it was a fake? I'll crack it just in case, thought the mad hermit, and slammed the neural network into the monitor.
Why again? The neural net beeped, and Hyunwoo made sure it was still the same Av. Always manhandling, said the android Av resentfully. But the hermit gently patted her on the head like a kitten. A lot of things happened, he told the neural network girl, need to be told. And to me, Av smiled, she was regaining more and more of her human senses. What she couldn't say before, the hermit asked. The girl answered correctly, but before doing so, she paused. I'm sure the developer has already explained everything, but I'd like to introduce myself, she said. Hyunwoo listened attentively and didn't understand why the Matrix dwellers were so fond of long introductions and boring titles. Sis Yadmin, the girl finally said, keeping an eye on the whole Matrix. Gaff, Polkin said as he woke up from a long and sound sleep. What's wrong, he said, and the room shook with the sudden change. A whole gaudy altar of marble rose from below, a means of communicating with the upper floors of the Matrix. Polkan recognized the device. The first floor exam is removed. Everyone starts on the ninth, he read. The red-skinned, clear-eyed man also awoke after a long, healing sleep. Where is that doctor? I'll give him an enema myself, the red-skinned barbarian resented. That man in the tracksuit rose higher. Polkan's tail wagging happily, that there was somewhere to fuse the troubled illegal alien. So she didn't even know who she really was, the hermit recognized Av's story. But why kill yourself? he asked worriedly to the neural network. Now it was clear why it had slowed down at first. That she would tell him later, the white-haired android girl answered him. Now agreeing to everything, teacher, stammering from the drink, said the innocent maiden. She timidly opened her eye to gauge his reaction but didn't know the hermit had slipped away, and she didn't know to whom. To drink is to drink. The dragon empress has gone on a bender. A complete failure, she admitted her defeat and poured alcohol on her wounds. Stop drinking, the demoness told her. The customer is gone, there's no point. The teacher escaped, lolly demon coined, and the drunken cat girl reached for a refill. Suddenly a loyal henchman appeared. What was there? The disappointed cat woman asked. A message from the association, an illegal is about to show up, the henchman handed her. Two hours later, still and close by, the Empress of Dragons smiled. Fine, I'm in the mood to beat up some asshole, the drunken cat lady decided. The ninth floor of the Matrix was closed, Av. The hermit was surprised to learn this information. That's right, confirmed his conclusion by the android girl. After the hermit gained higher access in the system, she was able to regain her lost memories. She recognized all the current situation in the tower, and that the illegals from its top wanted to kill him. The ninth floor could soon be destroyed, the android girl warned. She locked him out, but it took her a long time to get in touch. And how long will it last? asked the hermit. A month or two, replied the white-haired woman. That doesn't sound very definitive, the mad hermit remarked. As best she could, bitten girl, she reminded him of her circumstances. Because of her escape from the development team, she had to put restrictions on her own memory so she wouldn't be found by the system. And it still hasn't come back all the way, she told the hermit. The hermit replied clearly. So when the floor opens, a whole bunch of illegals will pile in, the hermit realized. And it will take people to protect it, the girl agreed. The Matrix Tower invaders can't come down, said the girl. But the illegals from below will easily rise to the occasion, Hyunwoo heard. Disappointing news. Now their numbers will increase by the same token, Av warned. There has been a change in the tower. The engineer has taken away Sisyadmin's powers, and the first floor is now connected to the ninth floor. The damned Gaijin burst through the maze, trampling the monsters. I'll tear my jaws open. I'll gouge out my blinkers, the red-faced glazoon shouted threateningly. That was the exit he passed through the purple portal to the other side. But he was already being greeted ceremoniously the empress lollygagging in all her glory. Just don't slink away quickly, the horned beast said angrily. Life had not prepared the illegal for this. They had just met. He was already doubted. Perhaps to quench your anger a little, the dragon empress went on the offensive. Since the floors are interconnected, any illegal alien can get to the ninth floor. One illegal is a lot of trouble. But what happens when there are hundreds of them, the hermit thought. But who to ask for help pondered the mad hermit, digging through the list of minions. Hana Rin, currently busy perusing the Talmuds in her personal terrain. Miryong is trained by Demon Loli, albeit in strange techniques, but those are details. 
cautious Shaken for getting a discharge from Master Electrician. And the useless snoring fox, really, why did he only remember her? Ugly said Hyun Wu when he found out oh, there would be about a dozen illegals every day or more. <laughs> Good thing he'd killed the tester earlier, the android girl reminded herself. Or else she could raise her monster dead from the morgue. Originally, those who failed to reach the end of the tower tree were restored by the system after time. The hermit recalled something like this being said by Master Electric, he's just waiting. Regenerate faster, the Mad Empress ordered, and punched the red illegal once more. Barely dodging, the barbarian dodged the deadly attack on reflexes. That's it. He's used to her speed by now, there's a chance of winning, thought the clear-eyed man. A trainer with an evasion function, excellent, said the Empress, appearing behind the back of the merciless barbarian. Already dead, the dragon empress kicked the breathless body with her foot frustratedly. Sobered at last, she heard the cat girl's experienced Loli's voice and told her to be quiet. Why angry, but the girl pouted frustratedly and didn't answer. After such a disgrace, why did you listen to such advice? The cat lady said indignantly. We got him to pay attention to her, we should be glad, said the experienced Loli. He wasn't interested in her before the experienced Demonali reminded. But he just ran away. The innocent maiden blushed with embarrassment. That's the thing, he ran away, the experienced Demonaloli insisted. He used to blatantly ignore all offerings and signs of attention. Now openly escaped, such an action is not of the mind, the demoness continued. In other words, Koshkodayeva he cares. The conclusion caught the girl off guard. The red barbarian hissed as he came to his senses. What was going on, he didn't immediately realize. The teacher likes her. The maiden blushed pink and crushed the head of the cockroach beneath her. The hermit won't be gone for a month if you go to train with shadow clones, Chicken Dragon warned. That's why the preparations will begin now, the hermit said, and called his entire entourage. Glad to hear dear hunter Kim Hyun Woo, greeted the wily politician Kwai Gon. The furry beast is about to swoop in, the hermit warned of disaster. There are some things worth doing, he told the wily senator. But the senator already knew of the invasion and was about to call the hermit himself. The association has a special radar that sees all the illegals on the horizon. When first activated, it shows seven phenomena of illegal aliens, the senator shared. Of course, thanks to the dramatic increase in the characteristics of hunters, the situation has leveled out somewhat. So it's a ubiquitous phenomenon, the hermit remembered Cutie Seoyan's words. But now it's on hand since we need to deal with the illegals, the hermit said, counting on the senator's help. Business taken care of, time to talk to the gang, muttered the mad mobster. Gathering everyone this early is unusual, remarked a cautious shirken. Better help with the work, wailed the slave girl. The fox snored loudly. All gathered, the mad hermit quickly got to the point. What is it this time, the cautious Shikan asked, and he was nearly blinded by sparks of happiness. The innocent maiden didn't even hide the strength of her feelings and purred contentedly. The entourage couldn't help but notice how the dragon empress was sprawled out. What's wrong with her? Hung over the briefing a mute question. Has she completely lost her mind? Asked a cautious Shikan, but the hermit himself wanted to know. I have to say something, he began, eyeing the catwoman warily. I'm off to a special gym for a month, he warned his friends. I'll leave all the work to you, darling, said the mad hermit. Come back, spelled Agent Rose on the command line, flying books. The books obediently flew further to dust on the shelves. In a short period of time, the maiden had obtained what took the spirit dragon a thousand years to obtain. A real talent, Hegel's spirit realized as he watched the tired girl. Midway through the fourth stage, he informed her of her impressive progress. That's not the problem, the maiden said grudgingly. There's a bad feeling, as if while she's here sweating and practicing, the little one is taking advantage of the teacher's freedom. Let's move on, decided the mad student. What's the drag? How about a break for rest and preparation suggested by Hegel's spirit? Great, so we can visit that little thing for now, Agent Rosa rejoiced. Preparations are complete. The boys won't be lost for a month, the hermit informed Noah. There's a risk of mind destruction after training with shadow clones, Noah reminded him. But you can get stronger in a short time, the hermit replied. What about the item that will help convince the illegals to fight for our team? The hermit asked. Here it is. The developer handed over one of his many scrolls. 
The thing allowed for an equitable contract, ideal for cooperation in uncertain environments, the hermit read. So he already knows who to call for the match, Noah asked him, since he's willing to use the contract. You can trust him. A hundred years of pissing in the same bushes, replied the satisfied hermit. The hermit finished drawing a large magical circle. What if everything takes more than a month, Hyun Wu wondered. Let's increase the speed inside the hidden level so we'll gain some extra time, Chicken Dragon reassured him. Then let's go, the hermit decided, no more delaying the inevitable. The circle activates with good control of the Tao power, reminded Chicken Snake. You must first gather all the power in your hand, he repeated the instruction, and then begin to manage the basics of the technique. The hermit concentrated, and the technique worked, the Dracono reported. He stood in front of himself as if he were looking in a mirror. It was impossible to tell who was real and who was a clone. It looked just like him, the hermit noticed, and even pinched the clone in front of him. Very strange sensations, thought both hermits in sync. The preparation for the study of karma is complete, the monkey king said. Now choose who gets which chair, said Chicken Dragon. Behind each of the beasts appeared a door with a test of personal karma. Once the workout is complete, all that's left to do is merge the two looks into one. One to the left, one to the right, the hermits assigned roles. Good luck, he synchronously wished to himself, and everyone walked through their own door. Wait, mentor, the cat girl said dreamily as she left the hidden server. What's that? She wondered at the swarm of bats outside the window. Someone has summoned Batman, the girl thought. The blood-sucking ghouls had broken the windows and were rapidly approaching their new prey. Suck yourselves, the girl commanded the ghouls within range of her magic. Those exploded in bloody shards, but the blood didn't scatter like it should have. Instead, it gathered into a huge bloody dragon. The hermit hovered in the void, no light or outside sounds, mind getting used to the deprivation. Found, eyes lit up with the cheater fire of the Sharingan. He could feel the crowd of monsters with his sixth sense, even without light. What kind of gathering? The hermit asked himself. He could see them well through the night vision device. Prying, he cracked the rubber face so hard it swallowed its teeth. It's good to hide. It's dark as a nigger in here. I'm tired of looking even with cheats, angry hermit. The chicken dragon arranged hardcore for the hermit to learn how to control the power of the Tao within his eyes. We just have to deal with a crowd of rubber-faced waiters, the hermit humbled himself. Let's go our urban, he rubbed his fists. Get the rubber faces ready. The monkey king asked the dragon what he had done, and the dragon replied that he had simply adjusted the time. So this is possible too, marveled the monkey king, who was not easily surprised. You can if you're careful, Chicken Darken replied, and it's best not to use it. The faster the internal time, the greater the payoff on the psyche. There's a risk that strong acceleration will cause the mind to collapse, the dragon warned. And by how much did the time speed up? asked the monkey king, the dragon. Ten times, replied the chicken snake. You could do more, but better not. But isn't that not enough? thought the furry macaca. They've only got a month, so you can't make up more than a year. It would be fine, chicken dragon assured. Unlike Hyun Wu, they were starting from scratch. The guy has a different starting line. He already has quite a bit of experience in comprehending karma. He'll make quick work of it, though from such an acquisition there will still be a difference in strength. Another hundred left, or so counted the rubber mobs by the hermit. The Tao power in the Sharingan was already running low, blotted out the hermit. It would definitely be enough to finish off the rest of them, but that would be it. He assessed the situation. I wish I had more Tao power, thought the hermit as suddenly the ordeal was over. He swung into the void, a bright light hitting his eyes painfully. Congratulations, said the chicken dragon to the mad hermit. Quite quickly, the dead man's karma is yours, the dragon said, and the hermit wondered if it wasn't the dragon's karma he was acquiring. Not at all, replied the serpent. His karma is a composite of many others. It contains dozens of other karmas intertwined with each other. So there's still work to be done sighed the mad hermit. The dead man's karma was flatter than the beginning. And where is Macaque? he asked Chicken Dragon. And the latter replied that Monkey was obviously with another hermit. Is he okay? Hyun Wu wondered. But it's a different him. What's next on the list of accomplishments and stupid challenges? The hermit asked. Abstinence karma takes up most of the Chicken Dragon's karma, the hermit heard. 
One must attain enlightenment through discipline, said the dragon. Another muddle, thought the hermit. There will be no hints. You have to do everything yourself, the serpent explained. Again, the power of absurdity to turn on and decide everything by himself, scratched in his ear hermit. Either way, there's no turning back. Without these tricks, you can't make the dragon's power your own. New York had been thoroughly ravaged by invading forces that came from everywhere. Enjoy your meal, clucked the shark jaw of a huge, ugly, illegal alien. The humanoid shark was gobbling. People like chips, wounded hunters lay everywhere. The girl hunter clutched the wound with her hand, no strength left even to flee. Even with the recent pumping, they easily lost to this monster. The monster sent another pack of humans into its jaws, and the warrior pulled out a thunderbolt, he said to the monster, and slashed it from shoulder to scrotum with his saber. The fifth grade master looked at the weakling at his feet. What useless scum, thought he. But the monster wasn't dead yet, and Electric turned around at the sounds. The beast had recovered from the blow, its regeneration was level, it needed to attack harder, Electric realized. The insect toothpick swung around, not hurting, clanking the monster's rows of teeth. It's not even the bottom, the fifth-rate foreman said condescendingly. In an instant, he moved behind the monster's back using a shadow step. Hundreds of blows chopped the shark into cabbage and instantly bleeding the beast. Dumbass, the fifth-rate master snorted contemptuously, returning the lightning rod to its scabbard. Who saved her, the wounded huntress wanted to know and ask the master. An electrician. A fifth-degree welder, he introduced himself haughtily. This electrician's skills are not bad. It's not long before he becomes a celestial, said the furry Makaka. Why Gashishin refused to be revived, Chicken Dragon asked. Brother is just lazy, I grant you, replied the Monkey King. But there's a suitable candidate, so everything will be fine, Makaka's balked. And that's not the main problem right now. Monkey looked toward the door, a hundred days gone. So far, so smooth, Chicken Dragon said to this. This was perfectly agreed upon by Macacus. But now he was studying the karma of asceticism. The dragon foresaw the difficulties. This karma is the hardest to get, due to the dragon's vague, vague statements in particular. For an uneducated hermit, it won't be easy to get it, especially since past methods don't work, the dragon remarked. Hyun Wu was accumulating the Tao of lightning in his hands in the middle of the ice wasteland. The force of static electricity whipped currents around the mad hermit, Still, he managed it. He looked contentedly at his slightly frostbitten hand. Finally being able to place the power of lightning within the Tao, the hermit rejoiced. The base for mastering abstinence was ready, he realized, and glanced at the door of the next test. There is no right way, he remembered Chicken Dragon's instructions, which made it even more confusing. What the hell is that supposed to mean? the hermit asked. That's all there is to say, replied the pseudo-philosophical dragon. That would definitely work. The mad hermit hesitated in his pumping methods. If you felt the arrival, then everything is right, evasively poured Master Dao. The most important thing is what kind of knowledge you get and what meaning you see in it, the chicken snake answered evasively. Now there's more trouble with his head, scratched the mad hermit's reputation. But as before, you still have to understand the logic of the Matrix yourself. The mad hermit has fallen into deep meditation, self-contemplation. What's the point? He thought about everything while he didn't move for dozens of days. Should we blindly follow the chicken dragon karma, or is there another way? This method does not help in cognition at all. Days flew by days completely unnoticed. The hermit opened the doors to change the meditation room. The white snowy wasteland spread out before him again. Back, back to the beginning, Dada Bayo, exclaimed the hermit in his heart after so many days. Sweet Seo Young was on her way to help Slav Anna, but she didn't know why. The times were troubling. The cute huntress arrived at the guild headquarters of the border guild Hyunwu. After realizing what was going on, the cute Seo Yeon promised to help with the magic circles at the hermit's mansion. You could have called sooner, she consoled the slave girl in tears. What about this couple? She asked Shay, Ken, and Anya. Alice the fox was figuring things out with the newly settled electrician. And this one. The two cat girls who arrived from the exercise were bickering incessantly. Only her mentor's orders keep her from pulling her hair out, Agent Rosa said. As if that would help, 
The mentor has been hers for a long time, the dragon empress stated. How desolate the lovely huntress Seo Yeon looked at this madhouse. But wait, did Mi Ryung and Hyun Wu really have something going on since the cat girl is fluffing her tail like that? Nonsense, I read some fanfics and thought Seo Yeon was cute. It's surprising to see him here, thought a cautious Shuken, glancing at the electrician. He had brought him here himself, positioning him in the hermit's large guild hall. Alice the fox was sleeping on a bedding here on the floor when they entered. The fox girl snorted unconcernedly and unabashedly at the entire guild. She is trained, does not chew to peaky, to the litter boxes accustomed. Heard the fox noise when she woke up. What a mongrel, asked Master Electrician's walking coat collar, and the fox hissed. Who would have thought they would hitch a ride on nothing, said a cautious shukin. Let crazy Hun Wu come back quickly. Keep an eye on this circus of freaks, Shu Ken pleaded. It's snowing, it's snowing like a white fly, moved a little hermit from the effort expended in meditation. For the second time in a row, he tried to unravel the Matrix's twisted vostral pseudo-logic. Now he'll just tug on the snake Jew's tail and find out everything, the hermit thought, and headed for the exit. Tired of sitting flat on his seat, Chicken Dragon asked. You're the one who got scared for Hyun Wu's sanity, you snake. He really got karma that fucking way, the mad hermit hissed angrily. But he is the one who can't have it, the serpent told him. Everyone has their own way. A clue born quickly, demanded the hermit, but the dragon only shook its muzzle. What do you mean no, the hermit wouldn't let go? There should be cheats for that too. Self-knowledge and knowledge with the help of others are different things, evasively answered the serpent. This is where there can be no learning, he continued. With left or right drag, thought the hermit over the requirement to go there to take who knows where, who knows what. We're running out of time! We need results, the hermit demanded. He mouthed unplayable nonsense with a clever look. Great thought, the hermit. Now to listen to it in a foreign language. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Translated he ancient saying for the hermit. What does Kim Hyun Woo see, Chicken Dragon asked him, finally being more specific. The hermit realized something, and before he lost the thread of the absurd logic of achievements in the Matrix, went to the training room. For someone who said he wouldn't teach, you talk too much, the Monkey King told the snake. So it's not a clue, but a normal question, the pseudo-philosophical serpent slyly replied. Anyway, it's getting to the dumb one now, smiled Chicken Dragon. Lucky snake, thought the Monkey King. His ordeal had been easy. The shadow clone in Monkey's room was in danger the one said. The hermit tuned up, properly memorizing the words of the bloody snake. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder, thought he, and looked at himself. He originally looked at the chicken dragon and thought of becoming like him. But why would he even do that? He was on the wrong path to begin with. First the karma of the deceased, then asceticism. Ahead are many more components of someone else's path, not his. You can't move just for the purpose of gaining the chicken dragon's karma. It gains its own power, the hermit realized. In order not to lose himself, he must seek his own path. The absurd logic of the Matrix penetrated Hyun Wu more and more deeply. It turns out that he has to face his complexes and problems. The hermit opened his eyes and realized that he was in fact flawless. Handsome, Hyun Wu thought, and achieved enlightenment in one fell swoop. So much for abstinence, Karma. Chicken Dragon congratulated him. That's the end of the training, the pseudo-philosophical serpent told him. The purpose was to look at himself. It was more self-discipline, the dragon said, than training. But the first thing the hermit said was that he would repeat the dragon's path. He now has two karmas, Chicken Dragon confirmed. In other words, it all depended on self-inflicted wounds, smiled the hermit. The Matrix loves that sort of thing, the dragon agreed. But they were interrupted. Nice cooing, but it will have to wait, stated the incoming macacus. At first it seemed like nothing serious, but now the problem is the size of a furry animal, he said. No luck, no luck it happens, macaque justified himself. Dead or something, wondered the mad hermit, but monkey shook his head. A little too much karma and a little cuckooed, replied macaque. Mad as a herd of yokai and shouting everywhere, Aberwalg, he dismayed his comrades.